And when drivers will do anything to take the checkered flag, cages get rattled. Engines roar louder. Tempers run hotter. And victory donuts taste even sweeter. Some people say there's more to life than winning. Those people are losers. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series on ESPN. Nothing beats first place. Mike Rowe here at a Ford dealer with a little Q&A for Fiona. According to the signs, Ford is having some sort of big tire event. How would you describe the event? It's big. The savings one might enjoy at the event. They're big. What about the selection? Big. Get a $60 mail-in rebate on four select tires. Use the Ford service credit card for an additional 60 bucks. Click on the banner ad. So I think we can agree then that Ford's tire event is good sized. No, Michael. It's big. Subject to credit approval. Rebate by check. Offer cannot be combined. See participating Ford dealer for rebate details by 11-30-12. Every Saturday, ESPNU College Game Day hits the road. College Game Day rolls on to East Alabama. Boise is berserk. Chris, Lee, Kirk, Desmond, and Sam Steele are live at the best matchups in the land. This offense continues to develop. How can you pick against LSU? Not so fast, my friend. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Saturdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPNU and 10 a.m. on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. To your city. This is SEC football. You don't cheer for your team. You live for your team. Passion is worn like a badge of honor. So everyone knows what side you're on. But also because it looks good. The SEC on ESPN Collection. Proud to be SEC. Apparel and hats available at Dick Sporting Goods or online at DickSportingGoods.com. Every season starts at Dick's. Sports news happens fast. The Marlins firing manager Ozzie Guillen after just one season. Marlins president of baseball. NASCAR's most popular driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr., has been medically cleared to get back in the 88 car for Sunday's race in Martinsville. When you need the latest scores, updates, or breaking news, turn to Sports Center on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Hey, Dad. Yeah. You remember that ball game we went to a couple years ago? Sure. And how you didn't have enough cash for two hot dogs, so you walked with me on your shoulders until we found an ATM? And then when we got back to our seats, we never saw the hot dog guy again. Well, I don't remember all that. Yeah, that was an awesome game. You never know which moments will be the ones they'll remember forever. So take time to be a dad today. Learn more at one 877 dad 411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Eric Darnell. This is David Reagan. Jamie McMurray. This is Carl Edwards here for RAD, the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. Want to make a difference? It's simple. Be responsible. Plan ahead. Designate before you celebrate. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. A champion, real life checks mechanism. That's killing me for rat. That's not your normal PSA. Don't be stupid. Don't drink and drive. If you're gonna go out and have a good time, it's fine. But designate a driver to drive home. Let's stop the madness. Don't drink and drive. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Get a GE washer and dryer for just $349 each right now at the Home Depot. Not only is that an incredible $350 savings on the pair, it's holiday savings you can enjoy today. So get a jump on holiday shopping and saving with the GE washer and dryer for just $349 each. But only while they last. So hurry. More saving. More doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. While supplies last valid through November 26, U.S. only see store for details. They still have to travel. How are they going to travel? How are they going to play on the road? But what are they going to do? I mean, Tony Sperano, what has he done as an offensive coordinator? I'm so disgusted with Sperano. You know, I don't think they wanted – they don't. They didn't want Tebow. I mean, after eight games, they've shown that, that they did not want Tebow because they don't use him. What has he done offensively? What kind of what kind of inventive mind, what, what kind of creative mind does he have? Zilcho. You know, I mean, what have they done offensively? They have not done anything to create anything. They want to be ground and pound. Yeah, but you want to be ground and pound, but you don't have ground and pound people. 
You want to see ground and pound? Look at Marshawn Lynch. You want to see a runner? Watch that film of Seattle, Minnesota. You want to see what a real runner is? Look at Adrian Peterson. That's what they can do. I mean, they'll look at the film and say, oh, Minnesota, Adrian Peterson gained 140-something yards. You know, we should be able to run on No, look at those runs. Sean Green well, he's, a different, he's, a different kind of, he's a different kind he of running back than what's wrong. No, the Jets don't oh, have Sean. anything like that. I mean, you, no. you can, that's, like saying, that's like saying, can I go out there and do that? No, I, I can't, but Adrian Peterson can. Well, look at can. the roster, Dave. I mean, just look at the roster. What talent do they have? Who do you want on that roster? Who do you, who do you really want? Other than Cromartie. Who do you want? Maybe uh, David Harris. I agree you with you. Mid- middle I, uh, linebacker. Yeah, I think LeRon Landry is pretty good safety right yes, now. But, I, I would agree with but that. But I, I agree. That I said Ray Lucas was here for the first couple hours of the show. And I said to Ray, I said, pick a team. Well, go ahead. You pick a team, Vinny. Pick any team? Pick any team. All right. Uh, let me pick. Uh, let's go Seattle. Okay. Seattle. My point is this, that you can pick any random team, and I can find you an offensive player that scares me more on that team than the Jets. You pick Seattle, I'll give you Marshawn Lynch. You pick me another team. Uh, let me go. Let's go Redskins. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? RG3. RG3. That's not even close. Okay. How about uh, St. Louis? Uh, I would. Uh, St. Louis is interesting. Um. I think if, if that, that, Amendola plays, he could be. Stephen Jackson could be. Bradford could be. I, I think Stephen Jackson is done. I think that yes, I, I think well, Bradford I think he can still pound between the tackles. I think so. Bradford could be the guy. Amendola could be the guy. But I think St. Louis is an interesting one. I think St. Louis is fairly close. But the, I don't think that there's. And this is my point. I don't think there's any club of the 32 in this league that you could say has worse offensive talent than the Jets. Yeah, I, I, you know, I mean, when you look at the talent level for. The Jets' offense. Who do you really like? I mean, Keller has been productive at times. Has he done it this year? No. And, and offensive line-wise, who's had it? If you look at the offense, who's had an outstanding year for them? Who would you really stand up says deserves to be in the Pro Bowl? The, the guy would, you know, Mangle? No, not really. Ferguson? No. And, and if not those guys, who do you put in? Nobody. Defensively, who could be a Pro Bowl? Cromartie will be a Pro Bowl guy. LaRon Landry? He's got a shot. David Harris has got a shot. Other than that, maybe Wilkerson. Maybe Wilkerson have a shot inside. He's but, not, uh, not going to be a Pro Bowl player, though. There's no way Muhammad Wilkerson is going to be a Pro Bowl player. When you watch Quentin Copeland. You know why? Copel's, they're too inconsistent. Oh, they they and, spent 29th the against Pro Bowl, the run. The Pro Bowl guys, you have to be on a winning team. And, and that, that, that's a fact. And, and I always more, think there's the like a, a win, three-year lag. I think there's a three-year lag. I think I think you make the Pro Bowl two or three years after you should actually make the Pro Bowl, and then well, that here, continues. Here's the thing about it. The year we the year we went to the Super Bowl in '94, we had 13 Pro Bowlers. How many? Jim Burt. You remember? You're a Giants guy. I'm from the Jim University Burt of Miami. Was our center. Of course, number 64. Jim Burt was our center. He weighed about 265. He made a Pro Bowl. He was awful. What he do you mean you're saying? You mean you mean your nose tackle? Or not? No. No. Uh, Bardotes. Bardotes, sure. Another Giants guy. We had Bardotes, and he weighed 265. He was awful. He was awful, but he made the Pro Bowl because we were the number one offense in the league. And people, when they sit down to vote, they're going to look at the teams that are winning. I mean, when you look at the Jets, you're not going to look at anybody other than Cromartie. You know, the thing the thing that you like about Cromartie is he is the lowest percentage of any starter in the league about completions throwing at him. Uh, so he's got some he's got he's got some production about him and uh, you know maybe LeRon Landry's got some production about him but other than that they had nothing. Rex Ryan is still confident. We'll hear how confident he is that his oh, club he's gotta be, that Dave. his what club is he gonna say? goes up to Seattle and beats the Seahawks. You're gonna be bothered. I'm gonna be bothered. But we'll hear from Rex. We'll do that next. Dave okay. Rothenberg and Vinny Serrato on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. <laughs> He's the Mike Lupica Show. Charles Barkley. The Jets are going to make the playoffs? No, I didn't say that. We Lamar didn't. said it. Come on. I'm the biggest Rex Ryan fan in the world. They're not going to make the playoffs. Charles, do you know that Mark Sanchez is currently ranked 30th in quarterback ratings? I blame some of that on him. He has not played well, but I blame some of that on the Jets. They should have never bought in Tim Tebow. The Mike Lupica Show. Weekdays at noon. ESPN New York. 98.7 FM. 
This is The Herd with Colin Cowherd. Halloween tonight, giving kids perky jerky. Yeah, I think kids would like jerky. Gabby, you're on our radio show. How old are you, honey? I'm 10. Okay, Gabby, what do you think of uh, jerky and a protein shake for Halloween? No, Why not? no, 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 no. You have to hit up candy. Gabby, candy gives you rotten teeth. What's the point of brushing teeth? What, I get a smart aleck? I wanted a kid. Colin Cowherd. I'll deliver the funny lines, Gabby. Weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio. While cutting molding with a 12-inch dual compound miter saw, while holding a newborn baby in your arms, when face-to-face with a congregation of alligators, with the ball in your hands and the entire freaking season on the line. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So parents, why would you do it while driving? On what NASCAR driver Casey fails, Kane here, in the asking you to please stop the text, and, and together we can stop funeral. the wrecks. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Get the message at stoptextstoprex.org. Was anybody else surprised to hear Greeny gush about Denver? To me, the team to watch when it's all said and done is Denver. I really think Denver, they had the toughest schedule in the world coming out. Look at their losses. They lost at Atlanta. They lost a very tough game to Houston. Both games that they could have won. I think their defense is going to come together. I think Peyton is going to get better and better. I think that Denver could easily wind up being the two seed in the AFC, and they're going to be a very tough out. It's Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Are you ready for kids who eat healthy? Good nutrition can lead to great things. To find out how a healthy lifestyle can help your child succeed, go to MyPyramid.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and USDA. The traditional light bulb, a groundbreaking invention in 1879. It's time we switch to longer-lasting Energy Star light bulbs. They're more efficient than the old bulbs, like a text message is more efficient than a carrier pigeon. And they cut down on our energy costs. Because in our own groundbreaking age, we deserve a light bulb that saves us some cash. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. All right, I've gone through all the tracks, just move through the beats. Do your thing. All right, everyone, let's hear it for West High's own Brooke Turner, a.k.a. DJ Hook. Scratching at my first school dance takes confidence. <laughs> so getting into college, I've got what it takes. So do you. Visit knowhowtogo.org to learn what you should be doing right now to prepare for college. Start taking the steps at knowhowtogo.org. Brought to you by the American Council on Education, Lumina Foundation, and the Ad Council. I'm Jason. I'm 32, and my risk for stroke is increased by five times because of an irregular heartbeat called atrial fibrillation, or AFib. Because of my young age, I'm not a typical AFib patient. And I'm Pat. I'm 62, and I'm a two-time stroke survivor with AFib, which is most common in older people. Together, we are faces of AFib and stroke. Telling our stories might help save a life. Take action today by talking with a healthcare professional about your risk. And visit stroke.org to learn more. Dave Rothenberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. And ESPN New York NFL GM and insider Vinny Serrato in with us for the entire hour. Talking Jets, we'll get into Giants, we'll go around the league, we'll make our picks as well. Rex Ryan, Vinny, he's confident, he's confident that things will change. Expect? That things will change this weekend in, of all places, Seattle. I know we can do it. I know we can do it. I know we can get it fixed. I got the coaching staff with me. I got the players. You know, I, I, I got I got that kind of group of men, and that's what I'm so encouraged about, and that's why I'm so excited about this. I mean, it's about as tough as tough a thing that we're facing right in front of us. Well, here we go. And this is the thing I'm telling you about. And he's so excited about this. You know what? Go out and win the game. I don't want to hear how excited, how you love your team, how you love your coaching staff. Go out and win the game. Yeah, but what do you expect him to say? Nothing. I remember, like, Nothing. They, why why does he always little... have to say something? Well, because he's a head coach and he, and he has to talk. But I remember with Lou Holtz, he'd always, he, Lou Holtz would always say, this is the best staff I've ever had. You know, and uh, that was almost every year. 
you know, because he's trying to build a confidence in the staff. I mean, a three and five team. What do you expect to say? You, what you've got to do as a head coach is you've got to build their confidence up. You can't say, oh man, we're going to the toughest place to play in the league. They pump crowd noise in there. It's going to be loud. We're not going to be able to communicate. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to kill your team before they got to get out there. No, listen, I'm, I'm not an idiot. Up. I don't think that you bring them down, but I don't understand why, if you're Rex, you can't just say, you know what, this is going to be a very competitive game. I, I like my team. I think we're going to go in there and give a good effort. Not, not. I, I love this. I love that. We practice well. Our, our Players that's are best Rex. friends. That, that's Rex, though, Dave. I mean, Rex Rex is not glass half full. Rex is glass three quarters full. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's I the way he, he goes about it. <laughs> but you it's, know, you know, it's frustrating. But you know what? When you're winning, this is cute. When you're winning, this is great. When you're winning, everyone buys into this. When you're losing, this gets grating. Or, or when you're losing, people look at you like you're an idiot. What are you talking about, Rex? What reality? You know, reality. Perception's reality. And you're sitting three and five. And how are you going to move the ball? How are you going to do this? How are you going to stop them on defense? How are you going to handle the crowd noise? How are you going to communicate? I mean, that's what you want to see. You know, and what happens is, is you cry wolf so many times, then all of a sudden, you know what, the fans, they just in one ear and out the other. That's what's happening with Rex right now. All right, I mentioned this to Ray Lucas earlier tonight. He looked at me like I was crazy. Now, let me give you the parameters of the question before you look at me like I'm crazy. Not if you're a player, not if you're a coach. As an analyst or a fan, okay, if you're an analyst like you are, a fan like many people out there are, can, is there something positive that can come from the Jets going Four and twelve, rather than seven and nine or eight and eight. My point being is, it's a lot easier to rebuild. And if you're not going to make the postseason, what's the difference if you go four and twelve or eight and eight? And in some way, I think it's more beneficial to have a much higher pick than it is to every year be fourteen, fifteen, or sixteen. I totally agree. Look, look, let's just case in point. Look at the Redskins, where they they did that, you know, and they had the fifth pick of the draft. Could they have traded if they were eight and eight and picking twelfth or thirteen? Could they have gotten up to the two slot? Absolutely not. And then they got a franchise quarterback, which gives them an opportunity. The thing is, if you're the Jets, you know, and talking with Mel Kiper, and I haven't started evaluating the draft yet. It's not a real strong draft, and there's not a great quarterback in the draft. That's the problem. So if you're the Jets, what are you going to get? That's the thing. I mean, if there was a great pass rusher, maybe. You know, or maybe a great running back. Maybe you you need a special player. You need a Pro Bowl player. That was my marching orders every year. If we ever had a tan, top ten pick, Dan Snyder would come to me and said, listen, I don't care what you take. I, I don't care. As long as it's get me a Pro Bowl player. I don't care what position. Get me a Pro Bowl player. All right, let's look at this game in Seattle. Before we even analyze this game, you've been there. And Ray Lucas said, I asked Ray, give me a couple of places that are the toughest to play in the league. And he said, and you can... Tell me what you think about these. He said Seattle. He said Oakland. He said Philadelphia. And when things are well and things are right, Kansas City brutal to play as well. Yeah, I I, I would say Oakland's an easy place to play. We, how about a few, about, about what, four years ago we went out and played in Oakland? There was 23,000 people there. Oh, God. If Oakland is good, it's a tough place to play, but it's a nasty stadium. Well, that's, he he, he it, said that the, the, the fans are, are venomous out there. And the second yeah, you get off the bus, there's not they're many after of them, you. Dave. That's a problem. There's not many. You know, there's the people that sit in the end zone that are the black hole people, okay? How about Denver? Oh, How hard that? is Denver? That That's hard to play, right? I tell you what. You know what's hard is is when you go to a place and the team is very good. Then it is loud because the, the, the because they have a lot of people there. The teams that are tough are the dome teams. When the t dome teams are good, when I was in San Fran, going to New Orleans was the toughest place to go because they were a very good team, and it was extremely – you could not hear anything. I mean, Steve Young would have to give hand signals to what the plays were in the huddle. That's how loud it was. And that's how it's going to be in Seattle. Seattle, we played out in Seattle in the playoff game. Mark Burnell – they could not. They had to read his lips what the play was. That's what they had to do. Or he would he would lean over and show them his wristband of what the play was to the guys in the huddle. That's how loud it was when we played during the playoffs. You guys win there that game? No, we lost both. We played during the regular season game when Jim Zorn was head coach. They weren't as good. We won out there. We lost both games in the playoffs out there. It was extremely loud. The one year, the one year they went to the Super Bowl, and then the other year, I think they went to Green Bay and lost after us, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Now that's not the game that Sean Taylor spit in the face yes. of. A, or, that is that game. I thought that was in Tampa. No, that was that was. Uh, no, uh, against Sean Seattle? Taylor was in Tampa. Sean Taylor. The year we went to, the one year we went to Seattle. Sean Taylor had gotten killed that year. And we had won four straight and made it to the playoffs. Right, but the year that Sean Taylor spit in the in the opposition's face, that was against Tampa Bay. 
I want to say it was Tampa because there was a what happened was there was a big fight before the game. How about this day? We're, we're there in pregame warmups and there was a lot of intensity. And me and Dan Snyder are walking off the field. We were down there for warmups. We're walking off, and Sean Taylor he starts yelling, you know, at the Tampa players, and they were saying nothing that we could say on the radio. They were saying everything about each other's families, you know. And we and and then uh, there was a lot of talk. Going on, but uh, actually, Sean Taylor backed it up because he took one back for a touchdown. No, Sean Taylor's a tremendous safety. Um, let's get back into the Jets and the, and the Seahawks and Vinny Serrato here with us on ESPN New York ninety eight point seven FM. How important? I, I think you know it's important every week. I think it's doubly or triply important this week for the Jets to come out and get off to a good start because you're never going to eliminate the crowd noise, but at least you can contain the crowd noise a little bit better there if you get out to a pretty good start. No, there's no question about it. My number one thing in this game is how do they handle the crowd noise, the communication. That's going to be the number one thing. And the best way to do it is you come out on the opening drive and you drive it down. You have a six- or seven-minute drive. That's the thing. But you're talking about a defense that is very good. Uh, I mean, the, the, the defense, I mean, they're 14th. You know, I mean, they're third in points. Here, just look at this, day. I mean, they don't score a lot of points. They're 24th in the league at 18.9. But at home, they average 24 points a game. So they would be in the in the teens, you know, in, in 15 and above in scoring points. And on defense, they're third in the league, giving up 17. But at home, they only give up 15. They'd be number one in the league. So it, it's going to be very difficult. And they pump in the crowd noise, so it's going to be extremely loud. So what makes it difficult is because of Irving, their, their rookie guy, the rookie pass rusher they took, and Chris Clemens, the pass rushers, you know, with the crowd noise, your offensive line is always late off the ball because you've got to do some type of hand signals, and they're going on snap. So your linemen are always late. So they get a good, uh, they get anticipation. So it's going to be very difficult. And the other thing is, is with Richard Sherman and Brandon Browner, the two corners, they are big physical guys. They're going to line up on Curley. They're going to line up on Hill, and they're going to jam them at the line of scrimmage. I don't know how Hill's going to get off the ball. I don't know. And and then with Sanchez, you know, he's going to drop back and throw the ball. And who's going to be open? They've got a great safety in Earl Thomas to cover Keller. Pete Carroll probably knows Mark Sanchez better than anybody except the Jets do. So he's going to know how to defend him, what makes Mark tick and what doesn't make Mark tick. They're going to pressure him. They're not going to give him time to throw it. And the thing about it, they're going to get pressure on him. The Jets O-line, I mean, they're going to come, uh, you know, can Howard hold up? That's going to be the key thing. Can Brickashaw hold up? That's going to be the key thing. And uh, pressure is going to get to Sanchez because I don't think they're going to be able to run it. I don't think they're going to be able to run so, the football. So, you know, you talk about not being able to run it, and I agree with you. And that the front four is good, and the Jets don't have a dominant running game anyhow. And I don't see how they can throw it. I don't know, honestly, and I'm not, I'm not over-exaggerating, I don't know how the Jets realistically, consistently move the ball in this game. Well, I, I think they've, they, they've got to get, they've got to have some luck. The, the, the thing that Minnesota did was they didn't really move it in the pass game. What, what they did was Adrian Peterson made some spectacular runs that Sean Green cannot make. And... and that was the thing. Yeah, he had some long touchdown runs, but I don't know because Sean Green is a between the tackles guy. He gets what's blocked. And Seattle's defense, which when you watch them on film, they are very good fundamentally. They protect their gaps. They stay square. The defensive line stays square. And it's going to be tough to get long runs unless you're a special back. And the Jets don't have that. And and the Jets, it's hard to go 12 plays on Seattle and go score a touchdown. That's what's hard. Because it's hard to get first downs on them. I, I just don't know. I, I agree with you, Dave. I don't know how they're going to score a lot of points. I mean, if they get 15 points, I think they're doing pretty good in this game. And, and they've got to do it. Maybe they get a special teams play, but the special teams have been so bad. I'm sure that Leon Washington would love to take one to the house against Mike Westhoff. Uh, you look at what the Jets have coming up. I mean, they, they have a, a you know, guy in Leon Washington go, that they go up against. They, they have uh, Brian Schottenheimer that they get to go up against next right. week over in St. Louis. How, I mean, looking at this game and trying to figure out a way, and I know you say you don't love the Jets being able to move the ball, how about shutting down Marshawn Lynch? Because I, Russell Wilson, he's still a rookie quarterback, and you'd have to figure that to stop that offense, it starts with slowing down Marshawn Lynch. Do you agree with that, that if you can contain him, the rest becomes much easier? 
I would agree with that. Absolutely. I, I, I give I give Pete Carroll a lot of credit because what he did, Russell Wilson was really struggling. They were talking about benching him at the beginning of the year. What did they do? They studied what, what Washington was doing with RG3, putting in the Baylor offense, because they were trying to run the pro stuff, everything that they, they wanted to do offensively. And what they did was now if you watch them play, they're in the shotgun a lot, and they'll run. They'll run the stretch zone play. They'll, they'll hand off to, uh, to Lynch in the gun. And that's what they do most of the time now. So it's a very, very quarterback-friendly offense. It's almost a college offense right now. And the thing, the other thing they do, Dave, is if the Jets do not tackle well, they're going to be in severe trouble because, uh, listen, th- this stat will blow you away. I mean, it blew me away when I thought it. Behind the line of scrimmage to 10 yards, mm-hmm. they are 96 of 136, 71% for 722 yards. They have only thrown 74 balls past 10 yards deep. So it, they're going to run bubble screen to Rice, and they're going to run bubble screen to Tate. Uh, I mean, that's part of their run game. That's part of what they do. So you have to be able to tackle well. And if you do not tackle well, they're going to make yards, they're going to make first downs, and you're going to be in trouble. Because over the last couple of games, they're 8 of 9. Last two games, they're 8 of 9 in the red zone. But, but if that's the case, goals. and that's what they do, can't you bring safeties into the box to keep everything in front of you if you know for the most part they're not going to go long? Yeah, you're going to have to. But the thing about it is, is Rice can get deep on you. I mean, they'll take a shot deep. I mean, he, he's 9 of 30, over 20 yards. He completes 30% of his balls down the field. Well, I mean, they'll take a shot down the field. I mean, if you're going to give it, they're going to take a shot. And Sidney Rice is 6'4". I mean, the guy's a good receiver. And down the field, if you've got him matched up with Wilson, I'm going to take a shot down the field. If you've got him matched up with Cromartie, I'm probably not. Cromartie's probably going to win that battle. And if you've got Cromartie on Tate down the field, Cromartie's going to win that, but I'm going to throw – if I'm throwing deep, I'm throwing opposite Cromartie. That's what I'm doing. But, Dave, how about this? Russell Wilson at home, like I said, nine touchdowns, no interception. He's got 120 quarterback rating at home. He's got a 65 quarterback rating on the road. He is much more comfortable. And what they try to do is they boot, they roll him out. He has a hard time seeing in the pocket. The guy's 5'11". You know, and the Jets got all those big defensive linemen. And what they're going to do is they're going to get him outside the pocket. And what he has learned to do now, what they've tried to teach him to do, is to buy more time. If guys are covered, boom, don't go take off and run. Buy more time. Slide right, slide left, and and keep your eyes down the field instead of running right away. And he's doing a much better job of that. And over the last few weeks, he's doing a much better. And he does a much better job at home. This is a totally different football team at home than on the road. Absolutely. They're undefeated at home. They've got the benefit of the calls, a la that Green Bay game at home. They're a real legitimate threat at home. And, of course, the Jets have to take the Seahawks on up in the Pacific Northwest. The Giants are 6-3. and three. There's been rumblings that something's not right with Big Blue. Is that true? Vinny Serrato lets us know about that next. Dave Rothenberg with you on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Looking to rebound after the bye week. The Jets travel west to face the Seattle Seahawks. We've earned that 3-5 and five record. That's clearly not where, where we want to be at. Their season may be at a crossroads. Which way will they go? We have work to do. I'm excited to get the guys back. I look forward to the second half of the season. Jets, Seahawks. Coverage gets underway Sunday at 2 on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Get a GE washer and dryer for just $349 each right now at the Home Depot. Not only is that an incredible $350 savings on the pair, it's holiday savings you can enjoy today. So get a jump on holiday shopping and saving with the GE washer and dryer for just $349 each. But only while they last. So hurry. More saving. More doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. While supplies last valid through November 26, U.S. only. See store for details. My mum always says hard work never hurt anybody. Good advice as usual. So we worked very hard to make Geico.com very easy. Say you want to report a claim and follow its progress. You can do it all online at Geico.com. Not to mention perhaps saving a tidy sum of money on your car insurance. All it takes is a few clicks. So visit Geico.com today. Oh, and mum, if you're listening, yes, I did wash behind my ears this morning. And ESPN Radio Mike and Mike Extra Point. The reality is, if Notre Dame played Oregon in football next Saturday on a neutral site, I don't know who would win, and neither do you. It's as simple as that. 
Now, I got inundated with people yesterday, oh, Greeny, Oregon would beat them by 20 points. Oh, would they? Are you the same people who told me that Notre Dame was going to get smoked when they went to Oklahoma? Yeah. Here's the thing. In sports, we look, we, we tell you what we expect to happen, and then guess what happens? They play a we game. We don't know. They right. play a game. If we knew what was going to happen ahead of time, we would all be living in castles in Las Vegas. I get it, but what we do is we make our picks. So we, here's we, what we drives me nuts. Okay. So Notre Dame, right. you're Notre Dame, right. which always gets the benefit of everything. They've gotten into BCS bowl games in the years we've been together when they had no business being there. Hear more from Mike and Mike tomorrow morning on ESPN Radio. ESPNRadio.com. Right now. Hi, I'm Bob Picozzi. Mike Greenberg and Mike Golick spent Thursday's edition of Mike and Mike at the U.S. Coast Guard Academy in New London, Connecticut. And Greeny and Golick discussed Green Bay's 6-3 and three start, the difficult decision that Charles Tillman of the Bears could have to face on Sunday, the Armed Forces Classic, and much more. They visited with Packers coach Mike McCarthy, Michigan State basketball coach Tom Izzo, Chris Mortensen, and Brian Billick. It's all yours on the Mike and Mike page at ESPNRadio.com. Meanwhile, over at the Pod Center page... Hey, it's Matthew Berry from the Fantasy Focus Football Podcast. Today on the show, Nate Ravitz and I talk about the injuries to Hakeem Nix, the Raiders running back situation, the Week 10 ranks. Ivan Mazel here on the ESPNU College Football Podcast. David Abbott of the Big 12, Mitch Sherman of the Recruiting Nation, and Paul Houlihan of the Sugar Bowl are all here. You can hear this and more on the Pod Center page at ESPNRadio.com. Log on to the ESPNRadio.com stream, the most listened to stream in the world. I'm Dave Rothenberg with your ESPN New York Sports Center. Jets will kick off the second half of the season Sunday, and at 3-5, and five, a playoff berth seems, well, unlikely at best. Not according to cornerback Antonio Cromartie, though. Jets will make a playoff this year. Uh, I mean, I, we, we, we believe in each other. We believe in what uh, Coach Ryan and his staff is, 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 you know, putting us the schemes and stuff. So I, we're definitely uh, going to make a playoff this year. That's Cromartie appearing on the NFL Network earlier today. Any chance at the playoffs for the Jets means a must win for the club against Seattle on Sunday. Coverage begins right here on ESPN New York 98.7 FM at 2 p.m. Elsewhere, Giants wide out Akeem Nix with a knee issue returns to practice today. Nick says he will definitely play Sunday against the Bengals. Thursday night football, Week 10 is underway. Indy at Jacksonville. It's all Colts halfway through the second quarter. 17 to nothing. NBA tonight, Oklahoma City at Chicago. They're at the half. Thunder leading that one 48-47. The nightcap tonight, Clippers at the Blazers. Baseball, Rockies hire former shortstop Walt Weiss as their new skipper. Dave Rothenberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. And ESPN New York NFL GM and insider Vinny Serrato is here for the hour. Giants losing Vinny 24-20 after holding what seemed like a pretty comfortable 20-10 lead heading into the fourth quarter. Looking at how the Giants have played the last three weeks, getting fortunate at home against the Redskins. Going on the road and finding a way and getting fortunate again at the Cowboys. And then this past weekend, losing a fairly comfortable double-digit lead in the fourth quarter against the Steelers. Does something seem a little off about the Giants to you right now, or are we blowing this completely out of proportion? No, there's no question about it. Uh, there's there's problems on the offense right now. I mean, Eli is struggling right now. I mean, just look at the last two games, Dave. I mean, if you just look at third downs on the offense, they're th- against Dallas, they are 3 of 15. 3 of 15. Against Pittsburgh, 2 of 10. That's 5 of 25. That's awful. Defensively, and then you look at the defense against Dallas, they're 7 out of 14, 50%. That's terrible. Then against Pittsburgh, 6 of 13. And then if you go back to Dallas, they had 11, 11 total first downs. Against Pittsburgh, 13 total first downs. Against Dallas, they ran 58 plays. Dallas ran 83. Against Pittsburgh, they ran 48. Dallas or Pittsburgh ran 69. So, I mean, they're not converting, so they're being off the field, so the defense has got to be on the field that much more. And the defense is not getting off the field because they're letting them convert on third down. So that's a big problem. And what what teams are doing, uh, the thing about it with, with Nick's being nicked up, he can't separate. He, is a, he doesn't run as well. All right? And Cruz is not the fastest guy in the world. So what teams are doing is they're coming up and they're jamming at the line of scrimmage. And when you jam at the line of scrimmage, it changes what the route is. If if the corner's off, say you're running a hook route and the corner's off. Or say you're running a go, a go route. I mean, the routes change. 
If you're running a hook route, it may change to a fade if they're playing press coverage. So, I mean, and you've got to be on the same page. So the communication has not been right. So I think they've got to go back to the basics, back to the fundamentals, get everybody on the same page, because the problem they're having right now is they're not on the same page. So Eli's thinking one thing, the receivers are seeing another thing. So that's a problem. The receivers are not getting separation, they're not getting open. So what is it, what happens? Eli has to hold the ball longer, and then he doesn't make as good a decision. He's got to hold the ball, he gets sacked. So there's a lot of problems right now on the offensive side of the ball, and that's the problem. And then on the defensive side of the ball, the tackling's been poor. That's the thing. And if in this game, the yards after catch, these guys, A.J. Green, Gresham, and Hawkins, are spectacular yards after catch. A.J. Green gets 152 yards of yak yards. Jermaine Gresham, 195 of yak yards. Andre Hawkins, Andrew Hawkins, 235 yards of yak yards. They've got to tackle well on defense, and they've got to convert on third down on offense, and the receivers have got to help Eli out, and they've got to be able to get open. All right, I want to get into the battle against Cincinnati in a moment. First, I want to ask you specifically about the Giants. I mean, it's so obvious to me, and you just mentioned it as well, Akeem Nix is not right. Now, no. are we at the point where do you think maybe a week or two of rest can make him right, or is this what we're looking at all year long from Akeem Nix, is some weeks oh, yeah. decent, some weeks banged up, other weeks horrendous? I, it always concerns me when there's when there's swelling in the knee. Just because that's not normal, and there's something going on in the knee that is not right, and and I think it looks like what they're trying to do is they're trying to baby him through the season to get him through the season to the end of the season, and then have some type of surgery after the season. So you know, if you have swelling, you can't bend your knee, you can't run as much, you can't cut as well. So it hinders it hinders your ability as a wide receiver to play like you want to play. And if you're a receiver and you've got an injury like that, you can't bend your knee, you can't explode, You, you in your mind, you, you're you not free and you can't do the things that you want to do. And that makes it even tougher on Cruz because then everybody rolls the coverage to him. So what do you do if you're the Giants? Do you do you sit him down for a week? Do you get more three wide sets where you can have that second legitimate wide receiver, whether it's a Dominic Hickson or a, a Ramses Bard or a Ruben Randler? You just go with your with your guys and, and hope that it works out. Well, I, I think you, you try to fight through it, uh, you know, and you give maybe you give Nick just a package of what he can do, or maybe eventually you're going to sit him down when Randall is totally ready, you know, and, and if Hickson's ready to go, you know, you give them more reps because right now is he doing you more harm than he is good? Because when you look at it, what, what big plays has he made? What separation has he got? Can he get open? And, I mean, Eli drops back, and he's holding the ball, holding the ball, and he's, it's like, come on, guys, come on, guys. You know, and then Deal has problems with protection. You know, and then the other guys, they can't hold up that long. And, and then it just causes these three of, you know, five of 25 on third down. That's the biggest problem. Do you think that the Giants made a mistake putting Deal back at starting right tackle over uh, Sean Locklear? Well, the thing about it is in the NFL, Dave, is normally you do not lose your starting job because of injury. When you're healthy, you can come back, you get your starting job back. And then if he is not producing, say he has a, he struggles again this week, you know, I mean, and these guys, Michael Johnson's got six sacks, he can rush the passer. If he struggles in this game, maybe you put Locklear back and, and then you, you know, you just sit down, deal, and say, listen, you know, production is not good enough right now. You know, we want you to, you know, get a few more reps, let it, you know, be the tight end type guy and, and come in and do the role that you were doing prior to this because Locklear was doing fine. I mean, you know, and, you know, Deal really struggles, especially towards the end of the game. I mean, he, he has a trouble. He, he, he's a stiff guy anyhow. And what he is, he's smart and he's tough. He gets by with smarts and toughs. He's not going to knock you off the ball. He doesn't have explosiveness. But and a speed guy and an athletic guy is going to give him problems. Michael Johnson is going to give him problems on Sunday. All right, well, let's look at this game on Sunday and analyze it as best we can for, for just a couple of minutes. You talk, and, and you're, you, you know what's frustrating about you is you're, you've been a Bengals guy to start the season. All right, you love Marvin Lewis. You think this is such a good team, and I don't think but they not are. not as good anymore. They, I mean, they're just, no, not, they're just not that good. And I, you, were, you love this team to start the season. You were raving about the, the physicality and how they run to the ball and their front seven and how they Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. And, you know, the bottom line is Bengals aren't that good. And if the Giants, oh, no, uh, go ahead. Am, am I wrong? 
No, you know, the, the, here's the problem is Dalton's been struggling, too. I mean, they've had a four-game losing streak. They've lost four in a row. Dalton, six touchdowns, seven interceptions over the last four games. Third down passing, he's completing 44%. So he, he is struggling, too. That's why Marvin has called him out. They've got problems in the offensive line. Two stars at the beginning of the year went out. So they've got backups in there. So, I mean, that's kind of a problem that a lot of teams have had. So they're, they're, they're struggling there. Their corners have played old. You know, Kirkpatrick missed, what, the first four or five games. So Hall and Newsom and these guys, they've been old. Their safeties, I think their safeties stink. Well, they have Terrence Newman. I I think Taylor Mays, Taylor Mays and Reggie Nelson. Reggie Nelson's got no instincts. Taylor Mays has no instincts. You can beat them in the middle field. Taylor Mays is good against the run. He stinks against the pass. You know, and then they've had injuries at linebacker. Vontez Burfick, an undrafted free agent, is now starting for them. Malalugas, you know, I think Malalugas is very limited. So they're not that good there. And Michael Johnson missed a lot of time early. I'll tell you what, they've got to be able to block Geno Atkins. And if Sneak can't play, you know, Geno Atkins is going to cause some problems. He's got seven sacks already as a D-tackle. I mean, he's a Pro Bowl defensive tackle. He's outstanding there. But their offense, since he's a minus five, and they don't they don't take away the ball. That's the thing. I mean, the Giants. The reason they're six and three, Dave. They're a plus fourteen. They got twenty six takeaways on defense. The for the twenty ninth ranked defense overall. But the thing they do is they don't give a lot of points. They're tenth in the league against points, and they create a lot of turnovers. Where Cincinnati doesn't. Cincinnati doesn't get turnovers. They got five interceptions. They can't get the ball. That that's the big plus there. And Cincinnati in their four game losing streak. Dave, they've been ahead in the fourth quarter in every game. They cannot hold the lead. That's I look, the I look at Cincinnati like this. We'll do our pick segment in, in just a couple of minutes. I look at Cincinnati like this. If you're the Giants and you can slow down, not shut them down because he's too talented, but slow down A.J. Green, odds are yes. you're going to win this game. I mean, that's it. I, I know that they're a pretty decent team and their running game is okay and, and the Hawkins kid is decent. Gresham is pretty good. If you can slow down and contain, if you finish the game and you look at A.J. Green's stats and you say, you know what, we got the better of him, odds are you're going to win this game. I would I would agree with that. I would definitely agree with that. And the thing about it is they're a dink and dunk offense. They are, they're like Seattle. They're, they're a are dink and dunk, dunk offense. How about this? How about Dalton is 125 of 174 for passes thrown 10 yards or less? So, I mean, they're going to dink and dunk it, dunk it most of the time. And, Which is amazing because you know, they actually be have some tackle. weapons. They have some weapons they, offensively. Oh, oh, there's no question about it. I mean, A.J. Green's as good as it gets in the league. Gresham's as good a tight end as receiver, as good as it gets. I mean, he's 265 pounds. He can block and he can run. And Andrew Hawkins is a little dude, but you watch him, Giants fans. If he gets a chance in the slot, and Holsley has struggled as of late, and if Holsley's got him in a slot, Holsley's going to have his hands full. And if Holsley struggles, Hawkins can beat them. Hawkins can take a play. He's got 235 yards of yak yards. He can make plays after the catch. So you, you can't let him go free. The thing about it is is you can't let Ben Jarvis Green Ellis get going. I mean he's only averaging three point four. Yeah, he hasn't so done much. They're struggling this year. there. The offensive line has not done well. So they're struggling and Dalton has struggled. I'm like I said, he's thrown seven picks, six six touchdowns. He is not he has not done well. And they cannot hold a lead. That's the thing about it is they have struggled. Like I said, they were ahead of, they were at twenty seventeen against Denver. Lost the lead. They were at every game in the fourth quarter and lost the lead. That's their problem. They're not good enough in the back end, in my opinion. All right. It's redemption time. You'll find out about that next. Dave Rothenberg and Vinny Serrato with you on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Hey, everyone. It's Mike Lupica. The New York Tri-State continues its battle towards recovery after the effects of Hurricane Sandy and the latest Nor'easter. We need your help. Please log on to www.redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS or text Red Cross to 90999 to donate $10. We've all been affected by Hurricane Sandy in some form, and together we can all do our part to help our friends, our neighbors, and our communities. Again, for more information on how you can help, log on to redcross.org. Confidence? Are you there? Baby, I'm right here. And I want that car. Those side-by-side comparisons on cars.com did make it easy to compare gas mileage and pricing. Let's get those keys go. Cars.com. Well, I'll tell you about the game of football. It has its ups and downs and highs and lows. And you know what I'm talking about. Wins and losses, injuries, and great performances. Teams have no guarantees on whether or not they will make it to the playoffs. So that big bonus at the end of the season, (laughs) it may not come. Now, I've got a little tip for all my professional player friends who may not end up with that big payday. 
you might want to think about switching to Geico. Geico has been saving millions of other people money, or like me money, on their car insurance for the last 75 years. I've been with Geico 33 years since I got my license. In fact, Geico is the number one car insurer in the tri-state area for the last two years running. The truth is Geico finds every way possible to save drivers money from low rates to good driver and multi-driver discounts. In fact, you can save hundreds on your car insurance just by switching to Geico. I know I did. So give Geico a call. And I never switched. I started with Geico. So give Geico a call or go to Geico.com. It only takes 15 minutes, and you can save 15% or more on car insurance. Just something to think about, my friends. Hi, it's Colin Thursday. Bill Romanowski on pot smoking in the NFL. Greg Cosell thinks Eli Manning's arm. Well, you have to listen to find out. Download the Thursday Thundering Herd podcast. Check it out, ESPNRadio.com. Colin Cowherd and the Herd. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sports. New York. Rex Ryan voted the most overrated head coach. Our friend Rich Samini, ESPNNewYork.com. The bigger story, off a of bye week, Jets go to Seattle. Is it, Rich, a winnable game when you look at their personnel? It's a winnable game, Colin, uh, because Seattle is struggling just as much on offense as the Jets are. You're talking about two of the lower-ranked teams, so I think you're going to see a low-scoring, ugly-type game. But Seattle is very tough at home. The Jets are just going to have to play almost a perfect game and avoid some of the uh, crushing mistakes that they've been making in recent weeks. I look at Mark Sanchez, and we all have this, like, Tebow cloud, or maybe it's a silver lining, depends on your perspective. What if they go to Seattle, and it's kind of ugly? 28-14, they lose. How many starts is Sanchez getting, do you think? Well, you would think that he'd be at the end of the rope if that scenario unplays the way you just described it, but I don't get the impression from anyone in, in the locker room or around the building that he's on the verge of of losing his job. I think Rex Ryan is, is just committed to Mark Sanchez. Utah. Lakers fall to 1-4. and four. Beto Duran, ESPN LA 710. What's the bigger issue? The defense, which is middle of the pack to below that on threes and field goal percentage, or a struggling offense? Uh, the bigger issue of how to pick one would be the offense because you shouldn't be struggling when you have players like Dwight Howard, Kobe Bryant, and Pau Gasol on your squad. Yeah, Mike Brown's going to point to the defense. It looked ugly yesterday. The transition defense is bad. But overall, Colin, this Lakers squad just looks ugly right now. You can point to the bench. You can point to the lack of productivity. You can point to the lack of no ha not having Steve Nash. But if you're a Laker fan, everybody's pointing at one man, and that is Mike Brown. Texas. Josh Hamilton's future, a teammate comes out, kind of sounds critical of him. Richard Durrett, ESPNDallas.com. All right, Mike Adams is a teammate. Take our audience, Richard, to his his comments yesterday about his teammate Josh Hamilton. I think he was referring to several things. One was Hamilton's lack of consistency. Uh, you look at Hamilton's season, he was player of the month in the American League in April and May, had the four-homer game in Baltimore. There wasn't a pitch he wasn't willing to swing at and one that he didn't hit. And then he had two months where he didn't hit hardly any of those pitches. Uh, one day he might come to the ballpark and be the guy that took the game over. The next night he might go 0 for 5 with three strikeouts. So when he was talking, I think, a little bit about Hamilton and not sure which Josh would show up at the ballpark, that's what he meant. And, and I'll tell you, I think there's some truth to that. So, so it's just interesting to hear it from a teammate. It's your daily sports page. Spanning the globe in the herd. Weekdays on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Dave Rothenberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. And Vinny Serrato, ESPN New York NFL GM and insider, joins us every Thursday, and this Thursday is no different. Vinny, you ready to pick some games? Yes, I, I believe. Uh, now, on my show, I was 10-3 and three last week. What what, uh, what did they have us at? You were 11-3 and three last week. Was there, was there 14 okay. games, or there's only 13 games last week? Well, maybe we picked one that... Uh, maybe the Thursday night game you guys didn't do on the show? Maybe so. Well, whatever. You were eleven and three I, last I've been, week. I've been I've been good as of late. You've been very good. You were eleven and three last week. I was ten and four last week, which brings the season total to a respectable sixty one and twenty nine for you. And I'm two games off the pace at fifty nine and thirty one. Now, uh oh, yeah, I'm, too, I'm right behind you. Now, with me trailing by two games, I'd like to propose something if you're ready for this. 
I'd I'm like to propose, propose. You're a steak guy, right? You and I have discussed this. Yes. Right. You enjoy a good steak. Uh, I yeah. I, I'm I'm not a big steak guy, but uh, yeah, I like a steakhouse. All right. I like the wine at a steakhouse. All right. How about this? How about the the loser has to take the winner to a steak dinner, wine inclusive? Oh, you willing boy. to do that? Absolutely. I already got my steakhouse picked out. All right. That's on the table. I'm two games behind you, so I'm going to have to get rolling here. Uh, we need music for me to do anything. And here we go. Now I feel like I'm in my comfort zone. We start with a game tonight, and obviously I think uh, I was going to. I imagine you were going to, and even if we weren't, you'll lie. You'll tell me you were. We both take the Colts in this one, being that they're up 17 nothing late in the second quarter. Uh, I'm a huge Andrew Luck guy. You I'm and all, I, all Indy. I, I got to tell you, you and I, of all the people I've spoken with, are the two biggest Andrew Luck guys I've seen. I mean, I love this guy from last year, and he's done nothing but wow me all season Dave, long. Dave, how about on my show this week? I proposed yesterday. I says, I said, if you were Ozzy Newsom when the Baltimore Ravens, would you trade today Andrew Luck for Joe Flacco? In a heartbeat. Oh my! In a heartbeat. I, I think yes. that I think if you told me that Andrew Luck was a top. Eight quarterback in this league outside of those big seven that we talk about all the time. I think he's at that level yes. already. Oh, there's no question about it. And you know what John Clayton said? I had John Clayton on. I asked him that question. He says you wouldn't be able to get Andrew Luck for Joe Flacco. If you're the Ravens, you would have to give up more. Absolutely. I, I think he's a, he's an absolute star. And you know what? He's only going to get better. How many? Right yes. now, if I asked you for over under, how many Super Bowl titles will Andrew Luck win? I'm going to say two. I, I wouldn't doubt it. I think he's got that kind of talent. So we both take the Colts. Moving right along. And we just picked the games. We don't involve the spread at all. Giants at the Bengals. I'll start with this one. I, I just think the Giants are better. I think the Giants are going to bounce back. I think that the Bengals find a way to lose. And more times than not, the Giants find a way to win. Give me the Giants in this one. Yeah, I think Eli finds a way to get it right. He struggled the last couple weeks, like you said. Cincinnati has been ahead the last four games in the fourth quarter, and they find a way to lose. I think the same thing. I think it's close again, but I think since he finds a way to lose it in the fourth quarter. Detroit, uh, sorry, let's go to uh, Tennessee at Miami. Tennessee at Miami. You go ahead. I like Miami in this one. I like their defense, and I, I think Tannehill rebounds. Uh, I just think Tennessee, you know, the owner came out and put everybody on notice from head coach to front office to players that if they don't step it up, they're gone. Uh, I just think that uh, Miami's a better football team. I don't like Jake Locker, and and if he's going to start this week, uh, I think it's to, to Miami's benefit. And I think, you know what's going to happen now? I think people are going to start to go to the Miami games. I think Miami's fun. You know, I said this to Ray Lucas earlier, and he scoffed at me. I actually think Miami's good. And if I had to buy stock in a team, I'd buy it in Miami. I think they're a very good football team. Now, I don't think they're going to win 11 games this year. No, but I think they got a great defense. They have a good defense. I think Reggie Bush is an underrated running back, and I like Ryan Tannehill. I think that Ryan Tannehill was taken five or six spots too late. I think he's a top five pick in a draft right now. I really think that Miami's a very good team, and I'll take the Dolphins to win this game. I don't care if it's Flocker or Hasselbeck. Detroit at Minnesota. Uh, this is a pretty interesting one. I mean, Minnesota won last time, you know, because Harvin had to touch the uh, kickoff returns for touchdowns. I'm going Detroit because they got to have it. I, I think Minnesota is heading south fast. They've got Adrian Peterson. Simpson's not what he was. Harvin's on crutches. All they've got is Adrian Peterson. Ponder's struggling. I'm going Detroit. You know, I think this is a, a, a pick 'em game for me, basically. Minnesota's home. I'll take the Vikings. It does worry me with no Percy Harvin, but Peterson's been running like a beast. I'll take the Vikings. Buffalo at New England. Let's not waste time. We're both taking the Patriots here, right? Yes. All right. Yes. Atlanta at, at New Orleans. I'll tell you what. I'm going to take a flyer. I'm going to take New Orleans at home. I, I think it's about time for Atlanta. The New Orleans defense, I think they got a little confidence. I think they like their blitzing, attacking style. Maybe that gets to Atlanta. And it's it's time for Atlanta to have one of those games where they're not quite on and New Orleans offense is. I think New Orleans is gaining the confidence. I'm going to take a shot. I'm going with New Orleans here. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I, I took no. The, yeah, I took the really? Saints. I took the Saints <laughs> earlier today oh. when Ray Lucas and I did these picks. Listen, the Saints. 
If they have any chance, it has to be this week. They're three and five. This is a must-win game. They're home. They're still a pretty good home team. Atlanta's had a couple of games and a couple of shots where yeah. they've been close to losing. This is not a dominant team, although they are still undefeated. I'll take the Saints in this one as well. San Diego at Tampa. I'll start here. I, you know, I, I am never picking Phillip Rivers and North Turner in a spot where it's close again. I'm taking Tampa just because I can't take the other side. I tell you what, Josh Freeman's been great. Doug Martin's been great. I think I think Shiano's doing a very nice job. I think they're gaining confidence. They're they're very good against the run on defense. Their secondary is not very good as we saw last week against the Raiders. I mean, they start a seventh rounder and an undrafted free agent at corner. I'm still going to go with Tampa because I like them at home. Although nobody will be there, I, I just think that Shiano has got them playing smart football. How about this, Doug Martin, huh? Oh, spectacular. Yeah, he, he's, you know, a, he's I mean, unbelievable I, I don't right know now. that Boise knew what they had. Yeah, he's unbelievable. You know, the Giants apparently loved him, and Tampa moved up to take him right before the Giants had a, a chance to grab him. Denver at Carolina. I like Denver here. I mean, how do you go against Peyton Manning? I think Cam Newton played well last week, but I don't think they have the defense to be able to compete with Denver, and I don't think Cam can outscore Peyton. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Broncos as well, although I think this is going to be a very close and competitive game, but give me the Broncos in a very tight football game. Oakland against your Baltimore Ravens. I, I like Baltimore here. I mean, McFadden's not playing. They have no run game. Carson Palmer's going to have to throw it 60 times. I think they'll be able to get after Carson. I think we'll see 90 to 100 passes in this game. I think we see Baltimore's no huddle come, out, come back out here. They average 32 points at home. I think Baltimore wins this one like 32-17. Yeah, I don't think it's overly competitive. Oakland on the road doesn't excite me. Give me the Ravens as well. Seahawks hosting the J-A-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. I just don't think the Jets can handle the crowd noise, and I don't think the Jets can handle that Seattle defense. Seattle is too tough at home for the Jets. I don't see any weapons. I don't see how they score enough points to be able to beat Seattle. I'm going to take the Seahawks as well. I actually think this game gets ugly, and this is I think the Jets are already done. I think this puts the nail in the coffin for the Jets. Dallas at Philly in a game that both have to win. I'm going to take Dallas. I mean, I picked Philly to hang in there. I'm sick and tired of picking Philly. I'm done with Philly. They make too many mistakes. Their offensive line is the worst I've ever seen. They are awful from right guard to right tackle to left guard. They are terrible in the offensive line. I don't blame Michael Vick. I blame the offensive line. I feel sorry for LaShawn McCoy. I'm taking Dallas. All I can say to that is ditto. I agree with everything yeah. you said. Give me the Cowboys as well. St. Louis at San Francisco. We both going to take the Niners in this one. Yeah, I think with Amendola back, too, I just don't think St. Louis has enough weapons to go to San Fran to win. I agree. Here's a great game on Sunday night. Battle of uh, the best team in the AFC and certainly one of the best in the NFC, Houston at Soldier Field against the Bears. Uh, there's good good chance of rain Sunday night in Chicago. Heavy, heavy, heavy winds. So I, in that case, I like Chicago's defense. Houston wants to throw the ball. Arian Foster, I, I think he'll struggle there. I like Chicago because it's at home and the conditions are not going to be great. I don't know how I'm going to gain any ground on you. I like the Bears as well. I think Houston is a good team, but I worry when they fall behind in games how they'll be able to come from behind. They're on the they're road. They're supposed to have 30-mile-an-hour, 40-mile-an-hour gusts. Yeah, and you know what? The Bears' defense is underrated. It's a very good defense. I'm going to take the Bears, and then we can wrap up without even discussing this one. Kansas City at Pittsburgh. You both uh, take Pittsburgh here, right? We both like the Steelers. No question. Even without Antonio Brown, I'm taking Pittsburgh because of, yeah, whatever running back they put in, they get 100 yards. That's right. Whether it's Dwyer, whether it's Redmond, whether it's Mendenhall, whether it's Serato, it doesn't make a difference. Vinny, we're out of right. time. we got to run. Next week, we'll do this again, my friend. All righty, Dave. Anytime, buddy. Have a great night. That's Vinny Serato. does a great job. We're going to switch from NFL, talk a little wrestling. Mick Foley is in the house. We'll talk to him next. Dave Rothenberg with you on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Looking to rebound after the bye week. The Jets travel west to face the Seattle Seahawks. We've earned that 3-5 and five record. That's clearly not where, where we want to be at. Their season may be at a crossroads. Which way will they go? We have work to do. I'm excited to get the guys back. I look forward to the second half of the season. Jets, Seahawks. Coverage gets underway Sunday at 2 on ESPN New York 98.7 FM.
Get a GE washer and dryer for just $349 each right now at the Home Depot. Not only is that an incredible $350 savings on the pair, it's holiday savings you can enjoy today. So get a jump on holiday shopping and saving with a GE washer and dryer for just $349 each. But only while they last. So hurry. More saving. More doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. While supplies last valid through November 26, U.S. only. See store for details. The college basketball season begins tomorrow night on ESPN with two big-time matchups. First, the Sears Armed Forces Classic celebrates Veterans Day from Ramstein Air Base in Germany as number 14 Michigan State takes on Connecticut in the first regular season game overseas. Then in Brooklyn, in the Barclays Center Classic, Maryland goes up against John Calipari's national champion, Kentucky Wildcats. It all starts tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern with live Sports Center reports from Germany on ESPN. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you can donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-814-2162. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate. Donate your car, and as a special thank you, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now. Call 1-800-814-2162. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher for donating. Call now, 1-800-814-2162. That's 1-800-814-2162. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is going to get worse, much worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. And if you owe the IRS back payroll taxes, chances are you will be visited at your home or business by an IRS agent. Don't become paralyzed by fear. Take action now. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help. Our team of experienced tax attorneys can get you protected. Stop collection and negotiate a permanent settlement with the IRS and state, potentially saving you thousands of dollars. At U.S. Tax Shield, our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. No games and no tricky upsells. That's why we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. Put an end to your torment. Get protected. Get the shield. Call U.S. Tax Shield now at 800-226-8184. That's 800-226-8184. 800-226-8184. Knicks, Mavericks, Friday night at 7, WEPN-FM, WEPN-HD1, New York. I'm Dave Rothenberg with your ESPN New York Sports Center. Jets kick off the second half of the season Sunday, and at 3-5, and five, a playoff berth seems pretty unlikely. But if you ask Antonio Cromartie, he thinks not so much. Jets will make a playoff this year. Uh, I mean, I... We, we, we believe in each other. We believe in what uh, Coach Ryan and his staff is, is, is you know, putting us the schemes and stuff. So I, we're definitely uh, going to make the playoffs this year. That was Cromartie appearing on the NFL Network earlier today. Now, any chance that the playoffs for the Jets means a must win for the team against Seattle on Sunday? Coverage begins right here on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM at 2 o'clock. Elsewhere, Giants wide receiver Akeem Nix returns to practice. He's suffering from a knee injury, but he says he will, in fact, certainly play Sunday against the Bengals. Thursday night football, Colts on the road at Jacksonville. Andrew Luck and his club leading that one 17-3. Indy ahead at the half. NBA tonight, two games, one already underway. End of the third, Chicago 72-66 lead over Oklahoma City. Clippers and Blazers later on. Baseball, Rockies hire former shortstop Walt Weiss as their new manager. The 
Dave Rothenberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. All right, obviously we're going to get back into the Jets a little bit and Mark Sanchez and concerns there, and there should be in this game in Seattle. Giants take the show on the road. Not a lot, not often that the Giants and Jets both on the road same week. We have that this week. Giants in Cincinnati. They look to really put the stranglehold on this division. Get into the Knicks a little bit later. Chris Mullen will join us in the 11 o'clock hour. Now we bring in a man with many names. We can call him Mankind. We can call him Cactus Jack. We can call him Dude Love. Or we can call you Mick Foley. What's up, Mick? Hey, whatever whatever you like. Uh, uh, please feel free to drop my name uh, to Chris Mullen. Uh, I was in the, the Mullen house uh, uh, when I was a college, uh, uh, a sophomore. I knew his, his, his brother. I never actually met Chris, but uh, his brother, I believe it was John, was best friends with my college roommate. So it was kind of a cool thing. We had the power high school uh uh, thing in common because my dad's best friend was actually Lou Alcindor's coach at Power High. Really? Yeah, didn't didn't I, he just pass recently? Uh, coach Donahue? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he did, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I saw uh, Kareem at the uh, rally to restore sanity and or fear in Washington, and uh, I, like, called out. Like, I thought it was kind of a cool thing. Hey, Kareem, you know, my, you know, I was at Jack Donahue's basketball camp when you were a counselor there, and I thought that was, like, a pretty cool shout-out, and he was like, I got nothing. He gave you nothing? Nothing. Really? It made me feel bad just for asking the question. It's those type of experiences that make me, like, try to treat fans pretty good. <laughs> That's true. If you can make it, you know, I, you know, not that there's anything more special about me than anyone else, but I've done a lot of, you know, done a lot of things. If you can reduce me to feeling like a, an idiot who wished he never opened up his mouth, then it's pretty easy to make anybody feel that way. When they go out of their way to, to say something to you, you know, to approach you with something kind of cool. So the least you can do is nod your head and pretend you uh, care. Give them kind of a salute. You know. didn't even give me that much. W- wave yeah. them and, and, and walk on. Let me ask you, obviously wrestling, and I want to get to that in just a minute. Were you a, a, an all-around athlete growing up? Yeah, I was pretty good. I mean, I never had any athletic, uh, you know, actual, you know, physical skills. I was dealt a very poor hand, but I was, yeah, I was a good catcher in baseball. I mean, I was the guy... You know, who said, played the good defense and set picks and rebounded and took the charge in basketball. Uh, I was in, I was a good uh, goalie in lacrosse, believe it or not. That was probably my, my number one sport. Uh, and then, uh, oddly enough, I went out for wrestling as a high school senior where we already had a heavyweight who was Kevin James. Is that really true? <laughs> yeah, that's a true story, yeah. It's a true story. Uh, and uh, and that turned out to be the best thing I could have you done. And you won the spot over him. Well, you know what? He uh, he went out with a back injury a little ways into the season, and then uh, I had started out in the JV. Now, was you that know? because you hit him with a two by four? How did exactly, exactly that yeah, work? Exa- you know, coach turned you know, the coach turned his back, and I carved behind with a back break. <laughs> I, I don't know what it was. He had he had a bad back for a while. You know, I think that's been an ongoing thing for him. But uh, yeah, we had uh, we had a good you know good some good matches, good uh, good rivalry downstairs in the Ward Melville wrestling room. So you could have, in all seriousness, been the king of queens. I believe he took the cuddly <laughs> big guy stuff from me because that was not his persona in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's funny. Guy. You you walked in here tonight, and I, and I don't know if you ever get it. I thought you were gonna be like I thought you were gonna be like Andre the Giant, huge. Like you know, most people go the other way. Like I've literally had people say to me, uh, you know, hey, hey, you know, once in a while you don't want to be that. You know, you go to the store. You're not Mick Foley, are you? And, uh, no, no. And I go, yeah, because he's a, he's a he's a little guy, you know. So yeah, he's a five seven. I don't know what it is. I, a lot of people. That's the biggest. Co- co- the two most common comments are that I'm much better looking in person. Uh, no, you're not getting that. Oh, oh absolutely. <laughs> Listen, you're, you're like a hundred pounds and four <laughs> inches bigger than me. Whatever you say, yes, absolutely. And that I'm taller than they think, but uh, I don't get that very much. Where people expect me to be bigger. All right, so you were a pretty good athlete. Yeah. And you wrestled, and I don't want to. I don't mean to disparage no, you, but like true. the real wrestling. Yeah, right? the, yeah. Matter of fact, I, it's kind of cool. I walked in. I was about you know 45 minutes early. Uh, we had 45 minutes to kill. And we went to a little, uh, the Blarney Stone or one of those various. <laughs> Blarney yeah, it's restaurant. Stone, yes. And as soon as I walked in, I see this guy. I see the, the telltale uh, cauliflower ears, and it turned out he was a. Uh, he took second in the Olympics, and he's here for. Uh, uh, he's here for the. Um, whatever the big freestyle tournament, okay. police, uh, some the, the uh, New York Athletic Club tournament. And it's funny how often these guys who are the real wrestlers turn out to be to like what we do and respect what we do. There it used to be a feeling that oh man, they're making a mockery of it. But I think anyone who's involved in amateur uh, wrestling, which is like the most thankless sport uh, ever, not so much now because you can always now you can parlay that into MMA. But at one point, it was uh, really a thankless effort, unless you lived in Iowa. 
uh, they, they kind of appreciate the hard work uh, that goes into doing what we do as well. All right, so how did you make that transition from the real wrestling and the high school wrestling, and then you said you went away to college, and yeah. at what point did you well, start to huge, dabble? I was a huge fan, and I used to uh, go to the matches at the Garden. Mm -hmm. I think uh, my pivotal moment... So like was, Bruno San Martino, I said that name, you're like, oh, Dave, you're yeah, right on. Yeah, I mean, a little after, it was a little after that I started going to the matches. I wasn't old enough to go by myself to right. take the train and... Uh, for a while, my friends were hanging with me and enjoying the, the trips. And after a while, like, you know, we're not quite as into it as, as you are. And so I started, uh, you know, when I had my license, I would drive, you know, before the days of GPS. And I'd get lost going to the Meadowlands. Uh, or I would take the train to, to the garden by myself. And uh, I ended up hitchhiking from my college uh, in Cortland, New York, about 250 miles to New York City, and I and I caught Jimmy Superfly Snooker coming off the top of the cage of Don Morocco in '83, and I was like, you know, whereas the the athlete, you know, they thrive on competition, I thrived on reactions, and there are some athletes that, that love the reactions too and are natural showmen, but that feeling that man, you could make twenty thousand people feel something based on what you've done, whether it was in the cards or not, that was a you know a pursuit that I that uh, I wanted to be in on. So, so you decided that now. I'm sure you start small, right? Don't you start like in like in front of like 40 people, oh, man, and you go I, through the practice rounds, you travel on like the tour bus, and nobody shows up. I mean, you really have to. You know, it's easy to get up to play in front of 20,000, yeah. or like we're going to talk about WrestleMania at MetLife Stadium. I mean, 60 or 70 or 80,000. But when you're traveling and doing three shows in two days, and you know that kind of grind, it's a little different animal. Maybe a lot of people don't realize oh, yeah. that. Yeah, it's it's real tough uh, those beginning uh, days. I mean, a lot, some people saw the wrestler. And uh, the, where the wrestler was veered from the truth was that the 400 people in the armory is like a good crowd for a small level show. Uh, I, I didn't like the criticism where it was like, wow, well, he's really fallen from grace because he was at the Hammerstein Ballroom. And that happened to have been filmed at one of the biggest independent shows of the year. I mean, a packed crowd of 2,500 is one of the biggest non-WWE crowds of the year. So, uh, yeah, there's WWE, and then, uh, you know, there's everybody essentially trying to get into WWE. Uh, some guys may be able to make, make good living overseas, especially in Japan, but it's it's really tough, and the odds are stacked against guys when they get in, and I was part of that. I remember going to the big yellow storage building, uh, I believe it was in Queens, and I would go up uh, on a freight elevator, have to take down every piece of the ring, put it on an elevator, bring it down, put it on a truck, set up the ring, and then do it all over, you know, and then return it all at the end of the night. And at, at the end of the night, you get $25. Right. If I had the ring set up before the fans got in, uh, an old-timer named Dominic Danucci, who was a tremendous amateur wrestler, he would train me, which consisted for the first several sessions of just trying to see how badly I wanted to do this stuff, you know, to not abusing me, not being abusive. So he, he was like your Miyagi. He was my Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, exactly. Spoke in parables. You know, yeah, he was <laughs> he was great. Yeah, he was great. And he was a guy, if he wanted to, you know, he could have done the old trick where the guys would ask, OK, get down in the referee's position. And then they'd drop a, a knee on the back of the guy's ankle with the idea being the guy would then show up. He'd have to get his, you know, broken ankle fixed. And then uh, people would be wrestling. You think wrestling's fake? Look, you know, that was how you. You kept the business, that you kept the respect in the business, either that or getting in fights in bars. I mean, that was really heavily encouraged before my era. You know, I mean, there were some brutal things that were done in the names of keeping the business, uh, uh, you know, keeping the mystique around the business. I'm glad I didn't have to participate in that stuff. Uh, and I don't agree. I, like, I don't agree with it. The idea of, you know, you know, the story, you know, punching a guy so hard that his eyeball comes out of his socket and then punching the eyeball against the side of the skull seems a little excessive to me. I don't know why that would be the case. Uh, and, and I swear, I, you go and you look at, uh, is it Kill Bill or Kill Bill, Bill Volume 2? Tarantino took that from my book. The idea of somebody ga actually getting their eyeball stepped on, which was an old wrestling story that I put in my book, is uh, something I believe Quentin took from my book. So Quentin stole from you. Now, you're kind of <laughs> doing the, the tour here. Yeah. And you're pubbing WrestleMania, yeah. which is coming locally here. Let me just explain. We don't step on eyeballs in the WWE. It's a PG, it's a PG show now. I've got to tell you some grisly tales, tell you the way it used to be. But, yes, April 7th, we come to, uh, to the uh, MetLife Stadium. Right. Tickets go on sale Saturday at 10 a.m., and it's, a huge, it's our Super Bowl. It's a huge event. And even if someone's not a WWE fan, or I'm guessing there are probably a lot of people listening who were at one time, it's it's a it's a unique event. It's something worth checking out. It's something somebody's got to do. I mean, a lot of people go to the Super Bowl 
and really don't even enjoy themselves. Right. You know, they'd rather be uh, watching it at home. And I think it, with wrestling, it's the the aura of being in this stadium, being a part of a community feeling that uh, is a once-in-a-lifetime uh, memory. All right, so tickets go on sale this Saturday, 10 o'clock in the morning, Ticketmaster.com, WrestleMania 29. 29 Amazingly yeah. enough, is at MetLife Stadium on Sunday, April 7th. I'm going to tell you a quick story now. I, because it never used to be on pay-per-view. There's no such thing as pay-per-view when I was growing up. So I went Close to... Uh, yes, I think I, I'm trying. I think I went to Nassau Coliseum yeah. to watch on the on the big screen. You know, and I wasn't. They didn't have it there. Yeah. It was in Detroit at the Pontiac Silverdome. Yeah, so it would have been close when so when close Hulk circuit, Hogan yeah. fought Andre the Giant. Yeah. And he picked him up and he body slammed him. And that was the changing of the guard. So I do have a little <laughs> backstory as far as the wrestling is concerned. You want to hang, hang out for a few more? Yeah, I would love it. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely. All right, we're going to spend a few more minutes with mankind. Cactus Jack, dude love all wrapped up into one. Mick Foley's here on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Hey everybody, it's Michael Kay. And Don LaGreca. The New York Tri-State continues its battle toward recovery after the effects of Hurricane Sandy and the latest Nor'easter. We really need your help. Please log on to www.redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS or text Red Cross to 90999 to donate $10. We've all been affected by Hurricane Sandy in some form and together we can all do our part to help our friends, neighbors, and communities. Again, for more information on how you can help, log on to redcross.org. Mike Rowe here at a Ford dealer with a little Q&A for Fiona. According to the signs, Ford is having some sort of big tire event. How would you describe the event? It's big. The savings one might enjoy at the event. They're big. What about the selection? Big. Get a $60 mail-in rebate on four select tires. Use the Ford service credit card for an additional 60 bucks. Click on the banner ad. So I think we can agree then that Ford's tire event is good sized. No, Michael. It's big. Subject to credit approval, rebate by check. Offer cannot be combined. See participating Ford dealer for rebate details by 11 30 12. This Veterans Day, ESPN is working with the USO to help lift the spirits of America's troops and their families stationed around the world. Grant a wish for our servicemen and women or donate a special gift to their families to show your support. Give a special gift to our military heroes and their families through USO Wishbook. Visit USO.org forward slash ESPN and give your gift today. Mike and Mike talk about KG's snub of Ray Allen during their first meeting in Miami. Ray Allen now on the heat goes over, sort of shakes hands and, and pats guys on the back on that Celtic bench. And Kevin Garnett notably snubbed him. I loved it loved it and to me that's what sports is supposed to be about as a fan i am emotionally invested in this stuff i've said it before and i'll say it again when a game ends a tough game ends and i see those guys out on the field shaking hands and they're losing guys are laughing i, I understand at one one level shaking hands and offering congratulations sure yes yeah, yeah. but when the guys on the losing team are laughing i guess i understand it but it eats at me a little bit of me dies every time i see that because that's not what this is supposed to be about. Well, uh, just using my team, for example, when the Jets lose, I'm not laughing after that game, no matter what the circumstances are. And I can't stand it when I see the losing players laughing. It's Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Clipping coupons. Standing in line at 4 a.m. Buying five to get one free. Maybe it's me, but I don't think it should be that hard to save money, which is why we made Geico.com so easy. Just a few clicks and you could be saving hundreds of dollars on your car insurance. And when you switch to GEICO, you can do practically everything online. Report a claim, update your policy, even pay your bill. Click Bam Boom. Visit GEICO.com today. Click Bam Boom. I'm rather fond of that one. Get a GE washer and dryer for just $349 each right now at the Home Depot. Not only is that an incredible $350 savings on the pair, it's holiday savings you can enjoy today. So get a jump on holiday shopping and saving with the GE washer and dryer for just $349 each. But only while they last. So hurry. More saving. More doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. While supplies last valid through November 26, U.S. only. See store for details. ESPNRadio.com. Right now. 
Hi, I'm Bob Picozzi. Mike Greenberg and Mike Golick spend Thursday's edition of Mike and Mike at the U.S. Coast Guard Academy in New London, Connecticut. And Greeny and Golick discuss Green Bay's 6-3 and three start, the difficult decision that Charles Tillman of the Bears could have to face on Sunday, the Armed Forces Classic, and much more. They visited with Packers coach Mike McCarthy, Michigan State basketball coach Tom Izzo, Chris Mortensen, and Brian Billick. It's all yours on the Mike and Mike page at ESPNRadio.com. Meanwhile, over at the Pod Center page... Hey, it's Matthew Berry from the Fantasy Focus Football Podcast. Today on the show, Nate Ravitz and I talk about the injuries to Hakeem Nix, the Raiders running back situation, the Week 10 ranks. Ivan Mazel here on the ESPNU College Football Podcast. Dave Nubbin of the Big 12, Mitch Sherman of the Recruiting Nation, and Paul Houlihan of the Sugar Bowl are all here. You can hear this and more on the Pod Center page at ESPNRadio.com. Log on to the ESPNRadio.com stream, the most listened to stream in the world. The obstacles military families face aren't limited to the battlefield. When it comes to financial challenges, USAA can help. Whether it's managing debt, saving for a child's education, or investing for the future. For free advice, call a USAA investment advisor at 800-235-1898. Financial planning services and financial advice provided by USAA Financial Planning Services Insurance Agency, Inc., a registered investment advisor and insurance agency and its wholly owned subsidiary, USAA Financial Advisors, Inc., a registered broker-dealer. The Dave Rothenberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Mick Foley's with us in studio and WrestleMania tickets on sale this Saturday, 10 o'clock in the morning. Ticketmaster.com. WrestleMania 29. I can't believe we're 29. Is at MetLife Stadium on Sunday, April 7th. So you were telling me we were talking off the air. You met and had a little challenge from George Steinbrenner. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I like this story. Yeah, I did. Uh, I was at Old Timers Day. I can't remember the year. I'm just going back several years, you know, eight or nine years. A buddy of mine uh, has the biggest sports memorabilia uh, store in New England, yet he refuses to take off his Yankee hat. And I'm like, Phil, do you know how much money this has cost you? Like, you have a family. Take off the hat. You don't mind to ask you to put a Sox hat on, but take off the hat. And he's like, I can't do it. He's got the real New England accent. I can't do it. You can't do it. Like, I get, you know, yeah, but you know, I think you have to respect a guy like that. Yeah, yeah. And he's I true think, to himself. And I think people do, but I think uh, for the his regulars, yeah, that's great and that's Phil. But uh, you know, for the regular guy off the street who walks in, and he's like, you know, I'm going to give my money to a right a Yankees fan. But uh, the Phil would take regular road trips uh, to the game, and I'm um, so we're at the uh, the, the stadium. And uh, it's hot out, and we're watching. We get there early to, to watch the BP and everything. And a security guard taps me on the shoulder, and he says, uh, uh, "Mr. Steinbrenner would like would like to see you." Now, well, so what, when you hear Mr. Steinbrenner would like to see you, what are you thinking? Like he's going to yell at me? Uh, uh, you know, I no, I, I I I knew he was a wrestling fan, okay. and I had written some kind of note just saying that I, at one time that I could. Uh, I knew a, a a good friend of his, and we used to sit. We'd sat a couple times in the. Uh, in the boss's box up there, and uh, I'd left a note saying I could name all the uh, the starting the starting nine of the seventy two Yankees, even though it was technically the year before he took over. Right. And uh, so uh, he calls us up into the the office, and the first thing is, all right, let me hear the, these players. And I'm like, uh, Munson at first, and I can't. I, John Ellis, I think, had been replaced at uh, Munson at catcher. Right. First, and it was, uh, geez, now I'm drawing blanks. Gene Michael at uh, short, uh, Greg Nettles at third. He may have come over in in, uh, 73. Uh, Bobby Mercer in uh, center field, Roy White in left, and it was like Swoboda or somebody else in right. Like, good enough that I. Right, right. So he was impressed with you. Yeah, he was pretty impressed. We had a nice talk about uh, his, uh, you know, his role (laughs) on, uh, on Seinfeld. And the that's that what I, by the way, that's what I exactly what I envisioned, like him sitting behind a desk and <laughs> grilling you as you bring him like calzones. Am I remotely <laughs> no, correct? With he that? was great with us. I mean, he even had uh, you know, Joe Torrey came in and said, hey, watch it, Joe. I'll get uh, to make after you. And the, the funniest thing was he gets a phone call from his assistant. He goes, what? Oh, God, tell him I'm in a meeting. And he hung up the phone. He goes, Jay Johnstone. <laughs> 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 so so uh, a year later, the same guy, Phil, has tickets for opening day. This is when. Um, uh, uh, Matsui, Matsui hit that grand slam, his first uh, game as a Yankee, and it was snow on the ground. You know, they'd had to work for days just to get the field playable. And the worst place to meet somebody, if you're kind of recognizable, is at the bat. Meet me at the bat. Right, because uh, you can meet anybody in the universe uh, at the bat. Yeah, and he's calling about oh, an hour. It's the bad drive will be there an hour. And I'm standing there with my son at the bat. You know, it's just it's great to be recognized, but not for an hour. 
And so I call Phil. I said, man, Phil, this is ridiculous. He goes, go into the, you know, the, the, the Yankees uh, entrance. They remember you're there. Tell me your friend is Stanley Kay's. And I go in there, and it's like, and I'm looking because it's old timers. It's not old timers day; it's the first day of the season. But it's like the, the Maris family, and, and and one of Mickey Mantle's son is there, and I see uh, uh, the former <laughs> Kissinger's name is on the list. It's, it's like ridiculous looking at the list. And now then you don't you don't just immediately try to body slam any of these. No, people. no, I don't okay, do good. it. I, I'm I'm completely tame there, and I'm just there letting me wait in the office. And then my son goes, Dad, it's George Steinbrenner. I see him at the the elevator, and I go. Uh, Mr. Steinbrenner and nothing. And I can I know he hears me, but he's, he's not Mr. Steinbrenner because he's sure he's getting that all the time. Right. I go, George, it's me, Mick Foley. And he this is like it made my, all of a sudden I was a big star in my son's eyes. He wheeled around, Mick, how you doing? And I said, my son doing. He gave him the tussle of the hair, and he he signed a ball for us. And then uh, uh, about a year later, I, I'm I'm looking around the woods in the days when you know, we were growing up. You're a few years younger than me, right. but uh, before balls were like a dollar a piece. You may have had two or three baseballs, and if you lost one in the woods, you went, you, you found it. You know, it didn't matter what kind of case of poison ivy you'd come out with, you found that ball. And I'm looking at one, it's just like on the edge of the grass. And I'm my first initial reaction is, God, they, they can't even look for the ball on the edge of the grass. And I pick it up, and there in a f- faded ink is to Dewey, all the best, George That's Steinbrenner. That's great. Like, he's playing with the Steinbrenner ball. He lost the Steinbrenner ball, so we still have it's like it. The, what was that movie? Do you ever see that movie with the little kids when they, they play the, the, sand, the yeah, sandlot? Sand they lose yeah, the Babe yeah, Ruth. The Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth, Ruth. Ruth. Yeah, it right? was, Yeah, it was kind of like that. The Steinbrenner ball is all faded, but I still have it. But, uh, yeah, growing up as a Yankee fan, it was such a big part of my uh uh, you know, childhood. I just, uh, I just loved it, and you know, hated to see the Yanks fall in four. But they, they provided some real drama along the way. Yeah, they, they certainly did. And listen, the, the future is always bright for the Yankees. How about the NFL? I mean, you're going to, to have this WrestleMania 29, home of the Jets and the Giants. You into the NFL at all? Yeah, I grew up. I was a huge Bears fan uh, back in the days when they were, you know, two and twelve and four and ten. I had a the dic- Walter Payton era. Yeah, no, no, before the Payton before era. Before Payton. Uh, Payton came around in like '76 right. or '75, I think. So this was uh, Butkus Gale Sayers, uh, but they the had Brian some, Piccolo era. Brian Piccolo, yeah. that's right. Yeah, um, and I actually I had a chance to meet Gale Sayers and uh, had a chance to meet Dick Butkus, and I had handed off my uh, my. This is a weird story. I know I'm dropping names left and right here. But my sister-in-law said that her brother coached Dick Butkus's grandchild, and they knew I'd had this poster hanging over my bed since I was four. I roll up the poster, I you know send it out to them. I don't hear anything for two years, and I finally get a chance to meet Dick Butkus at the opening of a wing of a hospital. I said, Mister Butkus, I know this sounds strange, but uh, my sister-in-law goes, "Are you the guy with the poster?" I said, "Yeah." He goes, "I've got that. I've had that in my car for two, for two <laughs> years." He sends his brother out. His brother goes back, and, and I, that's like a, one of the only things I have framed, like sports memorabilia pieces. And he put it in big bold writing, you know, Dick Butkus, 51 Hall of Fame. So uh, even though I don't, I don't keep up on a regular basis with what's going on, and I'm basically a fair weather fan who roots for the Jets and the Giants because they're nice to me. You know, right. different players have gone out of their way, you know, to be really cool to my kids. Uh, I, I still, you know, I, I love it. I love having the games on in the background. I pay attention when it gets uh, serious. But it was a, 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 you know, huge part of growing up for me. Like WrestleMania, MetLife Stadium, Sunday, April seventh, next February, right? It, Ten months after that, Super Bowl at MetLife Stadium. Is so, it? Is yeah. It? No, Someone calls you and like Mick, come on, let's go I to the Super do Bowl. It. I've, ne- do that. I've never been to a Super Bowl. I would love to experience it. You know, I've got to do it at least once. I'll probably bring my son, since he's the the big fan. I would love to do that. All right, listen, man, I know you got to run. you got more stuff to do. Really appreciate it. Let me give you one more pub. WrestleMania tickets on sale Saturday, this Saturday, 10 o'clock in the morning, Ticketmaster.com, WrestleMania 29, MetLife Stadium, Sunday, April the 7th. Listen, this has that half hour has gone as quickly as possible. Come back, and we'll do this again. You're an author. We didn't get into that. Other stuff, lots to do. All right, we'll do this again. Sounds good. Thanks for the time. Absolutely, my friend. We'll get into the Jets and Mark Sanchez. It's always a debate worth having. Dave Rothenberg with you on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Hey everyone, it's Mike Lupica. The New York Tri-State continues its battle towards recovery after the effects of Hurricane Sandy and the latest nor'easter. We need your help. Please log on to www.redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS or text Red Cross to 90999 to donate $10. We've all been affected by Hurricane Sandy in some form, and together we can all do our part to help our friends, our neighbors, and our communities. Again, for more information on how you can help, log on to to redcross.org. 
Hi, it's Colin Thursday. Bill Romanowski on pot smoking in the NFL. Greg Cosell thinks Eli Manning's arm? Well, you have to listen to find out. Download the Thursday Thundering Herd podcast. Check it out, ESPNRadio.com. An ESPN Radio Mike and Mike Extra Point. The reality is if Notre Dame played Oregon in football next Saturday on a neutral site, I don't know who would win and neither do you. It's as simple as that. Now, I got inundated with people yesterday, oh, Greeny, Oregon would beat him by 20 points. Oh, would they? Are you the same people who told me that Notre Dame was going to get smoked when they went to Oklahoma? Yeah. Here's the thing. In sports, we look, we, we tell you what we expect to happen, and then guess what happens? They play a we game. We don't know. They right. play a game. If we knew what was going to happen ahead of time, we would all be living in castles in Las Vegas. I get it, but what we do is we make our picks. So we, here's we, what we drives me know. nuts. Okay. So Notre Dame, right. your Notre Dame, right. which always gets the benefit of everything. They've gotten into BCS bowl games in the years we've been together when they had no business being there. Hear more from Mike and Mike tomorrow morning on ESPN Radio. This is The Herd with Colin Cowherd. I think Cam Newton, Sham Newton, boss. boss. It's happening. Not there yet. I'm calling it. Not going to work. I'm not buying it, man, and I don't know what it is. If you're a quarterback, you are the eyes and the voice and the head, the CEO of your football team. The only thing I control, sweetheart, is myself. Superman poses down by 28. Just how bad is your judgment? Colin Cowherd. Weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio. Steve Spurrier suggested Alabama could beat an NFL team. Think Golick agrees? You play in the college level, you play in the NFL level. You watch the college game closely, you watch the pro level closely. Is Steve Spurrier on base? When Nuts. He said, Crazy. Out of his mind. To say that a college team, I don't care how great you are, could compete with an NFL team is a joke, is laughable, is an insult to even the worst NFL team out there. Mike and Mike in the morning. ESPN Radio. Every Saturday, ESPNU College Game Day hits the road. College Game Day rolls on to East Alabama. Boise is berserk. Chris, Lee, Kirk, Desmond, and Sam Steele are live at the best matchups in the land. This offense continues to develop. How can you pick against LSU? Not so fast, my friend. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Saturdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPNU and 10 a.m. on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. Into your city. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series is at full throttle. And when drivers will do anything to take the checkered flag, cages get rattled. Engines roar louder. Tempers run hotter. And victory donuts taste even sweet. Some people say there's more to life than winning. Those people are losers. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series on ESPN. Nothing beats first place. Good news, everyone. Lumber Liquidators wants to send you a free catalog of hardwood flooring options. Call 800-620-4480. See how you can buy the highest quality flooring for the lowest possible prices. Here's what some of our customers have to say. I've installed a lot of hardwood floors, but this is the best bang for the buck. Call in the next 10 minutes to get your free catalog. I love Lumber Liquidators. I got quality products for less, and the online ordering was easy. At Lumber Liquidators, we buy direct from the mills, and we pay Pass the savings on to you. Call right now and get the floor guide and catalog absolutely free. It has hundreds of top quality flooring such as solid hardwoods, laminates, bamboos, and even Bellawood pre-finished flooring with a transferable 100-year warranty. Our catalog is full of tips, ideas, and our flooring project list to help you find the right floor for you. Call 800-620-4480 and get your free catalog. 800-620-4480. That's 800-620-4480. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you can donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-814-2162. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate. 
donate your car. And as a special thank you, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now. Call 1-800-814-2162. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher for donating. Call now, 1-800-814-2162. That's 1-800-814-2162. Broadway Joe Namath, weekly on The Michael K Show. What do you think Eli ran into? Is he slumping, or was that just a good Pittsburgh defensive scheme? Well, I certainly don't think he's slumping. What they went through during the week with uh, the hurricane, I know Coach Coughlin doesn't want to use that as an excuse, nor will the players. Uh, I, I just think that the whole week caught up with the Giants. The Joe Namath Hour, every Monday at 6 p.m. on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Dave Rothenberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. All right, Mick Foley has left the building, and we get back to the more traditional sports that we kind of deal with here. And week 10 of the NFL season already underway is the Colts. And, you know, Andrew Luck is just getting better and better and better. And the Colts, if they win tonight, it looks like they will as they're up 24-3. to three. We'll go to 6-3. and three. See, already, you look at this right now. And if you're a Jets fan, I know Jets fans have this thing of we're gonna we're gonna find a way to get back into this, right? You're you're not done until you're done. If the Colts win this game tonight, they go to six and three. The Steelers are five and three. All right. If the Ravens win the division and the Patriots win the division and the Broncos win the division and the Texans win the division, I, how are the Jets gonna get there? You know, that's the thing. How are the Jets gonna possibly get there? You know what they're gonna have to do in the final eight games? The Jets are gonna have to go seven and one. In the final eight games. Because you go seven, it gives you ten. Then you have a chance. But you're not going to win that tiebreaker against the Steelers. And again, I'm way ahead of myself. You know, this is a game that the Jets desperately need to win to go four and five. And then it's at St. Louis. And then it's the Patriots at home. So if you're the Jets right now, let's look at this as one game at a time. And I know I've been very hard on this club. Very hard on this club. And I've said about the Jets that, uh, that they bother me. I don't think they're very good. I think they kind of stink. I don't like this this whole mantra around them and the talking and Cromartie saying we're going to make the postseason. But you know, let's look at what they are right now. You know, we've discussed it in the off season. We've discussed it during the early portion of the season where we thought maybe things were going to change a little bit, and now this is where we are. We're halfway through the season with the Jets. And. Am I missing something, or are they just a below-average football team? I mean, like we talk about, you can put lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig. You look at the Jets. What what are they? I mean, let's go over this team, and let's look at what they truly are, right? They're an average offensive line, which I think is disappointing because of what they have talent-wise, but they're a very average offensive line. Their running game is very average and vanilla. Their wide receivers, at best, are average. Their quarterback is average. And their tight end is pretty good. And they have no idea how to use Tim Tebow. That's the Jets offensively. Now, the Jets defensively can put no pressure on the quarterback, can't stop the run. Safeties are pretty good. Corners are pretty good and would have been great, but Revis is obviously out. And their linebackers are eh. So the special teams, you look at that, and it's been below average this year from what you've come to expect from a Mike Westhoff-led special teams. What are the Jets? Why why is it so surprising to anybody that the Jets stand here at 3-5? and I mean, isn't that what they should be? When you looked at the schedule up and down over the first eight games and you looked at the Bills – at the Steelers, and at the Dolphins. What would you have said that should be probably for the Jets? 2-1? and one? You got 2-1. and one. All right. The Niners, the Texans, and the Colts. What would you say that should have been? 1-2? and two? You got 1-2. and two. At New England and home to the Dolphins. What should that have been? Probably 1-1, one and one, you'd say. You got 0-2. Oh so now we sit here. If you're the Jets, and they're 3-5. and five, And now you are back to the wall. And there's no more excuses, because I swear, and we heard the sound bites earlier, we'll listen in a little bit as well. If we finish this game, and the Jets, I don't care if they lead 23 nothing, lose 24-23 on the luckiest, most fortunate play in the history of the NFL. Go 
and win this football game. Find a way, if you're the Jets, to win this football game, and then let's talk. Because if the Jets go to 3-6, and six, and I have to hear on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week, well, you know, the offense was a little more aggressive, and the line played well, and the receivers did a nice job, and the running game was pretty good. Enough! And you know what? All you hear is Jets' positive energy and positive feeling instead of, let's cut to the chase here, guys. Win the game and move on. Go to four and five. Go to five and five. Go to five and six and then go on a roll. But I ask you when you look at the Jets right now, realistically, realistically, would you prefer to go seven and nine and get pick 14 or hit the bottom right now? Go four and 12, have the third pick in the draft and have a chance to quickly reestablish things under Rex Ryan. Now, I know it's hard to think of your team losing games. And the last thing that you want to think about is your team having struggles. But sometimes, and I talked about this with Ray Lucas earlier, sometimes you almost have to be like a parent and let your child fail so that it can get changed. Well, I think that's where we are here with the Jets because this is a bad football team. And in some way, I think it would be beneficial long-term, not short-term because it would stink short-term, but I think it would be beneficial long-term. For the Jets to go three and thirteen or four and twelve, have a third pick in the draft, and improve this club quickly rather than continue to be very average like last year's eight and eight and taking Quinton Copels and this year's maybe seven and nine or eight and eight and picking another fourteen or fifteen and not making the postseason. My question to you is this if you're the Jets and you are a Jets fan, which you probably are right now, would you rather go eight and eight? And miss the postseason or be four and twelve and have a chance to rebuild this thing quickly. One eight hundred nine one nine three seven seven six. Really bad to rebuild quickly or mediocre, which could take longer. Which where direction do you go in? One eight hundred nine one nine three seven seven six. Dave Rothenberg with you on ESPN New York ninety eight point seven FM. He's the Mike Lupica Show. Charles Barkley. The Jets are going to make the playoffs? No, I didn't say that. We Come on, he said it. Come on. I'm the biggest Rex Ryan fan in the world. They're not going to make the playoffs. And Charles, do you know that Mark Sanchez is currently ranked 30th in quarterback ratings? I blame some of that on him. He has not played well, but I blame some of that on the Jets. They should have never bought in Tim Tebow. The Mike Lupica Show. Weekdays at noon. ESPN New York. 98.7 FM. Get a GE washer and dryer for just $349 each right now at the Home Depot. Not only is that an incredible $350 savings on the pair, it's holiday savings you can enjoy today. So get a jump on holiday shopping and saving with the GE washer and dryer for just $349 each. But only while they last. So hurry. More saving. More doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. While supplies last valid through November 26, U.S. only. See store for details. I want to tell you about the game of football. It has its ups and downs and highs and lows. And you know what I'm talking about. Wins and losses, injuries, and great performances. Teams have no guarantees on whether or not they will make it to the playoffs. So that big bonus at the end of the season, (laughs) it may not come. Now, I've got a little tip for all my professional player friends who may not end up with that big payday. You might want to think about switching to GEICO. GEICO has been saving millions of other people money or like me money, on their car insurance for the last 75 years. I've been with GEICO 33 years since I got my license. In fact, GEICO is the number one car insurer in the tri-state area for the last two years running. The truth is GEICO finds every way possible to save drivers money from low rates to good driver and multi-driver discounts. In fact, you can save hundreds on your car insurance just by switching to GEICO. I know I did. So give GEICO a call. And I never switched. I started with GEICO. So give GEICO a call or go to GEICO.com. It only takes 15 minutes, and you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Just something to think about, my friends. you got to wake them up every weekday morning. Me up. Wake up to Mike and Mike in the morning. On ESPN Radio. The reality is, if Notre Dame played Oregon in football next Saturday on a neutral site, I don't know who would win, and neither do you. It's as simple as that. Now, I got inundated with people yesterday, oh, Greeny, Oregon would beat them by 20 points. Oh, would they? 
Are you the same people who told me that Notre Dame was going to get smoked when they went to Oklahoma? Yeah. Here's the thing. In sports, we look, we, we tell you what we expect to happen, and then guess what happens? They play a we game. We don't know. They right. play a game. If we knew what was going to happen ahead of time, we would all be living in castles in Las Vegas. I get it, but what we do is we make our picks. So we, here's we, what we drives me nuts. Okay. So Notre Dame, right. you're Notre Dame, right. which always gets the benefit of everything. They've gotten into BCS bowl games in the years we've been together when they had no business being there solely because they are Notre Dame is now getting left out solely because they're Notre Dame. People are just using their anti-Notre Dame feelings to say, well, they clearly don't belong with the other guys. I'm going to give credit where it's due. CBSSports.com. Tom Fornelli is their college football blogger. He put the blind resumes of five unbeaten teams, Alabama, Oregon, Notre Dame, Louisville, and Kansas State. Right. Put them up there, teams A, B, C, D, and E. Showed you just what they've done. Right. And then you get a chance, you go on, you pick of those four, of those five, which two should play each other in the national championship. Go ahead and do it. Go do it. I'm not going to do it. This wasn't my idea. I'm going to give credit where it's due. Go do it, and then you tell me who you came back and voted for. Which two teams you said deserve to play for the national championship right now? Go ahead and do it, and let me know what happens. And I'll tell you right now, it's going to surprise a lot of people. And all of you people who are emailing me, Notre Dame has no business on the field with these other teams. Your point is completely irrelevant. What you think, I think, or anyone else thinks would happen in a game has no bearing on who should play for the title. You should reward the teams who have had the best seasons, who have accomplished the most. And right now, I'll give away part of it, Notre Dame is one of those two teams. End of discussion. Oh, yeah. I mean, they were going to be. They have the most, you know, the wins as far as ranked teams, and the, and the schedule has been the toughest. So by a computer, which a couple of the computers are number one on, I, I get what you're saying. I, but you, you keep want it, wanting to make irrelevant the eye test, and as much as you think it should be irrelevant, it's not. And I mean, I know you want to pound your fist on the table and yell and scream and say that shouldn't be part of it. It should be just how they play this year. I get it. I get what you're saying, but that's not reality. Reality is how, how people look at it, especially people with a vote. You really disappoint me. It's Mike and Mike in the Morning, weekdays on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Four. Uh-huh. Yeah. The Dave Rothenberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. If it's football, it's Namath. Joe Namath with Kay and LaGreca. Mondays at 6, brought to you by Benzel Bush Motor Car Corp in Englewood, New Jersey, exclusively on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. And I know people are going to hear what I just said and think that I'm out of my mind. And, you know, they may be correct. But I, I honestly look at it, and, you know, part of the reason that the Giants are where they are now is because they had that awful 2003 season. And the Giants in 2003... Right, you remember this. And the Giants in 2003, under Jim Fassel, went four and twelve, lost their final game at home to the Carolina Panthers, where they were embarrassed. Turn around with the fourth pick, and 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 from there it's history, right? I mean, from there it's just it's the Giants go from the laughing stock of the NFL to moving up from four to one, grabbing Eli Manning, and away we go. Now. The only problem with this little philosophy here is that I don't think there's a Eli Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, even Philip Rivers kind of quarterback in this draft. But that being said, you get better quickly when you draft top five. And you look at the Jets, they need help all over the place. And, and part of the detriment to the Jets over the last five, six, seven years is they've, in many instances, traded up, but traded a lot of draft picks to move up, so they haven't had as many picks as other teams around the NFL, and I think that's really impacted this club very negatively, because you move up to get Mark Sanchez, who hasn't proven to be that great quarterback, and you lose that on other picks. They did the same thing with Darrell Rivas. Now, in the Darrell Rivas situation, it worked very well, but I think it's a combination of you've, you've lost picks late in the draft by moving up. So you're losing second and third and fourth round picks. And a lot of those picks that you've made haven't panned out. That's why the Jets are where they are. Because they've had bad drafts over the last five, six, seven years. I mean, you know what? David Harris was good. 
and obviously Darrell Rivas was good. So it's not like it's a complete failure. Dipper Gashel Ferguson's been good, and Nick Mangold's been good. So it's, I mean, listen, if you don't draft any serviceable guys over a five or six or seven year span, you're just the worst team in the NFL. But you have to be consistently good at the draft to get better. And, you know, this is why, you know, I hate to kind of go from sport to sport, but this is why the Rangers in hockey were so mediocre for so long, because they would get 87 points and either miss the postseason in the last week or sneak in and get the eight seed and get bounced in the first round year after year after year. People said, say there stinks. He doesn't know what he's doing. But the, the reasoning behind it is because they were just so average. And if you're going to be at that level of average, it's going to hurt you in the way that you can't rebuild in a big way because you can't have that third pick and draft a stud and go from there and be a really, really good team by rebounding quickly. It's a very slow process the way the Jets are trying to do it. And if you draft the Quinton Copels and it doesn't pan out and you do it again and again and again, your team goes on a decline for me. And I know you may hear this and you may think I'm out of my mind. When I look at the best thing for the Jets, and I'm not a Jets fan, but when I look at what's the best thing for the Jets, the best thing for the Jets this year is to lose out and get the first, second, or third pick in the draft. That will be, in the long term, the best thing for the Jets. Chris in New Jersey, when you hear that philosophy, you think I'm crazy, Chris? No, actually, believe it or not, I agree. As a fan, you know, it kind of hurts. You know, you don't want to see your team go 4-12. and You don't want to you know, go a whole season of losing. But if you think about it, you know, losing out and getting a high pick actually does make sense. If we can reshape the defense, because you're right, there is no quarterback that's going to change the franchise. We need to work our way up, and if we need to do this to work our way up, might as well start now. Well, and I think there's something to be said, because if you're you're average every year, I mean, if you're average, it's hard to get away from average. You know, you'd almost prefer to be just be so bad. Now, I don't know that there's that guy this year in the draft. So maybe this entire reasoning won't work this year. But I really believe in this philosophy because if your team's not going to be pretty good and make the playoffs or have a chance last week of the season, look, if the Jets rattle off wins and they're 9-6 and six and week 17 when they played the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo, that's a win and get in and the Jets lose that game. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about if you're on the precipice and you have a really good chance of making it, and it doesn't work out. But I'm talking about if the Jets are, you know, 6-8. and eight, And if they win their final two, they go to 8-8, eight and eight, and it just makes the record look a little bit prettier. I don't want that. I'm a Jets fan. You know what? Just lose the whole way. Because I don't think this team has anything right now. And I think it needs everything all over the place. So one of two things you do. You wind up with a third or fourth pick in the draft, and you, you try your best there. Or you wind up with a third or fourth pick in the draft, and you trade down and acquire picks later. Because I don't see this working right now for the Jets. They need so much help. Tristan in the car. Jets lose out. Makes sense to you, Tristan? Um, but yeah, I agree with you 100%, man. Believe me, uh, you actually brought up another great point. I'm a huge Rangers fan as long as a Jets fan. And the Rangers did things so wrong when they got all these aging veterans trying to win this a cup. It didn't work. The Jets are bringing in all these veterans, all these you know defensive backs and this and that. And they're not helping. Personally, I think they should just – you never want to see your team blow it up and just lose lose all out. But at this point, it's just better to, you know, try to get a low pick in the draft and get one of those young guys that's going to be a playmaker and it's going to make things happen, and, you know, because nothing's happening right now with this team. Yeah, I, I think so. And, look, you, you look at this club, and I don't know if you – you know, you're the Jets. And, look, I don't know if you have confidence in the Jets' personnel decisions, but – you want to have the highest pick that you can. I mean, that's obvious. So if the Jets look at it and they see Matt Barkley to be that guy, then try and get him. I don't lose on purpose, but if you're in the situation where you can grab him, or if you love Geno Smith out of West Virginia or Landry Jones out of Oklahoma or, or any of these kids, you know what? It's a much easier way to get good quickly than to just be mediocre year after year after year. AP in Long Island, you disagree with this philosophy, right, AP? Well, it's sort of like 50-50 because I do agree with you, but I disagree because this year the draft isn't isn't that strong. Like Manti Tay, what is he really going to do in his restaurant defense? 
Well, the there's this kid, and I forget his name right now, out of Georgia, this defensive end who's like 6'3", 250, and they're projecting oh, him so to be... Another defensive end. All right, so take another defensive end for the third straight year. No, but, the, you know, the first, uh, first of all, first of all, all right, I, I'm not saying you go in that direction, but there's a difference between drafting guys like Quentin Copels, who are uh, average, or Muhammad Wilkerson, who is average, and drafting guys that are going to be immediate impact players. I agree because they just look good. They could have got um, um Chandler Jones. They could have got one of those good players. Yeah, they they could have like, any of those. Or you know what like they could have done? Ball. Here. I'm going to tell you, AP, uh, the thing that frustrated me the most about the Jets draft this past year, all right, it's uh, not that they took Quinton Copels. It's that they took Quinton Copels at 14. If they yes, were in love yes. with Quinton Copels and thought he was the way that they should go, then you know what? You could have moved down to 18 or 20 and let somebody else have some picks and then still drafted Quinton Copels at 20 and had picks in the second, third, or fourth round from that deal. That's what frustrates me. Exactly, and that's my whole thing. It's like... To me personally, and I've been waiting to get on because I've been agreeing with a lot of stuff you say, but the person who can't evaluate talent is Tannenbaum. Well, you know, here's the thing, AP. I think you bring up a lot of good points. If we get to that point where we believe that Mike Tannenbaum cannot evaluate talent and cannot decide that this guy's good and this guy's not and who to bring into this organization, it doesn't really matter. You know, it doesn't matter if you have the eighth pick or the 20th pick, or the 40th pick. Because if you have a guy that can't evaluate talent and doesn't know the appropriate players to bring into this team, you're in big trouble. Not this year, not next year, forever. Until you eliminate a guy from your organization from making the personnel decisions like Mike Tenenbaum. Jeff in Rockland County, you're on ESPN New York. What's up, Jeff? Hey, brother, how are you? Good. I just want to say one thing. I truly, I'm, first of all, I'm, my name is Jeffrey Martinez. I'm a huge Miami Dolphin fan, but I live in New York, and I respect your team because I just love Rex Ryan's philosophy of, of positive mental attitude and making these guys better. But let me tell you something. Well, uh, Jeff, Jeff, I'm going to give you a say, but what, what, what has it done so far this year? Rex has this brilliant positive mental that's attitude. It's done nothing this year. And that's my point. My point is that he lost it because I love Tebow because he's an amazing athlete, but you brought him to New York. You just took Mark Sanchez's brain mentality, his philosophy of, of trying to make things better, and, and he's an accurate. He's not, he's not the greatest quarterback in the world, but let me tell you something. The guy wants to make a play every time he gets out there. You just took him and said, you know what? It's over. And the first time, the first time that the New York media makes Tim Tebow come out there and talk everybody else into starting, you're turning the page. You're saying, you know what? The minute we bring Tebow out, the Mark Sanchez era is officially over. And it's so close to that happening. And unfortunately, Mark Sanchez is a 10 times better quarterback than Tim, Tim Tebow ever will be. And what that, what that means to you guys is, on paper, you guys are so good. But your team... Who, 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 is, so, who, is, who is us guys? Who, who are you talking about, Jeff? The Jets. Well, why are they my guys? Oh, I'm, I'm assuming you know, you're, you're a Jets fan. No, you're, I'm not a Jets fan. Okay, but... Bottom line is, this is a New York radio station. I'm a, I'm a Dolphin fan. So as far as a, a Dolphin fan looking and on the outside looking in, that's my point, okay? Outside looking in, I appreciate and respect you guys. There's nothing better than the Dolphin Jets rivalry. But if you guys didn't, uh, if you guys just keep Tim Tebow out of this entire loop, it would have been better. Mark Sanchez is never going to make it in this league. Jeff, Jeff because, you're preaching to the choir, my friend. I think Tim Tebow stinks. I don't think he's deserving of the starting quarterback role in this league. I don't think he's deserving of a backup quarterback role in this league. I don't think he's good. And I know that there's this belief that bring in Tebow to save the Jets season. Jets season is lost. All right, if you don't believe it now, Sunday at 7.30, you'll believe it. If you don't believe it Sunday at 7.30, Thanksgiving night, you'll believe it. The Jets are done. All right, I hate to be the one that breaks the news to you. The Jets are not a good football team. They have nothing offensively. Their defense is completely overrated. Their special teams is a disaster right now. Their best player on defense is out, and their best player on offense is out. The Jets are going nowhere in a hurry. All right, team that's going somewhere in a huge hurry is the Knicks. They're 3-0, and the only undefeated team in the NBA. Chris Mullen joins us next to break down the New York Knicks. Dave Rothenberg with you on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. 
everybody, it's Michael Kay. And Don LaGreca. The New York Tri-State continues its battle toward recovery after the effects of Hurricane Sandy and the latest nor'easter. We really need your help. Please log on to www.redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS or text Red Cross to 90999 to donate $10. We've all been affected by Hurricane Sandy in some form, and together we can all do our part to help our friends, neighbors, and communities. Again, for more information on how you can help, log on to Red Cross. Colin Cowherd and the Herd. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sports. New York. Rex Ryan voted the most overrated head coach. Our friend Rich Semini, ESPNNewYork.com. The bigger story, off a of bye week, Jets go to Seattle. Is it, Rich, a winnable game when you look at their personnel? It's a winnable game, Colin, uh, because Seattle is struggling just as much on offense as the Jets are. You're talking about two of the lower-ranked teams, so I think you're going to see a low-scoring, ugly-type game. But Seattle is very tough at home. The Jets are just going to have to play almost a perfect game and avoid some of the uh, crushing mistakes that they've been making in recent weeks. I look at Mark Sanchez, and we all have this, like, Tebow cloud, or maybe it's a silver lining, depends on your perspective. What if they go to Seattle, and it's kind of ugly? 28-14, they lose. How many starts is Sanchez getting, do you think? Well, you would think that he'd be at the end of the rope if that scenario unplays the way you just described it, but I don't get the impression from anyone in, in the locker room or around the building that he's on the verge of of losing his job. I think Rex Ryan is, is just committed to Mark Sanchez. Utah. Lakers fall to 1-4. and four. Beto Duran, ESPN LA 710. What's the bigger issue? The defense, which is middle of the pack to below that on threes and field goal percentage, or a struggling offense? Uh, the bigger issue of how to pick one would be the offense because you shouldn't be struggling when you have players like Dwight Howard, Kobe Bryant, and Pau Gasol on your squad. Yeah, Mike Brown's going to point to the defense. It looked ugly yesterday. The transition defense is bad. But overall, Colin, this Lakers squad just looks ugly right now. You can point to the bench. You can point to the lack of productivity. You can point to the lack of no, not having Steve Nash. But if you're a Laker fan, everybody's pointing at one man, and that is Mike Brown. Texas. Josh Hamilton's future, a teammate comes out, kind of sounds critical of him. Richard Durrett, ESPNDallas.com. All right, Mike Adams is a teammate. Take our audience, Richard, to his, his comments yesterday about his teammate Josh Hamilton. I think he was referring to several things. One was Hamilton's lack of consistency. Uh, you look at Hamilton's season, he was player of the month in the American League in April and May, had the four-homer game in Baltimore. There wasn't a pitch he wasn't willing to swing at and one that he didn't hit. And then he had two months where he didn't hit hardly any of those pitches. Uh, one day he might come to the ballpark and be the guy that took the game over. The next night he might go 0 for 5 with three strikeouts. So when he was talking, I think, a little bit about Hamilton and not sure which Josh would show up at the ballpark, that's what he meant. And, and I'll tell you, I think there's some truth to that. So, so it's just interesting to hear it from a teammate. It's your daily sports page. Spanning the globe in the herd. Weekdays on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. The Jets. The Seahawks. Coverage begins Sunday at 2. WEPN-FM. WEPN-HD1. New York. I'm Dave Rothenberg in this ESPN New York Sports Center brought to you by the 2K Sports Classic returning to Madison Square Garden on Thursday and Friday, November 15th and 16th featuring Villanova, Purdue, Alabama and Oregon State tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Well, by now we've all heard that Antonio Cromartie thinks the Jets will make the postseason and despite the criticism that his head coach has taken so far this year, Cromartie's happy to be playing for Rex. Oh, man, I, I love him. Uh, I mean, he's a great coach. He's a he's a player's coach also. So, I mean, he's a guy you can come and talk to. But, any, I mean, about anything. So, I mean, we love him to death here. And, uh, you know, who, who cares what other players have to say? He's our coach at the end of the day. And, and we, we all going to run, run through a brick wall for him. And that's courtesy of the NFL Network. Now, any chance at the playoffs for the Jets means a must win for the team against Seattle on Sunday. Coverage for that one starts right here on ESPN New York 98.7 FM at 2 p.m. Elsewhere, Giants wide out Akeem Nix 
returns to practice suffering from a swollen knee. Nick says he will play Sunday against the Bengals. Thursday night football, fourth quarter, a little more than 10 minutes to go. Indianapolis all over Jacksonville, 24-3. to Andrew Luck's club looks to move to 6-3. and Luck with 211 yards passing and two rushing touchdowns tonight. NBA, two games in action. Oklahoma City beat Chicago 97-91. Clippers up on Portland early in that one, 17-15. Baseball Rockies hire former shortstop Walt Weiss as their new manager. The Dave Rothenberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Chris Mullen expecting his call in a couple minutes to get into a little Knicks basketball. We can do that on our own before the Hall of Famer calls. And Charles Barkley was on with Mike Lupica earlier today. We had this conversation last night of what happens when Amari returns. I think that's going to be your question with the Knicks. I think that's going to be your big question. And I think the better the Knicks are, the more you're going to hear that question thrown out. Because if the Knicks are average, if the Knicks are, you know, a 500 team or a couple games above or below, when Amari comes back, there's not going to be that feel of, well, you throw him out there and you could ruin the chemistry. But if the Knicks are good, and the Knicks, you know, I don't know, you make up a number 27 13, 25 and 11. If it's something that makes you wow, if it's something that impresses you, when Amari Stoudemire comes back, I think you start to have that question of, well, what do you do with him now? You know, what direction do you go with him now? Because you're not sure about this Knicks club. Charles Barkley with Mike Lupica on what happens when Amari returns. They got enough scores. They got enough scores. But they're not great defensively, and they're not a great rebounding team. The question, You just got to ask Amari one question. Do he want to try to be the Amari who was in Phoenix, who was a star getting 20 a night? Or... I would love to see Amari come back and say, the goal for the season is to get 10 rebounds a game. You know, he's never averaged 10 rebounds in a game. Is that true? That's true. I would love for him to come back and say, my goal for this year is to play better defense, because that's what this team needs. We got enough scores. We got enough scores. But my goal for this year is for us to get, for me personally, to get 10 rebounds a game. See, I hear that, and I understand what Charles is saying, but... I look at the Knicks, and I don't know that they have enough scores. I mean, who are these magical scorers that we're talking about here? There's one guy, night in and night out, that you can say can give you 25 points. Now, could Raymond Felton go for 25 and 12? Yeah, he can have a big game. Can Tyson Chandler go explode and give you 25 points? Probably not, but maybe. Or maybe Marcus Camby every once in a while. I mean, there are guys that could potentially give you 25. But to say that scoring is not an issue, I mean, let me ask you this. Forget about Amari. Let's put Amari on the back burner and assume that either he's not back or we don't know when he's going to come back. Well, if that's the case, then who is this Knicks' second scorer? I mean, is it Ronnie Brewer? Is it Raymond Felton? Is it Jason Kidd? See, I don't see that it's there. Is it J.R. Smith? If you think it's J.R. Smith, I mean, he scares me to death. You've, you've heard me wax poetic numerous times on J.R. Smith. He gets me completely nervous because he's a guy with no conscience. And, you know, there are games where he's going to shoot 11 of 14, and you're going to be like, he's the greatest thing you've ever seen because he's fast and he's athletic and he's dynamic and he's a difference maker. And then there are games where he's just going to shoot you out of a game and he's going to give you five, you know, John Starks-esque, five of 19. And the thing with J.R. Smith that I find personally frustrating is that he never knows when he's doing badly. He never knows when he's not clicking on all cylinders. And I know that's the mark of a great shooter, but I don't think he's a great shooter. You know, he's an athletic guy. I look at J.R. Smith more as a guy I'd like to see take the ball to the basket and hoist the occasional three rather than be a three-point threat, huge three-point threat for this club. So I hear Charles Barkley, and I understand what he's saying about Amari Stoudemire, but I disagree, and I disagree with this. I don't see the Knicks as having that second score. I don't see the Knicks, if Carmelo's off, having a guy. I mean, you can't convince me that night in and night out Steve Novak is a legitimate second score. It's not Kurt Thomas. God knows that. It's not Iman Shumpert, even if and when he becomes healthy. It's not Marcus Camby. It's not Tyson Chandler. Who is it? I mean, Charles Barkley says, you know, they have the scoring. That's a non-issue. Who, who, who are these scores? Who are these guys besides... Carmelo Anthony, that makes you say, you know what? Great. I feel great about the Knicks scoring after the big guy. 
I don't know who it is. Do you think right now when you look at the Knicks, you're concerned about that scorer after Carmelo? 1-800-919-3776. And I think it may have to be Amari at some point. Are you at all concerned in a close game who that second scorer will be on the Knicks? 1-800-919-3776. We say it could be Amari Stoudemire at some point. Maybe. When would that point be? Here's Mike Woodson on a timetable and his role when Amari returns. We've been told six to eight weeks with Amari. And Amari, make no mistake about it, is a big piece to our puzzle. And, you know, he spent this summer doing a lot of wonderful things in terms of working on his game, expanding his game, and he will be utilized when he come back in the low blocks um, just to see what he has, you know, and see if the the things that he's done this summer has paid off and, and, and put him in a different light to help us, you know, win games. But, you know, we we are patiently going to wait for Amari to get healthy and get back, and when he gets back, He's going to be right back in there playing like the Amari of old, and, and we're going to conti- hopefully continue to win our winning ways. That's what it's all, all about at the end of the day. Now that's from the Stephen A. Smith and Ryan Rucco show. And, you know, I still need to know who's that Knicks second guy. I mean, I don't think, if you ask me, yes or no, do the Knicks have enough scoring after Carmelo Anthony? The answer right now is no, and I think they need Amari to be that guy. Now, Woodson kind of tiptoed the question a little bit, sidestepped it a little bit. Bottom line is this. Will Amari start when he returns? Here's Mike Woodson. Well, I mean, I can't make that decision right now. You know, my my thing is you don't lose your starting job based on uh, injuries. And, you know, he's been a big piece to our puzzle. So, you know, he will he will come back into our lineup uh, if that may be the case. Uh, again, only time will tell. we got to see where he is when he when he gets back, and we got to make sure that he's healthy enough to do the things that we've asked him to do on and off the floor. So it's, you know, kind of beating around the bush a little bit, and that, of course, is from Stephen A. and Ryan Rucco as well this afternoon. I, I don't think the Knicks have that guy, and I think at some point, if things are going to be effective for this organization, they have to find a way to make it work between these two guys. Because you can't tell me that in a seven-game series, if Amari's not a legitimate option, that they have enough. Because I'm not going to town with J.R. Smith as my number two scorer. And I'm not going to town with Tyson Chandler or Iman Shumpert or Raymond Felton. I mean, you look at good teams around the league, and you don't have to look at the great teams. Look at good teams around the league. Almost everyone has a second scorer. And I know the Knicks are winning big, and they're winning with a team philosophy and a chemistry and ball movement and defense and all that. And it's great. And I'm as excited as anybody about what you're seeing from the Knicks right now. But I still don't think they have the second score. I still think there's something there that needs to be desired. And I think there's another guy that can light it up. And if in a perfect world, who's that guy? That guy's Amari Stoudemire. And I think they have to find a way. Now, I don't care about that working now or in January, or in March, but in May, when you have big series, you know, Indiana in the second round, Miami in the Eastern Conference Finals, knock on wood, Oklahoma City in the NBA Finals, you can't have Carmelo and then J.R. Smith. You can't. You can't have Carmelo and then Iman Shumpert. You can't. You have to have two big-time scorers to win. Look at any club Over the last 20 years, any club, the Spurs, the Pistons, the Heat, the Bulls, the Lakers, the Celtics, they've all, all of them have had at least two guys that can consistently score the ball. So I know that you think that maybe Amari will ruin the chemistry, and maybe he will. But they need to find a way to have that second guy in a big spot in a playoff game late. In a regular season, important spot with Carmelo Anthony's out with foul trouble that can score. And I don't think that that guy is on the roster right now if Amari Stoudemire is not that guy. Do you worry about the Knicks scoring after Carmelo Anthony until Amari returns to the lineup? 1-800-919-3776. Dave Rothenberg with you on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Fires a three at the horn and he switches it in. The will to win. Brizioni double kicks back to Smith right down the plate. And a vicious right-handed stuff. Knicks team. It's 
just continue to work hard and, and play hard, stay away from injuries. That's the name of the game. Knicks, Mavericks, Friday night at 7 on ESPN New York, 98.7 <laughs> FM. The obstacles military families face aren't limited to the battlefield. When it comes to financial challenges, USAA can help. Whether it's managing debt, saving for a child's education, or investing for the future. For free advice, call a USAA investment advisor at 800-235-1898. Financial planning services and financial advice provided by USAA Financial Planning Services Insurance Agency, Inc., a registered investment advisor and insurance agency and its wholly owned subsidiary, USAA Financial Advisors, Inc., a registered broker-dealer. Get a GE washer and dryer for just $349 each right now at the Home Depot. Not only is that an incredible $350 savings on the pair, it's holiday savings you can enjoy today. So get a jump on holiday shopping and saving with the GE washer and dryer for just $349 each. But only while they last. So hurry. More saving. More doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. While supplies last valid through November 26, U.S. only. See store for details. My mum always says hard work never hurt anybody. Good advice as usual. So we worked very hard to make Geico.com very easy. Say you want to report a claim and follow its progress. You can do it all online at Geico.com. Not to mention perhaps saving a tidy sum of money on your car insurance. All it takes is a few clicks. So visit Geico.com today. Oh, and mum, if you're listening, yes, I did wash behind my ears this morning. The Dave Rothenberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. And we talk a little NBA. We bring on the legendary hoopster, Chris Mullen. Chris, how are you tonight? Dave, how are you? Uh, I'm good. You know, I had Mick Foley, the legendary wrestler, in studio earlier, and he wrote a note for me to read to you. I'm just going to read it, and I'm sure this is the last thing you expected when you woke up this morning. He says, Mick Foley was college roommates with John Hennessy. John Hennessy was best friends with Chris's younger brother, John. Does that make any sense to you at all? It absolutely does. I know the Hennessy family very well. All right, so there you have it. A, a hello from uh, Mick Foley and John Hennessy. So uh, I'm sure you weren't expecting that at all. Let's get over to the New York Knickerbockers. And I was just having the discussion, and, and people say that the Knicks are, are so set and they're so solid and they look so good right now that when Amari comes back, it's going to be a problem. I don't even want to get into that discussion, but when you look at the Knicks right now, after Carmelo, do they have the scoring that they need long-term to, to have enough to put the ball into the basket right now? Well, I think as long as they're moving the ball, you know, and their, their um, ball movement's been great, you know, they're scoring the ball at a high level, and their defense, I think, has been fueling a lot of that. So right now, you know, they're, they're playing great basketball, there's no doubt about it. I think all the questions that people had about them from, you know, from last season, uh, as of now, they've, they've cured all those, those problems that they had, and like you said, you know, who, when Amari comes back, cross that bridge when he gets here. you you got to keep building on what you have. I think all the additions have played well, um, and I think it starts with Carmelo. I think, look, the guy is one of the, the most prolific scorers we've seen in this league of all time, but he's doing the little things. He's doing the extra effort things, which, to me, means so much to his team, and uh, you got to give him a lot of credit. How many games do you need to see before you feel like you've seen enough to really analyze a club? I mean, they're 3-0, and and I wouldn't think that would be enough. Well, what's that number where you say, you know what, Dave, 20 games in, I feel like I have a, a real understanding of what the Knicks are. Well, I, I do think it will depend when Amari comes back, because at some point they're going to have to incorporate him uh, at some, some role, and it's going to be a major role. There's no question about that. Um, I do think it's possible. You know, it hasn't. It hasn't been as smooth as of yet, but I think as Amari's sitting out, he kind of can also observe the blueprint that's being laid laid out here, a ball movement, um, good defense, which I think they've played pretty good defense um, under Mike Woodson. And, uh, you know, I'm really impressed, and I think I'm going to give a lot of credit to Jason Kidd. You know, guys like Jason Kidd and Steve Nash, they have this unique ability to have an impact on their teammates just by the way they play the game. They're so unselfish. You know, the first thing they do, they give up the ball. They throw ahead. And I think that has a, a profound impact on the way this team is playing. Are you seeing a difference in Carmelo Anthony from this year after the Olympics again to years past and what kind of a player he was? Is he is he sacrificing a little more so far in this season? Well, you know what? The, the first thing that comes, 
when I when I look at him, it looks to me like he's in better condition. Um, and with that, I think he has more energy. And you know, again, the scoring, the guy can roll out of bed and get twenty five or thirty points. But when I see him diving for loose balls and getting deflections and uh, keeping balls alive and scoring the paint, uh, these are all direct, um, you know, attributes to his. To I think his condition and his energy. And I think that also rubs off on his teammates. Look, when, when your best player is, do, is sacrificing and doing the small things, everybody has to fall in line. When you look at the Knicks and with Amari not in the lineup, now I know they've won these games fairly handily and they've really been non-competitive in the fourth quarter, but if Carmelo's in foul trouble or, or not hot or double teamed and taken out of his game, who's that Knicks second guy right now that you want with the ball in his hands late in the game? Well, you know, I think the key component is that ball movement. You know, they've had different guys get hot. You know, and but with that, with with good ball movement, you know, you're going to get good shots. You know, good shot selection. You know, be it Novak, um, J.R. Smith. You know, Jason Kidd has been knocking some three three point shots. And I think Raymond Felton is playing great basketball. So, um, you know, a lot of teams talk about having depth, but depth is really good when you have star players. And the Knicks have both, and that that's really to me, an encouraging um, fact to this team is that they're getting, you know, great play from their star, but also it's getting spread around. You know, you've seen a lot of different guys involved in the offense, and, and, and as, long, as long as they maintain that, I think they're going to be in good shape this year. New York legend Chris Mullen joining us here on the Dave Rothenberg Show on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Is there such a thing as just having too many talented guys? I mean, if the Knicks wind up, you know, because right now they're a very deep basketball team, and you have to figure at some point Amar is going to return, at some point Marcus Camby is going to return, and at some point Iman Shumpert's going to return. I mean, can you be a good team and spread the minutes around to 10 or 11 guys? It, it is tough. You know, in come playoff time, coaches usually go to about eight or nine-man rotation. But I do, you know, the, the thing that I think is, is a, a – the good thing to have is a guy like Jason Kidd, you know, a point guard like Raymond Felton, and also uh, Prigioni, another very unselfish basketball player. Uh, I think, you know, the, the Nick roster is a little bit more balanced than it has been in the past. Where you, you know exactly where guys are going to be. You know, Novak and J.R. Smith are pretty much going to be out on the perimeter, so um, Carmelo can be all over the court. Um, Tyson Chandler, who, again, is the key defensively. He's the anchor of the defense to get them out in the open floor. But he's going to be, a, you know, a dunker and a, and a spotter on, on the short corners. So I think they've got to, they've got to figure it out right now. Um, and I think, you know, if they can maintain that, and I do think at some point it's going to be really important how uh, they incorporate Amare and what role he winds up playing for them. You know what I'm so impressed with, and I was not a proponent, I was not an advocate of Mike Woodson. I thought it was a guy who had been a very, I mean, a good coach, but you know what, second round is great in Atlanta. Second round doesn't, you know, sell huge tickets in New York. We want more than that. We expect more than that. And I think so far from what I've seen from him, I've been very impressed because he's taken big egos. And I know some of them are older and some of them want to sacrifice and they're desperate to win, but they're still big egos. And to take huge egos in this league and to make them accept roles of 15, 18, 20 minutes a game, I think so far, and I know it's early, Chris, I think so far Mike Woodson has done a brilliant job with this club. I totally agree, Dave. And I think one thing you said is really important. You know, when you get guys, is really important in this league. And, um, you know, they've had, they've had some struggles. I think their ears are a little more wide open, a little more uh, susceptible to making the extra pass because they've had some tough times recently, and that's a good thing. But Mike Woodson, he's been very successful. He was a real, I thought he did a great job in Atlanta. And you look at the guys he worked for, um, and I think what Mike is doing, as, as far as when I watched him, keeping it very simple. You know, I love the way he's using Carmelo Anthony. A lot of times you'll see Carmelo enter, play off the basketball and come back and get it. You know, just, just to have a little bit of motion where it's not, you know, he's still going to get to his ISOs, but the first thing he does is give it up and get it back, pass, cut, replace. And uh, you know, I can't help but think that's Larry Brown trait who he worked for, you know, and I think he's doing a really good job of, you know, solidifying roles. Uh, they got they got a very high IQ basketball team because of the veteran players they have. Um, and then keeping it simple, the NBA game, look, the more you can keep guys um, understanding what they're supposed to do, what their roles are, 
and you got good talent, you're going to be fine. And, and sometimes it's, it's, it's a matter of doing less and keeping it really fundamental and real simple. And, and so far, it looks like that's exactly what they're doing. Chris, like, i got to come clean with you. I'm a Georgetown fan. Uh, I was a Chris Mullen fan, St. John's back in the day, but I was a Patrick Ewing and Michael Jackson and David Wingate and Reggie Williams fan. But I am a fan of yours. I appreciate the time. If we stuck you at the foul line 100 times, how many would you hit right now? Well, let me tell you, okay, before I answer that one, yeah. if, you would have, if you would have said that last statement when we first got on the phone. We wouldn't have continued, line. right? Huh? Exactly. We would have been over. Yeah, that's why I waited for the end. And uh, I'll say 90. Nine, so you, at, you could still hit 90% from the line? If I had to, yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Chris. And, and thanks for coming clean on that Hoya thing. You know what? I figure we're, at this point we're friends, and, and, and I, would, I would be honest with you. Okay, I appreciate that. Thanks, Chris. Absolutely. Yeah, Chris Mullen, a great job. Good guy, huh? St. John's. I remember you, you talk about battles back in the day, those early 80s Georgetown, St. John's, Syracuse matchups. Unbelievable. The head coach of the Knicks, Mike Woodson, sat down with Stephen A. Smith and Ryan Rucco earlier today. We'll take a listen to that next. Dave Rothenberg with you on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Knicks head coach Mike Woodson with Stephen A. Smith and Ryan Rucco. What's your definition of success for this year's New York Knicks team? Well, our goal is to win our division and be able to host first round at home. That That is not going to change. I mean, that's what we're playing for. Knicks coach Mike Woodson every week, all season long with Stephen A. and Ryan Rucco on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Confidence? Are you there? Baby, I'm right here. And I want that car. Oh, good. I get so stressed out shopping for cars. You went on cars.com. And now I'm busted. Oh. I could have used you when I asked for that raise. I took a personal day. Uh-huh. Those side-by-side -side comparisons on cars.com did make it easy to compare gas mileage and pricing. And now I'm confident. Let's get those keys go. Mike Rowe here at a Ford dealer with a little Q&A for Fiona. According to the signs, Ford is having some sort of big tire event. How would you describe the event? It's big. The savings one might enjoy at the event. They're big. What about the selection? Big. Get a $60 mail-in rebate on four select tires. Use the Ford service credit card for an additional 60 bucks. Click on the banner ad. So I think we can agree then that Ford's tire event is good sized. No, Michael. It's big. Subject to credit approval. Rebate by check. Offer cannot be combined. See participating Ford dealer for rebate details by 11 30 12. An ESPN Radio Mike and Mike Extra Point. The reality is if Notre Dame played Oregon in football next Saturday on a neutral site, I don't know who would win and neither do you. It's as simple as that. Now, I got inundated with people yesterday, oh, Greeny, Oregon would beat them by 20 points. Oh, would they? Are you the same people who told me that Notre Dame was going to get smoked when they went to Oklahoma? Yeah. Here's the thing. In sports, we look, we, we tell you what we expect to happen, and then guess what happens? They play a we game. We don't know. They right. play a game. If we knew what was going to happen ahead of time, we would all be living in castles in Las Vegas. I get it, but what we do is we make our picks. So we, here's we, what we drives me know. nuts. Okay. So Notre Dame, right. you're Notre Dame, right. which always gets the benefit of everything. They've gotten into BCS bowl games in the years we've been together when they had no business being there. Hear more from Mike and Mike tomorrow morning on ESPN Radio. ESPNRadio.com. Right now. Hi, I'm Bob Picozzi. Mike Greenberg and Mike Golick spent Thursday's edition of Mike and Mike at the U.S. Coast Guard Academy in New London, Connecticut. And Greeny and Golick discussed Green Bay's 6-3 and three start, the difficult decision that Charles Tillman of the Bears could have to face on Sunday, the Armed Forces Classic, and much more. They visited with Packers coach Mike McCarthy, Michigan State basketball coach Tom Izzo, Chris Mortensen, and Brian Billick. It's all yours on the Mike and Mike page at ESPNRadio.com. Meanwhile, over at the Pod Center page... Hey, it's Matthew Berry from the Fantasy Focus Football Podcast. Today on the show, Nate Ravitz and I talk about the injuries to Hakeem Nicks, the Raiders running back situation, the Week 10 ranks. Ivan Mazel here on the ESPNU College Football Podcast. Dave Nubbin of the Big 12, Mitch Sherman of the Recruiting Nation, and Paul Houlihan of the Sugar Bowl are all here. You can hear this and more on the Podsetter page at ESPNRadio.com. Log on to the ESPNRadio.com stream, the most listened to stream in the world. 
From ABC News, Wall Street Now. Stocks dropped, but not as dramatically as Wednesday. The Dow lost 121 points. The Nasdaq gave up 42, and the S&P fell 17. Investors still worried about potential gridlock in Washington, especially the possibility of Congress going over the so-called fiscal cliff, a package of tax hikes and spending cuts which will go into effect January 1st, unless a budget deal is reached. The number of first-time unemployment claims filed last week fell by 8,000. Change has been on the menu at McDonald's, and customers may not exactly be loving it. The world's biggest hamburger chain sales fell almost 2% last month, the most in years. Mickey D's has been trying new premium items and posting nutritional information on its menu boards. Samsung's Galaxy S3 has overtaken Apple's iPhone 4S as the world's best-selling smartphone. The tracking firm Strategy Analytics says the S3 shipped 18 million units in the third quarter, compared to about 16 million for Apple's iPhone 4S. Daria Albinger, ABC News. Here. I'm Dave Rothenberg with your ESPN New York Sports Center. Well, by now, we've all heard that Antonio Cromartie thinks the Jets will make the postseason. And despite the criticism that his head coach has taken so far this year, Cromartie is happy to be playing for Rex Ryan. Oh, man, I love him. Uh, I mean, he's a great coach. He's a, he's a player's coach also. So, I mean, he's a guy you can come and talk to. But any, I mean, about anything. So, I mean, we love him to death here. And, uh, you know, who, who cares what other players have to say? He's our coach at the end of the day. And, and we, we all going to we'll run through a brick wall for him. That's courtesy of the NFL Network. Now, any chance in the playoffs for the Jets means they need to win this game against Seattle on Sunday. Coverage for that begins right here on ESPN New York 98.7 FM at 2 p.m. Elsewhere, Giants wide receiver Akeem Nix returns to practice, suffering from swelling in his knee. Nix says he will play Sunday against the Bengals. Thursday night football kicks off week 10 in the NFL. Indianapolis leading Jacksonville late fourth quarter 27 to 10. Andrew Luck has rushed for two TDs in this one. NBA tonight, couple of games. Oklahoma City edges Chicago 97-91. Clippers second quarter leading Portland 39-28. Baseball, Rockies hire former shortstop Walt Weiss to be their new skipper. Rothenberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. You know, I got to be honest. I think we need to give a lot of credit right now to Mike Woodson. Because he looked to take, I mean, all these guys and mesh them together and make them work is not an easy task. And this is coming off last year and Mike D'Antoni really never being able to right the ship and never being able to make this club look like they were a real team. And the only time that happened was when, I mean, it's a one in a, a trillion Odds when when Jeremy Lin was able to do what he did. And that saved the season. But Mike Woodson taking over, imploring this defensive stance, and 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 the fact that this is going to be a defense for see a couple things he's added here. We'll hear from the head coach of the Knicks in just a minute. A couple things he's ha- added here. Firstly, it's all about defense. Secondly, it's all about team. And thirdly, he's gotten Carmelo Anthony to buy into this. Those three things are what makes you so excited right now about this Knicks club. Now, Mike Woodson joined earlier today, the Stephen A. Smith and Ryan Rucco show. Starts out by answering, what are you most happy about so far with this Knicks club? Well, it's been a long process to get to this point. I mean, and we still got a long way to go, but, you know, when we uh, implemented our development program this summer, everybody was on board. And you know, as well as I do, we had Melo and, and Tyson playing in the Olympics. So that was a nice carryover throughout the summer. And those guys came back in great shape and probably took about a week off, and then they were right back with the development program. And with that being said, all these guys came to camp in really good shape. And we've been able to teach a lot in camp, do a lot of conditioning in terms of running, and uh, and everybody's buying in. And it's been a nice start to our regular season. Coach, with Carmelo Anthony, you know, he obviously he's doing a little bit of everything right now. I'm wondering, does the presence of so many veterans on your brand, your bench, guys like Camby, guys like Rasheed Wallace, Kurt Thomas on this team, how much do you think that helps Melo in honing in on playing winning basketball? Well, I'm not going to say he's, he's always played winning basketball since I've coached him. Um, but it does help, I think, when you've got veteran players like Kidd and and uh, Camby and Rasheed and Kurt, uh, Raymond Felton now, who's a part of our staff, uh, uh, Pablo, 
uh, who's played a many years over in in uh, Europe there. Uh, you know, we got a, a veteran enough crew that's played enough basketball that knows right from wrong, and that's been a nice carryover, and I think it helps Melo. You know, Melo can turn to these guys when things are not going so well, maybe for him or, or his teammates, and, and get – some strong advice in terms of how we want to do things. And it's been a nice carryover, I think, having these vet guys and along with the young guys that we do have. Coach, one of the first things that came out of your mouth was the, was the development program, the conditioning program that obviously these guys have had to endure. Uh, was that a huge concern feeding off of last season and some of the things that you saw? Or is it just something that you wanted implemented on this team so obviously these guys could be a peak condition? Well, it's, you know, summer programs have always been important for me. I think it's, you know, it gives the coaches, you know, me and my staff an opportunity to go out and touch players to make sure that they're doing what's asked of them. And the fact that when I took over, you know, it was a short season, so we didn't get an opportunity to really teach and put things in. We were doing a lot of things on the fly. A lot of things were taught watching videotapes and things of that nature. So this summer was very pivotal for our team in terms of us going out, number one, fielding the right players that we wanted to be a part of the New York Knicks family and being able to touch those players throughout the summer to make sure that they were working and doing what was asked of them. So it has made the transition a lot faster, uh, you know, by these guys doing what they were asked to do and coming to camp in, in pretty damn good shape. And it's been a nice carryover right into our regular season. Nick said coach Mike Woodson with Stephen A. Smith and Ryan Rucco, as he will be every week here on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Coach, it's obviously been an incredible start for you guys through three games. We know that no matter how well you play, you're probably not going to keep up a pace where you're beating teams by 20 on a nightly basis. But what do you think is the most sustainable part of your game from what you've seen thus far? Well, you know, I like to think that the fact that we're defending the basketball, and I tell these guys all the time, you know, there's going to be nights you're not going to make shots, but your defense has got to be consistent and a constant effort every time you step out on that floor. And they really have been given effort in that area, and that's why our defensive numbers are where they are throughout the three games we played. And, and that's got to stay consistent um, uh, because I, I just truly believe, you know, that's how you're going to win at a high level. And once you get in the playoffs, if you play in that same kind of style and at that that high of a level, you're going to win your share of playoff games as well. So it's, to me, it's about keeping our team healthy and making sure that they're defending and rebounding the ball. Coach Mike Woodson right here with Stephen A. Smith and Ryan Rucco on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Coach, when I look at this team, you know, I'm on the record talking about this as well. I think Raymond Felton is an upgrade at the point guard spot. Clearly the combination of him and Kidd definitely does a lot for this franchise. There's no doubt about it. But at the same time, due to the fact that you guys I consider to be devoid of a big post presence, certainly Melo can post, but devoid of a big Post presence. You've got to hit outside shots. You've got to be able to get out there on the break. You've got to defend. But more importantly, I think Raymond Felton needs to attack the basket with fervor night in, night out to create shot opportunities for the other guys. What do you say to that, sir? No, and I agree to that to, to somewhat. Uh, and he's doing that. I think Raymond is attack, attacking and he's mixing it up, you know, by attacking it for himself and making plays for his teammates as well as, you know, knocking down jump shots. But, you know, when you look at the league, the league is changing. It has changed. And, uh, you know, you don't have a lot of great post-up players. So the game, to me, is more it's more open play now, where it's, it's giving the guys an opportunity to, to uh, the word I'm looking, I guess, is, express themselves from an offensive standpoint. So if you got guys that can put the ball down, that can make shots, that can make plays for other guys around them, I think you you better for that. And then if you can mix in some post up, which I think we can post Mello, we can post Rashid. You know, we I mean we got a few guys I think we can post, you know, some of our smaller JR there's a disadvantage there we could probably pull throw him into the post but i'm not going to live on that you know i will mix it up and um and have some post and have some 
some outside play like we've been doing and try to use utilize the free throw line somewhere we can actually get there and make free throws at a high level. Coach, obviously right now you're without Amari Stoudemire. I'm wondering for you if in your mind you have a period of time in which you believe you will be getting him back. And then you know, if you think you're going to have sort of a diminished version of him, if he's going to have to adapt to a body that's not quite what it used to be. Well, again, you know, only time will tell with that. You know, we've been told six to eight weeks with Amari. And Amari, make no mistake about it, is a big piece to our puzzle. And, you know, he spent this summer doing a lot of wonderful things in terms of working on his game, expanding his game, and he will be utilized when he come back in the low blocks um, just to see what he has, you know, and see if the the things that he's done this summer has paid off and, and, and put him in a different light to help us, you know, win games. But, you know, we we are patiently going to wait for Amari to get healthy and get back, and when he gets back, He's going to be right back in there playing like the Amari of old, and, and we're going to continue, hopefully continue to win our winning ways. That's what it's all, all about at the end of the day. Yeah, but Coach Woodson, here's the deal. Mello with J.R. Smith, whether it's J.R. Smith or Iman Shumpert with Felton, with Brewer, doesn't matter who it is, whether it's Kidd or somebody else. If you guys are flowing without Amari Stoudemire, I understand he's going to be playing, but will he be starting? Well, I mean, I can't make that decision right now. You know, my my thing is you don't lose your starting job based on uh, injuries. And, you know, he's been a big piece to our puzzle. So, you know, he will he will come back into our lineup uh, if that may be the case. Uh, again, only time will tell. We got to see where he is when he when he gets back. And we got to make sure that he's healthy enough to do the things that we've asked him to do on and off the floor. Coach Mike Woodson of the Knicks here with Stephen A. Smith and Ryan Rucco, as he will be every week on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. What's the latest on Marcus Camby, Coach, and where he'll fit into your rotation? Well, he had a great practice today. Uh, He's had two days of contact where he's been able to bang around. and, And so tomorrow when we step out on the floor to play Dallas, I'm I'm looking to to try to throw him in there when I can to, to see what he has and see what he can do to help us win. As you scour the rest, I know you haven't had much time to look at things or what have you, but knowing Miami is still in the East and the way you guys played against them, knowing that Boston and Brooklyn and Philadelphia, even though they didn't have Andrew Bynum, how good are you feeling about this team's potential? What's your definition of success for this year's New York Knicks team? Well, our goal is to win our division and be able to host first round at home. That That is not going to change. I mean, that's what we're playing for, and then we'll take it from there once we get to that point. Uh, the East is loaded this year. You mentioned six great teams in the East is going to cause a lot of habit for a lot of people. But, you know, I think we are, we're as good as anyone in this league. I think we can beat anyone on a given night. And we can be beaten on a given night if we don't come to play. So, you know, my my ideal is still the same. We got to push each other to try to win our division and host first round at home. And that, of course, is Mike Woodson from earlier today on the Stephen A. Smith and Ryan Rucco show. And I think that's the truth with most teams around the NBA. You can win a game any given night. You can lose a game any given night. And I think the Knicks are going to be a team that, and which is amazing to me, is that they're going to do a complete 180 and go from a basketball team that was simply trying to outscore you, you know, by putting up 115 points, even if you scored your 108 or your 110, and now they're going to just try and out-guile you and out-defend you. And they need scoring, but they want to do it in a different, a half-court kind of grinded-out way. And I think there's a much better way of playing basketball. It may not be the most physically appealing brand of basketball, you know, appealing to the eye, but as far as winning championships, this will get you closer to winning a championship. I mean, you know what else this can do? It can mask problems. When you when you play every possession like it matters, it masks other problems on your teams. And it will mask offensive problems. And I think that's where we go back to. When you look at this Knicks club, and I know it's, it's Shangri-La right now and everything's great. But when you look at this Knicks club, do you worry about that second rung of scoring on the Knicks? Because Carmelo's the guy. And then who? I mean, right now, who is it? If I tell you Carmelo is out with six fouls, there's two minutes to go in a, in a game, and the Knicks are down by one. Who do you want to take that shot? Who takes that shot in your eyes right now? I guess it's either Raymond Felton 
or J.R. Smith. And the truth of the matter is neither of those guys make me feel overly comfortable. Knicks down one, two minutes to go, needing a big bucket. Carmelo's out of the game. What direction do they go in? 1-800-919-3776. We'll tackle that question next. Dave Rothenberg with you on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Hey, everybody, it's Michael Kay. And Don LaGreca. The New York Tri-State continues its battle toward recovery after the effects of Hurricane Sandy and the latest Nor'easter. We really need your help. Please log on to www.redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS or text Red Cross to 90999 to donate $10. We've all been affected by Hurricane Sandy in some form, and together we can all do our part to help our friends, neighbors, and communities. Again, for more information on how you can help, log on to Red Cross. Cross.org. Get a GE washer and dryer for just $349 each right now at the Home Depot. Not only is that an incredible $350 savings on the pair, it's holiday savings you can enjoy today. So get a jump on holiday shopping and saving with a GE washer and dryer for just $349 each, but only while they last. So hurry. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. While supplies last valid through November 26, U.S. only see store for details. I want to tell you about the game of football. It has its ups and downs and highs and lows. And you know what I'm talking about. Wins and losses, injuries, and great performances. Teams have no guarantees on whether or not they will make it to the playoffs. So that big bonus at the end of the season, <laughs> it may not come. Now, I've got a little tip for all my professional player friends who may not end up with that big payday. You might want to think about switching to GEICO. GEICO has been saving millions of other people money, or like me, money, on their car insurance for the last 75 years. I've been with GEICO 33 years since I got my license. In fact, GEICO is the number one car insurer in the tri-state area for the last two years running. The truth is GEICO finds every way possible to save drivers money from low rates to good driver and multi-driver discounts. In fact, you can save hundreds on your car insurance just by switching to GEICO. I know I did. So give GEICO a call. And I never switched. I started with GEICO. So give GEICO a call or go to GEICO.com. It only takes 15 minutes, and you can save 15% or more on car insurance. Just something to think about, my friends. This Veterans Day, ESPN is working with the USO to help lift the spirits of America's troops and their families stationed around the world. Grant a wish for our servicemen and women or donate a special gift to their families to show your support. Give a special gift to our military heroes and their families through USO Wishbook. Visit USO.org forward slash ESPN and give your gift today. Mike and Mike talk about KG's snub of Ray Allen during their first meeting in Miami. Ray Allen now on the heat goes over, sort of shakes hands and, and pats guys on the back on that Celtic bench. And Kevin Garnett notably snubbed him. I loved it. Loved it. And to me, that's what sports is supposed to be about. As a fan, I am emotionally invested in this stuff. I've said it before and I'll say it again. When a game ends, a tough game ends, and I see those guys out on the field shaking hands, and they're losing guys, are laughing. I, I understand at one, one level shaking hands and offering congratulations. Sure, yes. Yeah. But when the guys on the losing team are laughing, I guess I understand it, but it eats at me. A little bit of me dies every time I see that because that's not what this is supposed to be about. When, uh, just using my team, for example, when the Jets lose, I'm not laughing after that game, no matter what the circumstances are, and I can't stand it when I see the losing players laughing. It's Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Looking to rebound after the bye week. The Jets travel west to face the Seattle Seahawks. We've earned that 3-5 and five record. That's clearly not where, where we want to be at. Their season may be at a crossroads. Which way will they go? We have work to do. I'm excited to get the guys back. I look forward to the second half of the season. Jets, Seahawks. Coverage gets underway Sunday at 2 on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. <laughs> Dave Rothenberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. All right, Knicks down a point. 90 seconds remaining. Carmelo Anthony's just picked up a charge. He's fouled out of the game. Where do they go? Where do you want to go? And, and that's why, for me, Amari is so important at some point to get back into the rotation, to get back to this club 
and healthy enough that he can carry some kind of an offensive load. Because, you know, and and maybe I'll change my tune, but I'm I'm pretty stubborn with this, and just his style of game is hard for me to accept. And it's J.R. Smith. You know, he's 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 a wild card where he can shoot you into games and he can shoot you out of games. And and he worries me. He re, I mean, he worries me a lot. Now you say Jason Kidd, but you know, am I going to rely on a 40 year old to make big shots for me in big situations? Raymond Felton, maybe. You know what? Raymond Felton has to prove a little bit more to me than three games in. Raymond Felton took a year off from the NBA, basically. So, you know, and it's not Camby. It's not Tyson Chandler, as much as I think most of us like him. It's not Shumpert, because he's not even back. And when he comes back, he's still not that kind of guy. It's not Steve Novak. Now, I love Novak, but you can't tell me that in a big spot he's going to be able to get a, a, an open look. You know, so who is that guy right now? You know, Nick's down one, 90 seconds to go, needing a big basket. Where are you going? One eight hundred nine one nine three seven seven six. Where are you going? Big spot, needing a big basket. No Carmelo. One eight hundred nine one nine three seven seven six. Otis in White Plains. Where are the Knicks going in that situation, Otis? Yeah, how you doing? Um, I gotta say, I absolutely agree with you. Um, there's absolutely no way the Knicks can survive without an Amari Stoudemire type score after Carmelo Anthony. I mean, just look at last year in the playoffs alone. When Amari Stoudemire was out, Carmelo basically had to shoot 30 shots a game to keep the team somewhat competitive. The one game that they did win is when Amari Stoudemire came back, and he actually had a decent game with with the bad hand. I mean, I think people are just going off the hype right now, 3-0. and And, I mean, it was the same thing when Carmelo first came to the Knicks. They said, well, I'm... Carmelo be able to play with Amari. Well, let, let me let me play devil's advocate about this real quickly. Now, I, I agree with you on, on one point, but I think you'd have to agree that this is a, a much more complete Knicks team now than they were last year when they went up against Miami. You, even if you exclude Amari from this club, I mean, you look, it, it, it's Kid, it's Felton, you know, still have Tyson Chandler, it's Camby when he comes back, it's Kurt Thomas, it's Rashid. I mean, there's a lot of talent on this team. My point is, I still don't think there's a second scorer on this club. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. They, they, they definitely needed a second scorer. And I, I think I always thought that that was the one thing that was missing from the Knicks was that second score. It seems like we always have one healthy and, and one, when one's healthy, the other one's not. It's like vice versa, but it's just kind of like how it always is. Well, I'll tell you what, not if Amari gets back. You know, if Amari gets back and can give you that second option, that's why I think it's very important for him. And I know there's a lot of conjecture about, well, you know, when Amari comes back, you got to keep him away from Carmelo and let Car- Carmelo do his thing. And that's true. But for the Knicks to ultimately have success, those two are going to have to find a way to play well and play well together. You know, and I don't know if it means Carmelo moves to the three and Amari plays the four, or maybe you go small and you play Amari at the five and Carmelo at the four. But you, you have to find a way for these two guys to coexist. You have to. Guy in Manhattan, you're on ESPN New York. What's up, Guy? Hey, Dave. Great job tonight. Thank you. I think uh, your point is an astute one. I, I'd only say that um, the, the second scorer is the uh, is the uh, ball movement and the open shot, kind of like Chris Vaughn was yeah, saying. Yeah, but you know what, Guy, and I understand what you say when you say that, but that's not going to work every game. You know, having good ball movement down the stretch of games, you know what happens. It becomes a half-court right. game. It becomes a stagnant game at times, and you need a guy that can that can give you the big shot, that can make that I, shot. Now, I think you're right. I think the, the point you make there, though, is like, well, I mean, it's, what's exciting about this team right now is just like you said, they're more complete teams. So as you forget, I mean, the other thing to note is they've been averaging 100, over 100 points a game. I mean, without a second score, I think the second score becomes more valuable in the point where they start double teaming Carmelo Anthony. But how, how long it, do you think before that happens? I mean, right, do you think, right. the, do you think the Knicks right. are going to go into every fourth quarter this year, guy, winning by 15 points where they can put no, in, you know, garbage guys at the end? No, definitely not. But I think if the ball movement stays stays well and they look for the right shot. I mean, you're talking about NBA players here at some point as well. I, I agree with you that J.R. Smith scares the hell out of me, but, you know, you are talking about NBA players. Jason Kidd puts up a solid, you know, 10 to 12 points a game or even 8 to 10, 8 to 10 points a game. You get, you get distribution and you get feedback from all the people. Then second score becomes, like, less relevant as long as the ball moves. You, you're play. right. You're right. But, you know, what? You, and, and I understand what you're saying. But you still need a guy because Jason Kidd's eight points are not going to be necessarily in that big spot down the stretch of a vital game. And I still I mean, you look, guy, any team around the NBA that's won a title over the last 20 years. Have they had a better score right now as a second guy than J.R. Smith? 100 percent right. But even the Heat last year, 
I mean, until until but come LeBron on, it was stepped, Dwayne no, Wade and Chris Bosh. You're absolutely right. But until LeBron stepped up, remember there was that point where he just turned it on, and he, he was putting on he was putting on his back, and he was scoring like 30 points and putting up, and they were also still kind of scraping by. You're right. It is important more more so, I think, from the double pe- double team perspective, where they start really hammering Carmelo Anthony, and then you have to make sure that the rest of the team is actually making those shots. And, and so it's right. going to happen. And I appreciate the phone call, guy. And it's going to happen. I mean, how long do you think before team? start to get really physical with Carmelo Anthony. You know, and you may not see it during these, you know, kind of softer games in December and January, February. But when we get towards the end of the season, teams are going to start to adjust their philosophy. And I I think it's going to be harder for Carmelo. Now, Carmelo can score 25 with his eyes closed. But scoring 25 with your eyes closed is different than, you know, shooting 27 shots. And I think teams are going to start to get physical with him. They're going to try and wear him down if he plays that four, which certainly is a good matchup against a lot of teams. I mean, if you're the only guy every night, you have to have help from somewhere else. I think that's, to me, why it's important that Amari, at some point, and it doesn't need to be rushed, and there's no reason Knicks can't win 50 games with this club when Amari comes back and he comes off the bench for a while, but I'm talking big picture. You know, I'm not talking the next 20 games or 25 games. The Knicks will be fine. I'm talking big picture. And in the big picture, Amari and Carmelo have to be able to coexist. Keith in East Rockaway, you're on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. What's up, Keith? Hey, what's happening, man? I haven't been able to watch any games because I'm still uh, blacked out. No, I'm sorry. Tower and uh, have a half a house I'm living in, but I'm listening to you on the uh, on the batteries on the FM. And uh, from what I hear, I, I think it's got to be Jason Kidd. Yeah, but I, I, you know, this, Jason Kidd. We don't know where Stott, when is going to be healthy. Yeah, and... I understand. But, but Keith, here's the thing. Jason Kidd's really never been a second scorer. Jason Kidd's been, you know, uh, he's a great player at times. But yeah, he's, yeah. he's never been that. He's never been that scorer. He makes other people reduce. And when it comes down to it, he's never had to take the big shot. But when he had to, he won a ring taking that big shot when he had to. Going through those playoffs a couple years ago. Listen, he he was great back then. But a couple things are true. First of all, I don't know that that Jason Kidd is that guy that you want to take that big shot in the big moment because he's. I mean, listen, he can score, but he's not a scorer. And Jason Kidd's forty years old. Now maybe he's one in a trillion, but for the most part, forty year olds don't produce at a very high level late in games in the postseason. Could it change? Sure. Do I expect that to happen? Not really. All right. Of course, we have the Knicks tomorrow night. We have the Jets on Sunday. It's a very busy sports weekend. Knicks, only undefeated team in the NBA. We have a lot to do. It's a busy 24, 48, 72 hours. Keep it right here. ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Hi, it's Colin Thursday. Bill Romanowski on pot smoking in the NFL. Greg Cosell thinks Eli Manning's arm? Well, you have to listen to find out. Download the Thursday Thundering Herd podcast. Check it out, ESPNRadio.com. The college basketball season begins tomorrow night on ESPN with two big-time matchups. First, the Sears Armed Forces Classic celebrates Veterans Day from Ramstein Air Base in Germany as number 14 Michigan State takes on Connecticut in the first regular season game overseas. Then in Brooklyn, in the Barclays Center Classic, Maryland goes up against John Calipari's national champion, Kentucky Wildcats. It all starts tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern with live Sports Center reports from Germany on ESPN. This is The Herd with Colin Cowherd. Everybody loves Alex Smith. Everybody hates Mark Sanchez. But they're essentially the same quarterback. The truth is their careers are inverted. Sanchez got to AFC championships early, has struggled late. Alex struggled early, success late. And what it proves is we're in a now society. Whatever's happening now is the truth. happening now is the truth. This is The Herd. Weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Was anybody else surprised to hear Greeny gush about Denver? To me, the team to watch when it's all said and done is Denver. I really think Denver, they had the toughest schedule in the world coming out. Look at their losses. They lost at Atlanta. They lost a very tough game to Houston. Both games that they could have won. I think their defense is going to come together. I think Peyton is going to get better and better. I think that Denver could easily wind up being the two seed in the AFC, and they're going to be a very tough out. It's Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Every Saturday, ESPNU College Game Day hits the road. College Game Day rolls on to East Alabama. Boise is berserk. Chris 
Bruce Lee, Kirk, Desmond, and Sam Steele are live at the best matchups in the land. This offense continues to develop. How can you pick against LSU? Not so fast, my friend. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Saturdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPNU and 10 a.m. on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. Into your city. For Hurricane Sandy donations, visit redcross.org or text Red Cross to 90999 to donate $10. WEPN FM, WEPN HD1, New York. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Alan Siegel. There is no doubt that Colts quarterback Andrew Luck is having a fabulous rookie season. Tonight, he and his Indianapolis teammates got Week 10 in the NFL underway. They took on the Jaguars in Jacksonville. Now, Luck has been in the spotlight for his very high level of play as a rookie, and most of that because of his strong arm. But tonight, he went a different route. The Colts with Donald Brown as the tailback. And this time, Andrew rolls to the right side looking. Pump fake. He's going to run. Touchdown. He's fourth of the year. Ties a Colts record that Peyton. Manning has done it twice. Burt Jones did it once. That's his fourth rushing touchdown. The Colts lead it 9 nothing. The call on 1070 the fan as the Colts beat the Jaguars 27-10 to go to 6-3. and three, Their fourth win in a row. Luck 18 for 26, 207 yards, 227 yards and a pick. And on the ground he had a second rushing touchdown to break the record. Next up for the Colts, a Dayton New England against the Patriots a week from Sunday. For the marquee game in the NFL this week, pits the 7-1 Texans against the 7-1 Bears on Sunday night in Chicago. And Bears quarterback Charles Tillman tweeted today that his wife will deliver their child on Monday, so he will be playing on Sunday night. In college football tonight, the 10th-ranked Florida Seminole, Florida State Seminoles were in trouble, trailing Virginia Tech 22-20 with under a minute remaining. They were driving and on the Virginia Tech 39-yard line. Manuel comes up to the line. We're down to 10 on the play clock, changing his call. Ball's in his hands. Delayed blitz, toss over the middle. That ball is caught inside the 30, breaking free to the 20-yard line, to the 10, towards the pylon. Touchdown, Rashad Green. Oh, my goodness. A stunning play, a 39-yard touchdown pass. The call by Bill Rosinski on ESPN Radio as the Seminoles survive beating Virginia Tech 28-22 to go to 9-1 overall, 6-1 in the ACC. E.J. Manuel, 25-42 for 326 yards and three TDs. Elsewhere in college football tonight, Arkansas State defeated Louisiana Monroe 45-23. A third straight day of talks today between the NHL owners and players. The lockout currently in its 54th day, and this week is considered extremely crucial for the hockey season to be saved. After the talks broke off today for the night, neither you Union Chief Donald Fair nor Commissioner Gary Bettman would talk about the possible progress of the talks, but they are meeting again tomorrow for the fourth day in a row. Only two games in the NBA tonight. They are at halftime in Portland, where the Clippers lead the Trailblazers 60-39. to And earlier this evening, it was Oklahoma City over Chicago 97-91. Kevin Durant at 24 for the, for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Serge Ibaka had 21. Micah, Mike, it's football Friday and a quarterback filled day. We will have Jay Cutler, Joe Flacco, Ron Jaworski, and Roger Stallback all live on Micah, Mike, Friday morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. leader in sports. This is ESPN Radio Sports Center tonight. From expert analysis, informative interviews, electrifying highlights, and breaking news, this is Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Chuck Wilson with you. A lot going on. An interesting evening. Thursday NFL football. The Indianapolis Colts playing some really solid football. They win their fourth straight game now. And uh, 27-10 at Jacksonville. Uh, got a defensive touchdown in this game, but they've won four games in a row. What a marvelous story this has been. I mean, I don't think anybody would have thought this rebuilt Colts team would get off to this kind of a start. Six and three is really uh, pretty impressive stuff. They've done a, a really an outstanding job this year. And uh, 
Uh, took care of business on the road here, and they ran the football, outrushing Jacksonville, 138-37. to That was a big part of this game. Three turnovers by Jacksonville, a pair by Indianapolis. We'll have more post-game reaction on that coming up. Many of you heard here on ESPN Radio, Florida State. You just heard the highlight a moment ago at the top of the hour. Uh, Florida State in the last minute of the game being able to come back, beat uh, Virginia Tech in a back-and-forth game that uh, many of you may have caught either here on ESPN Radio or on ESPN on the TV side. And as far as uh, the NBA, the early game saw the Thunder get a good win. Kevin Durant making it happen, 24 points, 6 in the last minute of play to win at Chicago. Interesting story that comes out at USC. A student football manager with a USC program was dismissed from the team for intentionally deflating some of USC's footballs below the NCAA regulated levels during the first half last Saturday against Oregon. And uh, the officials discovered the underinflated balls, reinflated them, three of them, before the game, two more at halftime. All of the balls were at the prescribed inflation for the second half. Now, USC looked into it. The student manager said he did it. He said that with, without the knowledge or instruction from any USC athlete, coach, staff member, etc., he took the, the heat for this. When you deflate the football just a little bit, it does make it easier to throw uh, and a little bit easier to catch. The school's been reprimanded and fined by the Pac-12. Here's what Coach Lane Kiffin had to say. Compliance department obviously did a very, did a very thorough check and research of everything involved to make sure that there was no knowledge of any coaches or players knowing anything about this. So um, I don't know why it was done. Um, what I've been told by the conference is um, they fixed a number of the balls prior to kickoff. So um, I guess we were playing with some deflated balls and some non-deflated balls. Gary Pasquitz uh, is the founder of WeAreUSC.com. He wrote a blog piece on ESPN.com today that you might want to check out. Uh, I talked with him a little bit earlier and asked him why this it perhaps is a more significant story having occurred at USC than it might be had it occurred in another football program. Well, it's been real interesting, Chuck. Obviously, I think you have to look at uh, the, the head coach, Lane Kiffin, and his history through the years. You can either say that controversy seems to follow this guy, or he is just the unluckiest coach that has ever been out there, because it really goes back to you know his days. Uh, I guess a little bit at Oakland, his clashes with uh, Al Davis. Then you get to Tennessee, and he was known for making you know statements there and outlandish statements. And things were kind of under the radar once he got to USC, and everything was really headed in the right direction. And it sounded like he was saying, you know, I had to do those things when I was at those stops, but now that I'm at USC, I don't have to. And then this year there has just been a steady stream of distractions from Kiffin himself that have just added up all season long with the tough year that it's been for USC. It kind of got to that point today and just, boy, you just heard the reaction from the Trojan fans just going, boy, not, not again. Just another thing again from Kiffin, and that's that's what a lot of people are struggling with today. Gary, when we're looking at kind of these around the edges on the ethics issues, what are we looking at with Lane Kiffin? A guy who it seems wants to push the envelope, who is looking for every competitive advantage uh, that he can, and I don't think that's really uh, something that you know most every coach in the country doesn't uh, subscribe to. You want to do what you can, but it just seems like with Lane that, that there's a pattern with maybe it goes a little differently. And I think just uh, really the one a couple weeks ago, Chuck, when you had the jersey switching of, of the holder. The, that they put a backup quarterback in a punter's jersey. That was one where a lot of USC fans rose up and said, you know, that one doesn't taste right. That's not the way we do things here at USC. The USC athletic director, Pat Hayden, we know his background. We know how important the tradition and history of the USC program is to him, former quarterback. He released a statement at the AD saying, we acknowledge the Pac-12's reprimand and fine. We regret this incident occurred. It was unacceptable, and we apologize for it. I can assure you this will not happen again. Again, where do you see Pat Hayden on this issue as part of the larger picture? I, I think this is as serious as you're going to get for Pat Hayden. Uh, you hit it on the head. He pays attention to the image and the brand of USC as much as any athletic director is going to. And after that jersey switching incident a couple weeks ago, uh, he came out with his strongest comments yet about Lane, just saying, hey, he's a coach in progress, but he does some things sometimes that will make you shake your head. And that, that's something that you say, okay, the athletic director is watching a, a coach that he's admitting is learning on the job. And that's not something USC folks are used to, is seeing a coach learn on the job. 
but but these latest ones that they're adding up, and I know Hayden is backing Kiffin on this one, and uh, that that's what we're hearing publicly. You know, it's something that's going to be talked about in the off season when they have their review, when they talk about everything, the distractions that are going on this year, going back to the fall camp when there's the situation with his with his AP vote, um, to everything that's gone on. These are the kind of things that Hayden's going to talk to Kiffin about. You don't need to do those things at USC. It's not what USC football is about. Gary Paskowitz, uh, weareusc.com. Check out uh, his uh, blog today on ESPN.com. Gary, appreciate your time and insights. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chuck. You got it. Uh, here, here, I think, is where my problem is. You know, look, anybody who thinks the team manager came up with this idea on his own, I mean, that's nonsense. Yeah, I don't know who suggested that it would help the team if he did it. He's taken the blame. But if you think that he took it upon himself to tamper with the inflation of the footballs without any input from anyone else, then you're pretty naive. And look, the USC football program should be embarrassed, especially head coach Lane Kiffin. Uh, he has had a, a less than sterling reputation when it comes to creating a, a culture of strict adherence to the rules and the intent of the rules. This is the University of Southern California, USC, a history of football excellence. Uh, the football program at USC, damaged by recruiting violations, NCAA sanctions, they've got to be especially vigilant when it comes to the rules and ethics. Did the deflating of the footballs being used by USC against Oregon have a huge impact on the game? No, it's doubtful, but that's not the point. And, you know, it's funny. I always hear the same defense in these situations. Ah, oh, Chuck, you're making a big deal out of nothing. It's just gamesmanship. Everybody looks for an edge. Everybody does. It's just not worth discussing. But you know what? It is a problem because the chipping away at rules by calling it gamesmanship hurts the essence of competition. We want a fair, even playing field. The fact that it's been going on a long time should not make anything more acceptable, especially in a school environment. When it comes to cheating in order to gain a competitive advantage, nothing's really minor. You're either following the rules and most importantly, the intent and spirit of the rules or you're not. And my argument would be, what message are you sending when you excuse this kind of cheating by arguing that it's a minor issue? When you condone it, you're saying it's okay depending on degree. And my argument would be, when the intent is to circumvent the intent of the rule, when that's what you're trying to do, you're wrong. It's the wrong thing to do. And USC, there's no way it should be happening there. Hey, coming up, we will hear from Chris Bosch, a conversation both about the Miami Heat and his thoughts from afar on the Los Angeles Lakers. By the way, Chris Bosch will be in a uh, sitcom coming up next week. We'll tell you about it. It's coming up. This is Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio at ESPNRadio.com. This Veterans Day, give a gift to our military heroes and their families through USO Wishbook. Visit USO.org forward slash ESPN. Oh, hey, Samantha. Do you want to be my boyfriend? Oh, uh, sure. Wow, I'd love to. Great. Now give me your Subway steak melt. Mm, my melt? Yeah. I'm your girlfriend now. I, I, I don't think this is working out. Get your own Subway steak melt, like the tender, juicy steak and bacon melt, or the succulent, smoky chipotle steak and cheese. Get yours today. Subway. Eat fresh. E-discovery laws and government regulations require that certain businesses save electronic communication, namely emails, or face potential fines. Barracuda Networks, the world leader in content security, application delivery, and data protection, with more than 130,000 customers worldwide, can help. The Barracuda Message Archiver indexes and preserves all email communication while enforcing policies for regulatory compliance. Save email. Avoid penalties. Visit barracuda.com slash archiver to try the Barracuda Message Archiver free for 30 days. That's barracuda.com slash archiver. Broadway Joe Namath, weekly on The Michael K Show. What do you think Eli ran into? Is he slumping, or was that just a good Pittsburgh defensive scheme? Well, I certainly don't think he's slumping. What they went through during the week with uh, the hurricane, I know Coach Coughlin doesn't want to use that as an excuse, nor will the player. Uh, I, I just think that the whole week caught up with the Giants. The Joe Namath Hour, every Monday at 6 p.m. on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Hi, it's Colin Thursday. Bill Romanowski on pot smoking in the NFL. Greg Cosell thinks Eli Manning's arm? Well, you have to listen to find out. Download the Thursday Thundering Herd podcast. Check it out, ESPNRadio.com. An ESPN Radio Extra Point with Colin Cowherd. To me, there's 
eight organizations in the NFL, I counted them this morning, that feel like it's 100% about winning Super Bowls. Eight. There may be more, but I get a very strong feeling from ownership down, it is all about winning Super Bowls. New York Giants, Green Bay Packers, San Francisco 49ers with Harbaugh, New England, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Indianapolis, and Denver. That's all that matters. It's about winning Super Bowls. Tennessee drafted Vince Young. They didn't think Vince Young was great. They thought he could sell tickets from a source close to that organization. Part of getting the Vince Young deal done, ah, people here will love him. That's not about winning Super Bowls. The New York Jets getting Tebow. Disruptive. It's not about winning Super Bowls. Eight teams in the league. That's all that matters. ESPNRadio.com. Right now. Hi, I'm Bob Picozzi. Mike Greenberg and Mike Golick spend Thursday's edition of Mike and Mike at the U.S. Coast Guard Academy in New London, Connecticut. And Greeny and Golick discuss Green Bay's 6-3 and three start, the difficult decision that Charles Tillman of the Bears could have to face on Sunday, the Armed Forces Classic, and much more. They visited with Packers coach Mike McCarthy, Michigan State basketball coach Tom Izzo, Chris Mortensen, and Brian Billick. It's all yours on the Mike and Mike page at ESPNRadio.com. Meanwhile, over at the Pod Center page... Hey, it's Matthew Berry from the Fantasy Focus Football Podcast. Today on the show, Nate Ravitz and I talk about the injuries to Hakeem Nicks, the Raiders running back situation, the Week 10 ranks. Ivan Mazel here on the ESPNU College Football Podcast. Dave Nubbin of the Big 12, Mitch Sherman of the Recruiting Nation, and Paul Houlihan of the Sugar Bowl are all here. You can hear this and more on the Podsetter page at ESPNRadio.com. Log on to the ESPNRadio.com stream, the most listened to stream in the world. This Veterans Day at Lowe's, get the Maytag Centennial Washer and Dryer for $798. That's a savings of $430. And a Bosch 18-volt lithium drill for $99. That's a savings of $70. Choose 18-month special financing on purchases of $599 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer is valid from November 7th through the 12th while supplies last. Credit offer valid from November 8th through the 12th. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offer. Some exclusions apply. See store for details, including Maytag offer. Center tonight. Sports Center tonight. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Now you can test drive Snapshot even if you have insurance with another company. See how much you can save before you switch. Harris in the front court. Harris right side. Bosch. Nice step around Bosch. Right to the rim. Layup. Got it and fouled as he switched hands going up. How about Bosch coming in from the right side? Switched from his left hand to his right and put it in. That's got everybody smiling on the Miami Heat bench. Mike Inglis on WAXY. Chuck Wilson with you. Sports Center tonight continuing here on ESPN Radio. Chris Bosch of the Miami Heat will be a guest star in NBC's new comedy, Go On, starring Matthew Perry. It'll be airing next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. He joins us via the Subway Fresh Take Hotline. And Chris, welcome. You know, you've had a season gaining familiarity with one another's game of the court. And now you, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, you put together this championship season last year. And now working on going back-to-back if you can, how would you describe the on-court chemistry now and and what could still be improved? Well, it's it's, um, it's a lot smoother, um, I think, at this point than last year. You know, last year we were still trying to figure some things out with with the shortened training camp. But, you know, it's another year uh, that we've been together. And, um, you know, we're just really looking forward to getting better. Um, you know, continuing a great pace uh, with our defense and, and just learning how to play a high octane offense and still uh, maintain our uh, defensive first mentality. I want to ask you about uh, LeBron James because he's worked so hard on his game. Where is his game now in terms of the most that he can get out of that ability? Well, I mean, I think um, Coach has put us in a position where we can just be ourselves. Um, he doesn't have to change anything or do anything that he can't do. You know, he's a, he's a great all-around player. Uh, we know that he's going to be in a post a lot. He's going to be coming off those screen rolls and uh, catch and shoot situations. And it makes it a little bit easier because he's so unselfish. Uh, you know, he's going to dish the ball to, to the uh, open guy that we have. And uh, he can rebound, too. So when he gets rebounds, he's going to push it up the court. And, 
you know, see uh, see what the best case scenario is. Chris, how much better can LeBron James become? Um, I mean, you know, uh, I think there are no limits. Uh, you know, it's all on him uh, how how good he wants to be. I think it's uh, you know, it's all there in front of him. Um, and you know, we're uh, we're all in this together. We're going to make sure that we all continue to improve so that we can make each other's job a little bit easier. And I think, um, you know, that's uh, you know, our improvement is dependent on the team's success. So as long as we stick together, keep working together, um, you know, everybody's potential is very good. Chris, if, if Ray Allen uh, continues to be healthy, he's already shown he can really shoot that basketball. You saw him from across the court as an opponent now he's on your team tell us about the ray allen you're coming to know uh, well i mean first of all he's uh he's a good dude he's made the transition uh very very easy uh as far as the locker room is concerned he comes in uh, i think um everybody knows about his classic uh work ethic and you know he's um he's just an easily integratable part uh to what we're trying to do here you know, offense is huge. Uh, you know, we all know what he can do. He can space the floor. But, you know, we want to open up his game. We want to put him in positions to where he can showcase what he can do. He can come off pick and rolls, make assists. Uh, he can finish. His mid-range is great. And I think he's uh, another all-around player that is really going to, really, really going to help us out. Chris Bosch, Miami Heat. He'll be a guest star in NBC's new comedy, Go On, starring Matthew Perry. It'll air next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm Chuck Wilson at Sports Center tonight here on ESPN Radio. You can't control what another team does. You can't control what you guys do. In terms of your game collectively with the Heat, what could stand in the way of another title? In other words, what's the one area you, you've got to really pay attention to that'll probably decide things? Well, I mean, uh, defense and rebounding is everything. You know, we know that. That's our staple. That's what we build uh, our success on. And, um, you know, whether we do that or not at a consistent pace is going to determine, um, you know, if we're in a position uh, where we want to be in at the end of the year. You know, I know that uh, we've always preached that ever since we came together, and Coach is always honest about that. But I think it's uh, just really become, you know, second nature to us. Uh, we're all professionals, we're all men, so we know if uh, we're being realistic with ourselves, if we're lacking or, um, you know, really coming up short uh, on a nightly basis. And, you know, I think in the last uh, couple of games, we've really cleaned that up. So I think um, as long as we limit teams to one shot, you know, that's, uh, that's the most important stat, you know, uh, defensive rebounding and, and, and getting stops. Chris, of course, everybody right now in the NBA is looking over at the Los Angeles Lakers off to this one and four start, and you're almost in a unique position, you guys, with the Heat, because you had the, the big three, and it took a little time to be able to meld those talents. What are your thoughts seeing the Lakers off to this start? They look kind of disjointed on the court. What are your observations on what they're going through? Well, I mean, you know, people have to understand, um, you know, you don't just come in and, and, and put a new team together and and have all these new pieces, and then it just works. You know, I think that only works on the Xbox and PlayStation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't just throw a team out there and and and, and just say, all right, uh, we're we're a championship team. I think uh, you know we learned that right off the bat coming here, and um, for some reason, people just still have those expectations. That that's just something you have to deal with uh, throughout the course of a season, but. Um, it, it's all about how you react to it. I don't think it's all about what happens. Because what, what advice would you give to the happen? Lakers? Um, I don't know. I wouldn't give much advice, man. I mean, you know, they're still our opponents. Uh, <laughs> I, I totally respect the, you know, the the opponent and everything, but I don't want to help them too much because they have a lot of potential. Let me ask you about just uh, the Thunder before we let you go. Uh, that was the opponent you had a really hard-fought series for the title. And then the Thunder right before the season, they can't sign James Harden, and they moved him. What were your thoughts on what that would do to the Thunder when you first heard the news? Um, I was uh, I was a bit surprised, but, you know, not really surprised because that is a very difficult situation to be in for both sides. Um, but, you know, it's a reminder that this is a business, you know, and uh, the franchise or the player is going to make – 
best um, a decision uh, for what's best for them. And, um, you know, he was a huge, huge part of uh, what they did last year. And he was a handful, especially in the four quarters. And, um, you know, obviously he was a sixth man of the year and everything, and I think that means something. But, you know, um, they're going to have to uh, figure some things out and, you know, try to fill that hole, not only offensively, but defensively and systematically as well. Next Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we will see you on Go On, NBC's new comedy. Tell us what it was like working with Matthew Perry. It was cool, man. You know, uh, <laughs> I kind of, I, I was kind of joking with him a little bit. You know, I, I, I've <laughs> seen a few episodes of Friends because, you know, I've had friends who watched it all the time, and um, you know, he was just a really cool guy. Uh, you know, on set, it was really fascinating just just seeing the business of everything seeing how they work and uh he's been in tv a long time and just how he works and how hands-on he was uh with everybody on set and just how things went it was uh it was really great and i hope uh, i hope the episode is uh is really good i think it's funny so we'll see Chris Bosch of the Miami Heat guest star on NBC's new comedy, Go On, starring Matthew Perry. It'll air next Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Chris, great pleasure as always. Thanks for your time on ESPN Radio. Thanks, Bob. You got it. Uh, you know, I'll be interested also, you know, Chris is at that center position. There are some real advantages because of his ability to take defenders off the dribble, the spot-up game, the growth of that big three uh, is uh, is really something to watch. Hey, coming up. What should we look for in Saturday's games involving the four undefeated teams in college football at the top of those BCS standings? Mel Kuyper Jr. will join us. Also coming up, we'll talk about uh, the Lakers and their situation and more on the Colts' victory over the Jaguars. Keep it here. This is ESPN Radio at ESPNRadio.com. You want to enjoy whiskey, but you don't want the whiskey burn. Well, what if whiskey wasn't hard to drink? What if it was easy? What if I told you it can be? Try the light, easy taste of Canadian Mist Whiskey. Triple distilled and aged in oak on the shores of the Georgian Bay. So lighten up with Canadian Mist. This is going to be easy. Drink responsibly. Canadian Mist blended Canadian whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, brown form in Louisville, Kentucky. Progressive presents Flo's newest smash hit. The Name Your Price tool gives you lots of coverage options. The Name Your Price tool. You give us a budget and we'll show you a range of coverage options. But we can't go over all the dessert options. Your server will be back in just a second and he'll explain. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Looking to rebound after the bye week. The Jets travel west to face the Seattle Seahawks. We've earned that 3-5 and five record. That's clearly not where, where we want to be at. Their season may be at a crossroads. Which way will they go? We have work to do. I'm excited to get the guys back. I look forward to the second half of the season. Jets, Seahawks. Coverage gets underway Sunday at 2 on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Hi, football fans. I think you'll agree that you've got to have great seats. And now it's even easier to pick the seats you want wherever you are thanks to StubHub's new mobile seat maps. They're the only interactive seat maps that let you search for NFL tickets by section and actually see the view from your seat. All from your mobile phone. How cool is that? So whether you're searching StubHub on your computer or your phone, it's easy to find the seats you want. Yet another reason thousands of fans use StubHub for their NFL tickets every Sunday. Stop, Mike Rowe here at a Ford dealer with a little Q&A for Fiona. According to the signs, Ford is having some sort of big tire event. How would you describe the event? It's big. The savings one might enjoy at the event. They're big. What about the selection? Big. Get a $60 mail-in rebate on four select tires. Use the Ford service credit card for an additional 60 bucks. Click on the banner ad. So I think we can agree then that Ford's tire event is good sized. No, Michael. It's big. Subject to credit approval, rebate by check. Offer cannot be combined. See participating Ford dealer for rebate details by 11 30 12. Ba ba black sheep. Have you any wool? No, sir. No, sir. Some nincompoop with pantyhose pulled over his face stole all my wool sweaters and gaming system. 
Luckily, the Geico Insurance Agency recently helped me with renter's insurance. Everything stolen was replaced, and the little boy who lives down the lane was caught, trying to sell it online. Call Geico and see how easy it is to switch and save on renter's insurance. The NYPD is among the best law enforcement departments in the country. The NYPD offers a job with a future, a great place to serve, and a chance to advance. Visit NYPDrecruit.com or call 212-RECRUIT for current test schedules and filing fee information. Now is the perfect time to upgrade during the first ever Rally Motors Luxury Sales Event, where upgrading to luxury has never been easier. Take advantage of attractive lease offers, special financing, and receive above book value for your trade-in. Whether you're thinking of buying or leasing a Mercedes-Benz, smart car, or Sprinter van, Rally Motors features one of the area's largest selections of competitively priced vehicles. Experience the difference during the luxury sales event and see why customers choose Rally Motors. To learn more, stop by or visit them online at rallymotors.com. FM. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Neil Jackson. The Colts have now won four straight and improved to six and three after beating the Jags 27 to 10. Top overall pick Andrew Luck had a pair of rushing touchdowns, giving him five on the year, a single season team record for a quarterback. Here's Luck. This was the biggest game to date by far, and, 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 and to win was great. Um, you know, obviously it's it's nice to be six and three, but we realize you know that's that's you know just one step in the journey. It's it's no end goal by any means, and you know we know it only gets harder from here. So we're gonna have to you know buckle down and and, and put in twice as much effort and twice as much work. Darius Butler returned an interception, 11 yards for a score, as Indy sent Jacksonville to their sixth loss in a row as they fall to one and eight. Injury updates as week 10 continues in the NFL. The Giants' Akeem Nix with his knee issue returned to practice Thursday. He says he will play Sunday against the Bengals. The Vikings' Adrian Peterson was held out of workouts because of an illness. Over to college football, number 10, Florida State, came back to beat Virginia Tech in Blacksburg 28 to 22. The Seminoles are one victory away from clinching the ACC Atlantic Division. E.J. Manuel with a 39-yard game-winning TD pass to Rashad Green that came in the final minute. Virginia Tech safety Michael Cole was taken off the field in an ambulance in the third quarter. After his head crashed into the side of a Seminoles player, Cole was taken to a nearby hospital. The team reports the redshirt freshman has a neck sprain and has feeling and movement in his extremities. Elsewhere, Arkansas State, now 7-3, and three, they knocked off Louisiana Monroe 45-23. to 23. Despite the absence of star point guard Derrick Rose, the Bulls have started the season 3-1 as they hosted the Thunder Thursday night. Steph Pelosi giving the ball, Pimmer left to the land, the foul one. Back down, step back, launches, and six and 18 footer, a dagger, baby! 19.5 left, Durant has scored a big six late timeout, Chicago. That was that Dirk Nowitzki <laughs> one-legged <laughs> step back. Oh, that was hot and candy sweet as he unleashed it. The call on WWLS, Kevin Durant, 24 points. Russell Westbrook with a double-double in Oklahoma City held off Chicago 97-91. Luol Deng, 27 points in the loss. At Portland right now, the only other game in the NBA tonight in the third quarter. The Clippers are leading the Blazers 73-63. to In college hoop, Cleveland State head coach Gary Waters, who has led the Vikings to the postseason for the past five seasons as a new seven-year contract. Mike and Mike, it's football Friday and a quarterback filled day. We will have Jay Cutler, Joe Flacco, Ron Jaworski, and Roger Stallback all live on Mike and Mike Friday morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. ESPN Radio Fan Feedback, presented by 1-800-Flowers.com. Every 1-800-Flowers.com order is backed by their 100% smile guarantee. For special offers, go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. 
Coming up in 12 minutes, we'll uh, explore the Los Angeles Lakers issue starting out at 1 and 4. And also coming up, we'll talk about uh, the Colts' victory tonight over Jacksonville. Fourth win in a row, and the Colts go to 6 and 3. It's a remarkable story for uh, this team with their rookie quarterback and, of course, their coach who's battling leukemia, uh, Chuck Pagano. Everybody's pulling for him. Let's talk some college football right now. Number 15, Texas A&M, and number 1, Alabama. Saturday afternoon, Alabama facing perhaps a Final test before the SEC championship game when it hosts uh, A&M this week. A&M has totaled 713 rushing yards and 11 touchdowns on the ground the last couple of weeks. Johnny Manziel, at quarterback. Uh, Alabama, with a win, would clinch the West. LSU did some good things. 139 on the ground, snapped a streak of 11 straight games that Alabama had held FBS opponents under 100 yards rushing. Let's welcome in ESPN NFL draft expert Mel Kuyper Jr. You hear him with Dari No. Darian Mel, ESPN Radio, 7 to 10 a.m. on Saturday mornings. He joins us via the Subway Fresh Take Hotline. Mel, how about it? Texas A&M, Alabama, what are you looking for? I tell you, it's going to be fun, too, Chuck, to see how Nick Saban's defense bounces back from a subpar effort, to say the least, against LSU. I very easily could have lost that football game. I think you got Johnny Manziel coming in. You think about Nick Saban, the motivational way he'll go about his business this week at home in Tuscaloosa. You know, a team that's really running a rough shot over everybody, playing against this defense that underachieved last week. You want to see this matchup. That's the game of the week in terms of just about everybody that follows college football. And for Alabama. Certainly, I think you'll get McCarron. Bad game, but good final drive. This is an A&M defense that has vastly improved over last season. They have a great defensive end in Demontre Moore. You got those two outstanding bookend tackles. It was fun to see them neutralize the LSU defensive ends. Can they do it to a great player who's been productive every week like Demontre Moore has been? Going to be a lot of quality matchups in this game. With Alabama last week giving up 435 yards of total offense. What did you come away from uh, that game seeing? Well, I thought going in, I had said this, Chuck, that they were overhyped. And that's not a criticism of Alabama. It's But when you hear ridiculous comments, like they're 14 points better over everybody in college football, it's Alabama and everybody else. It's Alabama could beat an NFL team. That's when I just said, enough's enough. Yeah, this is overhyping. It, it doesn't mean you're, you're saying that they're not deserving of being number one they certainly are you're not saying they may not win all their games they may well do that but I just thought LSU could hang with them and maybe beat them and they, they really should have so uh, at the end of the day I think it proved the point that they're a little overhyped and I think what Nick's going to say is hey guys let's go back to this tape or let's throw it out whatever the way he wanted to handle it but I would expect a much better effort for a team that would, was seven points Chuck less than last year's team because I've asked about people in Vegas hey if last year's team played this year's team what would the point spread be is it seven last year's team was better and we know that you can't lose all those great defensive players and be as good the, the issue was when they played a good team how would they do they had played a lot of teams they caught at the right time for, for injury reasons, whatever it may have been. Uh, you, know, you go back to Arkansas with Tyler Wilson hurt, the situation with Michigan not having their back, catching everybody at the right time. So I don't make any more of it, Chuck, than the fact that Alabama was overhyped. They're still a very good team, and A&M has got Johnny football. What could be better than that? A great offense against a great defense, great pitcher, great hitter. That's what you want in sports. That's what you want in football, and we have it on Saturday. He's Mel Kuyper, Jr. We're looking at Week 11 in college football. I'm Chuck Wilson, Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio. Number two, Kansas State at 9-0. and On the road, taking on a 6-3 and TCU team. We're uh, looking at the health of Kansas State quarterback Colin uh, Klein. That's been the main story all week. We do think he will end up playing, but this is a guy, 65% of the offense comes from him. What are your thoughts, KSU, on the road against TCU? Well, I talked about this game on ESPN today on Sports Center, and I I thought Kansas State was a team you would say, and I had said it a several weeks ago when they played Iowa State names, and they eked that game out, won by less than the experts thought, and you know that was a game where you said, Mo, that looks like upset alert. This one looks like upset alert to me. You're coming off a couple wins where they were challenging games. You had to score a lot of points. You, know, you had won some tough road games against Oklahoma and West Virginia. Now you got your quarterback a little banged up. You're playing a team in Fort Worth on their field where they are a team that is fundamentally sound, well coached, and they know how to win, and they have some personnel that's going to be moving on to the NFL. The young quarterback's hung in there and done a good job. Uh, you think about the ability of this defense to make a play. It's going to be Fields, the young true freshman defensive end. He's been a sack artist all year. He needs to get after the 
quarterback Klein, and maybe for a quarterback coming in not 100%, get some nice hard hits there going. So uh, I think it's a game where Kansas State better not just limp in. They better come in ready to bring their A game. That's what you always look for when you say upset alert. Bring your A game. Don't bring your C-plus game because for Kansas State, in this particular environment of Fort Worth, may not be good enough. Number three, Oregon on the road against California on ESPN, 10.30 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday. Oregon offense, chance to make more history this week. Ducks have scored at least 42 points all nine of their games this season. That tied with the Ducks team from two years ago. Longest streak to start a season in major college history. Who stopped that streak? Cal. He <laughs> scored just 15 points this week. Ducks at Cal once again. Well, it normally would be a perfect sandwich game for an upset alert being on Oregon because you're coming off the USC game. you got Stanford at home next week and you're playing at Cal. Lowly Cal not going to a bowl, struggling. Keenan Allen, the best offensive player, out injured. You know, But does Cal have enough, Chuck? I, I, they don't have enough. Uh, but it is a, a game where you're going to get a letdown. You're not going to get Oregon's best uh, best game here. Uh, and, and if Cal rises up and plays their best game, is that enough to to keep it close, who knows? We'll see. But for Oregon, can anybody prevent 50 from being put on the board? Uh, is anybody going to do that? Arizona State, they scored 43 there, 49 against Arizona, but they eased up in some of those games. Uh, yeah, Again, uh, Cal's defense is going to be up against it. Oregon's got Kenyon Barner now right behind Colin Klein. He could maybe steal his Heisman if Klein's banged up or slumps a little bit late or doesn't play to the level that he has been. Barner's right there to do it. So uh, It's going to be a game where you expect Oregon to roll in a let down scenario. It'll be interesting to see whether it's closer than people think or not. Bottom line is the game we're looking forward to is Stanford coming up because, let's face it, you know, Stanford's a team that Notre Dame had trouble beating in South Bend. Oregon gets them at home. Then you get the Civil War game in Corvallis against a good, well-coached Oregon State team. So for Oregon, the next several weeks are going to have to earn the right to be in this national championship hunt. I'm just not sure that Cal's going to be enough of a challenger. Mel, quick word on Notre Dame, number four, mm-hmm. nine and zero, oh, going to Boston College, a two and seven team. ABC's got that eight p.m. Eastern time Saturday. Should not have. I understand another situation where you know let down after the overtime win against Pitt. Uh, you're a big favorite again over Boston College. Boston College doesn't have enough. Uh, Notre Dame, though, I think when you look at the battle to play for a national title, I said today they have to hope that two of those three teams in front of them lose because when you struggle against Pitt as a seventeen point favorite, you struggle against BYU you all these games are at home when you're separating teams Chuck you got to go by that Oregon hasn't been challenged really you think about Kansas State think about Alabama last week that was at LSU good football team and number one in my opinion going into the year number two I should say going into the year they win that game Notre Dame's resume to me not as good as those they have to win out and hope that they get some help when from two of those three teams losing that's ESPN's Mel Kuyper Jr. NFL draft expert Darian Mel ESPN radio Saturday mornings thanks you got it Chuck and remember, uh, ESPN, ESPN Radio, uh, ES, watch ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU, the whole family. Check out ESPN.com. Figure out your uh, viewing schedule for the weekend. And uh, you can check out m- among the games that will be gone will be uh, Oregon State and Stanford. Uh, that uh, game is one of those that I think people will watch this weekend around the nation. But how about Mississippi State and LSU on ESPN? That's the 7 p.m. Eastern time game. A couple of 7-2 teams. That ought to be a pretty good game that uh, will be coming up. Uh, straight ahead, I want to talk about the Los Angeles Lakers. We'll let you hear a quick comment from both Mike Brown and from a annoyed Kobe Bryant. Frankly, I don't blame him for being annoyed, but we're going to check in with the Lakers and the latest on this team that's one and four, and everybody wants to know how quickly this team's going to get this thing turned around. That's coming up straight ahead. Keep it here. This is Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Micah Micah Football Friday on a quarterback filled day. We will have Jay Cutler, Joe Flacco, Ron Jaworski, and Roger Staubach all live on Micah Mike Friday morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com.
This Veterans Day at Lowe's, get the Maytag Centennial Washer and Dryer for $798. That's a savings of $430. And a Bosch 18-volt lithium drill for $99. That's a savings of $70. Choose 18-month special financing on purchases of $599 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer is valid from November 7th through the 12th while supplies last. Credit offer valid from November 8th through the 12th. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offer. Some exclusions apply. See store for details, including Maytag offer. It's time to get winter ready. Dick's Sporting Goods has more of the best brands to keep you warm as the weather gets colder. The North Face, Columbia, Spider, Burton, Copen, Marmot, Mountain Hardware, and more. Dick's has the widest selection in styles and colors in men's, women's, and youth jackets and accessories. And don't forget to grab a new snowboard. Dick's carries the snow equipment you need. Before hitting the slopes, stop into Dick's Sporting Goods today. Every season starts at Dick's. If you've got a business, you qualify for the official Mike and Mike office stimulus package. When you move from your office into a gorgeous Regis office, not only will you save a fortune, you'll get two months absolutely free. Your Regis office comes beautifully furnished in a prestigious building. You get a receptionist, meeting rooms, and state-of-the-art video conferencing with no long-term lease. And you get two months free by mentioning Mike and Mike. All you have to do is call 1-800-OFFICES. That's 1-800-OFFICES. This is Terry Bradshaw. I've won a lot of games by one point, so I know the value of an extra point. My friends at Ferguson are fond of extra points, too. Ferguson's been the leader for plumbing and HVAC supply since 1953, so you always get what you need fast. Touchdown! And now, when pros order online with Ferguson, you'll get Pro Plus Rewards points. Use these points to get stuff like sports gear, gadgets, and more. Check out Pro Plus at Ferguson.com and tell them Terry sent you. Monday, behind Big Ben, we got Elmer. the Steelers took down the reigning Super Bowl champs. Let's go! Now, one of the hottest teams in the game, Touchdown Steelers, returns home in search of a fourth straight win against the Chiefs. Countdown sets the stage at 6.30 Eastern. Then, Monday Night Football, Chiefs, Steelers, 8.30 on ESPN. It all comes down to Monday night. Center tonight. Subway Restaurants is proud to support the Wounded Warrior Project this Veterans Day. Here on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com, Chuck Wilson with you. And boy, there's been so much talk about this Los Angeles Lakers team. An off day for the Lakers, but plenty of questions about the team's one and four start. The Lakers rank ninth in the league in points allowed per game, 20th in opponent field goal percentage. You have two very different people in Kobe Bryant and Dwight Howard and their reaction to this most recent loss in which they didn't look good. 33.8% shooting in the loss to Utah. Uh, they missed a dozen free throws, committed 19 turnovers, four for 23 from three. I mean, it was ugly stuff. They play Golden State at Staples Center on Friday night. Lakers 33-3 and three versus the uh, Warriors at Staples Center. But they're averaging over 18 and a half. Uh, turnovers per game. Let's hear first from kind of an embattled, although he's he's taken above the fray here, Mike Brown, the coach of the Lakers, on kind of the approach that he's trying to take right now early in the season. We all are frustrated, uh, so so don't get me wrong there, you know, because I mean, we want to win, and we want to win every time we step on the floor, but, uh, you know, as, as a head coach of this team, for me to walk around, you know, or mopey or however you want to call it is not the right thing to do of course there was a lot made about the look on kobe bryant's face uh late in the game they're losing he was obviously really unhappy with it and people were interpreting his stare uh as kind of this death stare and this negative toward his coach kobe bryant asked about it during today you like this like, I was upset at Mike Brown. I gave him, like, the dust there. I don't give a shit how it's interpreted. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm too old to deal with that stuff. I really am. I mean, I, I've been his biggest supporter. So I'm, I'm really too old to be dealing with childish things. Yeah, I mean, everybody, you know, everybody here would be frustrated to lose a game. You're upset. You're angry. I mean, so it's, it has nothing to do with one particular part. I mean, it's just... God, people are bored. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, 
I like Kobe Bryant. I think he's very honest in these situations. I think it does. I think he, he, you know, he realizes, look, they're playing lousy basketball right now. They've got to work out quite a bit of things. The defensive end is a mess. Obviously, not having Steve Nash there and not being able to get playing time with him and working on this, uh, this offense. It is ugly right now. They're one and four. How much pressure is on Mike Brown right now? Well, you know, you, you've heard uh, the kind of the, uh, the the situation in which you come out and you give that, uh, you know, support for your coach type thing. You've gotten that from the general manager, Mr. Buss. And, and you have a situation now in which everybody's kind of wondering how long the Lakers may be willing to go along not playing good basketball. Here's ESPN's Chris Broussard. The Los Angeles Lakers aren't yet ready to hit the panic button on head coach Mike Brown, but they do have their finger on the concern button, according to league sources. With the Lakers struggling badly under Brown, particularly in his so-called area of expertise, defense, some within the Lakers organization are wondering if he is up to the task of building them into a championship team. There's a feeling that some of the same deficiencies that limited Brown in Cleveland may be rearing their head in Los Angeles. Angeles. Nonetheless, I'm told the Lakers have not yet put together a list of potential replacements and that they will give Brown time to turn this team around. But even though he's only in his second season with the Lakers, Brown badly needs to start winning now. That's ESPN's Chris Broussard. For more insights, let's welcome in Dave McMenamin, ESPNLA.com. Dave, weigh in on this. What is your take on the situation right now with the Lakers? Well, Chuck, I think Chris Broussard really said it well by, by talking about the immediacy of the problem right now because the Lakers roster is a one- or two-year championship window. When you talk about Kobe's only under contract for two more years, Nash has three more years, but he's already 38 years old. So you're talking about them being key pieces along with Dwight Howard and Pau Gasol. they got to win now. So that immediacy is kind of putting pressure on everything. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, they've only played five games together Steve Nash has only played two and a half of those five games together, so there should be some patience. But when you have a $100 million payroll and championship expectations, everything becomes heightened. What is the best pace and the best offense for this team to run? You know, I think I'm kind of in the minority, but I do believe in the Princeton-style offense that, that Mike Brown is trying to instill here. I, I think in the long run, if you can get all these players on the same page, they're able to read what the defense is doing and have their offense be the one dictating the terms rather than the vice versa and the defense force them into bad shots. That's going to make them a tough team in a playoff series, especially when it becomes more of a grinded out game and you're playing half court offense. And, and if you have that ability uh, to kind of uh, work in conjunction with one another, uh, I think the Lakers starting five, uh, they do complement each other on offensive end. That said, though, as they're learning what they're trying to do, if they're making 19, 20 turnovers a game, as they have been so far, they can't win games because other teams are going to transition opportunities, and that's going to be 20 points per game given up by turnovers that they won't be able to overcome. See, the question I have is that Steve Nash being out right now, he's not going to be back right away. And the question is, how well will this offense function before he comes back, and will they there be enough patience to wait for this thing to come together? Well, I, I think you know you, you should. I mean, if you spent all summer teaching these guys the the Princeton the best of their ability, and you spent all training camp doing it, uh, to think about scrapping it now, especially when you even had it, you haven't even had a chance to see what it looks like with Steve Nash, the greatest point guard of his generation, involved. Uh, I just don't think that's a smart plan. You got to take the long view on this. Uh, I think Steve Nat, Steve Blake, excuse me, has filled in admirably. Uh, he had a tough game in Utah, shooting two for ten from the field, but he was getting good looks, and and basically all the players I felt like were getting good looks. They just got to hit shots. If Steve Blake goes five for ten, you know, there's he was shooting mostly three pointers. There's nine more points, and the Lakers win the game. If the Lakers, you know, don't miss fourteen free throws they maybe win that game in Utah. So I, I think the record looks terrible, the 1-4 and four record, but overall the offense hasn't been as bad as, as maybe some people suggest. All right, I've got one minute. I just want you to, to tell me what you think the dynamic is right now with Kobe Bryant, who is so driven. It's one of the things I really respect about him, how driven he is to win, as against Dwight Howard, who simply has a much different personality 
And I'm just wondering how you think that dynamic works at a time in which they're not playing well. You know, as a team. It's difficult. Talk, because you're talking about, first of all, you're talking about two guys, there's an age gap of about eight years, so it's not like they have, you know, a kind of a common ground. <laughs> you know, they're talking about uh, the same things, you know, uh, you know, there are different points in their lives, there are different points in their careers. I think Dwight's enthusiasm can be a positive thing for this team. Uh, Dwight told us how before the Detroit game, the, the only win of the season, he got the group pumped up and shoot around by, you know, infusing his in, uh, his energy and getting the guys ready to perform at a high level that night. Uh, Kobe is, is going to be the iron-fisted dictator in the Lakers system. We all know that. Uh, I think there can be a, a dynamic of a good cop, bad cop. We saw that for years with Derek Fisher counterbalancing the type of leadership that Kobe brought to the team. So I think there is a place for Dwight's kind of sunny side view to things. It's just hard to swallow at this point when the team is one and four. You kind of want everyone to hunker down a little bit. Dave McMenamin, ESPNLA.com. Always appreciate your time and insights. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Chuck. And I said, said very interesting. He's got a, an interesting take on this. It's Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio. I'm Chuck Wilson. Uh, coming up, we will have more on the Indianapolis Colts. You'll hear from Andrew Luck on the team's 27 to 10 victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars. A night in which they get a defensive touchdown, they get an early lead, which is very important when you're playing a team that you should beat, so forth. Uh, it is important not to give them the the feeling that they can win this game, and they did a. Good job in this. We'll also check in and get some thoughts from ESPN NBA analyst Chris Mullen on how the Thunder looked tonight with a road win in Chicago. We'll get his take also on the Lakers situation. We'll uh, also hear from Darius Butler from the uh, Colts. And uh, Joe Tessitore has an interesting take with his Heismanology on the Heisman watch and why Colin Klein might not be quite the favorite to win that award that you might think. That's coming up. Keep it here. This is Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is going to get worse, much worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. And if you owe the IRS back payroll taxes, chances are you will be visited at your home or business by an IRS agent. Don't become paralyzed by fear. Take action now. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help. Our team of experienced tax attorneys can get you protected. Stop collections and negotiate a permanent settlement with the IRS and state, potentially saving you thousands of dollars. At U.S. Tax Shield, our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. No games and no tricky upsells. That's why we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. Put an end to your torment. Get protected. Get the shield. Call U.S. Tax Shield now at 800-226-8184. That's 800-226-8184. 800-226-8184. Knicks head coach Mike Woodson with Stephen A. Smith and Ryan Rucco. What's your definition of success for this year's New York Knicks team? For our goal is to win our division and be able to host first round at home. That That is not going to change. I mean, that's what we're playing for. Knicks coach Mike Woodson every week all season long with Stephen A. and Ryan Rucco on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Are you making frequent bathroom trips during the night? Do you have a strong urge to urinate? If ignored, these symptoms may result in complicated kidney and bladder infections, kidney failure, or loss of bladder function. Additionally, if you are a male of 50 years or older and experiencing sexual dysfunction, you may be at risk of a stroke or heart attack. The same disease process that affects blood vessels which lead to the heart and brain affect the delicate vessels that supply blood to the genital organs. Careful evaluation of erectile dysfunction can uncover these problems years before critical damage occurs. Compassionate urologists at the New York Urologic Institute specialize in improving urologic and sexual function. Latest technological advances allow the patient to get answers to diagnostic tests immediately, reducing anxiety. Call the New York Urologic Institute at 347-508-3991. Offices are conveniently located in Queens and Brooklyn. For timely, effective treatment, call 347-508-3991. That's 347-508-3991. Hi, it's Colin Thursday. Bill Romanowski on pot smoking in the NFL. Greg Cosell thinks Eli Manning's arm? Well, you have to listen to find out. Download the Thursday Thundering Herd podcast. Check it out, ESPNRadio.com. 
This is The Herd with Colin Cowherd. Limitations can be a blessing. Because when you have a gift, a physical gift especially, you're going to want to use it. Always been my issue with RG3. Oh, I know he's faster than Andrew Luck. But in the end, Andrew Luck's lack of relative speed is a gift. gift. RG3 can run a 4-1-8-40. Yeah, great. He's going to want to do that. He goes out running and gets absolutely popped. Colin Cowherd. Weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio. UCI President Pat McQuaid included this as he announced penalties for Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong has no place in cycling. Mike and Mike didn't like the tone. Here's what they're going to do with the seven Tour de France's that Lance Armstrong won. They are not going to declare a winner. Why? Because in the sport that Lance Armstrong does not belong because of doping, 20 of the 21, 20 of the 21 top three finishers in the seven years Armstrong was in the race have all been tied to doping. So the top three finishers in those seven races, 20 of the 21 have been tied to doping. Sounds like it's exactly the sport Lance seems to be involved in. Uh, Or, Mr. McQuaid, maybe the answer is your sport has no place in the world of legitimate competitive yeah. sports. Better that. That's a better statement. Because better it has stated. become so totally <laughs> and laughably overrun by doping. It's Mike and Mike in the Morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. And radio and ESPNRadio.com. <laughs> Nick's Mavericks. Friday night at 7. WEPN FM. WEPN HD1. New York. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Neil Jackson coming off his single game rookie record, 433 yards passing and a win over Miami. Top overall pick Andrew Luck found success on the ground Thursday night against struggling Jacksonville. The Colts with Donald Brown as the tailback. And this time Andrew rolls to the right side looking. Pump fake, he's going to run. Touchdown, he's fourth of the year. Ties a Colts record that Peyton Manning has done it twice. Burt Jones did it once. That's his fourth rushing touchdown. The Colts lead it 9 nothing. And the call courtesy of 1070, the fan. In the first half, Andrew Luck scored his fourth and fifth rushing touchdowns of the year, setting the team record for a quarterback in one season. And the Colts go on to beat Jacksonville 27 to 10. Indy improves to six and three. The Jags fall to one and eight. Injury updates from around the NFL. Tampa Bay's Michael Bennett and the Cowboys' DeMarco Murray return to practice Thursday. The Broncos' Tracy Porter did not. The Eagles' LaShawn McCoy will rejoin workouts on Friday. And the Raiders' Darren McFadden and Richard Seymour were held out on Thursday. NAS number 10, Florida State traveled to Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech. The Seminoles, with a win, would move one step closer to clinching the ACC Atlantic Division. In fact, they would clinch it. Well, with this win and one more, FSU was down, though, 22-20 to 20 in the final minute, nearing field goal range. Manuel comes up to the line. We're down to 10 on the play clock. Changing his call. Ball's in his hands. Delayed blitz. Toss over the middle. That ball is caught inside the 30. Breaking free to the 20-yard line. To the 10. Towards the pylon. Touchdown, Rashad Green. Oh, my goodness. A stunning play. A 39-yard touchdown pass. Bill Rosinski here on ESPN Radio. E.J. Manuel hooks up with Rashad Green for the go-ahead score. And the Seminoles hold off the Hokies 28-22 and are, in fact, one win away from a spot in the ACC championship game. Elsewhere from college football on this Thursday night, Arizona State beat up on Louisiana Monroe 45-23 from the NBA. The Clippers held a 21-point lead at halftime at Portland. Now in the fourth quarter with about five and a half minutes to go, the Clippers are leading the Blazers 90-83. to Jamal Crawford and DeAndre Jordan with 21 points for the Clippers. Nicholas Batum, 19 for the Blazers. Earlier, Oklahoma City knocked off Chicago 97-91. to Micah, Mike, it's football Friday and a quarterback filled day. We will have Jay Cutler, Joe Flacco, Ron Jaworski, and Roger Staubach all live on Mike and Mike Friday morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com.
trusted leader in sports. This is ESPN Radio Sports Center tonight. From expert analysis, informative interviews, electrifying highlights, and breaking news, this is Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. It is Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Alongside Neil Jackson, Chuck Wilson with you. Uh, good to have you aboard. We've got the Indianapolis Colts Thursday night game. Getting out to an early lead. Taking out the Jacksonville Jaguars 27-10. A game in which uh, this was uh, really, I think, uh, the Colts getting out. Getting their fourth straight win. Uh, taking advantage of three Jacksonville turnovers. He had an 11-yard interception for touchdown. They outrushed the Jaguars 138-37. to I uh, remember when the Jaguars could really run the football and Maurice Jones-Drew was healthy. And, I mean, it's, boy, it's asking a lot of Blaine Gabbard if he's got to go back and, you know, throw the ball 45, 50 times a game. And that's the kind of situation they were in. Uh, Gabbert throwing 31 passes, Chad Henning in relief throwing 16 as they fell behind early, uh, 17 to nothing. Uh, Andrew Luck, 18 for 26, 227 yards. Uh, no touchdowns, an interception, but he did have two short TD runs and the 27 to 10 victory for, uh, this team that is so close. The whole coach Chuck Pagano situation battling leukemia. This team has really come together. Andrew Luck with the media post game. How important a step is this for the franchise starting the second half of the season? A road division win, and it keeps everything in play for you guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, big, this was the biggest game to date by far, and and, and, and to win was great. Um, you know, obviously, it's it's nice to be six and three, but we realize, you know, that's that's you know just one step in the journey. It's it's no end goal by any means, and you know we know it only gets harder from here. So we're gonna have to you know buckle down and and, and put in twice as much effort and twice as much work. How's life as a newly bald man? Uh, it's it's great. You know, it's. Uh, I think a lot of credit for you know Corey Redding and Pat McAfee. I think the ringleaders of of us merry men. Um, but I, I think you know it's great that it's getting some attention and, and raising awareness about you know, obviously what Chuck's going through and, and any anybody that's going through it. You didn't need a helmet adjustment after that. No, for some reason I didn't. I must have very thin hair. <laughs> what does it say about this team that you had? You know, just so many guys doing it in support of Coach Pagano. Well, you know, I think it, we, it's, it's it's true team. You know, guys have each other's back, have our coaches back, um, and, and glad to glad to rally around them. Andrew, can you summarize the importance of this win tonight in the division, uh, yeah. on the road, uh, national TV audience? Yeah. Kind of summarize what this means. No, absolutely. Um, I think and, and, to, and to keep a winning streak going has been huge. Uh, you know, division win. Jacksonville got us earlier this year. You know, we, we didn't want to go 0 2 versus a team in the year, and, and to get one on the road, yeah, it, it's great. And, and again, I think it's just it's a good step in the in the right direction we realize you know it, no one looks back at the middle of the season to say oh you're six and three great you know it's it's what we do at the end of the season but again a good step in the right direction Andrew you got your team at six and three talk about how important it is and people are now looking down the road possible playoffs yeah, um, obviously, I mean, New England Patriots coming up, so I, if, if anybody has trouble looking ahead of them, you know, I think, I think it would be crazy. Uh, so, and then we have great veteran leadership. I know we're, we are a young team in a lot of areas, and this is all very new for a lot of us, but, but you know, guys, Robert Mathis, Dwight Freeney, Corey Redding, you know, Antoine Buffet, Reggie Wayne do a great job of, of, of putting things in perspective to a lot of the young guys and, and making sure we understand, you know, the situation, and, and I know they'll continue to do that, and we'll continue to follow them. Colts quarterback Andrew Luck after the team's 27-10 victory. Jacksonville, by the way, 10 penalties for 115 yards in the loss. One of the interesting stories today, at least it was to me, student football manager at USC was dismissed from the team because of an effort he did to give the team an advantage in its game against Oregon. The student manager admitted to intentionally deflating some of the USC's footballs below NCAA-regulated levels during the first half last Saturday against Oregon. Now, officials discovered the underinflated balls, reinflated three of them before the game, two more at halftime. All of them were at the prescribed inflation for the second half. USC looked into it. Student manager said he took it upon himself to do this, to alter the balls. It, deflating the football just a little bit, it does make it a little easier to throw. I can tell you that uh, makes it a little e easier to catch as well. The school has been reprimanded, fined by the Pac-12. Trojans head coach Lane Kiffin. Compliance department obviously did a, 
very, did a very thorough check and research of everything involved to make sure that there was no knowledge of any coaches or players knowing anything about this. So um, I don't know why it was done. Um, what I've been told by the conference is um, they fixed a number of the balls prior to kickoff. So um, I guess we were playing with some deflated balls and some non-deflated balls. Uh, Lane Kiffin did acknowledge that he understood why people w- might think that uh, he had some hand in this or somebody involved with the team might have, but uh, he said that did not happen. Gary Pasquitz is founder of WeAreUSC.com. He joined us earlier on ESPN Radio, and I asked him why this is perhaps a more significant story at USC than it might be had it occurred in another football program. Well, it's been real interesting, Chuck. Obviously, I think you have to look at uh, the, the head coach, Lane Kiffin, and his history through the years. You can either say the controversy seems to follow this guy, or he is just the unluckiest coach that has ever been out there, because it really goes back to you know his days. Uh, I guess a little bit at Oakland, his clashes with uh, Al Davis. Then you get to Tennessee, and he was known for making you know statements there and outlandish statements. And things were kind of under the radar once he got to USC, and everything was really headed in the right direction. And it sounded like he was saying, you know, I had to do those things when I was at those stops, but now that I'm at USC, I don't have to. And then this year, there has just been a steady stream uh, of distractions from Kiffin himself that have just I added up all season long with the tough year that it's been for USC. It kind of got to that point today, and just, boy, you just heard the reaction from the Trojan fans just going, boy, not, not again. Just another thing again from Kiffin, and that's, that's what a lot of people are struggling with today. Gary, when we're looking at kind of these around the edges on the ethics issues, what are we looking at with Lane Kiffin? A guy who it seems wants to push the envelope, who is looking for every competitive advantage uh, that he can, and I don't think that's really uh, something that you know most every coach in the country doesn't uh, subscribe to. You want to do what you can, but it just seems like with Lane that, that there's a pattern with maybe it goes a little differently. And I think just uh, really the one a couple weeks ago, Chuck, when you had the jersey switching of, of the holder. The, that they put a backup quarterback in a punter's jersey. That was one where a lot of USC fans rose up and said, you know, that one doesn't taste right. That's not the way we do things here at USC. The USC athletic director, Pat Hayden, we know his background. We know how important the tradition and history of the USC program is to him for a quarterback. He released a statement at the AD saying, we acknowledge the Pac-12's reprimand and fine. We regret this incident occurred. It was unacceptable and we apologize for it. I can assure you this will not happen again. Again, where do you see Pat Hayden on this issue as part of the larger picture? I I think this is as serious as you're going to get for Pat Hayden. Uh, You hit it on the head. He pays attention to the image and the brand of USC as much as any athletic director is going to. And after that jersey switching incident a couple weeks ago, uh, he came out with his strongest comments yet about Lane, just saying, hey, he's a coach in progress, but he does some things sometimes that will make you shake your head. And that's something that you say, okay, the athletic director is watching uh, a coach that he's admitting is learning on the job, and that's not something thing USC folks are used to is seeing a coach learn on the job. But but these latest ones and they're adding up, and I know Hayden is backing Kiffin on this one, and uh, that that's what we're hearing publicly. You know it's something that's going to be talked about in the offseason. When they have their review, when they talk about everything, the distractions that are going on this year, going back to the fall camp when there's a situation with his, with his AP vote, um, to everything that's gone on, these are the kind of things that Hayden's going to talk to Kiffin about. You don't need to do those things at USC. It's not what USC football's about. Gary Pasquitz, uh, weareusc.com. Check out uh, his uh, blog today on ESPN.com. Gary, appreciate your time and insights. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chuck. That was Gary Pasquitz earlier. Look, I I don't like these kinds of things. Uh, I think the ethics, I think all this is important. And I I really believe in having a fair playing field. I I don't like any of this. You you know, the the idea that this team manager came up with this idea in his own, I mean, that's nonsense. I, I don't know who suggested that it would help the team. He's obviously taking the blame. But if you think he took it upon himself that he himself is going to tamper with the inflation of the footballs without any input from anybody else, then you're pretty naive. And I think the USC football program should be embarrassed, especially Lane Kiffin, who, you know, let's face it, he has a less than sterling reputation when it comes to creating a culture of, you know, strict adherence to the rules, the intent of the rules. We're talking the University of Southern California. This is USC. This is a history of football excellence. You just don't need this kind of thing, especially when they've had recruiting violations and NCAA sanctions. They should be especially vigilant when it comes to the rules and ethics and kind of pushing that edge. 
Uh, you know, I always hear the same response to these type things when I make a big deal out of them. You know, Chuck, what's what's wrong with you? Uh, you're making a big deal out of nothing. It's just gamesmanship. Everybody looks for an edge. Everybody does these kinds of things. It's not worth discussing. And to me, that's the problem. The chipping away at rules by calling it gamesmanship hurts competition. We want fair competition, want an even playing field. This erodes trust. The fact that it's been going on a long time shouldn't make it any more acceptable. Because when it comes to cheating in order to gain a competitive advantage, nothing is really minor. You're either following the rules and most importantly the intent and the spirit of rules, or you're not. And my argument is, what message are you sending, especially in a school environment, when you excuse this kind of cheating by arguing that, ah, it's just minor? Because when you condone it, you're saying it's okay depending on degree. And that's where I disagree with this whole gamesmanship argument that, uh, well, if you're not pushing that envelope, then you're not really trying to win. You don't care enough about winning. When the intent is to circumvent the rule, then you're, you're doing something wrong. And I think athletic director Pat Hayden is probably a lot more upset about this than he's saying publicly. And uh, I don't blame him. Coming up, ESPN NBA analyst Chris Mullen joins us. We'll talk about tonight's uh, Thunder Bulls game, what he saw there, and the Lakers. Everybody's talking about this Lakers team at 1-4. and four. We'll get Mully's uh, response to that coming up. Keep it here, Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. This Veterans Day, give a gift to our military heroes and their families through USO Wishbook. Visit USO.org forward slash ESPN. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you can donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-814-2162. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate. Donate your car, and as a special thank you, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now. Call 1-800-814-2162. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher for donating. Call now, 1-800-814-2162. That's 1-800-814-2162. Broadway Joe Namath, weekly on The Michael K Show. What do you think Eli ran into? Is he slumping, or was that just a good Pittsburgh defensive scheme? Well, I certainly don't think he's slumping. What they went through during the week with uh, the hurricane, I know Coach Coughlin doesn't want to use that as an excuse, nor will the players. Uh, I, I just think that the whole week caught up with the Giants. The Joe Namath Hour, every Monday at 6 p.m. on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Yes. This Veterans Day at Lowe's, get the Maytag Centennial Washer and Dryer for $798. That's a savings of $430. And a Bosch 18-volt lithium drill for $99. That's a savings of $70. Choose 18-month special financing on purchases of $599 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer is valid from November 7th through the 12th while supplies last. Credit offer valid from November 8th through the 12th. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offer. Some exclusions apply. See store for details, including Maytag offer. My mum always says hard work never hurt anybody. Good advice as usual. So we worked very hard to make Geico.com very easy. Say you want to report a claim and follow its progress. You can do it all online at Geico.com. Not to mention perhaps saving a tidy sum of money on your car insurance. All it takes is a few clicks. So visit Geico.com today. Oh, and mum, if you're listening, yes, I did wash beyond my ears this morning. It's time to get winter ready. Dick's Sporting Goods has more of the best brands to keep you warm as the weather gets colder. The North Face, Columbia, Spider, Burton, Copen, Marmot, Mountain Hardware, and more. Dick's has the widest selection in styles and colors in men's, women's, and youth jackets and accessories. And don't forget to grab a new snowboard. Dick's carries the snow equipment you need. Before hitting the slopes, stop into Dick's Sporting Goods today. Every season starts at Dick's. 
Jennifer Howdy was a woman on a mission. Yep, saving money for a Caribbean vacation. Undaunted by any obstacle. You flatter me. But with Navy Federal Credit Union's Cash Rewards Credit Card, I get cash back with every purchase. Skillful yet humble. You make everything sound so dramatic. And unafraid to speak the truth. Unafraid. I love it. Four million members, four million stories. From every military branch, DOD, and their families. NavyFederal.org. Federally insured by NCUA. The NYPD is among the best law enforcement departments in the country. The NYPD offers a job with a future, a great place to serve, and a chance to advance. Visit NYPDRecruit.com or call 212-RECRUIT for current test schedules and filing fee information. Bam. The Subway featured $5 footlong of November is the Spicy Italian. Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio. Chuck Wilson with you. Alongside uh, Neil Jackson, ESPN NBA analyst, Hall of Famer Chris Mullen joining us via the Subway Fresh Take Hotline, actually in our ESPN studios. Appreciate your drop in by Molly. Oklahoma City Thunder outscore the Chicago Bulls 31-19 fourth quarter. Kevin Durant, big final minute in this game. Uh, nice road win for this Thunder team. What would you see? Yeah, come crunch time, I thought Scott Brooks did a great job, kept it simple. Run a, ran a little three-man game where uh, Russell Westbrook hits Cephalosha and goes sets a down screen on Kevin Durant. One play, he got a nice catch and shoot. Uh, another another play, he came off and did a little step back, a la Dirk Nowitzki. And then for the sixth point of, of that uh, barrage, a nice little elbow catch. He was decisive, one dribble, a little runner, floater on the baseline. Uh, so Scott Brooks, you know, they got down early in the first quarter, down by eight. You know, he called timeout, urged them to get their energy and their defense up, and uh, they get out in transition much better. And then come crunch time, uh, kept it simple and went to his money player and won the game. Molly, this Thunder team that came close to winning the championship last year decided that it didn't want to spend the max money to hang on to James Harden. Move James Harden. One of the players coming in, of course, is Kevin Martin. What are you seeing early on as far as the continuity and how the Thunder are playing? Well, I think Kevin Martin is, is an easy guy to fit in. He's very efficient. You know, he plays without the basketball. He doesn't take a lot of shots. Tonight, I think he had 13 points on five field goal attempts. He gets to the free throw line. He shoots a high percentage. So I think that, that's going to be seamless, that transition. I think a really key player is going to be Eric Maynard, their backup point guard, um, because James Harden did a lot of that uh, backup point guard responsibilities in the fourth quarter in crunch time. Uh, when uh, Scott Brooks wanted to relieve Russell Westbrook and get him off the ball a little bit. So I think Maynard and Kevin Martin are going to be key players. And, and the deal, look, they got they got so close last year. So uh, it's going to be up up for debate until until we see how far this team goes. Because, you know, the team that gets to the finals and you go right into the core of that team, that's always going to be questioned until you get to the, you know, to the championship. Yeah, it seemed like that chemistry was awfully good at the time. It's Chris Mullen, our ESPN NBA analyst and Hall of Famer, here on SportsCenter tonight. I'm Chuck Wilson. Well, everybody obviously has been talking about the Los Angeles Lakers, this one and four start early on. They don't have the continuity, the, the disjointed, the defensive issues. You figure that's going to be worked out, the turnover issues right now. But a lot of it seems to go to the offensive end of what is going to be the best use of these players. And obviously, it hurts to have Steve Nash out right now. What are you seeing early on in that kind of disjointed view of what we're seeing? Well, Chuck, trying to put in a new system, uh, you know, I think we all understand that does take time. Uh, there's high expectations there. Um, and, and whether they're playing the, the Princeton offense or the hybrid or, or whatever people are trying to call it, what I'm seeing is a little apprehension and players thinking more than reacting. And most of those players, you know, you're talking about four of the greatest players at their positions. You know, Kobe Bryant, Pau Gasol, Dwight Howard and Steve Nash. And I think what right now what they're, what they're fighting is the balance between uh, playing within the system and a new system at that and then playing with creativity and freedom. And uh, so with that, you know, when I, I watched last night's game, the spacing is not where they want it to be. You know, there's, there's passes that are being deflected, things that you wouldn't expect from accomplished players. And uh, so 
I mean, in a nutshell, it looks to me like they're trying to um, play a scripted offense as opposed to react, reacting and creating. And I think when you have great, talented players like that, the last thing you want them doing is trying to, you know, script and think things out. You know, one thing that I think is, is interesting is on any team, you're going to have different personalities. And obviously, Kobe Bryant has a much different personality than Dwight Howard does. And I'm just wondering in how you think that's going to work out over time. Dwight Howard's reaction after the loss, you know, he, look, he was upset that they lost, but while Kobe's fuming, going off the, the floor. You've got Howard kind of being affable, hanging around, kind of laughing with fans, signing autographs and so forth, and then talking later about, well, you know, we've got we to keep our frustrations inside so it doesn't negatively affect our teammates. And you've got Kobe, who's obviously, his approach is, is very different. How do you see that dynamic working going forward? Well, you said it best, Chuck. They're, they're two very distinct, different personalities. And Kobe's all about winning, total focus. Uh, he was probably upset during the exhibition season of losing exactly. those games. You know, that's just the way he is. I mean, I think he wants to lift those guys up to his intensity level, even close to it. And also, you know, Kobe, Steve Nash, they're they're pretty far along in their careers. So they're not playing for uh, just the love of the game, although they do love the game. They, they know the end is closer than the beginning. And uh, there, there's a seriousness and, and a, a business uh, man's attitude to Kobe's uh, daily, you know, his daily routine. It's going to be interesting to see how it works out. Chris Mullen, our ESPN NBA analyst and Hall of Famer, thanks so much for dropping by. We appreciate it. My pleasure, Chuck. Have a good night. You got it. Uh, let's take you to the night, the second game of the night, and the Los Angeles Clippers moving to 4-2 and two with a 103-90 victory over the Trailblazers, and this guy had a lot to do with a win. Paul drives his right around the Turi up screen. Into the right corner, he's two team. Goes to Ronnie Turia. Down the lane to the Andre Jordan. Two hands, slam dunk. Don't hang on, DJ. 21 <laughs> for DJ. Got to be the Go. first time he's ever gone for 20 or more. Two games in a row. Call on KFWB. The Andre Jordan, the center for the Clippers, has 21 points and eight boards. And uh, he joined the TNT crew after the win. Right. DeAndre Jordan had a big night, of course, for the Clippers. Let's first talk a little bit, though, about what happened. Up 20 at half, they cut it to six. What did you guys get away from? Um, just our offense. Uh, we got into uh, just a lot of pick and rolls and a lot of isos. But, you know, in the first half, we moved the ball from side to side and got easy baskets. Describe what this team is all about, the Clippers. What is your identity right now? Um, you know, we just have so many guys that can score. It's going to be somebody's night every night, like I keep saying. But um, we're, we're up and down team, and we're also uh, our half-court offense is getting a lot better. DeAndre Jordan, a nice win, 103-90. to Coming up on ESPN Radio, we will take you to the Colts and Jaguars and a big game in a moment. Attention homeowners. If your home has lost value and you now owe more than your home is worth, please listen carefully to this very important message. If you purchased a home or refinanced your loan before June of 2009, Quicken Loans may now be able to help you refinance at today's incredibly low interest rates, even if you owe more than your home is worth. This is Jay Farner, president of Quicken Loans, and I want to let you know that on September 14th of this year, the government announced changes that may allow you to refinance even if your home has lost value. So if your current mortgage is higher than 3.99%, please call Quicken Loans today at 800-QUICKEN. Even if you owe more than your home is worth, you may now be able to refinance at today's incredibly low rates. Again, if you've been unable to refinance because you owe more than your home is worth and your rate is above 3.99%, call 800-QUICKEN now and let us help you take advantage of this unique opportunity. Important terms and conditions apply. Call us for cost information. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. The Stephen A. Smith and Ryan Rucco Show. I am on the record. I do not believe that the New York Knicks are going to be healthy after 82 games. If they're healthy, they should be able to beat everybody but the Miami Heat. There, you happy now? Glad they started out 3-0. You want a cookie? You got 79 games to go. With a roster that's almost that age. The Stephen A. Smith and Ryan Rucco Show. From 1 to 3. ESPN New York. 98.7 FM. An ESPN Radio Extra Point with Colin Cowherd. To me, there's eight organizations in the NFL. I counted them this morning. 
that feel like it's a hundred percent about winning Super Bowls. Eight. There may be more, but I get a very strong feeling from ownership down. It is all about winning Super Bowls. New York Giants, Green Bay Packers, San Francisco 49ers with Harbaugh, New England, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Indianapolis, and Denver. That's all that matters. It's about winning Super Bowls. Tennessee drafted Vince Young. They didn't think Vince Young was great. They thought he could sell tickets from a source close to that organization. Part of getting the Vince Young deal done, eh, people here will love him. That's not about winning Super Bowls. The New York Jets getting Tebow, disruptive. It's not about winning Super Bowls. Eight teams in the league. That's all that matters. Colin Cowherd. Warren Moon comes on our show all the time. And I like Warren, but I think he's off his rocker. He said the criticism of Cam Newton is possibly racist. I would say you give me an African-American quarterback in football. I'll find you a contemporary Caucasian that gets as much or more heat. Want to play the game? Let's go. Great African-American rookie quarterback, RG3. He's getting far more praise than Andrew Luck. How about Pouty quarterback? Cam, racism! I know Jay Cutler has a winning record and for five years has been clobbered by you, the fans, and the American sports media. How about an enigmatic quarterback who wins? Michael Vick, that's racism. Well, Tony Romo gets more. I mean, Romo's the most criticized quarterback with a winning record in league history. Folks, quarterbacks are criticized position. It's the highest profile position in sports. This is The Herd. Weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Mike and Mike talk about KG's snub of Ray Allen during their first meeting in Miami. Ray Allen, now on the heat, goes over, sort of shakes hands and, and pats guys on the back on that Celtic bench. And Kevin Garnett notably snubbed him. I loved it. Loved it. And to me, that's what sports is supposed to be about. As a fan, I am emotionally invested in this stuff. I've said it before and I'll say it again. When a game ends, a tough game ends, and I see those guys out on the field shaking hands, and they're losing guys, are laughing. I, I understand at one, one level shaking hands and offering congratulations. Sure, yes, yes. But when the guys on the losing team are laughing, I guess I understand it, but it eats at me. A little bit of me dies every time I see that because that's not what this is supposed to be about. When, uh, just using my team, for example, when the Jets lose, I'm not laughing after that game, no matter what the circumstances are, and I can't stand it when I see the losing players laughing. It's Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Neil Jackson. While top overall pick Andrew Luck and Indianapolis continue to improve, Jacksonville is headed in the other direction. Luck rushed for a pair of touchdowns and threw for 227 yards as the Colts go to 6-3 and three after beating the Jags 27-10. For the season, Jacksonville 1-8. and eight. They've been outscored 153-47 to 47 at home. A disappointed Jacks head coach. Mike Malarkey. We're trying to overcome ourselves. I mean, we have to overcome ourselves before we even have to worry about the opponent we're playing. And um, the guys see it on the sideline. They see the same thing. They don't need me to go in there and tell them you need to do this and you can't do that. They know that. And when we start doing that, we'll start winning games. Injury updates as Week 10 in the NFL will continue. The Giants, Akeem Nix, with his knee issue. He returned to practice Thursday. He says he will play Sunday against the Bengals. The Vikings' Adrian Peterson was held out of workouts, workouts because of an illness. Over to college football. Number 10, Florida State came back to beat Virginia Tech 28 to 22. The Seminoles improved to 9 and 1. They're one victory away from clinching the ACC Atlantic Division. E.J. Manuel had a 39-yard game-winning touchdown pass to Rashad Green in the final minute. Here's Manuel. 
I told us that we can't go out there and come out all the way this far and not get a W. And, you know, just trusting in God, he, he pulled it out for us. Rashad made a huge play. Lion gave me time to make the throws. Receivers did a great job, and I'm just so happy, man. There's Manuel on ESPN Radio. Elsewhere, Arkansas State improves to 7-3 and three with a 45-23 win over Louisiana Monroe. Over to the NBA, now final. The Clippers knocked off the Trailblazers in Portland, 103-90. to Jamal Cropper with 25 points. Chris Paul and DeAndre Jordan with 21 apiece. Oklahoma City beat the Bulls in Chicago, 97-91. to Kevin Durant led the way with 24 points. Russell Westbrook added a double-double. The NHL and the Players Association return to the bargaining table Thursday, the third straight day. The sides have met in an effort to end the lengthy lockout with the work stoppage reaching 54 days. Now the this week is considered critical for the season to be saved. More meetings are scheduled for Friday. In college basketball, Cleveland State head coach Gary Waters, who has led the Vikings to the postseason in four of the past five seasons, has been rewarded with a new seven-year contract. Micah Mike, it's football Friday and a quarterback filled day. We will have Jay Cutler, Joe Flacco, Ron Jaworski, and Roger Staubach all live on Mike and Mike Friday morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Sports Center tonight. Sports Center tonight. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Now you can test drive Snapshot even if you have insurance with another company. See how much you can save before you switch. It's one of the really good stories in the National Football League. The Indianapolis Colts winning their fourth game in a row to move to 6-3. and three. The Thursday night NFL game, Colts winning on the road at Jacksonville 27-10. to 10. They built up a 17-0 first half lead. And then in the second half, any chance for Jacksonville to come back ended really on their first possession of the third quarter. It was a second and six at their own eight-yard line. Blaine Gabbert making both a poor read and a poor throw. Snap is to Gabbert. Gabbert looks for the quick throw. He throws, picked off by the Colts. And it's a touchdown for Darius Butler. Butler with a pick and the score. And the Colts now lead it 23 to 3. 10.70 the fam with a call. Darius Butler, the 11-yard interception for touchdown, made a nice read on the play. He joined us earlier on ESPN Radio, and I asked him about that pick. Darius, congratulations on the pick. We watched it. You made a nice play. Tell us about it. Uh, you know, the situation, they were coming out of the shadow of the end zone. I knew they were going to try to get the ball out quick. Uh, they gave me a route that I kind of expected, so I uh, took a chance and it paid off. Darius, when you see a play like that, and you know in your heart that that's from the film work that's done, all the coaching it's done, and so on, what's that level of satisfaction that you get from it? Uh, it's great because, you know, the work that you put into it, it pays off on Sunday. That's huge. And uh, it kind of motivates you more to put in even more film work, even more study. So, um, you know, when it pays off, it's always a great thing for your uh, confidence. Darius, th this has been such a marvelous story. And there's a, I think people really have pulled for this team so much because of Coach Pagano. What has this whole experience taught you about perseverance, about love, camaraderie, whatever you want to call it? What, is it, what has it brought to you? Uh, it's huge when our guys, you know, bond together and, and they go through tough things and that, that makes you either stronger or it breaks you down. And I think it made, it made the whole team, this whole organization tighter as a unit and stronger. And uh, now we all come together and play. Everybody plays for different things, you know, different motivation. But uh, Coach Pagano is a huge motivation and a, and a, huge, a huge person for all of us. Tell us about the Chuck Pagano that you've gotten to know. What can you tell us about him? When I got here, uh, I got here, I, I only cared to out of bye week. I think it was week four or five. And, uh, you know, I, I only have a short uh, knowing of him, I guess you could say. But, um, you know, I've been texting him back and forth, you know, since he's been going through his, his, his deal. And, uh, you know, just he's just a great guy. You can tell by the organization, how the coaches and the players talk about him. You can tell he's a great guy, and he, he's built us from here. And that was uh, Darius Butler joining us earlier on ESPN Radio. Jacksonville, 10 penalties for 115 yards, 12 rushes for 37 yards. They just have not been able to run the ball, the Jaguars, since Maurice Jones-Drew injured his foot in Week 7. Before the injury, the Jaguars' rushers were averaging 4.3 yards per carry. Since the injury, 2.8. And an NFL worst 54.3 rush yards 
per game. And you just can't put it all on Blaine Gabbard. You know, is he going to make mistakes? Sure he is. But if you don't have any balance, you're asking him to do an awful lot in this game. In college football, a major story on the recruiting front. We heard about it on College Football Live on ESPN with Joe Des- Tessitore. The number one recruit in the country, Robert Kimdichie, has decommitted from Clemson. That's according to his high school coach. The guy goes 6'5", 265. He's a star defensive end. He had been a huge verbal to Clemson, but his brother plays at Ole Miss. Word has been that mom wants them to play together. As of last night, Kimdichie was saying he hasn't yet decommitted, but today his high school coach says indeed he has. Meanwhile, Joe Tessitore on College Football Live talked about the Heisman Trophy situation. And, of course, we have our poll, the Heismanology, here at uh, ESPN. And he talked about the fact that while Colin Klein remains uh, the number one choice among the, the poll voters right now at ESPN, there is some history working against him here. The big story. Yes, Colin Klein maintains first place, but Kenyon Barner has skyrocketed to be right next to him at number two. There's a lot to like about Colin Klein. But when we come to our Heisman history touchscreen, there's also some concern. If you look at recent history, let's go back to 2009. This was a very interesting year in the Heisman. A lot of comparisons to be made with the Heisman race we saw in 2009 and this year's Heisman campaign. This was a year when, much like Colin Klein, we had a Big 12 quarterback in Colt McCoy who had great stats. And he was the mid-November leader of Heisman polls. But what did we end up seeing? We saw an SEC title game hero come on strong late for Alabama much like we're seeing with A.J. McCarron. That was Mark Ingram. We saw a Pac-12 running back with ridiculous stats coming on late, much like we're seeing with Kenyon Barner. It ended up being the closest race we've had. Could play out the same way this year. Also, if you go back to the winners of the Heisman in the past 12 years, let's start with Chris Wanky, who beat out Josh Heupel for the trophy. With the exception of Carson Palmer in 02, Tim Tebow in that three loss Florida team in 07, and the anomaly that was RG3 last year, what do so many of these guys have in common? Nine of the last 12 winners of the Heisman trophy all at least played in the BCS title game. And you listen to guys like Brad Edwards, and what do we hear? If everything stays the course, Oregon will likely leapfrog K-State, and we could have Oregon against Alabama. Voters love that BCS title lean when they're voting. That's an advantage for A.J. McCarron, and especially Kenyon Barner. So let's look at the notable games this week. And yes, Colin Klein dealing with the injury, but Colin Klein's in great position in the polling. But such opportunities exist for others. A.J. McCarron, home against Texas A&M. Kenyon Barner, he could put up big, big numbers against that undermanned Cal team. And we'll see what Manti Teo continues to offer up for Notre Dame. Joe Tessitore does a terrific job uh, on on ESPN and really watches that Heisman uh, picture really well. Does a great job on that. Of course, earlier on ESPN and here on ESPN Radio, Florida State with a last-minute touchdown to beat Virginia Tech. So Florida State, the 10th-ranked team, uh, able to win its game, moving to 9-1. and one. Hey, coming up, the Colts score 6-3 and three with rookie quarterback Andrew Luck. The Seattle Seahawks, they're 5-4 and four with rookie quarterback Russell Wilson. They're going to be hosting the New York Jets Sunday. How are the Seahawks? So impressive at home. What's it like playing before that home crowd? It's a it's a tough place to go in as a visiting club. We'll talk with one of their top defensive players coming up next. Keep it here. This is Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Micah Mike, it's football Friday and a quarterback filled day. We will have Jay Cutler, Joe Flacco, Ron Jaworski, and Roger Staubach all live on Micah Mike Friday morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com.
Stay away from injuries. That's the name of the game. Knicks, Mavericks, Friday night at 7 on ESPN New York, 98.7 <laughs> FM. This Veterans Day at Lowe's, get the Maytag Centennial Washer and Dryer for $798. That's a savings of $430. And a Bosch 18-volt lithium drill for $99. That's a savings of $70. Choose 18-month special financing on purchases of $599 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer is valid from November 7th through the 12th while supplies last. Credit offer valid from November 8th through the 12th. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offer. Some exclusions apply. See store for details, including Maytag offer. Are you making frequent bathroom trips during the night? Do you have a strong urge to urinate? If ignored, these symptoms may result in complicated kidney and bladder infections, kidney failure, or loss of bladder function. Additionally, if you are a male of 50 years or older and experiencing sexual dysfunction, you may be at risk of a stroke or heart attack. The same disease process that affects blood vessels which lead to the heart and brain affect the delicate vessels that supply blood to the genital organs. Careful evaluation of erectile dysfunction can uncover these problems years before critical damage occurs. Compassionate urologists at the New York Urologic Institute specialize in improving urologic and sexual function. Latest technological advances allow the patient to get answers to diagnostic tests immediately, reducing anxiety. Call the New York Urologic Institute at 347-508-3991. Offices are conveniently located in Queens and Brooklyn. For timely, effective treatment, call 347-508-3991. That's 347-508-3991. Mike Rowe here at a Ford dealer with a little Q&A for Fiona. According to the signs, Ford is having some sort of big tire event. How would you describe the event? It's big. The savings one might enjoy at the event. They're big. What about the selection? Big. Get a $60 mail-in rebate on Ford Select Tires. Use the Ford Service Credit Card for an additional 60 bucks. Click on the banner ad. So I think we can agree then that Ford's tire event is good sized. No, Michael. It's big. Subject to credit approval, rebate by check. Offer cannot be combined. See participating Ford dealer for rebate details by 11 30 12. Center tonight on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. ESPN Radio Fan Feedback, presented by 1-800-Flowers.com. Every 1-800-Flowers.com order is backed by their 100% smile guarantee. For special offers, go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. We continue Large Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio. I'm Chuck Wilson. We have the Seattle Seahawks at home against the New York Jets Sunday afternoon. The Jets one and four in their last five games following a two and one start. Mark Sanchez last in the NFL with completion percentage of just under 53% this season. That's the lowest completion percentage for a player with at least 250 attempts through eight games since Gus Farratt back in 2005. Meanwhile, four and O oh at home are the Seahawks. They are now five and four. And uh, joining us is Earl Thomas, free safety for the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks uh, in the top five defensively. They're ranked right now. They're doing a great job. He joins us via the Subway Fresh Take hotline. And uh, Earl, tell us a little bit first about the atmosphere at Century Lake Field because opposing teams just hate going in there to play. It's a tough place. It's loud. What is it like to have that kind of atmosphere on game day? Uh, it's, it's just a really exciting and fun place to play. And uh, when you say, uh, when you talk about the 12th man, uh, it's, it's really true. You know, it's true what you hear. Uh, they're great. They're going to be loud. And uh, they're going to cause a lot of false starts, uh, penalties. And it just caused a lot of problems for opposing offenses. Why do you think that you guys have played so well at home? Uh, I, I really can't put my finger on it. Uh, other than uh, it's, we're, we're in our comfort zone, maybe, and uh, that's just the way the ball been falling for us this year. Um, you know, football, you never know what you're going to expect when you're playing this game. You just try to take advantage of every opportunity you get, but uh, we've been playing lights out at home, and uh, we just want to keep it uh, keep it going that way, going down the schedule. Tell us about your defense that right now is fourth ranked in the National Football League and, and really one of the best ones. Why so? What has gone well for you? 
Uh, I just think the chemistry and uh, we've grown. We, we, we're a young group, but uh, we have a lot of games under our belt. And I think it's a learning experience every time we're on the field, but, uh, and, it, and it made us stronger through the bad times we had, and, uh, and we also had some success. So uh, we, we just want to keep building for that and stay humble and, and uh, have tunnel vision, and uh, more good stuff will come down the line for us. Tell us about this Jets team. You've had a chance to, to look ahead to this Jets team you'll be facing. What do you see? Uh, I see, um, you know, they have they have a lot of explosive players on their team. Uh, you know, uh, they have a great receiver and a slot receiver. Curly seems like they're trying to give him the ball a lot. Uh, McKnight, he's explosive on teams and also uh, at running back position. And uh, they have a physical runner in the backfield. And uh, uh, the QB seems like he's been uh, managing the game well with a lot of quick game and uh, just trying to get the ball out. Uh, but I think it'll be a tough task for us, and uh, we just got to worry about what we have going on over here in Seattle and uh, keep trusting our preparation. And our think everything else will take care of itself. Here on ESPN Radio, we're talking about the upcoming uh, Seattle Seahawks game against the New York Jets. And we're joined by Earl Thomas, free safety for the uh, Seahawks. He joins us here on Sports Center tonight on ESPN Radio. Yeah, I really am, am interested in the kinds of reads you're able to get at quarterbacks and so on. I don't expect you to give away, you know, trade secrets here. But what do you see in Mark Sanchez on tape? I think he does. A lot. I think he does a great job with trying to look out, look off guys, and uh, you know, try to pump them and throw them off if it's uh, a middle field safety. Everybody in the league know we play one single safety high, and uh, it kind of puts a lot of pressure on me to go red line to red line. But you know, uh, me as being a quarterback on defense, I, I take that as you know, uh, just a competitive a time to compete, and uh, you know, try to get the best jump on the ball as, as possible. Tell us about playing for a coach that still has the kind of college-type enthusiasm, if you will, that Pete Carroll has. He has a, a great emotion that he brings to it. What's it like playing for him? Uh, I love it. You know, I think the team, any team you play for, uh, you know, their personality going to take on what their head coach and still install. So uh, I think, you know, he's, he's still out there trying to return kicks and, you know, doing a quarterback for his on scout team. Uh, you know, he, he loves this game, and he's a competitor. And uh, I think, you know, what he brings to the table and uh, the foundation he's led, uh, laid has uh, really, you know, stuck with the guys in the room, and, you know, everybody's bought into the system. What's the funniest thing that he has done, whether it's been a practice situation or film or whatever? What, what's, what funny thing has he done? Uh, really, the funny thing to me is really when he's trying to return kicks. You know, he's kind of... He's getting old now. If you see him run, you know, it's kind of funny to see him kind of get out there and try to catch the ball and try to make a slow move, juke move, if you want to call it. But it's just the credit to him being competitive and, uh, you know, still believing that he can get the, get the job done. You have a rookie quarterback in Russell Wilson who, hey, he's had some growing pains, but, boy, has he had some big moments as well. What have you seen in the leadership qualities and, and so forth in, in the rookie quarterback? Uh, you know, Russell is very poised, you know, and uh, he, has, he has the the attention of the whole room. And, you know, he he's telling the vets, you know, older vets, you know, uh, maybe you need to break this raw out. Look, you know, he just take command, you know, and uh, you can't do nothing but respect when a guy comes in and, you know, do, do what he has done for this organization. And, you know, all, all we can ask is in uh, control, we control. I think he's done a good job with that. And, you know, I think if everybody just worry about what they have, we'll be all right. You know, it's funny, Earl, sometimes I think we hear about the, the it factor, that some players just have kind of a natural ability to lead other players, and that has been said about Russell Wilson. What have you seen in that regard? I definitely believe that, you know. Uh, I think he, he kind of leads by example, the way he plays and the way he prepares. You know, he's he one of the last guys out of the building, and, uh, you know, he's probably one of the first guys here. So, uh, you know, he's very mature for his age, and you can tell, you know, he was young. Uh, he has he has something about him, you know, and I can see why he's our starting quarterback. All right, two other things. I just want to ask you about this Seattle team. What is going to decide how far this team can go this year? Uh, you know, uh, I, I think we just really just worrying about staying focused and staying in the now and just taking it week by week, day by day, you know, competing to get better. And I think if, uh, you know, it's, it's all, you know, self-influence. You know, if you if you keep to compete to get better every day, I think on Sundays uh, you're a test out. You know, I think Sundays is just like a test. You know, you win games early in the week uh, through your preparation and how, how hard you work in practice. And uh, it's, it's about the little things. So if we just take it week by week, I think we'll be fine. Four. Those fans who haven't really watched much of the Seahawks this year, maybe they tune in this week. It's a, a East Coast team, the Jets. They have sort of a, a higher profile. 
What are they going to see when they look at the Seattle Seahawks on that field on Sunday? Uh, I, I just think we just worry about what, what we can control, and that's just putting good film out there and, uh, you know, going out there and playing hard, physical, fast, and smart. So, uh, I, I, like I said, we, we just worry about what's going on, on over here in Seattle. We don't really worry about, you know, uh, all of uh, who, if who's watching us or not or how much <laughs> attention we're getting. You know, at the end of the day, uh, we keep being humble. We, we're going to get where we need to be. The Seattle Seahawks playing some good football. Earl Thomas, free safety. Thanks so much for your insights and time. We wish you well. I appreciate it, man. All right. Let's get back to the uh, Colts and the Jaguars, 27-10. to 10. The Colts, victorious, fourth straight win. You know the story about their head coach, Chuck Pagano, who's been battling leukemia and uh, the shaved heads and everything, the camaraderie, the solidarity on that team. It's just a terrific thing to watch. Uh, veteran Dwight Freeney speaking with ESPN's Bob Holtzman after the game. Dwight, you played tonight without Robert Mathis, without your two starting corners, yet you still had a pretty impressive defensive performance. How'd you guys do this? I mean, we just kind of, you know, put it all together on a short week. You know, just bonded together. You know, they had a short week, we had a short week, and we just got to get this thing done, and that's what we did. You know, hats off to Minuski, coordinator. You know, the secondary played great, D-line played great. It was together. You guys had such an emotional game on Sunday with Coach Pagano there, and I know a bunch of guys shaved their heads this week. What was it like coming out here on the field tonight and trying to put all that stuff behind you? Well, you know, we, after the game, you know, we, we said that it's, it's a short week. Whatever happened, happened, just forget about it. And you know, that's what you have to do in the national football game. Things happen, good or bad, good, cheer it on, or just forget about it and move on. You know, and that's what we did. We did the job. I know you're not over there on the sideline as a fan watching this game, but you got your quarterback running the ball, getting the hit, yeah. tackling guys. Yeah. What's it like for you to watch him do this? Oh, well, it's great. You know, he shows he's a team player, and he's ready to fight no matter the circumstance. No matter what happens, he's good to fight. Dwight Freeney with ESPN's Bob Holtzman. And many of you heard on ESPN Radio or perhaps watched on ESPN on the TV side, Florida State and Virginia Tech. This one going down to the final minute. E.J. Manuel and Florida State getting the ball back with 2.19 to play in this game. And uh, at this point, they were looking to see if they could at least tie the game, perhaps win the game, down 22-20. Here's what happened. Manuel comes up to the line. We're down to 10 on the play clock. Changing his call. Ball's in his hands. Delayed blitz. Toss over the middle. That ball is caught inside the 30. Breaking free to the 20-yard line. To the 10. Towards the pylon. Touchdown, Rashad Green. Oh, my goodness. A stunning play. A 39-yard touchdown pass. ESPN Radio, the call number 10. Florida State wins over Virginia Tech. Two-point conversion, 28-22 the final. And in the NBA, Oklahoma City Thunder. Down fourth quarter, but Kevin Durant coming up big late. Cephalosha giving the ball. Turn to the left to Durant at the foul one. Back down, steps back, launches, and sticks an 18-footer. A dagger, baby. 19.5 left. Durant has scored a big six late timeout, Chicago. That was that Dirk Nowitzki <laughs> one-legged step back. Oh, that was hot and candy sweet as he unleashed it. <laughs> well, call it WWLS. Kevin Durant added a couple of free throws, and uh, they win. A good win for the Thunder on the road, uh, 97-91, and Kevin Durant finished with 24 points. So there you have it. Interesting uh, evening indeed. And we'll see going forward the Los Angeles Lakers will take on a Golden State Warriors team on Friday night, a team that they usually are able to handle pretty well. We'll see if they can get back into the win column. We've enjoyed being able to uh, bring you Sports Center tonight. You're home for all the scores and reaction. For Neil Jackson, I'm Chuck Wilson. Jay Reynolds continues with Sports Center all night right here on ESPN Radio. So you need to find a plumber to replace your water heater. The question is, where are you going to look? Phone book? That got tossed in the recycling bin as soon as it hit your doorstep. Web search? Not unless you feel like sorting through an endless list of search results. And you're certainly not going to pay a subscription fee to get access to some list. What you need is someone to refer a local pro you can trust. What you need is fast.homeadvisor.com. Fast.homeadvisor.com gives you free access to a network of over 85,000 back 
background check service professionals who have the expertise to help you with all your home repair and remodeling needs. It's the fast, free, and easy way to find top-rated local pros who've been rated and reviewed by homeowners like you. That's why over 25 million homeowners have trusted Home Advisor to find the quality home improvement professionals they're looking for. It's why you can, too. Visit fast.homeadvisor.com to find the service pros who can bring your home improvement dreams to reality. That's fast.homeadvisor.com. If you've got a business, you qualify for the official Mike and Mike office stimulus package. When you move from your office into a gorgeous Regis office, not only will you save a fortune, you'll get two months absolutely free. Your Regis office comes beautifully furnished in a prestigious building. You get a receptionist, meeting rooms, and state-of-the-art video conferencing with no long-term lease. And you get two months free by mentioning Mike and Mike. All you have to do is call 1-800-OFFICES. That's 1-800-OFFICES. Now is the perfect time to upgrade during the first ever Rally Motors Luxury Sales Event, where upgrading to luxury has never been easier. Take advantage of attractive lease offers, special financing, and receive above book value for your trade-in. Whether you're thinking of buying or leasing a Mercedes-Benz, smart car, or Sprinter van, Rally Motors features one of the area's largest selections of competitively priced vehicles. Experience the difference during the Luxury Sales Event and see why customers choose Rally Motors. To learn more, stop by or visit them online at rallymotors.com. Hi, football fans. I think you'll agree that you've got to have great seats. And now it's even easier to pick the seats you want wherever you are thanks to StubHub's new mobile seat maps. They're the only interactive seat maps to let you search for NFL tickets by section and actually see the view from your seat, all from your mobile phone. How cool is that? So whether you're searching StubHub on your computer or your phone, it's easy to find the seat you want. Yet another reason thousands of fans use StubHub for their NFL tickets every Sunday. The NYPD is among the best law enforcement departments in the country. The NYPD offers a job with a future, a great place to serve, and a chance to advance. Visit NYPDrecruit.com or call 212-RECRUIT for current test schedules and filing fee information. Hi, it's Colin Thursday. Bill Romanowski on pot smoking in the NFL. Greg Cosell thinks Eli Manning's arm? Well, you have to listen to find out. Download the Thursday Thundering Herd podcast. Check it out, ESPNRadio.com. Monday, behind Big Ben. We got out hurt! The Steelers took down the reigning Super Bowl champs. Let's go! Now, one of the hottest teams in the game. Touchdown, Steelers! Returns home in search of a fourth straight win against the Chiefs. Countdown sets the stage at 6.30 Eastern. Then, Monday Night Football. Chiefs, Steelers, 8.30 on ESPN. It all comes down to Monday night. This is The Herd with Colin Cowherd. Everybody loves Alex Smith. Everybody hates Mark Sanchez. But they're essentially the same quarterback. The truth is their careers are inverted. Sanchez got the AFC championships early, has struggled late. Alex struggled early, success late. And what it proves is... We're in a now society. Whatever's happening now is the truth. happening now is the truth. This is The Herd. Weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. And Radio.com. For Hurricane Sandy donations, visit RedCross.org or text Red Cross to 90999 to donate $10. WEPN-FM, WEPN-HD1, New York. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Neil Jackson. The Colts have now won four straight and improved to six and three after beating the Jazz 27 to 10. Top overall pick Andrew Luck had a pair of rushing touchdowns, giving him five on the year, a single season team record for a quarterback. Here's Luck. This was the biggest game to date by far, and, 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 and to win was great. Um, you know, obviously it's it's nice to be six and three, but we realize you know that's that's you know just one step in the journey. It's it's no end goal by any means, and you know we know it only gets harder from here, so we're gonna have to you know buckle down and and, and put in twice as much effort and twice as much work. Injury updates from around the NFL: Tampa Bay's Michael Bennett and the Cowboys from Marco Murray returned to practice Thursday. The Broncos' Tracy Porter did not. The Eagles' Sean McCoy will join workouts on Friday. The Raiders. Darren McFadden and Richard Seymour were held out on Thursday from college football. Thursday night, number 10, Florida State with a 28-22 win. Come from behind, in fact, over Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. 
Seminoles now 9-1. and one. They're one victory away from clinching the ACC Atlantic Division. E.J. Manuel with a 39-yard game-winning TD pass in the final minute to Rashad Green. Elsewhere, Arkansas State knocked off Louisiana Monroe 45-23. to Despite the absence of star point guard Derek Rose, the Bulls started the season 3-1 and as they hosted the Thunder on Thursday night. Jeff Pelosi giving the ball from the left to the right at the foul one. Back down, step back, launches, and six and 18 footer! A dagger, baby! 19.5 left. Durant has scored a big six late timeout, Chicago. That was that Dirk Nowitzki <laughs> one-legged <laughs> step back. Oh, that was hot and candy sweet as he unleashed it. The call courtesy of WWLS. Kevin Durant, 24 points. Russell Westbrook scored 16 to go with 12 assists. And Oklahoma City held off Chicago 97-91. Luel Deng scored 27 points in the Bulls loss. The Clippers had a 21-point lead at halftime at Portland and then had to hang on to beat the Blazers 103-90. to Jamal Crawford, 25 points in the win. Chris Paul added 21 from the NBA as well. Warrior center Andrew Bogut will be sidelined 7 to 10 days to rest and strengthen his surgically repaired left ankle. From baseball, infielder Mysoris Torres became the first major league free agent this offseason to join a new club as the former Angel agreed to a three-year deal with the Toronto Blue Jays. Micah Mike, it's Football Friday and a quarterback filled day. We will have Jay Cutler, Joe Flacco, Ron Jaworski, and Roger Staubach all live on Micah Mike Friday morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. ESPN Radio Sports Center all night. From expert analysis, informative interviews, electrifying highlights, and breaking news, this is Sports Center all night on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Hey there, hi there, welcome. Straight ahead this hour is the seed hot in LA, or are they all just deflated in LA? From the expansive studio number one here at ESPN Radio, I'm Jay Reynolds. Glad you can be here. Another hour of Sports Center all night. ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com. You know, it really doesn't seem that long ago that Andrew Luck was being selected first overall in the draft. Here were the Colts, though, on Thursday, opening up week 10 of the season. Andrew Luck going in 5-3, and three, matching up with a Jags team that had but one win heading into Thursday night. That one win was against the Colts. In Indianapolis, Thursday in Jacksonville, the Colts would, of course, be more than happy to return the favor. They did take a 3 nothing lead at the second quarter. Then Andrew Luck took the ball. The Colts with Donald Brown as the tailback. And this time, Andrew rolls to the right side looking. Pump fake, he's going to run. Touchdown, he's fourth of the year. Ties a Colts record that Peyton Manning has done it twice. Burt Jones did it once. That's his fourth rushing touchdown. The Colts lead it 9 nothing. Pro set in the backfield. The line cut a left quarterback sneaks. Push him over. Did he get in? Oh, did he, he get in? Wow, he did. Oh. Touchdown. Touchdown. Andrew Smith. It's a new record. Two touchdowns. For the second time this year, and the Colts lead it 16 nothing. 1070 the fan, two touchdowns for the Colts in the first half, both taken in by Andrew Luck. Third quarter, they'd wind up in the end zone again. This one, though, would not be Andrew Luck. Snap is to Gabbert. Gabbert looks for the quick throw. He throws, picked off by the yeah. Colts. Touchdown. And it's a touchdown for Darius Butler. Butler with a pick and the score. And the Colts now lead it 23-3. Adam Vinatieri would add a fourth quarter field goal to close out the scoring. Same way he had opened the scoring in the first quarter. Colts win it 27-10. As you heard, Andrew Luck setting the Colts franchise record for rushing touchdowns by a quarterback. He now has five, and they come in Indy's fourth straight win. The team is now 6-3 and three 
this was the biggest game to date by far, and, 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 and to win was great. Um, you know, obviously it's it's nice to be six and three, but we realize you know that's that's you know just one step in the journey. It's it's no end goal by any means, and you know we know it only gets harder from here, so we're gonna have to you know buckle down and and, and put in twice as much effort and twice as much work. How's life as a newly bald man? Uh, it's it's great. You know, it's you know, a lot of credit for you know Corey Redding and Pat McAfee. I think the ringleaders of of us merry men um but uh, i think you know it's great that it's getting some attention and, and raising awareness about you know obviously what chuck's going through and, and any anybody that's going through it you didn't need a helmet adjustment after that no for some reason i didn't i must have very thin hair <laughs> what does it say about this team that you had you know just so many guys doing it in sport coach pagano well uh, you know i think it, we it, it's it's a true team you know guys have each other's back have our coaches back um and, and glad to glad to rally around them Last Sunday, of course, an emotional day for the Colts with Chuck Pagano returning to visit the team in the midst of his treatment for leukemia. Luck is one of dozens of players on the team who have shaved their heads in support of Pagano. Bruce Arians, of course, at the helm while Pagano is away from the team. Arians has the team now at 6-3, and three, still within sight of the 7-1 and one Texans in the AFC South. Uh, obviously, we are extremely excited about the, uh, getting a road win in our division, um, staying basically in the hunt. Wasn't the best game for 60 minutes, but it was uh, one of our better efforts. Uh, I knew the turnovers were going to come sooner or later, and uh, they did. Uh, There's one thing Chuck and I talked about this week. So just, they just stay tight. Don't If you talk about it too much, it's not going to happen. And, uh, and they did, and uh, they were big. It's always important to get a good start, especially on the road. Get a little confidence brewing. That's what you guys did. Yeah, it was it was good. Uh, you know, we had a did not play real well on third down in the first half, and then the second half dictated itself uh, for a while there. But we still need to play better on the road third down. We've been we slipped today and um, did a better job in the red zone. But uh, it, it was a good start, especially defensively. Bruce, how how nice is it to not be right up against it in the fourth quarter for a change? It's never over till it's over, but uh, it's nice to have a, a, a nice lead, and uh, I was I was pleased with the last drive. We had had two good drives and didn't finish either one, and uh, and left a lot of points out there. What was your general impression of Andrews? I thought it was pretty pretty solid. Uh, we dropped a big big ball in the second half on him, and uh, he started out hot. And this third down I was was not. First one got tipped. There was some in and out play, but overall it was solid. Uh, the interception was not good, obviously. And, uh, you know, the sack fumble wasn't his fault. He, he was waiting for T.Y. on the drag. He was just about ready to pop big, and, and we don't block him long enough. But uh, overall he was really solid. To have all the guys shave their head in support Coach Pagano this week, what does that mean? I love him. We all do. And, uh, you know, he's smiling right now, and I, I know he's going to sleep tight tonight and uh, and battle his tail off this week, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have him back soon. What do you think of Andrew as a bald man? Not nice. Not nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure his mom's not really fired up about it. <laughs> Colts winning their fourth straight. First time they've done that since the final four games of the 2010 season. They have six wins now. Where's the ceiling for this team this year? ESPN's Herm Edwards. You don't count these guys out. I understand. No one anticipated them to beat the Green Bay Packers. Right. And they found a way to do that. And I think they have a mindset right now, it's one game at a time. And that's what they're doing. They've won four in a row. And you don't want to get ahead You're of yourself. You're not a coach anymore. No, I don't want to hear this. No. I'm asking you, can they win nine games? It's going to be tough. Okay, why? It's going to be tough. That, that schedule is daunting for these guys. Mm -hmm. and, and remember, this is a team that's rebuilding. They're on a high. They've won four in a row. This is when you have to win games. I, I, I struggle a little bit with their offense. Tonight, Andrew Luck wasn't at his best. Right. Turned the ball over, but they played a team, Jacksonville. Listen to this. At home, Jacksonville's 0-5. They've given up 156 points and only scored 44. Jags losing their sixth straight. They've lost all five of those home games this season. Losing those five home games by an average of about 22 points per game. Blaine Gabbert finished 18 of 31, 209 yards with a pick, and he's sacked three times before he was replaced by Chad Henney in the fourth quarter. Henney led the Jags to their only touchdown of the game. Sports Center all night, ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com, NBA. Interesting note as we headed into Thursday night, Bulls and Thunder, two of the stronger teams in the NBA. Not necessarily, though, when it comes to interconference play. Bulls struggling of late against the West. The Thunder having dropped three of their last four road games against the East. In Chicago on Thursday, 
The Thunder looking to snap out of that recent trend. Maynard drives left. B.G. Bach off the right elbow. Third dances inside. Darting to the bucket. He thunders down the right-hand sledgehammer. The game's tied at 73. Ibaka with 19. It's our fifth tie tonight with nine minutes left. Serge Ibaka would have 15 in the first half. Finished with 21. His teammate Kevin Durant would have the spotlight down the stretch. Jeff Pelosi giving the ball. Turn to the left to Durant at the foul line. Back down. Steps back. Launches. And sticks an 18-footer. A dagger, baby. 19.5 left. Durant has scored a big six. Late timeout, Chicago. That was that Dirk Nowitzki one-legged <laughs> step back. Oh, that was hot and candy sweet as he unleashed it. WWLS Kevin Durant finishing with 24. Thunder finishing with a 97-91 win over the Bulls in Chicago. Durant spoke with TNT's Craig Sager. Well, with it, Kevin Durant, 10 of his 24 points down the stretch of the fourth quarter. We know you have the scores mentality, but what made you take the game over, and how were things easier down the stretch? Uh, well, my teammates, you know, they, they play so well tonight. You know, Serge was great. Kmart was good. Russ was good at setting everybody up. And, you know, I kind of flew under the radar for the first three quarters, and I knew it was uh, winning time, so I just tried to be aggressive. You know, it's great to get out of here with a win, but the two teams combined for 43 turnovers. You had six of them. Was it just a sloppy game or great defense, or how do you explain it? Oh, it was a sloppy game, man. I, was, I can't have six turnovers, man. I got to be better. So, uh, But I'm glad we came here and got a win against a really good team. Uh, I'm trying to move on. As for the Bulls, they've lost six of their last eight games against teams from the Western Conference. Clippers, in the only other game on Thursday, beat the Blazers. 103 to 90. Clippers now have six consecutive games over 100 points. That ties a franchise record for the longest streak to start a season. They did it in 1985. Well, straight ahead, why does Kobe Bryant think you and I are bored? That's straight ahead. I'm Jay Reynolds. Sports Center All Night continues. It's ESPN Radio. Hi, Todd. Oh, hey, Samantha. Do you want to be my boyfriend? Oh, sure. Wow, I'd love to. Great. Now give me your Subway steak melt. Mm, my melt? Yeah, I'm your girlfriend now. I, I, I don't think this is working out. Get your own Subway steak melt, like the tender, juicy steak and bacon melt, or the succulent, smoky chipotle steak and cheese. Get yours today. Subway. Eat fresh. E-discovery laws and government regulations require that certain businesses save electronic communication, namely emails or face potential fines. Barracuda Networks, the world leader in content security, application delivery, and data protection, with more than 130,000 customers worldwide, can help. The Barracuda Message Archiver indexes and preserves all email communication while enforcing policies for regulatory compliance. Save email. Avoid penalties. Visit barracuda.com slash archiver to try the Barracuda Message Archiver free for 30 days. That's barracuda.com slash archiver. This Veterans Day, give a gift to our military heroes and their families through USO Wishbook. Visit USO.org forward slash ESPN. This Veterans Day at Lowe's, get the Maytag Centennial Washer and Dryer for $798. That's a savings of $430. And a Bosch 18-volt lithium drill for $99. That's a savings of $70. Choose 18-month special financing on purchases of $599 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer is valid from November 7th through the 12th while supplies last. Credit offer valid from November 8th through the 12th. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offer. Some exclusions apply. See store for details, including Maytag offer. Leslie French was hunkered down for a fight. I was just at the dealership looking for a car. Lured in by the enemy. No, it was pretty cordial, but I did need a car loan fast. There was no time. I called Navy Federal Credit Union. A really nice guy approved me for a loan on the spot. Great rate, too. Victory was hers. Well, a uh, convertible was mine. Four million members, four million stories. From every military branch, DOD, and their families. NavyFederal.org. Federally insured by NCUA. Clipping coupons, standing in line at 4 a.m., buying five to get one free. Maybe it's me, but I don't think it should be that hard to save money, which is why we made Geico.com so easy. Just a few clicks and you could be saving hundreds of dollars on your car insurance. And when you switch to Geico, you can do practically everything online. Report a claim, update your policy, even pay your bill. Click Bam Boom. Visit Geico.com today. Click Bam Boom. I'm rather fond of that one. It's time to get winter ready. Dick's Sporting Goods has more of the best brands to keep you warm as the weather gets colder. 
The North Face, Columbia, Spider, Burton, Copen, Marmot, Mountain Hardware, and more. Dix has the widest selection in styles and colors in men's, women's, and youth jackets and accessories. And don't forget to grab a new snowboard. Dix carries the snow equipment you need. Before hitting the slopes, stop into Dix Sporting Goods today. Every season starts at Dix. This Veterans Day, ESPN is working with the USO to help lift the spirits of America's troops and their families stationed around the world. Grant a wish for our servicemen and women, or donate a special gift to their families to show your support. Give a special gift to our military heroes and their families through USO Wishbook. Visit USO.org forward slash ESPN and give your gift today. Was anybody else surprised to hear Greeny gush about Denver? To me, the team to watch when it's all said and done is Denver. I really think Denver, they had the toughest schedule in the world coming out. Look at their losses. They lost at Atlanta. They lost a very tough game to Houston. Both games that they could have won. I think their defense is going to come together. I think Peyton is going to get better and better. I think that Denver could easily wind up being the two seed in the AFC, and they're going to be a very tough out. It's Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. All night. All night. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Now you can test drive Snapshot even if you have insurance with another company. See how much you can save before you switch. So what is the problem in Los Angeles? That's still to come. I'm Jay Reynolds. Sports Center All Night continues. ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com. Apparently... No problem in Indy, or at least for the Colts, even when they play on the road. Snap is to Gabbert. Gabbert looks for the quick throw. He throws, picked off by the yeah. Colts. Touchdown. And it's a touchdown for Darius Butler. Butler with a pick and the score. And the Colts now lead it 23-3. to And 70 the fan pick six for Darius Butler. One of two picks he had in the Colts' 27-10 to win in Jacksonville. ESPN's Antonio Pierce. When you have a team that's weak like that, you take advantage of them. They did that with turnovers tonight on third down, one for ten, the Jacksonville Jaguars offense. But I like it. You saw Butler going after the strips and the ball. You saw the defensive line coming at them. I played for Greg Minuska, now the defensive coordinator, my rookie year. He was my linebacker coach. I know how, how studious he is in, a, in his study room, teaching film, teaching uh, guys how to go after the ball, forcing those fumbles. And we have an offense that's coming along that's putting points on the board. Like Andrew Luck in the office is, that helps the defense out to make more plays on their side of the ball. For Darius Butler, his first career game with two picks, and the pick six was the second of his career, with the other one coming in 2009. He was asked about it by Chuck Wilson earlier here on ESPN Radio. Darius, when you see a play like that, and you know in your heart that that's from the film work that's done, all the coaching it's done, and so on, what's that level of satisfaction that you get from it? Oh, it's great because, you know, the work that you put into it that pays off on Sunday, that's huge. And uh, it kind of motivates you more to put in even more film work, even more study. So, um, you know, when it pays off, it's always a great thing for your uh, confidence. Darius, th this has been such a marvelous story, and there's a, I think people really have pulled for this team so much because of Coach Pagano. What has this whole experience taught you about perseverance, about love, camaraderie, whatever you want to call it? What is it? What has it brought to you? Oh, it's huge when uh, guys, you know, bond together and, and they go through tough things and that, that makes you either stronger or it breaks you down. And I think it made, it made the whole team, this whole organization tighter as the unit and stronger. You know, now we all come together and play. Everybody plays for different things, you know, different motivation. But uh, Coach Pagano is a huge motivation and a, and a, huge, a huge person for all of us. Colts Darius Butler earlier here on ESPN Radio where all guests appear via the Subway Fresh Take Hotline. Colts going to 6-3 and three on the season. Meanwhile, back to the NBA where there's a team that's got a record that's not quite at the same level as the Colts. And, of course, the focus has been on the Lakers. Morris wide open for a three, no. Long rebound, no, he's on the push. Left hand drive in the lane, pass deflected. Moe comes back to it. Back to Foy, heat check. Jazz on Wednesday beating the Lakers, but L.A.'s loss dropping them to 1-4 and four on the season. That's getting quite a bit of attention. Things 
starting to focus in on head coach Mike Brown and whether the seat is getting warm beneath him. Ramona Shelburne of ESPNLosAngeles.com. Jim Buzz thinks of Mike Brown what he's always thought of Mike Brown, which is that he's too prepared and he's t and he works too hard for this to be happening. And when I watched the game with him last night, he sounded like a lot like a, like a lot of Laker fans, which is simply he wants to know what's going on. I mean, he's like, we don't go 0 and 3 for the first time since our family has owned the franchise without me going. I need to find out what's going on and get to the bottom of it. So what's going on? You follow? The, you're, you're with the team. You're at practice. Well, Jim Buzz said he, you know, he goes down and he talks to the team and he goes, he goes, I went down to practice the other day and I talked to Kobe Bryant. I gave, actually, he didn't even talk to him. He just looked at him and he said, everything all right? And Kobe gave him this look like, yeah, everything's cool. So as long as the players are on that, everything's cool. As long as Kobe's making it, as long as Kobe's smiling and not giving death stares, I think everything's fine. But the Lakers have a six-game six homestand coming up. At the beginning of the year, you would have looked at that and you would have said, you know, they just need to do well on this. They need to bank some wins here. Now they start looking like must-win games. Lakers are 1-4 for the first time since 1993. What about Mike Brown? We all are frustrated, uh, so, so don't get me wrong there, you know, because I mean, we want to win, and we want to win every time we step on the floor. But, uh, you know, as, as a head coach of this team, for me to walk around, you know, pissed or mopey or however you want to call it, is not the right thing to do. And what about that stink eye that everybody's talking about that Kobe apparently fired off with the Lakers struggling? Like, I was upset at Mike Brown. I gave him, like, the dust there. I don't give a shit how it's interpreted. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm too old to deal with that stuff. I really am. I mean, I, I've been his biggest supporter. So I'm, I'm really too old to be dealing with childish things. Yeah, I mean, everybody, you know, everybody here would be frustrated. You lose a game, you're upset, you're angry. I mean, so it's, it has nothing to do with one particular part. I mean, it's just... God, people are bored. Lakers next game coming up on Friday. Never boring in L.A. Lakers will host the Warriors. Sports Center all night, ESPN Radio, ESPN Radio.com. College football Thursday in the ACC. Florida State, Vod Tech. The ACC championship still in play for one of them. Let's bring in Adam Jones with the details. Adam. All right, thanks, Jay. The two sides entered play heading in opposite directions. The Seminoles controlled their own destiny in the ACC's Atlantic Division, while the hokey streak of 19 consecutive seasons with a bull berth was in jeopardy. It was 13-10 Florida State at halftime. E.J. Manuel and Logan Thomas traded touchdown passes. After a lengthy delay, when Hokie's safety Michael Cole was carted off the field, Manuel and the Knowles got back to work. Ball on the right hash, first down call. High snap, and Manuel hauls it in, loops it down in the middle of the end zone. And it's caught by Greg Dent. Touchdown, Florida State. Beautiful toss. Desmond Fry was beaten on the play. Dent hauled it in right over the eye, the second eye in Virginia. Bill Rosinski with the call on ESPN Radio. Second touchdown pass of the night for Manuel was set up by a Vodtech fumble, making it 2010 Florida State. Those 20 points for FSU, typically bad news for Virginia Tech. Hokies entered play, having dropped 7 of 8 when allowing 20-plus points. On the following drive, Logan Thomas answered with a touchdown run of his own from five yards out, trimmed things to 20 to 17. Through three quarters, it was all Thomas and the Hokie offense, but in the fourth, the Hokie defense stepped up. Third down and 25, a handoff in the backfield. It's fumbled at the four yard line, and it's recovered by Virginia Tech. What a horrible play by Devontae Freeman. He was trying to avoid the sack and threw the ball forward. And I think that's why there's a penalty flag on the play. And it was ruled by, not the referee, by an official to be a flag and an illegal forward pass. But let's see if the referee is going to overrule us. No, they're not going to rule it a fumble. They're going to rule it an illegal forward pass. The call would stand with the safety. Virginia Tech pulled within one point of Florida State 2019 on the ensuing drive. They drove it all the way to Florida State's four-yard line. They connected on a 21-yard field goal because they couldn't punch it in. So it was 22-20 to Va Tech. E.J. Manuel and the Knowles took over with 219 left on the clock. Manuel comes up to the line. We're down to 10 on the play clock. Changing his call. Ball's in his hands. Delayed blitz. Toss over the middle. That ball is caught inside the 30. Breaking free to the 20-yard line. To the 10. Towards the pylon. Touchdown, Rashad Green. Oh, my goodness. A stunning play. A 39-yard touchdown pass. Florida State would seal it with a game-clinching interception. They were the only team entering play today in the top 10 in offense and defense. Their offense put them in front. Their defense closed it out. They win 28-22.
they can clinch the ACC Atlantic with a Clemson loss to Maryland on Saturday. Jay, let's send it back to you. All right, Adam. Virginia Tech, meanwhile, has to win its next two games to become bowl eligible for a 20th consecutive season. Well, what unexpected tackle attempt had the Colts locker room buzzing after their win in the NFL Thursday night? That's next. The Sports Center All Night continues. ESPN Radio. You want to enjoy whiskey, but you don't want the whiskey burn. Well, what if whiskey wasn't hard to drink? What if it was easy? What if I told you it can be? Try the light, easy taste of Canadian Mist Whiskey. Triple distilled and aged in oak on the shores of the Georgian Bay. So lighten up with Canadian Mist. This is going to be easy. Drink responsibly. Canadian Mist blended Canadian whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, brown form in Louisville, Kentucky. Progressive presents Flo's newest smash hit. The Name Your Price Tool gives you lots of coverage options. The Name Your Price Tool. You give us a budget and we'll show you a range of coverage options. But we can't go over all the dessert options. Your server will be back in just a second and he'll explain. The Name Your Price Tool, only from Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. It's Michael K. And Don LaGreca. The New York Tri-State continues its battle toward recovery after the effects of Hurricane Sandy and the latest Nor'easter. We really need your help. Please log on to www.redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS or text Red Cross to 90999 to donate $10. We've all been affected by Hurricane Sandy in some form, and together we can all do our part to help our friends, neighbors, and communities. Again, for more information on how you can help, log on to Red Cross. .org. Yes. Are you making frequent bathroom trips during the night? Do you have a strong urge to urinate? If ignored, these symptoms may result in complicated kidney and bladder infections, kidney failure, or loss of bladder function. Additionally, if you are a male of 50 years or older and experiencing sexual dysfunction, you may be at risk of a stroke or heart attack. The same disease process that affects blood vessels which lead to the heart and brain affect the delicate vessels that supply blood to the genital organs. Careful evaluation of erectile dysfunction can uncover these problems years before critical damage occurs. Compassionate urologists at the New York Urologic Institute specialize in improving urologic and sexual function. Latest technological advances allow the patient to get answers to diagnostic tests immediately, reducing anxiety. Call the New York Urologic Institute at 347-508-3991. Offices are conveniently located in Queens and Brooklyn. For timely, effective treatment, call 347-508-3991. That's 347-508-3991. An ESPN Radio Extra Point with Colin Cowherd. To me, there's eight organizations in the NFL, I counted them this morning, that feel like it's 100% about winning Super Bowls. Eight. There may be more, but I get a very strong feeling from ownership down. It is all about winning Super Bowls. New York Giants, Green Bay Packers, San Francisco 49ers with Harbaugh, New England, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Indianapolis, and Denver. That's all that matters. It's about winning Super Bowls. Tennessee drafted Vince Young. They didn't think Vince Young was great. They thought he could sell tickets from a source close to that organization. Part of getting the Vince Young deal done, eh, people here will love him. That's not about winning Super Bowls. The New York Jets getting Tebow, disruptive. It's not about winning Super Bowls. Eight teams in the league, that's all that matters. Hey, Golick, what if I said the birth of your child is no excuse to miss a game? Couldn't disagree more. I think it's idiotic almost, bordering on that, to to make a statement like that, to say that that should overtake any other other thing in your life. I think it's a ridiculous statement to make. Why? Why? Because it's family. I mean, this is the, the birth of your kid, birth death, funeral, whatever. I mean, your your family is first. Your family is first. It's Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Bam. ESPN Radio Sports Center. 
I'm Neil Jackson, coming off his single-game rookie record, 433 yards passing in a win over Miami. Top overall pick, Andrew Luck, found success on the ground Thursday night against struggling Jacksonville. The Colts with Donald Brown as the tailback. And this time, Andrew rolls to the right side, looking. A fake, he's going to run. Touchdown, he's fourth of the year. Ties a Colts record that Peyton Manning has done it twice. Burt Jones did it once. That's his fourth rushing touchdown. The Colts lead it now. Nothing. And the call courtesy of 1070, the fan. In the first half, Andrew Luck scored his fourth and fifth rushing touchdowns of the year, setting the team record for a QB in one season. And the Colts go on to beat Jacksonville 27-10. Indy improves to 6-3. and three. The Jags fall to 1-8. and eight. Number 10, Florida State. Now just one win away from securing a spot in the ACC championship game after they rallied past Virginia Tech 28-22 in Blacksburg. Okies nailed the go-ahead field goal with just over two minutes to go, leaving the Seminoles ample time to recover, and they did, as E.J. Manuel connected with Chad Green on the game-winning touchdown in the final minute. FSU head coach Jimbo Fisher. I think it was complete team effort. And we made enough mistakes in all three phases, but we made enough plays. And when you go on the road to a tough place here, coach a Frank Beamer team, against a Frank Beamer team, and play on the road and do this and be able to pull it out in these circumstances when you're not playing your best. But we knew it would be their good effort. But yeah, it's just a total team effort. Elsewhere in college football Thursday night, Arkansas State top Louisiana Monroe 45-23 to from the NBA. Jamal Crawford, 25 points. Chris Paul, 21 as the Clippers got by the Blazers in Portland, 103-90. to Oklahoma City with a 97-91 win at Chicago. Kevin Durant led the way for the Thunder with 24 points. The NHL and the Players Association returned to the bargaining table on Thursday, the third straight day the sides have met in an effort to end the lockout with the work stoppage reaching day 54. This week is considered critical for the season to be saved. More meetings are scheduled for Friday. In college basketball, Cleveland State head coach Gary Waters, who has led the Vikings to the postseason for the last five seasons, has been rewarded with a new seven-year contract. And infielder Meister Asturis became the first major league free agent this offseason to sign with a new team. He's with the Blue Jays. Micah Mike, it's football Friday and a quarterback filled day. We will have Jay Cutler, Joe Flacco, Ron Jaworski, and Roger Staubach all live on Micah Mike Friday morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Sports Center all night on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Get your hands on a Subway Steak Melt today, like the tender, juicy steak and bacon melt. Sports Center All Night continues. ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com. I'm Jay Reynolds. Thanks for making us part of your night. As you heard from Neil Jackson, Colts opening up the slate for Week 10 with that win in Jacksonville. Indy finding the end zone three times, one being a pick six for the defense, the other two courtesy of Andrew Luck running them in. So he now has five rushing touchdowns this season, setting the Colts record for a quarterback. ESPN's Bob Holtzman. If you haven't seen Andrew Luck play much, you would assume at his size that he's pretty much a pocket passer with limited mobility and athleticism. That may have all changed after tonight. Not only did he run in two touchdowns, but he had the entire locker room talking after his torpedo tackle attempt after throwing a second quarter interception. If I'm going to be the one turning the ball over, I, you know, I damn sure better be the one that you know, at least tries to stop the guy from getting in the end zone. I was afraid he was going to try to knock his head off, and uh, but um, he was real. He gets ticked off when he throws an interception, I'll be honest with you. It's great. I mean, it shows he's a team player, and he's ready to fight no matter the circumstance. No matter what happens, he's keeping fighting. Months ago, Andrew Luck told me that the coaches had talked to him and asked him not to run over players when he's running the ball, try and learn how to slide. That's something he did a lot in college was run over guys. He said tonight, nobody's talked to him yet about his tackle attempt and his plan tonight with that, but you can bet somebody will at some point. The best news for the Colts, they go on the road, they get a win. Every win they'd had so far this season was very narrow. Today was the biggest yet. Now they're 6-3 and three and in definite playoff contention. In Jacksonville, Bob Holtzman, ESPN. Andrew Luck now has 15 total touchdowns this season. That is now more than the 14 that his father Oliver had for his career.
Coming off his rookie record, 433 yards passing last Sunday. Andrew Luck throwing for 227 Thursday, and he did have an interception and a fumble. As ESPN's Antonio Pierce notes, though, he is able to lean on someone like Reggie Wayne. I, mean, I think that's one thing when you play with Peyton Manning, you can understand you can help out a rookie quarterback like Andrew Luck. And Andrew Luck is smart. He's relying on the veteran. And you can just see the chemistry that they have. I mean, he's been targeted, Reggie Wayne himself, going to this game the most out of any receiver in the National Football League. But there's something about it. I mean, obviously, they're working on this in practice. It's carrying over into games. You saw it tonight on big plays, on, 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 on times they needed to throw down the field. Reggie Wayne and Andrew Luck connected. I like that combination. If you got one guy that you can really rely on. It has to be Reggie Wayne on that offense. And he's doing a good job as far as giving the ball. Offensive line doing a good job protecting him. And tonight, with the running game and last week, is coming along and helping him out in the pass game. Andrew Luck's been targeting Reggie Wayne for roughly 31% of his passes this season. That's the third highest in the NFL behind Jay Cutler and Brandon Marshall and Matt Castle and Dwayne Bowe. Luck began the game Thursday actually targeting Reggie Wayne on eight of his first nine attempts. Six of them went for completions for 64 yards and four first downs. Indy, obviously happy to have Luck on the field. He has remained healthy thus far. Heading into the week, there are some who may not be playing this weekend. Take Dallas, for example. DeMarco Murray still nursing a sprained foot. He has missed the last three games. What about Sunday in Philly against the Eagles? ESPN's John Clayton. Well, the optimism isn't too good right now because he didn't practice on Thursday matching Wednesday's workout. Now, they're not ruling him out for Friday. He might be able to do some things. If he's able to do something on Friday, then I think that buys him time for the chance that maybe he can play on Sunday. But I'd say right now he's more questionable to doubtful. And, of course, that hurts their running game because Felix Jones is still banged up. He's going to start. But they'd like to have Murray just out there maybe for 10 plays just to help out that game. Now, Percy Harvin still has his problem with his uh, that he's on crutches with his ankle. And so because of that, it looks like there's a decent chance that he may have to miss the game. I know earlier in the week he came back and said that it was going to be probably a long shot for him to be able to play. So barring any kind of a miracle by Friday, which I don't anticipate in practicing, looks like Harvin's going to have to miss the game against Detroit. Then Akeem Nix goes on the injury list with that knee, but it's not too bad. He was limited in practice on Thursday. So as long as there's no setback to a point where he can't practice on Friday, he's on path to be able to play on Sunday. So Nix is one to watch on the Friday injury report to see if there's any progress, any regress. But I'd say right now, Nix should be able to go for New York. Meanwhile, there had been questions arising this week about Bears quarterback Charles Tillman. But as our Josina Anderson reports, it looks as though Chicago fans might be able to breathe a little easier. Bears fans can breathe a sigh of relief. Cornerback Charles Tillman pulling double duty as a doting dad expecting his fourth child while being one of the most disruptive defensive players in the league tweeted this early Thursday. God, family, football. Baby is coming Monday. Don't worry, I'll be there Sunday. Tillman, who did not address reporters Thursday, had earlier suggested he might miss the Texans game. But the Bears are confident he'll be able to handle his business on and off the field. Pretty sure in 2012, you know, with the doctors that we have nowadays, that we'll be able to, to work around the baby being delivered, you know, um, Sunday between uh, whatever time, whatever 7.30 kickoff to tonight, you know, or wherever else the rest of that night. I'm sure we'll, we'll be able to find a way to get that done. Rather than talk about Tillman's playing status, the Bears' top two linebackers focused instead on the time it has taken for the NFC's Defensive Player of the Month in October to receive his due praise. He's been doing his whole career here. We've seen it. Uh, but touchdowns every year. You know, it's not this only year he's done it, so I don't understand it. I'm glad he's getting out because he deserves it. He's getting uh, a lot of attention now. He should have been getting it, you know, for the past 10 years. Well, he's an elite player and has always played in a high, at a high level. Now, you know, in, in year 10, he's taking it up to another level. Matter of fact, on Monday, Tillman received acclaim from the highest office in the country. Tillman may be... Uh, Defensive player of the year, the way he's playing. While Tillman is getting first-class recognition from the president, it begs the question, can the entire unit keep the compliments from going to their heads? Erlacher said, it's not that hard. Adding, if you were in their meetings, you would hear how coaches talk to the players to keep them humble.
Erlacher also said they are always working to correct their mistakes, and he doesn't anticipate anyone getting big-headed. With the Bears, I'm Josina Anderson, ESPN. Bears at 7-1, meeting up with another 7-1 team Sunday when they host Houston. Well, we're heading into the final turns of the NASCAR postseason. Two races to go before we have a champ. More from the desert in our Pat Patterson. This race day update is presented by Brandt. Brandt powers Justin Allgaier in the NASCAR Nationwide Series and empowers the American farmer every day. Find out more about Brandt at their website, brandt.co. Brandt, take control. NASCAR heads to the Valley of the Sun this weekend. Only two more big racing weekends left and three big championships to be settled. In the Nationwide Series this weekend, it's Elliott Sadler and Ricky Stenhouse tied at the top over in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. It's James Busher still leading Ty Dillon there. And Jimmy Johnson comes into Sunday's race in Phoenix only seven points ahead of Brad Keselowski. Now, don't forget, this is a racetrack that has pretty fresh pavement on it. Jimmy Johnson hasn't forgotten about that, and he talks about how this weekend may play out. During the race, we actually got some type of second lane working in three and four, which was which was different. Um, the dogleg kink, um, turn three, whatever it is on the back straightaway, there was a bit of chaos in navigating that thing and guys shooting across the flat, which led to some issues into you know, the real turn three. So I think that's really the, the thing to be focused on. You know, you, there might be some crashes caused from that but um, the track has had some time to age and I, I hope it's lost some grip so we'll definitely move out you know they spent a lot of time and effort to, to try to create extra lanes of racing through their modeling and uh, I, I hope they're right you know the first time there it was pretty narrow and uh, I, I hope that as it ages we can get a wider racetrack and really put on a good show three-time champ Tony Stewart isn't so optimistic uh, not unless they do what they did last year because we went and did the tire test last week for a good year and uh, it was narrower than it was when we tested the first time, so um, they got some work to do. Uh, they got to figure out how to keep it clean. That's the problem. They're out, you're out in the desert, and you, you know it, that track's real sensitive to being clean, so um, it's a hard challenge for those guys. Here's the way the points look. Jimmy Johnson leads Brad Kozlowski by seven. Clint Boyer's back in third. Casey Kane fourth, and Matt Kenseth rounds out the top five. Don't forget about race day, 6 to 7 a.m. Saturday and Sunday. We'll keep you up to speed and get you ready for the race in Phoenix. From Phoenix International Raceway, Pat Patterson, ESPN Radio. This race day update is presented by Brandt. Brandt powers Justin Allgaier in the NASCAR Nationwide Series and empowers the American farmer every day. Find out more about Brandt at their website, brandt.co. Brandt, take control. Phoenix this week at Homestead for the finale, both races on ESPN. Straight ahead, as we continue, who's responsible for another deflating loss? For USC. I'm Jay Reynolds. That's next. Sports Center All Night continues on ESPN Radio. This Veterans Day, ESPN is working with the USO to help lift the spirits of America's troops and their families. Give a gift to our military heroes and their families through USO Wishbook. Visit USO.org forward slash ESPN to grant a wish today. This Veterans Day at Lowe's, get the Maytag Centennial Washer and Dryer for $798. That's a savings of $430. And a Bosch 18-volt lithium drill for $99. That's a savings of $70. Choose 18-month special financing on purchases of $599 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer is valid from November 7th through the 12th while supplies last. Credit offer valid from November 8th through the 12th. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offer. Some exclusions apply. See store for details, including Maytag offer. It's time to get winter ready. Dick's Sporting Goods has more of the best brands to keep you warm as the weather gets colder. The North Face, Columbia, Spider, Burton, Copen, Marmot, Mountain Hardware, and more. Dick's has the widest selection in styles and colors in men's, women's, and youth jackets and accessories. And don't forget to grab a new snowboard. Dick's carries the snow equipment you need. Before hitting the slopes, stop into Dick's Sporting Goods today. Every season starts at Dick's. The NYPD is among the best law enforcement departments in the country. The NYPD offers a job with a future, a great place to serve, and a chance to advance. Visit NYPDrecruit.com or call 212-RECRUIT for current test schedules and filing fee information. 
Hi, football fans. I think you'll agree that you've got to have great seats. And now it's even easier to pick the seats you want wherever you are thanks to StubHub's new mobile seat maps. They're the only interactive seat maps that let you search for NFL tickets by section and actually see the view from your seat, all from your mobile phone. How cool is that? So whether you're searching StubHub on your computer or your phone, it's easy to find the seats you want. Yet another reason thousands of fans use StubHub for their NFL tickets every Sunday. StubHub! Hi, it's Colin Thursday. Bill Romanowski on pot smoking in the NFL. Greg Cosell thinks Eli Manning's arm? Well, you have to listen to find out. Download the Thursday Thundering Herd podcast. Check it out at ESPNRadio.com. This is The Herd with Colin Cowherd. The young people always make the same mistake in sports. You judge everything on wins and losses. It's not just that. It's called discernment. Tebow can win individual games. You can't build franchises around guys who are mechanically flawed and who can't make basic NFL throws. You're going to have to be so good everywhere else to win games, and no general manager, owner, or head coach wants to have to build a team that's so great everywhere else that a mechanically flawed quarterback can win. A lot of you young people just don't get this. Go ask your more successful older brother. It's not about talent. It's am I willing to build a company around you? Cam Newton can win games. Do you want to build an organization around his persona and maturity? So when you're building an organization, a National Football League team, you're asking a lot of big questions that go beyond talent. Colin Cowherd, weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio. Sports Center, all night. All night. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Just plug Snapshot into your car, and your good driving could save you up to 30% with Progressive. Visit Progressive.com slash Snapshot. Is the BCS really a race for number two? More on that still to come here on Sports Center all night. ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com. We did have college football, a top 10 team in action on Thursday. Number 10, Florida State. Getting past Vod Tech, 28-22. Virginia Tech's first home loss this season. First loss in eight home games. Florida State can clinch the ACC Atlantic with a Clemson loss to Maryland on Saturday. Virginia Tech still trying to become bowl eligible for a 20th consecutive season. They need wins in their next two. But heading into the college football season, the top team in the nation was in Los Angeles. Now, USC is 6-3. and 4-3 three. and three in their own conference with yet another case of eyebrows being raised, given the goings-on with the Trojans. We came through the talk of the Trojans changing jerseys recently, and now we learn the story this week of one of the USC team managers being fired from the team for intentionally deflating to below NCAA-regulated levels some of the game balls used in that game against Oregon, the balls were discovered by game officials. Three of them reinflated before the game and two others at halftime. So the balls were all regulation in the second half. USC investigated. The Pac-12 fined the school, also issued a reprimand. Coach Lane Kiffin. Compliance department obviously did a, or did a very thorough check and research of everything involved to make sure that there was no knowledge of any coaches or players knowing anything about this. So um, I don't know why it was done. Um, what I've been told by the conference is um, they fixed a number of the balls prior to kickoff. So um, I guess we were playing with some deflated balls and some non-deflated balls. We've all heard the note that it's believed that a ball that's less inflated is easier to throw and easier to catch. Lane Kiffin suggesting that this was the work of one rogue team manager. Should we believe that? ESPN analyst Brian Greasy and Mark May with Scott Van Pelt. Is it reasonable to think that a manager on his own would have just decided to do this? What do you think? I don't think there's any chance. I, I know when I played quarterback, the night before the games, I had the bag of footballs in my hotel room. I didn't want anybody touching the footballs. I had them a certain way. And if a manager <laughs> so you were felt taking like out of the ball, <laughs> if a manager was, felt like they yeah. were going to take the balls and just take air out of it arbitrarily, that would never happen. I don't think that a manager would ever do that without someone telling him to do that bottom line because that's not his place in the game. I think he's supposed to just get the equipment there and make sure to do his job. Anything with playing with the equipment or changing it, yeah. 
have that, no way. That, Mo gotta, most managers would tell you that their job is to not make the coach want to hit him upside the head. So if we push back from just this, which it's taking air out of the football, they've lost three games. They were the number one team preseason. They had the presumed Heisman front runner in Matt Barkley. They've got games that are, to, for lack of a better word, losable to finish out Arizona State, UCLA, Notre Dame. If Lane Kiffin were to lose two of these games and finish with five losses, Mark, do you think that he's got a chance to lose his job? Absolutely. I, I know that Pat Hayden, the athletic director there, said he's not on the hot seat, but I believe he is. I know a lot of disgruntled USC Trojan fans right now. My dentist is one of them. They're upset with this situation because they thought this season was going to be their season. That's one of the reasons why Matt Barkley didn't go in the draft last year. He wanted to come back this year because he had an opportunity to play for a national championship. They might not even play in the Pac-12 championship game. Yeah, and next year these sanctions and the scholarship reductions start to take more effect. And what's a results-oriented business? And when you don't win, somebody's got to be responsible. USC, Arizona State on Saturday. Meanwhile, of course, there's quite a race down the stretch for those coveted two slots in the title game. Here's our college football crew, David Pollock, Jesse Palmer with our Reese Davis. BCS headlines, number one Alabama pulled one out of the fire against LSU. The tide remains on top. Kansas State, Colin Klein got dinged up, expected to go against TCU over the weekend. Oregon scored more points, had more yards than anyone ever has against USC to stay perfect. And Notre Dame, stroke of good fortune. Pitt missed a late field goal, took three overtimes, but Notre Dame still undefeated and number four in the BCS standing. So numbers two through five going on the road in the BCS this week. That includes Georgia's trip to Auburn. Let's start with number two, Kansas State. Could this be the toughest test for the Wildcats remaining the rest of the season against TCU? I think so, definitely. When you talk about their offense, Optimus Klein banged up a week ago. You don't know where he's at. But more importantly, you're playing against the TCU defense, one of the only defenses that have a pulse in the Big 12. you got to go to their place where defenses are always better at home. I think it's the last real, real challenge for Colin Klein and that offense. I think their defense will play fine the rest of the year, period. But this offense has to do well against that good defense. Well, Oregon playing Cal on the road isn't there toughest challenge the rest of the way either, but in six of the last eight quarters, Cal has played Oregon. Their defense has had a lot of success. They've found ways to be physical, play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. They've given them problems, putting a lot of bodies close to the line of scrimmage, trying to take the run game away. They've even spied the quarterback with the safety. Clancy Pendergast, Cal's defensive coordinator, he understands if you're going to stop Oregon, you've got to stop the run, force Marcus Mariota to beat you throwing. And remember the last time they went to Berkeley, it was a false start on the kicker for mm. Cal. They kept Ooh. Oregon's perfect season season alive, a season in which they wound up in the national championship game. Now, Georgia's back in the top five in the BCS. They have the Deep South's oldest rivalry against Auburn. Auburn's been in complete free fall for weeks. What, what's the dog's challenge there? Well, this is there's never any love lost between these two teams. I mean, both of you get recruited by Auburn and you get recruited by Georgia. Auburn's half their team is from the state of Georgia. But you look at Brian Van Gorder. Remember, he's the defensive coordinator now. He started out his career with Georgia, with Mike Bobo, with Mark Rick. He knows them exceptionally well, knows the offensive philosophies, knows exactly what they're trying to accomplish. So I think you look for that Auburn defense to see what they can do against that Georgia offense. Now, Notre Dame finishes the season against USC, but a couple of other games they're expected to win. Have the Irish finally learned their lesson against BC? Will they come out smoking ready to go? I, I think they will, and the head coach, Brian Kelly, said he wants his team to have the head of champions. He wants them to understand, regardless of who you play, you're going to get their A game from here on out, so you can't be inconsistent. You can't shoot yourself in the foot like they did against Pittsburgh. You can't have two turnovers in the red zone. Defensively, can't give up runs of 55 and 48 yards. Boston College, guys, even though they're only a two-win team, historically, they've knocked off undefeated Notre Dame teams in 93 and again in 2002. They're going to get a great effort, but if Notre Dame just plays their own game, they're going to be fine. One thing we will keep an eye on this weekend is whether the Crimson Tide has any letdown facing Texas A&M after last week's win over LSU. Sports Center all night, ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com. A lot of discussion about what's happening in Los Angeles or perhaps what's not happening, like winning. Lakers, one in four, rampant speculation going on. Vice President Jim Buss saying Wednesday that either the system is flawed or something's going on. Might it be the Princeton offense? TNT's Charles Barkley says, yeah, that might be it. Well, I'm alarmed because, uh, you know, you know, my guy, you know, pe people, I, I'm serious. I'm a hundred percent serious. I don't want any plays or any players from Princeton. <laughs> if I, I don't want any players or any plays from Princeton. If I want an accountant, I want him to be from Princeton. <laughs> that I said that a month ago. I said it two weeks ago. I said it last week. 
It ain't gonna work, man. You got. I don't understand. In my opinion, of that situation is not going to change as long as they run that little walk the ball. You got all these guys: Kobe, Dwight, Paul Gasol, who can get up and down the floor. When Steve Nash come back, he can get up and down the floor. You make bad teams competitive when you take the talent out the game. So until they figure out, like you know what, maybe we should run a little bit. If you want to run that half court offense, that person thing, if you don't get a layup or a dunk first, that probably will work. But to take the ball out of Steve Nash's hand and make him pass the ball and just stand in the corner or just move around a little bit, that's just silly. Charles Barkley with Mike Lupica on ESPN New York, 98.7. Lakers, next game coming up on Friday, they will host the Warriors. L.A.'s won 33 of the 36 between the teams at Staples Center. Warriors haven't beaten the Lakers since 2008 on the road. The Colts got their sixth win of the season Thursday, but how many is it going to take to make the playoffs? That's straight ahead as we continue. It's ESPN Radio. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is going to get worse, much worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. And if you owe the IRS back payroll taxes, chances are you will be visited at your home or business by an IRS agent. Don't become paralyzed by fear. Take action now. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help. Our team of experienced tax attorneys can get you protected. Stop collection and negotiate a permanent settlement with the IRS and state, potentially saving you thousands of dollars. At U.S. Tax Shield, our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. No games and no tricky upsells. That's why we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. Put an end to your torment. Get protected. Get the shield. Call U.S. Tax Shield now at 800-226-8184. That's 800-226-8184. 800-226-8184. It's fun to debate your favorite teams and players, but the debate is over when it comes to where you go for your next set of tires. See the experts at your local Ford dealer for big savings on name brand tires during the big tire event going on now. If you've got a business, you qualify for the official Mike and Mike office stimulus package. When you move from your office into a gorgeous Regis office, not only will you save a fortune, you'll get two months absolutely free. Your Regis office comes beautifully furnished in a prestigious building. You get a receptionist meeting rooms, and state-of-the-art video conferencing with no long-term lease. And you get two months free by mentioning Mike and Mike. All you have to do is call 1-800-OFFICES. That's 1-800-OFFICES. Monday, behind Big Ben. We got out hurt! The Steelers took down the reigning Super Bowl champs. Let's go! Now, one of the hottest teams in the game. Touchdown, Steelers! Returns home in search of a fourth straight win against the Chiefs. Countdown sets the stage at 6.30 Eastern. Then, Monday Night Football. Chiefs, Steelers, 8.30 on ESPN. It all comes down to Monday night. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series is at full throttle. And when drivers will do anything to take the checkered flag, cages get rattled. Engines roar louder. Tempers run hotter. And victory donuts taste even sweeter. Some people say there's more to life than winning. Those people are losers. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series on ESPN. Nothing beats first place. This is The Herd with Colin Cowherd. Limitation can be a blessing. Because when you have a gift, a physical gift especially, you're going to want to use it. Always been my issue with RG3. Oh, I know he's faster than Andrew Luck. But in the end, Andrew Luck's lack of relative speed is a gift. gift. RG3 can run a 4-1-8-40. Yeah, great. He's going to want to do that. He goes out running and gets absolutely popped. Colin Cowherd. Weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio. Every Saturday, ESPNU College Game Day hits the road. College Game Day rolls on to East Alabama. Boise is berserk. Chris, Lee, Kirk, Desmond, and Sam Steele are live at the best matchups in the land. This offense continues to develop. How can you pick against LSU? Not so fast, my friend. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Saturdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPNU and 10 a.m. on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. Into your city. Germany on ESPN. The Jets. 
the Seahawks. Coverage begins Sunday at 2. WEPN-FM, WEPN-HD1, New York. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Neil Jackson, while top overall pick Andrew Luck and Indianapolis continue to improve. Jacksonville is headed in the other direction. Luck rushed for a pair of touchdowns and threw for 227 yards as the Colts go to 6-3 and three after beating the Jags 27-10 for the season. Jacksonville 1-8 and eight have been outscored 153-47 to 47 at home. A very disappointed Jacksonville head coach, Mike Malarkey. We're trying to overcome ourselves. I mean, we have to overcome ourselves before we even have to worry about the opponent we're playing. And um, the guys see it on the sideline. They see the same thing. They don't need me to go in there and tell them, you need to do this and you can't do that. They know that. And when we start doing that, we'll start winning games. Injury updates from around the NFL. Tampa Bay's Michael Bennett and the Cowboys' DeMarco Murray returned to practice on Thursday. The Broncos' Tracy Pointer did not. Philadelphia's LaShawn McCoy will rejoin workouts on Friday. The Raiders' Darren McFadden and Richard Seymour were held out on Thursday. Well, as number 10 Florida State traveled to Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech, the Seminoles with a win would move a step closer to clinching the ACC Atlantic Division. FSU down 22-20 in the final minute and nearing field goal range. Manuel comes up to the line. We're down to 10 on the play clock. Changing his call. Ball's in his hands. Delayed blitz. Toss over the middle. That ball is caught inside the 30. Breaking free to the 20-yard line. To the 10. Towards the pylon. Touchdown, Rashad Green. Oh, my goodness. A stunning play. A 39-yard touchdown pass. Bill Rosinski here on ESPN Radio. E.J. Manuel hooks up with Rashad Green for the go-ahead touchdown. And the Seminoles hold off the Hokies 28 to 22 elsewhere from college football arkansas state a 45 23 win over visiting louisiana monroe from the nba the clippers go to four and two portland falls to two and three as the clippers beat the blazers in portland 103 to 90 chris paul with 21 points jamal crawford 25 in the win oklahoma city 97 91 over chicago for the thunder kevin durant with 24 points. Russell Westbrook, 16 to go with a dozen assists. The NHL and the Players Association return to the bargaining table Thursday, third straight day. The sides have met in an effort to end the lockout with the work stoppage reaching day 54. This week is considered critical for the season to be saved. Mike and Mike, it's football Friday and a quarterback filled day. We will have Jay Cutler, Joe Flacco, Ron Jaworski, and Roger Staubach all live on Mike and Mike Friday morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Ah. <laughs> we'll not lose ever. The Robin Lundberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. You know, hearing that is really my favorite part of the day, every day. That's my favorite part right there. I will not lose ever. And then, you know, the whole thing about my name and my own show and all that stuff, which is every Monday from 3 to 5 a.m. If you don't know, now you know. And then I'm on with Jared Max and Max out in the morning up until 6 a.m. And Mike and Mike in the morning. A lot of stuff to get to today. Knicks play a game against the Mavericks tonight at the Garden, trying to remain the sole unbeaten team in the NBA. And then both football teams, local football teams, that is, the, the Jets and the Giants, with big games this weekend. Let's start with the Jets because they're at it again. The New York Jets are at it again. And before I get into the point I'm going to make and the audio I'm going to play, let me preface it by saying I have no problem with what the Jets are saying or what they said. I have no problem with it. I, I think teams should feel the way that they feel. I think teams should feel the way Antonio Cromartie felt when he said what he said, when Rex Ryan said what he said in support of Antonio Cromartie. I feel like they should feel that way. But knowing their reputation and who they are and what they've said in the past, particularly Rex Ryan and their record at 3-5, and five, sometimes it's better off to just not say it, even though there's nothing wrong with saying it. It's just better off to not say it because the reaction it elicits. And, and here's a, a comparison to real life. You know, you know who the Jets are? They're that person that's your friend that can't help but making a comment on something. 
You know, you ever been out to dinner, J Bo, and you got that friend who the food's not so good, and, and the waiter's near your table, and he's like, he has to say, "This food is terrible. It's just terrible." And you, you know, it's terrible as well. But it, do you really need to say it with an earshot of it? You could keep it to yourself. Yeah, definitely. That that person, or the other day when I was voting, I was voting. I'm in line, right? And it was just, it was taking longer than it should have. It wasn't one of these preposterous waits, but it was taking longer than it should have because we have these old clunky voting machines when we should be able to do it on our phone or computer. But that's another discussion. And this guy behind me is saying what I'm thinking, which is this is taking entirely too long. But he's saying it in this disgusted way. He's like, this is taking too long. Why is this taking so long? And I agree with him. But he didn't really need to say it. You know why? Because there's this poor little old lady in front of us taking down our information and f telling us where we need to go. She doesn't need to hear that. She's out there probably volunteering. She doesn't need to hear that. Just like the Jets didn't need to say, or Antonio Cromartie, more importantly, didn't need to say that they're going to make the playoffs. Jets will make a playoff this year. Uh, I mean, I, we, we, we believe in each other. We believe in what uh, Coach Ryan and his staff is, is, is you know, putting us the schemes and stuff. So I, we're definitely uh, going to make the playoffs this year. Again, I have no problem with that mentality. He should think they're going to make the playoffs. The team should think they're going to make the playoffs. And actually, I have no problem whatsoever with him saying it either. I'm not the one who has a problem with it. I just know how these things tend to go for the New York Jets. And that is that someone will have a problem with it. And someone will say, and unfortunately for Antonio Cromartie and Rex Ryan via proxy who supported it. I know Crow had some comments about, you know, he's, we're going to make the playoffs and all that. And I feel as, a, as a, an entire, you know, football team that we should all feel like that. I think we do feel like that. They're going to get made fun of if they don't. <laughs> if they... If they lose to Seattle this weekend or they, they go in a tailspin toward the end of the season, that's all they're going to hear about is comments like that. And that's part of what makes Rex Ryan a little bit more reviled than he should be and maybe a little underrated. Maybe Rex Ryan at this point is a little underrated. You know how he was found to be the most overrated coach in football? Well, perhaps he's the not the most underrated, but a little underrated because his track record is pretty good. It's pretty good. Two ASC championship games in eight and eight season. I don't count this year yet because it's not complete. That's not bad. It's pretty good. And all of a sudden he, he's totally overrated and people want him fired. You know why? Because he talks so much. Great for me. Great for my job. Totally entertaining. Totally entertaining. I like Rex. But it's you know it comes back to bite you because many people. In, in these positions and in the media and fans and whoever it may be, they want to tear you down when you talk a lot. Not that I have a problem with it. Again, a hundred times over, I have no problem with what Antonio Cromarty said. But perhaps for his sake and for the Jets' sake, he could have just not said it. He could have just said, you know, we really do believe in our ability and we're going to keep going forward you know, and, and try to get into that playoff picture. Because it seems like every stone you turn over every corner you turn around every microphone you put in front of a jet you're going to get some sort of prediction about them winning making the playoffs or whatever else it may be robin lundberg show espn new york 98.7 fm meanwhile the giants they have a little bit different nature of problems which is kind of just getting back on track eli manning says eh, it's not that big a deal it's just a matter of uh, keep 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 walking, you know, walking through things, keep talking through, uh, you know, our reactions, what we expect to get, and, and uh, go out there and and uh, you know both have to be on the same page. And, and uh, you know, I got I got to read the, the the body language of the receivers. They got to, uh, you know, so it, it's again, it's not it's not you know, we, we don't have to go rewrite the rewrite the book here. It's just a, it's just a matter of uh, you know keep keep working at it, and it'll get better. So, Jets fans, do you agree with Cromartie? Do you agree with Rex? Can the team still make the playoffs, or is their season effectively over? I mean, it's only halfway over. They've only played eight games. But is it effectively over in your mind? 1-800-919-3776, 1-800-919-3776. And Giants fans, are you worried about the current state of the team? Or are you like Eli? You know, no big deal. It'll be fine. Take care of the Bengals and go into the bye week. 1-800-919-3776. 1-800-919-3776. Also, at Robin Lundberg on Twitter. That's R-O-B-I-N-L-U-N-D-B-E-R-G. L-U-N-D-B-E-R-G. Charles Barkley said some stuff with Mike Lupica yesterday. And 
Some of it was about the Knicks, and some of it was about the Jets. And I disagreed with pretty much all of it. Play that for you in a little bit. And, you know, same thing I just said about those two teams. Jets, is it over for them? Giants? Are you worried about them? ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Looking to rebound after the bye week. The Jets travel west to face the Seattle Seahawks. We've earned that 3-5 and five record. That's clearly not where, where we want to be at. Their season may be at a crossroads. Which way will they go? We have work to do. I'm excited to get the guys back. I look forward to the second half of the season. Jets, Seahawks. Coverage gets underway Sunday at 2 on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. This Veterans Day at Lowe's, get the Maytag Centennial Washer and Dryer for $798. That's a savings of $430. And a Bosch 18-volt lithium drill for $99. That's a savings of $70. Choose 18-month special financing on purchases of $599 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer is valid from November 7th through the 12th while supplies last. Credit offer valid from November 8th through the 12th. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offer. Some exclusions apply. See store for details, including Maytag offer. Are you making frequent bathroom trips during the night? Do you have a strong urge to urinate? If ignored, these symptoms may result in complicated kidney and bladder infections, kidney failure, or loss of bladder function. Additionally, if you are a male of 50 years or older and experiencing sexual dysfunction, you may be at risk of a stroke or heart attack. The same disease process that affects blood vessels which lead to the heart and brain affect the delicate vessels that supply blood to the genital organs. Careful evaluation of erectile dysfunction can uncover these problems years before critical damage occurs. Compassionate urologists at the New York Urologic Institute specialize in improving urologic and sexual function. Latest technological advances allow the patient to get answers to diagnostic tests immediately, reducing anxiety. Call the New York Urologic Institute at 347-508-3991. Offices are conveniently located in Queens and Brooklyn. For timely, effective treatment, call 347-508-3991. That's 347-508-3991. My mum always says hard work never hurt anybody. Good advice as usual. So we worked very hard to make Geico.com very easy. Say you want to report a claim and follow its progress. You can do it all online at Geico.com. Not to mention perhaps saving a tidy sum of money on your car insurance. All it takes is a few clicks. So visit Geico.com today. Oh, and Mum, if you're listening, yes, I did wash beyond my ears this morning. Jennifer Howdy was a woman on a mission. Yep, saving money for a Caribbean vacation. Undaunted by any obstacle. You flatter me. But with Navy Federal Credit Union's Cash Rewards Credit Card, I get cash back with every purchase. Skillful, yet humble. You make everything sound so dramatic. And unafraid to speak the truth. Unafraid. I love it. Four million members, four million stories. From every military branch, DOD, and their families. NavyFederal.org. Federally insured by NCUA. It's time to get winter ready. Dick's Sporting Goods has more of the best brands to keep you warm as the weather gets colder. The North Face, Columbia, Spider, Burton, Copen, Marmot, Mountain Hardware, and more. Dick's has the widest selection in styles and colors in men's, women's, and youth jackets and accessories. And don't forget to grab a new snowboard. Dick's carries the snow equipment you need. Before hitting the slopes, stop into Dick's Sporting Goods today. Every season starts at Dick's. The college basketball season begins tonight on ESPN with two big-time matchups. First, the Sears Armed Forces Classic celebrates Veterans Day from Ramstein Air Base in Germany as number 14 Michigan State takes on Connecticut in the first regular season game overseas. Then in Brooklyn, in the Barclays Center Classic, Maryland goes up against John Calipari's national champion, Kentucky Wildcats. It all starts tonight at 5 p.m. Eastern with live Sports Center reports from Germany on ESPN. The Robin Lundberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Probably heard this beat a million times in my life, but every time it makes me do that scrunch up face, you know, like, ugh, it's disgusting. It's just gross. Jets offense has been gross for much of this year, but they still think they're going to make the playoffs, at least according to one of their defensive players, Antonio Cromartie. Jets will make a playoff this year. Uh, I mean, I. We, we we believe in each other. We believe in what uh, Coach Ryan and his staff is, is, is you know putting us the schemes and stuff. So I, we're definitely uh, gonna make a playoff this year. 
And Rex Ryan believes in Antonio Cromartie's theory. I know Crow had some comments about, you know, he's, we're going to make the playoffs and all that. And I feel as a, as a, an entire, you know, football team that we should all feel like that. I think we do feel like that. Now the Giants, on the other hand, they're dealing with different problems. They're at six and three instead of three and five, but that doesn't mean Tom Coughlin isn't frustrated. It's just a rhythm. You know, the one thing that nobody's really picked up on, which is kind of interesting, is you don't get any continuity offensively if you don't make any first downs. We haven't had any first downs in two weeks. Make some first downs. You make a first down, you'll have a chance to, to get some rhythm, get some continuity, get, get into your play calling. When you don't have first downs, it's like this, okay? Throwing darts at a board. You need the continuity. So, Jets fans, do you believe that there's still a possibility the team makes the playoffs, or is the season over at 3-5? and five? Giants fans, do you have any concern about the minor malaise that the team is in? 1-800-919-3776. I'm at Robin Lundberg on Twitter, and he is Jimmy in Brooklyn. Jimmy. Jimmy, you there, man? Jimmy, you're blowing the biggest opportunity of your life. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy lost it. He really squandered that one. Huge chance for Jimmy, as I, all his friends and family I know were listening. But both of those teams are in just such different positions, it's tough to compare them, other than the situations they're in this week. You know, they're both going out on the road, both going out on the road, the Giants to Cincinnati, the Jets to Seattle against teams that are, you know, middle-of-the-pack-ish sort of teams that are a little bit better at home, particularly Seattle. Of course, that's always been a tough place to play, something else that Rex Ryan, you know, talked about. It's obviously a, an extremely tough place to play. The fact that they have a, a really good football team also, uh, you know, makes it a tough place to play. Having wins over Dallas, Green Bay, Minnesota, and, and New England at home also... Uh, shows you the task that we have in front of us. Those are good examples that Rex states there. And the Giants, they're in Cincinnati against the team that they really should beat. But I was reading an article on um, ESPN.com by Aaron Schatz, who does the Football Outsiders column. Football Outsiders site, he runs it, which is essentially a sabermetric football site. Football's probably the sport where advanced statistics are further behind every other sport. You know, baseball was the kind of one that first went into it becoming a big, big deal. And it's the most easily translatable because in baseball, it's a series of isolated events that you're measuring. You know, guys go up to the plate, they get a hit, they don't. Uh, catch is registered in the outfield or it's not. You know, all these things are easily measurable. In basketball, there's a lot of statistics to measure, lineup comparisons, efficiency, all that stuff. But some things can't be necessarily measured, like how in rhythm a guy was when he caught the sh caught a pass to shoot. You know, the chemistry of the team, all that stuff. Football, some of the s similar things, but it's also just been lagging behind in advanced statistics. But football outsiders are, are the leaders in that. And he said that the Bengals will actually give the Giants more trouble and could be a real upset. Could be a real upset watch with the Bengals against the Giants because the, the biggest problem the Giants have had in these second half collapses has been pass defense and the Bengals have a, a potent threat obviously in uh, AJ Green who Antrell Roll is not too happy about. Green made a statement saying that the Giants have holes in their defense and Roll said he, he better duck. Stewart in Brooklyn. Good morning Robert, how hey, are you? What's up man? No, not that much. One talk about the Giants, you're right. These second half collapses aren't a good thing because you know what? Then when they get hot at the end of the year, everybody says, oh, this and this and this. And uh, they, uh, they, they, they just got to stay focused on playing defense. The defense got to stop giving up those big chunks. And then the fourth quarter, they got to wait because they got to revert to old form. Well, you know the difference, Stuart, between this year and those previous year collapses? Uh -huh. Those years they were playing a real tough schedule down the second half after playing a bit of a cupcake schedule. Yeah. It's kind of the opposite this year, where, where they haven't played a, a great schedule as of yet, but they played a pretty darn good schedule, and it actually yeah. gets easier because some of the teams you thought were going to be really tough, like the Bengals and like the Eagles and like the Saints, you know, they're not as quite well, a, the, as yeah, tough the a game as... The Saints have been big, big letdowns. I mean, you know, with the bounty gate and all that, and uh, they, uh, the Eagles just like, where, where they, what happened to them? 
their, their offensive line is not providing pass protection for him at all. Is that he's like being battered around like a ping pong? Well, I I, I read uh Ron, Ron Jaworski said something about Michael Vick, where I forget was the total number of knockdowns, but it averaged to like 16 a game. He's been hit 16 times <laughs> per game this year. Stewart is a, a good caller and he calls like every day, and, and before he gets on the air, he always has a he always has a long conversation with Jaybo in the other room. What do you guys talk about, man? Uh, you gotta, you gotta put those papers down. I, I, I'm, it's just been bugging me the last several days because you guys are always chatting for a while. Just talking about sports. Yeah, he just, he wants to make sure he gets his money's worth, or you know, he doesn't really pay to get on the air, but his figurative money's worth. I Me, mean, while you're doing the show, sometimes I do one too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you feel? What are you feeling repressed over there? You don't get to talk enough. Uh, I'm just kidding. So those are the situations right now with the Jets and the Giants. Do you think the Jets have a chance to make the playoffs? Are you worried a little bit about the Giants' malaise? 1-800-919-3776. I got some points I need to make about Tim Tebow. I really do have some points I want to make about Tim Tebow. And that's coming a little bit later in the show, right around 4 o'clock, I think. Because I'm kind of irritated. I don't get irritated that often. Like, really irritated about stuff, but I'm kind of irritated in regards to Tim Tebow, just like maybe Joe Namath is. The fans haven't been given a fair shake. Uh, I don't think they get a straight story often enough from the powers that be. I think uh, it's kind of condescending uh, talk a bunch of times and telling us how they're developing and who they're getting. I think it's been disrespectful. Uh, we can go right to the Tebow thing. I mean, come on. If you're bringing him in to play, where's he been? Are you bringing him in to make other people practice longer? Other te- Excuse me. Are you bringing him in trying to get media headlines? I have a lot to say about that, and, and it has nothing to do with the media headlines. I, I spoke my piece on that yesterday, which is that Joe Namath keeps hammering that point home. He keeps hammering the Jets try to get media headlines, and I understand it. I understand the point. And look, who's in charge? Woody Johnson's in charge. And maybe that's true. Maybe he does want to steal the back pages from the Giants. Maybe the Jets do have a complex. They did cover up the Giants' trophies last year. Perhaps that's why they brought in Brett Favre. Perhaps that's why they brought in Tim Tebow. Perhaps Woody Johnson wants to run the team more like a business to make money than a, a winning franchise, even though those two things should go hand in hand. But I don't know Woody Johnson. There is, you know, you could take him at face value when he when he says certain things that he wants to win. He could be telling the truth, and it just hasn't worked out for him. I brought up the point yesterday where he made those comments regarding thinking that uh, Mitt Romney winning the election was more important than the Jets winning. I think that could have rubbed Jets fans a little bit the wrong way. And if you look at it in a cynical way, he said it was because he thinks the country with the best of the the betterment of the country is more important than any football team. And if that's true, more power to him. But if you look at it in a more cynical way, you could say, you know, perhaps some people vote for who they vote for because of what's in their best interest or what's in their business's best interest. And that could give you insight into the way he runs the team. But my Tebow diatribe, that's coming up in a little over a half hour. Rico in Brooklyn. Rico. Yeah, how you doing? What's up, man? Uh, first time caller. Love your show. Thank you, man. I appreciate uh, it. I know you want to talk about Tebow later, but let's just talk about, I guess, maybe the Jets in general. Um, kind of disappointing how, you know, I guess with the owner and the Matt and I guess coaches, Rex Ryan and Sperano, I guess it's kind of like uh, they, they kind of butt heads. They don't really gel together right. So, I mean, decision making hiring both those guys from the owner. That's a problem, number one. Rico, yeah, I'm gonna, I want to comment on that because, to me, it, it's been odd because wouldn't you think before the way Sperano coached and the way Tebow played that they would be a natural fit with Rex? All that talk about ground and pound, ground and pound, ground and pound. So it is a little bit odd that it hasn't worked out that way. Well, yeah, it's odd because you don't have the, uh, you don't have the manpower. I mean, the players, you don't have the right players to fit the mold. So you can't have a ground and pound if you don't have the right personnel. So that's mistake number one. So to hire a guy like Sperano, to be honest with you, I'm a Cowboy fan. Sperano, I love the guy and everything, you know, special team stuff. But uh, I root for the Jets because that's the only other New York team I'm going to root for because I hate the Giants. But but, that's, that's well, yeah, they're, in the, they're your NFC East uh, opponents there who have kind of 
been uh, atop that division for a while. Yeah, I mean, the Cowboys pretty much shoot themselves in the foot. Not to, you know, go away from the Jets a little bit. But right. getting back to the Jets. Well, no, let me, let me let you talk about the Cowboys since I'm talking about the Giants today, too. I'm going to give you, in, in 20 seconds or less, tell me why or why not the Giants have or have not sewn up the NFC East this year. Why the Giants have not? Or have or have not, your opinion. Oh, they have because basically the Cowboys keep shooting themselves in the foot. I mean, you got Tony Romo, who's got great talent. Bad decision making at times. I think that sometimes he's game ready, and other times he's nervous and just just has uh, just poor decision making uh, instances. So basically, the Cowboys. I mean, they need a, they need an offensive line. If they get that done, and Demarcus Murray comes back, then you got some. Then you maybe down the stretch, Cowboys overtake the Giants. You never know. The Giants kind of flip flop. They're good. They're not good. They're good. They're not good. This year is a different year. There you go. Well, Charles Barkley said some stuff about the Jets, as Rico was talking about, that I disagree with. He also said some stuff about the Knicks that I disagree with as well. But who doesn't like to hear Charles Barkley talk? That's next. Robin Lundberg Show, ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Mike and Mike in the morning. All right, Mike and Mike, Herman Edwards is here. While we were sitting in the break, Herman looked up to me and said, Tebow going to play this week? Yep, and I say, bring him out. Let the train get on the track. Give him a series of plays. We can run the ball with this guy. We know he can run inside of tackles. He's very difficult to defend. Why not use this guy on the road? How would you use him? Just put him in there and say, it's your turn. I'm giving you the ball. It's your series. Let's see if you can orchestrate a drive for us. Let's see what happens. Mike and Mike. Mornings at 6. ESPN New York. 98.7 FM. Now is the perfect time to upgrade during the first ever Rally Motors Luxury Sales Event, where upgrading to luxury has never been easier. Take advantage of attractive lease offers, special financing, and receive above book value for your trade-in. Whether you're thinking of buying or leasing a Mercedes-Benz, smart car, or Sprinter van, Rally Motors features one of the area's largest selections of competitively priced vehicles. Experience the difference during the Luxury Sales Event and see why customers choose Rally Motors. To learn more, stop by or visit them online at rallymotors.com. Hi, football fans. I think you'll agree that you've got to have great seats. And now it's even easier to pick the seats you want wherever you are thanks to StubHub's new mobile seat maps. They're the only interactive seat maps to let you search for NFL tickets by section and actually see the view from your seat, all from your mobile phone. How cool is that? So whether you're searching StubHub on your computer or your phone, it's easy to find the seats you want. Yet another reason thousands of fans use StubHub for their NFL tickets every Sunday. The NYPD is among the best law enforcement departments in the country. The NYPD offers a job with a future, a great place to serve, and a chance to advance. Visit NYPDrecruit.com or call 212-RECRUIT for current test schedules and filing fee information. Hi, it's Colin Thursday. Bill Romanowski on pot smoking in the NFL. Greg Cosell thinks Eli Manning's arm? Well, you have to listen to find out. Download the Thursday Thundering Herd podcast. Check it out, ESPNRadio.com. An ESPN Radio Extra Point with Colin Cowherd. To me, there's eight organizations in the NFL, I counted them this morning, that feel like it's 100% about winning Super Bowls. Eight. There may be more, but I get a very strong feeling from ownership down, it is all about winning Super Bowls. New York Giants, Green Bay Packers, San Francisco 49ers with Harbaugh, New England, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Indianapolis, and Denver. That's all that matters. It's about winning Super Bowls. Tennessee drafted Vince Young. They didn't think Vince Young was great. They thought he could sell tickets from a source close to that organization. Part of getting the Vince Young deal done? Ah, people here will love him. That's not about winning Super Bowls. The New York Jets getting Tebow. Disruptive. It's not about winning Super Bowls. Eight teams in the league. That's all that matters. Is Tim Tebow overrated? Mike Greenberg says no. The players voted him the most overrated player, which I think is remarkable. His own team doesn't think he's worthy of being on the field. So I don't know how overrated right. he can possibly. I tell you who's Overhyped. not overrating him. Tony Sperano is not overrating him. Rex Ryan is not overrating him. They have him standing over there on the bench except on punt team. So I'm not sure how overrated a guy can be when he's not even playing. It's Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. This is The Herd with Colin Cowherd. Nike, the biggest supporter of cyclist Lance Armstrong, 
has left his side. The world's largest shoe and apparel company announced this morning it has terminated its endorsement deal with Armstrong. Nike already made their money off him, and Lance made his money, too. This is a PR move. It's the way it works. Pat the protesters on the head. Appease the masses. Lance, by the way, will still be involved, just not in the public eye. This is paper shuffling to appease the public. Lance will still have an office at Livestrong. This is not a guy being fired, thrown out onto the street. You are out of here, Mr. PD cyclist user. You rare cheater in a sport where everybody cheated. You're out of here forever. Out of here forever. The back door is open. Sneak around at like 4.30. The employees all leave. Colin Cowherd. Weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. I'm Robin Lundberg with this New York Sports Center. The 3-5 and five New York Jets, well... They still believe they'll make the playoffs, at least Antonio Cromartie does. Jets will make a playoff this year. Uh, I mean, I, we, we, we believe in each other. We believe in what uh, Coach Ryan and his staff is, 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 you know, putting us the schemes and stuff. So I, we're definitely uh, going to make a playoff this year. Jets in Seattle this weekend. You can hear that right here, of course. Meanwhile, the Giants, they're in better position to make the playoffs, and they should have Akeem Nix in the lineup this Sunday in Cincinnati. Last night on the field, Andrew Luck, he ran for two touchdowns. Colts 27, Jaguars 10. In the NBA, the Thunder beat the Bulls. The Clippers beat the Blazers. Tonight, the Knicks host the Dallas Mavericks without Dirk Nowitzki and Sean Marion. 7.30 tip. That will be live here on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Marcus Camby set to make his season debut. The Nets, they are in Orlando. Mets GM Sandy Alderson. He expects R.A. Dickey to win the Cy Young. He also wouldn't rule out dealing Dickey. And the NHL and the NHL Players Association have now met for several consecutive days and set to meet again today. Robin Lundberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. So the, the song singing, uh, I love you so, but why I love you I'll never know. That's what a lot of Jets fans probably sing to themselves quite often. Jets say they're going to make the playoffs. Rex Ryan supports it. Do you believe that the Jets can still make the playoffs? 1-800-919-3776 at Robin Lundberg on Twitter. You know, I'm going to um, play the audio from Charles Barkley, both on the Jets and the Knicks in a second, and some stuff from Mike Woodson on the Knicks, but first, uh, Emre 20 tweets in at me, the Jets playoffs, I just hope they can win another game. Meanwhile, Jeff in Fairview is on the phone. Jeff. Hello, Robin. Hey, man. How are you? I'm good, dude. Great stuff. Thank you. All right, you asked if the Jets will make the playoffs. Well, this Sunday, we'll give you an answer. We beat Seattle. Our confidence will be sky high because it's very hard to win there. I mean, they have to, if they win that game against Seattle, I don't want to see a letdown the next week against the Rams. I don't care what anybody says. We beat Seattle. We're going to go into St. Louis and beat them, too. Then we'll be 5-5, five and five, and then we'll have this showdown with New England at MetLife Stadium. And we should have beat them in Foxborough, just like we should have lost to Miami in Miami. Then they beat us. So now we're going to beat them. The fans are going to go wild. And uh, what record do you think we... We'll make the playoffs. Nine and seven, possibly AFC. Now the Colts won tonight. I, w- I wasn't happy about that. Now they're six and three. But I, I don't think the Colts are as good as their record. But uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Here, here's the way to look at it. If you're a Jets fan and you're going glass uh, half full, and you mentioned the schedule, the Jets have had one of the toughest schedules in the yep. NFL thus far. I think their schedule the rest of the way is ranked 27th. Yeah, they have. I'll tell you right now. I mean, they got the Bills. Titans, Chargers, not in order. Rams, Seahawks, Cardinals, Jaguars. Now, all those teams that I just mentioned, the Bills, uh, the offense is 21st. The Titans are 24th in offense. Chargers, 26th. I can't believe that with Phillip Rivers. The Rams are 28th in offense. The Cardinals are 31st. Seahawks, 29th. Jaguars, 32nd. Now, these are the teams we could beat, teams that have bad offenses, because the just offense isn't that great either. Now, we have a tough team. The, the Seattle has a great defense. We can't turn over the ball. Mark Sanchez, 
The man's a turnover machine. He's going to have to tuck the ball in because, you know, I'm worried about the Seahawks' defense scoring points on our offense. No, it makes sense, and that's good analysis, man. That's very good analysis. And, and here's what I'll say to that. That's a good way to look at it. However, on the flip side, the Jets aren't great. So as easy as those opponents seem on paper, and they are, it is a much easier schedule. The Jets should beat a bunch of them, but it it's, would not surprise me in the least if some of those teams beat the Jets. And when you're at 3-5, and five, you don't have that much margin for error because 9-7 and seven is about the best record you could possibly make the playoffs with. So the Jets essentially, essentially, in a best-case scenario, have to go 6-2 and two the rest of the year. And I don't know if they're capable of going 6-2 and two the rest of the year. Charles Barkley was on with Mike Lupica yesterday, and of course you can hear Mike Lupica every uh, day, every weekday, from noon to one here on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. And he said some things about the Knicks I disagree with. But first, he said something about the Jets, and in particular, Mark Sanchez, that I kind of disagree with. Well, you know what? I blame some of that on him. He has not played well, but I blame some of that on the Jets. You know, Mike, they should have never bought in Tim Tebow, to be honest with you, because the one thing about sports, to play sports, you have to have a like a free mind. You have to have a free mind. You can't be worried about every mistake you make. And I think that the, the Jets did him a great disservice bringing in Tim Tebow. That has nothing to do with Tim Tebow, but you don't bring in another player in that situation to put you, your and the quarterback probably the hardest position in sports. And the one thing you don't do is put your quarterback under pressure where he has to worry about every throw, every mistake, every turnover. I mean, it's just crazy. I don't agree with, I don't disagree with the comments on the surface. Charles Barkley's comments on the surface about the Jets. Whether they should have brought in Tebow or not, obviously that's a, a debatable point that looks easier to say they shouldn't have than should have at this moment. However, when applied specifically to Mark Sanchez, I disagree with those comments. Why do I disagree with them when applied specifically to Mark Sanchez? Because what Barkley said, being that it's tough for a quarterback when he's got to worry about his mistakes, and that the fact that Tebow has hovered over the whole situation has made it difficult for Mark Sanchez, that could be true for most people. That could be true for Mark Sanchez. However, that situation did not exist for Mark Sanchez last year, and the results were the same. Mark Sanchez made mistakes without Tim Tebow around, with Mark Brunel around, and Mark Sanchez stunk up the joint last year without Tim Tebow around. So why should I believe it's Tim Tebow's fault or the Tebow situation's fault that Mark Sanchez is playing poorly when Mark Sanchez played poorly when there was no Tebow situation? Right, j -Bo? Nod your head approvingly, please. Thank you. Now, Barkley said some other stuff about the Knicks on Lupica's show as well. Here on, I'm going to play that for you in a second on the Robin Lundberg Show, ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. And I disagree with both of his comments on the Knicks as well. Definitely disagree with both of his comments on the Knicks. And one of them was about Amari Stoudemire when he returns. They got enough scores. They got enough scores, but they're not great defensively, and they're not a great rebounding team. The question you just got to ask Amari one question: Do he want to try to be the Amari who was in Phoenix, who was a star getting twenty a night? Or I would love to see Amari come back and say, "My goal for the season is to get ten rebounds a game." You know, he's never averaged ten rebounds in a game. Is that true? That's true. I would love for him to come back and say, "My goal for this year." is to play better defense because that's what this team needs. We got enough scores. We got enough scores. But my goal for this year is for us to get, for me personally, to get 10 rebounds a game. Well, Charles Barkley is just wrong on a lot of those points. First of all, the Knicks' defense is certainly not their problem. He says they don't have a very good defense. They had a top 10 defense when Mike D'Antoni was the coach last year. They were top 10 in defensive efficiency. When Woodson took over down the stretch and Carmelo Anthony decided he wanted to play basketball, they had a top five defense the rest of the year. This year, I think they're number two thus far in, on the season in defensive efficiency behind simply the Chicago Bulls, just the Chicago Bulls. Second point, he said they have enough scoring. Well, right now, they seem to have enough scoring. They're near the top of the league in offensive efficiency as well. 
But if you were to tell me I need to pinpoint a possible problem for the Knicks in like a playoff series, it would be that when a team gets to focus all of its resources and all of its thoughts on just the Knicks, they may be able to shut down the type of offense the Knicks are running right now, which is Carmelo orchestrating everything from that left block, which has been sensational in a slowed down offense in the regular season. But it looked good down this stretch in the regular season last year until Miami took it apart in the postseason. Maybe the Knicks actually do need more scoring because who else can create their own shot for the Knicks outside of Melo and, and J.R. Smith? That's why I think Amari off the bench is such a good idea because it gives you a whole other identity off the bench and allows him to play to his strengths. I also disagree with Charles Barkley on Amari rebounding. He's got a rebound. To, there's a reason Amari Stoudemire hasn't gotten 10 rebounds a game in his career. He's had a pretty long career. He's just not that good a rebounder. If he focuses on rebounding, yeah, maybe he does it, but it's going to take him out of the rest of his game. Some guys just don't have certain innate abilities. He's not wired to be a rebounder. It's not what he does. As far as playing defense, same deal. He's not really wired to be a great defensive player either. He's just not. I've watched him his whole career. He's terrible on defense, and it's not because he's not trying. He just doesn't know where to go. And I don't think that's because he's dumb or anything. It's just... For some reason, you're better at some things than others. I was always better at English than I was math. I was pretty good in all subjects in school, but I was always better at English than I was math. When I was in math and if I missed, like, you know when you had a sick day and you thought you needed to catch up? Well, math was the only subject I needed to catch up on because I would stare at the, the formula. I'd stare at it for a while, and it would take me a while to figure it out before it clicked. In English, I, I could just go take the test without preparing at all. I'd be fine. Defense is math to Amari Stoudemire. He's never going to be great at it. Never. Charles Barkley also said something about Carmelo Anthony I disagree with. I'm on a roll with disagreeing with Car Charles Barkley. I'll play that for you next. Plus, I, I got to tell you, I got something about Tim Tebow on my mind. On my, it's 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 in my loins, and I got to I got to get rid of it. Robin Lindbergh Show, ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Fires a three at the horn, and he switches it in. The will to win. Frizzioni double kicks back to Smith right down the plate. And a vicious right-handed stub. Knicks team. They just continue to work hard and, and play hard, stay away from injuries. That's the name of the game. Knicks, Mavericks, Friday night at 7 on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. It's time to get winter ready. Dick's Sporting Goods has more of the best brands to keep you warm as the weather gets colder. The North Face, Columbia, Spider, Burton, Copen, Marmot, Mountain Hardware, and more. Dick's has the widest selection in styles and colors in men's, women's, and youth jackets and accessories. And don't forget to grab a new snowboard. Dick's carries the snow equipment you need. Before hitting the slopes, stop into Dick's Sporting Goods today. Every season starts at Dick's. This Veterans Day, ESPN is working with the USO to help lift the spirits of America's troops and their families stationed around the world. Grant a wish for our servicemen and women, or donate a special gift to their families to show your support. Give a special gift to our military heroes and their families through USO Wishbook. Visit USO.org forward slash ESPN and give your gift today. Hey, Golik, what if I said the birth of your child is no excuse to miss a game? Couldn't disagree more. I think it's idiotic almost, bordering on that, to, to make a statement like that, to say that that should overtake any other, any other thing in your life. I think it's a ridiculous statement to make. Why? Why? Because it's family. I mean, this is the, the birth of your kid, birth, death, funeral, whatever. I mean, your, your family is first. Your family is first. It's Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Warren Moon comes on our show all the time. And I like Warren, but I think he's off his rocker. He said the criticism of Cam Newton is possibly racist. I would say you give me 
an African-American quarterback in football. I'll find you a contemporary Caucasian that gets as much or more heat. Want to play the game? Let's go. Great African-American rookie quarterback, RG3. He's getting far more praise than Andrew Luck. How about Pouty quarterback? Cam, racism! I know Jay Cutler has a winning record and for five years has been clobbered by you, the fans, and the American sports media. How about an enigmatic quarterback who wins? Michael Vick, that's racism. Well, Tony Romo gets more. I mean, Romo's the most criticized quarterback with a winning record in league history. Folks, quarterbacks are criticized positions. It's the highest profile position in sports. This is The Herd. Weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. I'm Jason. I'm 32, and my risk for stroke is increased by five times because of an irregular heartbeat called atrial fibrillation, or AFib. Because of my young age, I'm not a typical AFib patient. And I'm Pat. I'm 62, and I'm a two-time stroke survivor with AFib, which is most common in older people. Together, we are faces of AFib and stroke. Telling our stories might help save a life. Take action today by talking with a healthcare professional about your risk. And visit stroke.org to learn more. Robin Lundberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. I worked myself up before, you know, being irritated and disagreeing with Charles Barkley. And I'm irritated about something with Tim Tebow I got to get to. I'll get to it at four. But Charles Barkley, I got to disagree with him about one other thing. And Mike Lupica's show with him on gave me a lot of great material, obviously. You can catch Lupica from noon to one every weekday here. On ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. I'm on from 3 to 5 every weekday here. And then Maxed Out in the Morning with Jared Max comes up. I'm on that show as well. So I'm here until 6 a.m. and Mike and Mike in the morning. But Barkley said something that he has offset about Carmelo Anthony. And it's just off the mark. Carmelo Anthony is the best scorer in the NBA. A lot of people like Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's a terrific player. But... The thing about Carmelo I like, he's able to post guys up. When Kevin Durant learned how to post guys up, he can surpass Carmelo, but not right now. He's just a jump shooter. Now, Carmelo Anthony can score in a lot of ways. And I think that's what Charles Barkley is trying to say, that Carmelo Anthony can score in a lot of ways, a variety of ways. He can drive to the hole. He can post guys up. He can shoot from the outside a bit. He has a nice jab, step, pull-up jumper, which fortunately he's not taking much of this year because it's a low percentage shot. Carmelo has a varied offensive game. He does. And I think that's the point Charles Barkley is trying to make. However, Carmelo Anthony is not the best scorer in the NBA. That's a fact. He's not the best scorer in the NBA. You know how I know this? Because other guys score more points on fewer shots, more efficiently. I don't care how you get the points. They count the same way. I don't care if you like guys posting up. And, you know, if you're Shaquille O'Neal and you hate on Dwight Howard for not posting up, doesn't mean he's not a good scorer. Dwight Howard scores. I mean, he's not Carmelo Anthony type of scorer, but Dwight Howard scores 20-something a game on 60% shooting. So what that they're dunks and laps or little baby hooks? So what? They count. Carmelo Anthony is a very good scorer. He's a prolific scorer. But he's also, through most of his career, been a volume scorer, meaning that he takes a lot of shots to get those points. As well as he's played this year, remember opening night against the Heat? What did he have in that game? How many points did he have in that game? Like 27, 30 points, something like that? He was 10 of, I know for sure he was 10 of 28 from the field. And by the way, I don't have internet in here right at this moment. It's like so infuriating. How did people do this? Before they had internet. I, I do have a phone that has the internet, so what am I doing to, to complain? <laughs> you know, some real first world problems. But, you know, <laughs> I, I can't look up exactly how many Carmelo scored very quickly in that first game. However, he did go 10 of 28 from the field. I'm, I'm positive of that. So there are other guys in the NBA, like Kevin Durant, who Charles Barkley mentioned. Well, Kevin Durant has led the NBA in scoring the last two years. More than Carmelo scored more points. And he's taken fewer shots to do so. So he scored more efficiently. His true shooting percentage is higher. If you don't know what true shooting percentage is, it's a stat 
that ignores regular raw field goal percentage and accounts for the extra point that a three gives you, accounts for free throw shooting, you know, and your field goal percentage and puts it into one number. So it's supposed to be essentially your effective field goal percentage. Kevin Durant, better. You know who else is a better scorer than Carmelo Anthony? LeBron James is a better scorer than Carmelo Anthony. LeBron James scores more points, and he does it on fewer shots, more efficiently, better. He scores better. So what Charles Barkley's trying to say is that Carmelo Anthony has a varied offensive arsenal. That does not make him the best scorer in the game. Robin Lundberg Show, ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Mike Woodson said something about Carmelo Anthony, though, that I do agree with and that I think applies universally to sports. And that's when he was asked by Stephen A. and Ryan Rucco. Uh, i, I got to plug everybody. One to three, right? One, one to three every weekday here. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's me from three to five, and then Max out in the morning from five to six, and then Mike and Mike in the morning from six to ten, and then Colin Coward from 10 to noon, and then Mike Lupica from 12 to 1, and then Stephen A. and Ryan from 1 to 3, and then the Michael K. show with Don LaGreca from 3 to 7, and then the Dave Rothenberg show from 7 to midnight. Nailed it. That's that's the whole lineup for you right there. But uh, Mike Whitson's going to be on every week with Stephen and Ryan, and he said something about Carmelo Anthony that I think is universal to all really good players who don't happen to have that pesky ring. And I've been around this thing a long time, and there are great players that have come through this league that didn't sniff winning a title. It happens. You know, is it the end of the world? Absolutely not. Does that define Carmelo Anthony and who he is as a man and, and, and as a player? Absolutely not. But I'll say this. I think what we've done this summer in terms of putting people around him that I think can still play, he has a great chance of achieving that this year. I do. I believe that. If we stay healthy and we're able to push each other in the right directions. we Achieving we what, our, coach? Of trying to win an NBA title. That's what. That's the only reason why I coach, and that's the reason why these guys should play. You know, I mean, you, you're not playing for anything else but to win an NBA title, and every, only one team can do it. So, you know, my, my thought process coming into this year is to win our division, to host first round at home, and go from there to try to win an NBA title in that order. And that's what it's all about. He is so spot on in his analysis because many sports media members and many fans, they treat, um you know, that championship like, what's his face from Lord of the Rings? What was it, Gollum? You know, they're precious. And they need the precious before they can be considered good. They must have the precious. You know, it's so simple-minded to completely judge a player on whether they've won a championship or not. You know how many factors go into whether you've won a championship or not? You know how hard it is to win a championship? Not to say that it doesn't enhance your legacy as a player, certainly. And, you know, it's, it's tough to be considered at the very tip top of the all time greats without a championship, I suppose, because that's the end game. But look around. Look around sports, period. In the NFL, Dan Marino, is he an all time great quarterback? Yeah. No championship. Barry Sanders, all time great running back? No championship. In the NBA, Charles Barkley, who I was just disagreeing with, no championship. Is was he not a championship worthy player? Was Patrick Ewing here in New York not a championship-worthy player? Dirk Nowitzki, since the, the Knicks play the Mavericks tonight, Dirk won't be playing, you know, and two guys that did win a championship with Dirk will be, Jason Kidd and Tyson Chandler. For, forever he was called soft or, or not clutch. And, and then all of a sudden he became clutch, and, and he, it, the soft label went away because he won a championship. That is such nonsense. He was the same player. You know, he got better year in and year out anyway. But he something didn't change within him magically that allowed him to win a championship. He just had a good team around him, and, and the, the cards fell where they may. Carmelo Anthony, that's a whole different story. Uh, you can get into Carmelo's game, and you could just simply state the case that Carmelo Anthony hasn't been a good enough player in his career to be the centerpiece of a championship team. This year, he's having a nice year. He had a great year of power forward, for, or a great month of power forward last year. And I think this will be a year that actually defines where Carmelo Anthony is, in fact, as a player. But 
Just because a guy has or hasn't won a championship does not mean he is or isn't a great player. It's the, the most bottom line, simple way to judge things, and it's kind of just dumb. All right, before I get myself worked up again regarding Tim Tebow, let's, let's do some fun stuff. Trending topics time. Trending topics with Robin Lundberg. What do we got first, Jabo? First, we have Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck, he of uh, two touchdowns and what are the Colts six and three now? That's a uh, a nice um a nice story with the Chuck Pagano thing and and I don't want to say the Chuck Pagano thing that's like making you know small potatoes of a huge situation and a, a really good story and Andrew Luck has clearly come out of the gates meeting a lot of the hype that he was met with um for most of his career or most of his college career and as the number one pick. In the NFL draft. However, the Colts are, are not as good as their record says. And unfortunately, that good story is going to unravel as the year goes along. I don't think it's going to be one of those things that, that is an inspiring one at the end of the year. But that doesn't mean they don't have a very bright future. And it's one of those situations that worked out well for both teams. That that happens a lot of teams nowadays where something you, you criticize a team one or the other when it works out for both. In you know the case of the Broncos here and the Colts via the, the Peyton Manning Andrew Luck quasi swap. Next we have DeAndre Jordan. DeAndre Jordan. He, he developed the post move that uh, Blake Griffin should have developed, little baby hooks. But the real segue here, and, and the Clippers, by the way, are for real. They they may be a team that could actually threaten in the West, considering the way the Thunder are playing. Well, the Thunder are going to be still very very good, and particularly the way the Lakers are playing. But Shaq. He's got to let go of that Dwight Howard hate because he was on uh, TNT's show and he said that DeAndre Jordan is the best center in the West. He's just trolling. If you don't know what trolling is, it means it's saying something simply to get a rise out of people. Next, we have Death Stare. Death Stare. Kobe Bryant had this, um, it was this uh, meme on the internet, you know, this GIF of Kobe Bryant staring into space with a menacing look and people thought he was looking at Mike Brown he was actually had to be shown the picture on a, a reporter's phone today and he laughed it off saying he was just mad in general not at Mike Brown next Skyfall Sky, I, you know what I don't think I've ever seen a James Bond movie does that make me a bad person makes you a little weird a little weird I think so should I start with Skyfall though apparently it's really good all right and next we have Lincoln. And that's the final one. Uh, Steven Spielberg directed this Abraham Lincoln movie. Abraham Lincoln's one of my favorites because I, I use a lot of his quotes. Like one of my favorite quotes is when I do good, I feel good. When I do bad, I feel bad. That's my religion. You know, and I reference him a lot. But I, I don't like seeing historical movies. I know I'm in the minority here. And I really can't believe that they left out the vampire slaying parts. But that's opening in limited release today. Team Tebow. Tim Tebow. The questions keep on coming. The questions keep on coming. Well, I'm going to give you the answer in regards to Tim Tebow. That's next. Robin Lundberg Show, ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Looking to rebound after the bye week. The Jets travel west to face the Seattle Seahawks. We've earned that 3-5 and five record. That's clearly not where, where we want to be at. Their season may be at a crossroads. Which way will they go? We have work to do. I'm excited to get the guys back. I look forward to the second half of the season. Jets, Seahawks. Coverage gets underway Sunday at 2 on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. This Veterans Day at Lowe's, get the Maytag Centennial Washer and Dryer for $798. That's a savings of $430. And a Bosch 18-volt lithium drill for $99. That's a savings of $70. Choose 18-month special financing on purchases of $599 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer is valid from November 7th through the 12th while supplies last. Credit offer valid from November 8th through the 12th. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offer. Some exclusions apply. See store for details, including Maytag offer. Are you making frequent bathroom trips during the night? Do you have a strong urge to urinate? If ignored, these symptoms may result in complicated kidney and bladder infections, kidney failure, or loss of bladder function. Additionally, if you are a male of 50 years or older and experiencing sexual dysfunction, you may be at risk of a stroke or heart attack. The same disease process that affects blood vessels which lead to the heart and brain affect the delicate vessels that supply blood to the genital organs. Careful evaluation of erectile dysfunction can uncover these problems years before critical 
medical damage occurs. Compassionate urologists at the New York Urologic Institute specialize in improving urologic and sexual function. Latest technological advances allow the patient to get answers to diagnostic tests immediately, reducing anxiety. Call the New York Urologic Institute at 347-508-3991. Offices are conveniently located in Queens and Brooklyn. For timely, effective treatment, call 347-508-3991. That's 347-508-3991. One thing I've learned on my journey to help save people money on car insurance is that folks across the country like convenience. And what could be more convenient than visiting Geico.com? We can manage your policy, pay your bill online, just about anything you need. And it's open 24-7. It's kind of like popping into the ultimate convenience store. Except we save people money. And we don't have beef jerky. For a free rate quote, visit Geico.com to see how much you could save. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Slash ESPN to grant a wish today. Knicks Mavericks tonight at seven. WEPN FM, WEPN HD One, New York. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Neil Jackson, and the Colts have now won four straight and improved to six and three after beating the Jazz twenty-seven to ten. Top overall pick Andrew Luck had a pair of rushing touchdowns, giving him five on the year, a single-season team record for a quarterback. Here's Luck. This was the biggest game to date by far, and, 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 and to win was great. Um, you know, obviously it's it's nice to be six and three, but we realize you know that's that's you know just one step in the journey. It's it's no end goal by any means, and you know we know it only gets harder from here. So we're gonna have to you know buckle down and and, and put in twice as much effort and twice as much work. Injury updates from around the NFL. Tampa Bay's Michael Bennett and the Cowboys' Marco Murray returned to practice Thursday. The Broncos' Tracy Porter did not. The Eagles' LaShawn McCoy will join workouts on Friday. The Raiders' Darren McFadden and Richard Seymour were held out on Thursday. From college football, Thursday night, number 10, Florida State with a 28-22 win. Come from behind, in fact, over Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. Seminoles now 9-1. and one. They're one victory away from clinching the ACC Atlantic Division. E.J. Manuel with a 39-yard game-winning TD pass in the final minute to Rashad Green. Elsewhere, Arkansas State knocked off Louisiana Monroe 45-23. Despite the absence of star point guard Derek Rose, the Bulls started the season 3-1 and one as they hosted the Thunder on Thursday night. Jeff Pelosi giving the ball to the left to the right of the foul one. Back down, steps back, launches, and six and 18-footer! A dagger, baby! 19.5 left. Durant has scored a big six late. Timeout, Chicago. That was that Dirk Nowitzki <laughs> one-legged <laughs> step back. Oh, that was hot and candy sweet as he unleashed it. The call courtesy of WWLS. Kevin Durant, 24 points. Russell Westbrook scored 16 to go with 12 assists. And Oklahoma City held off Chicago 97-91. Luol Deng scored 27 points in the Bulls' loss. The Clippers had a 21-point lead at halftime at Portland and then had to hang on to beat the Blazers 103-90. to Jamal Crawford, 25 points in the win. Chris Paul added 21 from the NBA as well. Warrior center Andrew Bogut will be sidelined 7 to 10 days to rest and strengthen his surgically repaired left ankle. From baseball, infielder Mysoris Turris became the first major league free agent this offseason to join a new club as the former Angel agreed to a three-year deal with the Toronto Blue Jays. Micah Mike, it's football Friday and a quarterback filled day. We will have Jay Cutler, Joe Flacco, Ron Jaworski, and Roger Staubach all live on Micah Mike Friday morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. The Robin Lundberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. I can't take it anymore. I really, I can't take it anymore. What am I referencing? Tim Tebow. And not Tim Tebow the man, not Tim Tebow the quarterback, not Tim Tebow the player, not Tim Tebow whatever other adjective I can use, which not even an adjective, whatever noun I can use, whatever. I can't take it with Tim Tebow anymore. The questions with Tim Tebow anymore. Because it's pointless. We might as well all be banging our heads against the wall. You might as well do that. 
If you want to ask about Tim Tebow, you might as well bang your head against the wall. You'll get a better answer. You'll get a better answer that way because it's gotten to a point where it's clear. It's clear what the situation is regarding Tim Tebow. But the questions, they still come. You know, they're asked to Rex Ryan. You know, again, it's, uh, you know, you, you try to look at your whole roster and, and try to, I, I probably wasn't, I probably wasn't the smartest. You know, again, he starts every answer when, in regards to Tim Tebow with, you know, again, because he, he get, keeps getting asked the same questions again on Tebow. If we're going to use him more or we're going to use him the same or less or whatever it is, um, if I think it's a advantage to this football team one way or the other, then I'm not going to share it. And so that's kind of where I look at it. Now, we did, did we look at, I mean, literally, did we look at Tim? Did we look at each guy, how we're using our guys? We did. Are we going to expand the role of maybe even some defensive players? I wouldn't be shocked by that. Again, the same answer every time from Rex Ryan in regards to Tim Tebow. And he's going to keep it a secret. Remember that super secret surprise Wildcat? Yeah, that worked out pretty well. Wasn't exactly a Trojan horse. Mike Tannenbaum with Mike Lupica asked about Tim Tebow. We're certainly looking at, you know, Tim, but we're also looking at all our players, Mike. You know, how can we uh, use them going forward in the second half? How can we, uh, you know, score more points, be more consistent? And, you know, to answer your question, like, why are we here? You know, if I had to boil it down, I would tell you that, you know, looking at turnovers in, in the red zone. Whatever. I don't, I don't care about the rest of his answer. It wasn't about Tim Tebow, right? Pete Carroll, he gets asked about Tim Tebow. I don't know. We're expecting him to play. You know, we have to count on him being in there. He's done enough stuff and they, the enough difficult uh, uh, concepts that they bring to us that we're, we're studying it. We're all over it. Now, you know, it's, it's all, totally up to them. They get to do whatever they want. The token Tebow questions, well, guess what it's going to lead to? The token Tebow offense. The same thing we have seen over and over and over again. You know, I, I get it. When you're, when you're the reporter, you have to ask about it. It's a story. When you're a writer or, or somebody like, you know, if, if I had Rex Ryan on, I would have to ask him about it or else I'd be negligent. But everyone wants to be the guy who gets that quote where Rex says, you know what, we're going to use T-Bone in a completely different way. It's going to revolutionize the way team sports are played. You know, that, that would be the one. That's the one you want to get, but you're not going to get that. You're going to get the same answer from Rex Ryan every time, which is, you know, again, you know, we look at our whole team and the way we can use things, and is there a better way to use Tim? Sure, there's a better way to use Tim, and we're going to look at it. But, you know, that's what you're going to get from him. It's what you're going to get from Mike Tannenbaum. It's what you're going to get from Tony Sperano. And when you ask the other team and the other team's coach, they're going to say, yeah, we have to be prepared for Tebow. Obviously, he can do some things out on the field. That's the way it's going going to work unless a drastic change is made because it's eight games into the season guys it's eight games into the season if they had some revolutionary way that they were going to use tim tebow if they had some super secret surprise way that they were going to use tim tebow if they were going to roll out a, a cake onto the field and he was going to pop out of it and take a snap and throw the ball they would have done it by now they're not here's how they're going to use tim tebow i don't know in five to ten plays in the game Maybe he'll fake a punt. We've seen that. Maybe he'll run for it on a first down or, or throw it on a punt. Maybe eventually they'll let him throw one pass in a game, perhaps. But most of the time, he's going to come in, he's going to take the snap, and he's going to run directly into the line of scrimmage for three yards. He might break it for five at some point this season. They're going to have Sanchez go out wide or Tebow go out wide in some sort of weird way to try and fool people when really all that does is make you play 10 on 11. That's how they're going to use Tim Tebow. Unless they decide they are going to use Tim Tebow as their quarterback. I think they should have already made that decision. I think, you know, I just want to hear Herm Edwards say this. Choop, choop. Bring him out. That's what I think they should have done with Tim Tebow. When Mark Sanchez is clearly not the guy. Come on. I know the Jets' schedule gets a lot easier. By the way, if you look at it, they played, I think, one of the, the top five toughest schedules thus far, and they played, like, the 27th best schedule the rest of the way. The only problem is the Jets are, you know, in the middle with all those other teams, so they can beat bad teams, but they can also lose to them. I think they should have put Tebow in and seen what he's got the rest of the year so they could have properly evaluate him going forward and what they need to do in the draft with their quarterback spot. But they didn't. They didn't even put him in in that last game when Sanchez couldn't have been worse. It was, a, it was an invitation to put Tim Tebow in. You could have even said they'd just put him in for garbage time to clean up so Sanchez didn't get hurt. But the door was wide open. Please, guys, put Tim Tebow in the game. The Dolphins are destroying you. Put Tim Tebow in the game. Mark Sanchez is embarrassing himself. Put Tim Tebow in the game. But they didn't. 
So that means they're not ready to make the move at quarterback. And we've seen what they do with Tim Tebow otherwise. Not much. Why is all of a sudden that going to change? Why all of a sudden are they going to choop, choop, bring him out? They're not. Tim Tebow is what he is at this point. Just kind of there. Much more interesting to talk about. Much more headline grabbing than he's going to be on the field unless Rex Ryan is forced to make the switch at quarterback at some point in the next couple weeks. Unless Mark Sanchez plays so impossibly bad that Rex Ryan's loyalty can no longer hang on. I have a challenge for you guys here on the Robin Lundberg Show, ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Come up with an original point or an original question regarding Tim Tebow. I dare you. I dare you. An original point or an original question in regards to Tim Tebow? Because I'm not sure any exist. 1-800-919-3776. 1-800-919-3776. At Robin Lundberg on Twitter. R-O-B-I-N-L-U-N-D-B-E-R-G. Eli Manning made it very easy to use a, a corny pun. That's coming up in a little bit. I've been disagreeing with Charles Barkley and agreeing with Mike Woodson all morning. I'll continue to do that. But I, I want to hear something original. Something original on Tim Tebow. Because I don't know if it exists. I'm all ears. ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Looking to rebound after the bye week. The Jets travel west to face the Seattle Seahawks. We've earned that 3-5 and five record. That's clearly not where, where we want to be at. Their season may be at a crossroads. Which way will they go? We have work to do. I'm excited to get the guys back. I look forward to the second half of the season. Jets, Seahawks. Coverage gets underway Sunday at 2 on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Hi, it's Colin Coward. When I send roses, and I do a lot, I always order them from 1-800-Flowers.com. Flowers are fresh, always, and beautiful. And roses are perfect to send, but for any reason, not just birthdays or congratulations, just to brighten somebody's day. That's why I can't wait to tell you about an exclusive offer that is so special from 1-800-Flowers.com. Never offered before. 36 stunning multicolored roses for just 36 bucks. An abundant bouquet of three dozen roses. At this incredible value, it's a limited time offer. You got to order today for somebody you care about. Think of their reaction. 36 roses, and it's not even their birthday. Why does it have to be her birthday? Just send them because. Remember, 36 roses for 36 bucks, only available this week. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com from your desktop or mobile device. Click on the radio mic, upper right side, enter Colin. That's 1-800-Flowers.com, enter Colin, or call 1-800-Flowers and mention my name. It's fun to debate your favorite teams and players, but the debate is over when it comes to where you go for your next set of tires. See the experts at your local Ford dealer for big savings on name brand tires during the big tire event. Going on now. It's time to get winter ready. Dick's Sporting Goods has more of the best brands to keep you warm as the weather gets colder. The North Face, Columbia, Spider, Burton, Copen, Marmot, Mountain Hardware, and more. Dick's has the widest selection in styles and colors in men's, women's, and youth jackets and accessories. And don't forget to grab a new snowboard. Dick's carries the snow equipment you need. Before hitting the slopes, stop into Dick's Sporting Goods today. Every season starts at Dick's. If you've got a business, you qualify for the official Mike and Mike office stimulus package. When you move from your office into a gorgeous Regis office, not only will you save a fortune, you'll get two months absolutely free. Your Regis office comes beautifully furnished in a prestigious building. You get a receptionist, meeting rooms, and state-of-the-art video conferencing with no long-term lease. And you get two months free by mentioning Mike and Mike. All you have to do is call 1-800-OFFICES. That's 1-800-OFFICES. Hi, football fans. I think you'll agree that you've got to have great seats. And now it's even easier to pick the seats you want wherever you are thanks to StubHub's new mobile seat maps. They're the only interactive seat maps that let you search for NFL tickets by section and actually see the view from your seat. All from your mobile phone. How cool is that? So whether you're searching StubHub on your computer or your phone, it's easy to find the seat you want. Yet another reason thousands of fans use StubHub for their NFL tickets every Sunday. Choop, choop. Bring them out, bring them out, hey. Bring them out. 
The Robin Lundberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Herm Edwards with another great quote. Choop, choop. Bring him out. In regards to Tim Tebow. However, they're not going to. They're not going to. We've seen what the Jets are doing with Tim Tebow, so we might as well talk about other Jets until they're ready to make the quarterback switch. But I, I have an open challenge to you guys. Come up with an original question or an original thought on Tim Tebow, because otherwise there should just be an embargo on Tebow questions and Tebow thoughts. 1-800-919-3776, 1-800-919-3776, at Robin Lundberg on Twitter, R-O-B-I-N-L-U-N-D-B-E-R-G. Mike Hennessy tweets in, enough with the 24 24- Seven Tebow boosterism. The Jets have a team to evaluate and build. A QB who can't throw is not the answer. That is not an original thought on Tim Tebow. Not an original thought to say he's a quarterback who can't throw. I've heard that a billion times before. I don't know if I have 24-7 Tebow boosterism. In fact, I'm complaining about all the talk about Tebow right now, considering, you know, they're not going to use him. Carlito tweets in, how many girls in New York has Tebow hooked up with? Also, not an original thought or question on Tebow. That's not original because you always see it on page six. He may be dating this person. He was in Jacksonville dating some girl before. I mean, we, we might as well talk about something else. I'm still, I'm challenging. Does anybody? Glenn, in Jersey City, do you have an original thought or question on Tebow? Glenn? No, I'm sorry, nothing on Tebow. He's been worn out. Way too much uh, credit than he deserves. There you go. Uh, um, but Well, not credit. He doesn't, I don't think he deserves anything. I don't think he deserves credit or blame. He's kind of just there. Uh the Jets are so dysfunctional. Historically, they've been poor evaluators of talent. They got three quarterbacks. At the end of the season, they're not going to know more about McElroy or, or Tebow or even Sanchez than they know at the start of the year. And after four seasons, you should know that. Remember James Jeff Blake rolled the pine for the Jets, then went to Cincinnati and had three career years, just lit it up. Yeah. This is the Jets. I mean, no, it's, it's, it's fair. Um, Vic tweets in, what could Tebow do differently? That's fair. That's getting closer to original. I don't know if it, you know, it's a little too vague and broad because I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen Tebow in practice. I've barely seen Tebow in the game, so I don't know what he could do differently. I'm, I'm going to disagree with Charles Barkley on some stuff about the Knicks in a bit, but first he did say something about the Jets and Mark Sanchez that I have to disagree with right now since it's on topic. Well, you know what? I blame some of that on him. He has not played well, but I blame some of that on the Jets. You know, Mike, they should have never bought in Tim Tebow, to be honest with you. Because the one thing about sports, to play sports, you have to have a like a free mind. You have to have a free mind. You can't be worried about every mistake you make. And I think that the, the Jets did him a great disservice bringing him Tim Tebow. That has nothing to do with Tim Tebow. But you don't bring in another player in that situation to put you. Know, and the quarterback probably the hardest position in sports. And the one thing you don't do is put – your quarterback under pressure, where he has to worry about every throw, every mistake, every turnover. I mean, it's just crazy. Now, whether or not the Jets should have brought in Tebow, and if that was a mistake, that's up for debate. Clearly, it doesn't look great right now, but I don't know if that has anything to do with that move or just who the Jets are. But I couldn't disagree with Barkley more about Mark Sanchez and about him affecting Mark Sanchez. On the surface, Barkley's comments make sense. You don't want to play when you know you can't make a mistake. I remember, you know, it's a totally not relative comparison because I was playing high school basketball and this is professional football, but I had one coach who if you turned the ball over, he'd pull you from the game, and I couldn't, I couldn't stand it. It affected my head. And that could be the case with Mark Sanchez. However, Mark Sanchez stunk last year. He made mistakes last year when no one was there to threaten his job or get in his head or any of that stuff. He stunk. So I can't think, you know, why is it Tebow that's making him stink now? Mark Sanchez just isn't good. Mark Sanchez is not good. Still searching for that. I'm not really as upset as I just sounded there. I'm uh, still searching for an original Tebow thought or question. Big Rob tweets in at me, Tebow topic. Could it be the Jets are going to turn to Tebow for the future? I'm not a fan of this move. You know what? I would say if that was the case, they would have already put him in. They had the perfect game to do it against the Dolphins. Now I think the only way he gets in is if Sanchez is comically bad because Rex Ryan is loyal to a fault to Mark Sanchez. We might have one. Guys, we might have an original question. Look at this. Kerpus tweets in at me. Do you think Tebow is more troubled by his relationship with the Jets than he was with Elway and the Broncos? That's a pretty good question. And I would say, and, and congratulations, Kerpus, the first original thought or question on Tebow in about a month. Um, I would say yes. 
I would say yes, because in Denver, he had management that clearly did not believe in him as the long-term answer and response. However, he had an opportunity to showcase himself. He had an opportunity to play in Denver. And he probably thought in his head, look, even if this isn't my place long-term, if it isn't my ultimate landing spot, here's a chance for me to show my stuff. Here's a chance for me to get out on the field and play, and maybe that leads to something else. Here, it's just something else. None of the above. Joe in Manhattan. Yeah, I think that they have destroyed Tim Tebow's uh, career, the New York Jets. They may have, because you know what they've done? All the negative and stereotypes and talk about Tebow and all the, the marginal roles he's been put in or, or said he should be in, they're kind of festering and fostering that mentality. Right. And he was on the top of the world over there in Denver. They destroyed it. They, they've destroyed his career. I mean, you know, he's a, he's a good player. I mean, he's not a great player, but at least he brings some, some kind of excitement to the game. And they don't see that, the Jets. I don't understand. I don't know what's going on, but uh, you know, the, I don't know if Tebow's the answer. That's what I've been saying. My my takeaway thought is I don't know if Tebow's the answer. He very well may not be, but I'm not positive he can't play quarterback. I saw him play reasonably well at quarterback last year. He does things that help the team win, and, and I'm not just going to say he just wins games because that's nonsense. That's like lazy analysis. He just wins games. There's a reason he just wins games because he controls the field position a little bit. He allows the defense to rest because he'll chew up some yardage running the ball. Running yards count. They count for yards. He throws a good deep ball, which can count for big plays, account for big plays, and he doesn't turn the ball over like Mark Sanchez. Jared Max, Max out in the morning, coming up at 5 o'clock here. I'm a part of that show, and we take you up until Mike and Mike. What up? Do you have an original thought or question regarding Tim Tebow? Because it's starting to irritate me. Uh, Tim Tebow, if you could compare your situation to a um, song by Rascal Flatts, your favorite band, what would it be? But you know what I was thinking as I was listening when you, when you posed this idea? It's almost like um, I think what you're not asking for, just for uh, Robin's listeners, what you're not asking for is Super Bowl Media Day type of questions for Tim Tebow. Because that's just silly. We can all come up with some silly idea. You know, Tim, how many different pairs of jeans do you wear a week? Whatever. That has nothing to do with, you, you know, anything. Yeah. Um. I don't, you know, you just mentioned Broncos management that that they were not for him and Jets management is for him. I don't necessarily agree with that. Well, I, the Broncos management, actually, I mean, they clearly uh, were not for him. No, I agree with that side. I just don't agree that the Jets management is necessarily for him. Oh, I don't, I don't know if they're for him either. I, I'm just saying I think he may be more frustrated with his Jets situation than the Broncos situation because at least he got to play in Denver and he thought light at the end of the tunnel, I can prove myself here even if they, these guys don't want me. And perhaps he Re thought the same thing remember, with the situation here, but it didn't work also, out that way. Robin, why? And I know we've, we've talked about this. I think it's been a couple months since we got into this side of the conversation. But remember out in Colorado – have you ever spent any time out in Colorado before? I mean, never been there. It's it's South Park's about as close yeah. as I've been. It's a different place. It's a different place than New York, very much so. Um, and just as I, I I think I was bringing this up a couple of months ago, that I don't think New York is the type of area where um, religion doesn't rule as strongly in this in these parts as it does in other parts of the country, and Colorado being one of them. And I think that is, there was a strong push from from a religious side, essentially. People wouldn't necessarily, you know... That nobody ever wanted to talk about oh, it while it was going no on. No doubt, he might as well have had you know Jesus on the back of his jersey at points in time. But but not but I mean in the sense of the people who wanted him in there that there was such such a strong force of people that wanted to see Tim Tebow and whether or not it was because he was a professional football player or because he was a professional football player who quotes scripture all the time. There was. There was a certain pressure which does exist in Colorado, which does not really take place so much in New York. Well, in fact, I think the opposite has happened because, you know, these overrated polls, it's because people get polarized against people. And they, they've they been polarized mm. against Tebow to the point where a lot of the Jets fan base wants to see Greg Ra McElroy, even though that's probably not a better ap option than Tim Tebow. Like, when did Greg McElroy become good? He was, a, what, a sixth or a seventh round pick? Yeah. You know, not most sixth and seventh round picks. They're not you Tom know, Brady. You know, it's funny about McElroy. I noticed this after every Jets game. Uh, he's always like the most happy-go-lucky dude just who's just standing there because he's collecting a nice paycheck to essentially not have to get his body destroyed. And, and there's no expectations. No one's going to go and talk to him. He's always chuckling. He's hanging out. He's next to Tim Tebow's locker between Tebow and, and Sean Green, and he's just this kind of smiling guy and whatever. Hey, hey, what's up? You know, because Tim Tebow's doing the same thing McElroy's doing essentially.
Yeah. I say, um, it's a, it's a cool shirt. Lund- Lundberg's got on, I- I'm the odd man out today, although we all have interesting shirts, and I'm wearing like a Hershey's Chocolate World shirt, but both Lundberg and, and uh, J-Bo were wearing Brooklyn Net shirts. Well, but- that's because J-Bo got this for me. You know, he's like their walking billboard. He got this for me uh, for my birthday. Aww. It's like, um, you know, I think he was just trying to further his own cause. It's very cool. We'll talk about that shirt during Maxed Out of the Morning. I don't want to get you off topic, but Robin has an inch. It's not just because when I'm first looking, oh, oh wow, cool. Because I'll tell you, I, I'm not a huge fan of the Nets uniforms. I'm really not. I was, oh, I think their I think their merchandise is the illest in all. Sports. I think yeah, it is illest in all that good stuff. However, the one thing that I th- well, I'll give you some design tips coming up in Max down in the morning. Why it matches I d- everything? You can't. It, it, it does. It does. But there's you can't it, like wear orange and blue with your 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 you know brown shoes or whatever it may be or or whatever. But clothes I'm not you're even I'm not even talking about the colors. I'll, I'll explain. We'll get to Max down. I don't want to take you completely off topic here with Tebow and uh, and the Jets. By the way, I want you to know. I agree very strongly with something Barkley said that you just played and that you said you disagree with. So we will we'll have our. Well, I agree bit. on the surface with what Barkley said, but not in this specific example because Sanchez was terrible last year. He's terrible this year. Why does Tebow get the blame for Sanchez not being good? Just make believe that Tim Tebow's name was John Smith, or Mark Brunel, or or or, or whatever. I mean, y- you know, it could be whatever name. But I just think that there's a certain. The Tebow mania, you know, there's a Tebow mania agree. that's here. I, I agree with that, but he was no good last year. Why? Why is he at? Why is Tebow and all that aura at fault? And I agree, there's a whole bunch of nonsense that comes with it. And Tebow and I, our beliefs couldn't be further apart. All that stuff. That's not the reason I think he should play. I think he should play because Mark Sanchez isn't good, and Mark Sanchez wasn't good last year. So why is Tebow mania at fault for Mark Sanchez still not being oh, I, good? I wouldn't blame Tebow mania. That's that's that, that's wrong. Well, that's kind of what Barkley was saying. Well, there was other stuff he said that made sense. Well, we'll we'll, we'll get into it later. Yeah. I have other stuff. I'm I'm disagreeing with Barkley about um. About the Knicks as well. I'm, I'm going to play that in a bit. Clay in the Bronx. Clay? Hello? Yeah, go ahead, Hi. man. How are you? Listen, I wanted to make a comment on uh, you, you said that Tebow was bad last year. He's bad this year. No, Sanchez. Oh, I'm sorry, Sanchez. I apologize. Um, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, we're putting a lot of blame on Sanchez. I mean, I think that that offensive line, I think that the blocking, I think that the protection of the quarterback has a lot to do with uh, – you know, the poor play. I mean, if you take Tom Brady and put him behind that offensive line, do you think he has the same numbers as uh, as he does now? No, but I think he has better numbers than Mark Sanchez. I agree with you that it's not all Mark Sanchez's fault. I've been saying that all year. It's not all Mark Sanchez's fault. It's not. The offensive line has not been good. The skill position players are not very good. But that doesn't mean Mark Sanchez isn't bad. Both things can be true. And I think with Mark Sanchez, that's the case. Both things are true. He's not a very good quarterback. He doesn't have much to work with. That leads to a pretty poor offense, which the New York Jets have right now. The New York Knicks, they do not have a poor offense at the moment. But I think it is a bigger potential problem for them than their defense. Charles Barkley disagrees, so I have to disagree with him. Plus, I have to agree with something Mike Woodson said about Carmelo Anthony and basically sports analysis in general. And I haven't even gotten to the Giants. Still so much to come. Robin Lundberg, show ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Stifling defense. Anthony swats him out of bounds and it saves it as he leaps over the Sixers bench. Pinpoint shooting accuracy. Fires a three at the horn and he swishes it in. The will to win. Prisioni doubles, kicks back to Smith. Continue to work hard and, and play hard, stay away from injuries. That's the name of the game. Knicks, Mavericks, Friday night at 7 on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. This Veterans Day at Lowe's, get the Maytag Centennial Washer and Dryer for $798. That's a savings of $430. And a Bosch 18-volt lithium drill for $99. That's a savings of $70. Choose 18-month special financing on purchases of $599 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer is valid from November 7th through the 12th while supplies last. Credit offer valid from November 8th through the 12th. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offer. Some exclusions apply. See store for details, including Maytag offer. 
The college basketball season begins tonight on ESPN with two big-time matchups. First, the Sears Armed Forces Classic celebrates Veterans Day from Ramstein Air Base in Germany as number 14 Michigan State takes on Connecticut in the first regular season game overseas. Then in Brooklyn, in the Barclays Center Classic, Maryland goes up against John Calipari's national champion, Kentucky Wildcats. It all starts tonight at 5 p.m. Eastern with live Sports Center reports from Germany on ESPN. Hi, it's Colin Thursday. Bill Romanowski on pot smoking in the NFL. Greg Cosell thinks Eli Manning's arm? Well, you have to listen to find out. Download the Thursday Thundering Herd podcast. Check it out, ESPNRadio.com. An ESPN Radio Extra Point with Colin Cowherd. To me, there's eight organizations in the NFL. I counted them this morning that feel like it's 100% about winning Super Bowls. Eight. There may be more, but I get a very strong feeling from ownership down. It is all about winning Super Bowls. New York Giants, Green Bay Packers, San Francisco 49ers with Harbaugh, New England, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Indianapolis, and Denver. That's all that matters. It's about winning Super Bowls. Tennessee drafted Vince Young. They didn't think Vince Young was great. They thought he could sell tickets from a source close to that organization. Part of getting the Vince Young deal done, eh, people here will love him. That's not about winning Super Bowls. The New York Jets getting Tebow, disruptive. It's not about winning Super Bowls. Eight teams in the league, that's all that matters. Thirty. Every day I'm... I'm Robin Lundberg with this New York Sports Center. The three and five New York Jets. Well, they still believe they'll make the playoffs. At least Antonio Cromartie does. Jets will make a playoff this year. Uh, I mean, I, we, we we believe in each other. We believe in what uh, Coach Ryan and his staff is, is, is you know putting us the schemes and stuff. So I, we're, we're definitely uh, gonna make a playoff this year. They're in Seattle this Sunday. You can hear the game right here. Giants. They should have Akeem Nix in the lineup. Their task of making the playoffs much easier. They face off with the Bengals. Andrew Luck, well, he ran for two touchdowns in a Colts 27, Jaguars 10 win on Thursday night football. In the NBA, Thunder 97, Bulls 91, Clippers 103, Blazers 90. Tonight, the Knicks host the Mavericks, who will be without Dirk Nowitzki and Sean Marion. 7.30 tip. You can hear that game right here as well. ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Marcus can be expected to make his season debut. The Nets there in Orlando. The Mets, well, their GM, Sandy Alderson, he expects R.A. Dickey to win the Cy Young, but he also wouldn't rule out trading Dickey. NHL and NHL Players Association, they broke their silence after several days of meeting, scheduled to meet again, but wouldn't define the level of progress. Every day I'm shuffling. The Robin Lundberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Got to get into Antonio Cromartie's comments because they remind me of some real-life situations. He he and Rex Ryan's comments. I don't have any problem with them, but perhaps um, they shouldn't have been said. Just not not because they're wrong. And again, I don't have a problem with them, but just because of the reaction they can generate. Eli Manning and, and Tom Coughlin. One seems way more frustrated than the other. I'll play you some sound from them coming up in just a bit. But uh, first, I got to disagree with Charles Barkley because I disagreed with him about the Jets. Now I have to disagree with him about the Knicks. Let me start with his assessment of the Knicks right now and what Amari Stoudemire should do when he returns. They got enough scores. They got enough scores. But they're not great defensively and they're not a great rebounding team. The question, You just got to ask Amari one question. Do he want to try to be the Amari who was in Phoenix, who was a star getting 20 a night? Or I would love to see Amari come back and say, my goal for the season is to get 10 rebounds a game. You know, he's never averaged 10 rebounds in a game. Is that true? That's true. I would love for him to come back and say, my goal for this year is to play better defense, because that's what this team needs. We got enough scores. We got enough scores. But my goal for this year is for us to get, for me personally, to get 10 rebounds a game. I think Charles Barkley is just way off in his assessment there, way off. First of all, he says the Knicks aren't a very good defensive team and they have enough scores. In fact, the opposite is true. Last year under Mike D'Antoni, the Knicks were a top-10 defensive team. Under Mike D'Antoni. 
Under Mike Woodson, they're a top five defensive team down the stretch. This year, they've started off as the second best defensive team in basketball. They're second in defensive efficiency to the Chicago Bulls at the moment. Right there, neck and neck. So essentially, they're the best defensive team in basketball in this short season after spending a year in the top ten, even under Mike D'Antoni when they were top five down the stretch. So defense isn't their problem. In fact, I would say, if I was going to pinpoint one of the two being a problem, not having enough scores is what could possibly come back to bite them later in the year. Because Carmelo Anthony, he can get his own shot. J.R. Smith, he can get his own shot. About nobody else on the team can get their own shot. That's what happened to them last year in the postseason against the Heat. They were scoring toward the end of the season. They were blowing teams out. But once a team in the playoffs, they know they're not facing other teams they don't have to fly across the country and they're only facing you seven times possibly or you know however however many times it may be they know how to game plan against that and they shut you down if you're one-dimensional and that's what the knicks could be now the counter argument to that is they have a bunch of capable players as offensive players now unlike last year when lynn was out they didn't have any guards now they have guards who can at least put the ball in the basket, but they don't have many shot creators. And Amari Stoudemire is a, a dynamic offensive player when he's going right. That's why I think he should come off the bench. He should run the pick and roll, do what he does best, and give you a, another identity, another way to score so that Carmelo Anthony on the left block funneling the offense through him is not your only method of attack. Then Barkley said that Carmelo, I mean, Amari should come back and focus on 10 rebounds in defense. You know how many times I've heard Amari Stoudemire say he's, he say he's focusing on defense and he's focusing on rebounds? There's a reason he's played this long in the NBA and he has an average 10 rebounds in a season. Because he's not a very good rebounder. There's a reason he looks like, you know, as Walt Clyde Frazier would say, matador defense on defense. Because he's terrible defensively. And it has nothing to do with effort. I've watched Amari Stoudemire's whole career. He tries. He tries on defense. He's just not good at it. He just doesn't understand it naturally. He doesn't move to the right places naturally. Same thing with rebounding the ball. He's not a terrible rebounder. I mean, I think he averages about eight for his career, but he doesn't have natural rebounding instincts. You don't average more than 10 rebounds a game in the NBA unless you are going out of your way to get rebounds, which is a mistake. Because when you do that, you steal rebounds from your teammates. You put yourself in bad position on the court because you're just going for rebounds. He's not a natural rebounder. He's not a natural defensive player. I used the analogy before. In school, you know, I was pretty good in every subject in school. But English came a lot easier to me than math. Math, I had to stare at stuff and, and think about it and figure it out. And then it would click. And I was like, oh, that's how that equation works. And I'd, I'd be okay. The other ones, the other subjects that were related, uh, related to, you know, giving speeches or writing or any of that stuff, I didn't have to prepare at all, and I'd be fine. Well, defense and rebounding, they're math to Amari Stoudemire. Scoring, it's English and those other subjects. Let him do what he does best. Of course he should focus on defense and rebounding. He should, but if he put 100% of his focus on those things, you're going to lose what he does well, and you're going to put 100% of, of his focus on things he doesn't do particularly well, and he'll never do particularly well. Another thing Charles Barkley said, and this is about Carmelo Anthony, and he always says this about Carmelo Anthony, he's always wrong. Carmelo Anthony is the best scorer in the NBA. A lot of people like Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's a terrific player. But the thing about Carmelo I like, he's able to post guys up. When Kevin Durant learned how to post guys up, he can surpass Carmelo, but not right now. He's just a jump shooter. Perhaps Charles Barkley should say Carmelo Anthony is the most multidimensional scorer in the NBA, has the the best variety of scoring techniques and moves in the NBA or situationally, because he can post up. Carmelo can do that. He can drive to the hole. Carmelo can do that. Carmelo's a pretty good three-point, a solid three-point shooter, not a good three-point shooter, a solid three-point shooter. He can jab step you and pull up for the long two, which he's doing less this year, which is a good thing, but he can do that as well as a competent shooter in the NBA. So Carmelo Anthony can score in a variety of ways. However, he is not the best scorer in the NBA. You know how I know? Because it's factually incorrect. Kevin Durant scores more points on fewer shots. LeBron James scores more points on fewer shots. There are guys who score more. I don't care how they do it. I don't care if it's coming with spin moves or it's coming on dunks. They are better scorers because they score more easily, more efficiently than Carmelo Anthony does. He's a volume scorer. Even that game he played against Miami, first game of the season, he was 10 of 28. And this is not me bashing Carmelo Anthony. He's a great scorer. 
But he's not the best scorer in the NBA. He's just not. There are other guys who score more. If, if you told me LeBron James had to score, he was in a race to score 40 points against Carmelo in a race to score 40 points, I've taken LeBron James. Just be, and, and by the way, LeBron can score any way possible now as well. And Kevin Durant, same thing. Yeah, Kevin Durant's biggest weakness as a player is that you can deny him the ball. That's his biggest weakness as a player. You can muscle him up and he can, he can be in a situation where he can't catch the ball. And you can't score unless you have the ball. But once he has the ball, I don't care if he's not posting up. He's still scoring more efficiently than Carmelo Anthony. Mike Woodson, though, Carmelo's coach said something correctly about Carmelo Anthony, and I think it applies to all sports because I get a little tired of the simpleton analysis of rings or no rings. Here he is on Carmelo and if he needs a title. You know, I've been around this thing a long time, and there are great players that have come through this league that didn't sniff winning a title. It happens. You know, Is it the end of the world? Absolutely not. Does that define Carmelo Anthony and who he is as a man and, and, and as a player? Absolutely not. But I'll say this. I think what we've done this summer in terms of putting people around him that I think can still play, he has a great chance of achieving that this year. I do. I believe that. If we stay healthy and we're able to push each other in the right directions. we Achieving we what, our, Coach? Of trying to win an NBA title. That's what. That's the only reason why I coach. And that's the reason why these guys should play. You know, I mean, you, you're not playing for anything else but to win an NBA title. And every, only one team can do it. So, you know, my, my thought process coming into this year is to win our division, to host first round at home, and go from there to try to win an NBA title in that order. And that's what it's all about. Now, Mike Woodson, very eloquently spoken right there. And I, I like Mike Woodson a lot. And here's the thing. In, in sports analysis, it gets so broken down to the most simple takes possible, whether it's by pundits, whether it's by fans. It's like ring or no ring. That means you're, you're great or you're not great. What are we, Gollum from the Lord of the Rings when we're talking about, you know, championship ring? My precious, you must have the precious in order to be great. You know, there are plenty of great players who never won a championship. Charles Barkley, who I was just playing audio from. Patrick Ewing, great players. They never won a championship. Barry Sanders, Dan Marino, whoever. You know, I can go on and on. Ted Williams, right, in baseball. Just because you don't have a championship doesn't mean you're not a championship caliber player. You know, there are a lot of things that go into winning a championship. Are those guys I named, are they not championship caliber players because they didn't happen to win a championship? It's very difficult to win a championship. Now... To, in order to be, like, at the very tippy top of the all-time great list, do you need a championship? Well, as Mike Woodson says, it's what you're playing for, so yeah. But to simply just chastise someone because they don't have a ring and then all of a sudden praise them once they do have a ring is silly. You know, Dirk Nowitzki was the greatest example. People called him soft and a choker, and then all of a sudden he was a warrior and a winner. He, he got better year by year throughout his NBA career. He didn't magically gain powers and win the championship. He just had a good team around him that happened to feature Jason Kidd and Tyson Chandler, who will go up against those Mavericks tonight. Now, as far as Carmelo Anthony being good enough to be the foundational player of a championship team, that's a whole different discussion. But a championship isn't the sole thing that determines whether a guy is a quality enough player to build your team around or ultimately a great player. Robin Lundberg Show, ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. I take you up until uh, Jared, Max, and Max out in the morning, which I'm a part of, until 6 a.m. and Mike and Mike in the morning. Whole morning full of chock-full sports goodness. By the way, that uh, Woodson cut was on with Stephen A. and Ryan Rucco, 1-3, to three, every Monday through Friday here. Tom Coughlin and Eli Manning, they sound like they're on polar opposites of the spectrum when it comes to the Giants' mini malaise. And Antonio Cromartie, he predicted the Jets will make the playoffs. I don't mind that he did it, but should he have? That's coming up. 1-800-919-3776. 1-800-919-3776. ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Knicks head coach Mike Woodson with Stephen A. Smith and Ryan Rucco. What's your definition of success for this year's New York Knicks team? Well, our goal is to win our division and be able to host first round at home. That That is not going to change. I mean, that's what we're playing for. Knicks coach Mike Woodson, every week, all season long with Stephen A. and Ryan Rucco on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. 
Are you making frequent bathroom trips during the night? Do you have a strong urge to urinate? If ignored, these symptoms may result in complicated kidney and bladder infections, kidney failure, or loss of bladder function. Additionally, if you are a male of 50 years or older and experiencing sexual dysfunction, you may be at risk of a stroke or heart attack. The same disease process that affects blood vessels which lead to the heart and brain affect the delicate vessels that supply blood to the genital organs. Careful evaluation of erectile dysfunction can uncover these problems years before critical damage occurs. Compassionate urologists at the New York Urologic Institute specialize in improving urologic and sexual function. Latest technological advances allow the patient to get answers to diagnostic tests immediately, reducing anxiety. Call the New York Urologic Institute at 347-508-3991. Offices are conveniently located in Queens and Brooklyn. For timely, effective treatment, call 347-508-3991. That's 347-508-3991. It's time to get winter ready. Dick's Sporting Goods has more of the best brands to keep you warm as the weather gets colder. The North Face, Columbia, Spider, Burton, Copen, Marmot, Mountain Hardware, and more. Dick's has the widest selection in styles and colors in men's, women's, and youth jackets and accessories. And don't forget to grab a new snowboard. Dick's carries the snow equipment you need. Before hitting the slopes, stop into Dick's Sporting Goods today. Every season starts at Dick's. Now is the perfect time to upgrade during the first ever Rally Motors Luxury Sales Event, where upgrading to luxury has never been easier. Take advantage of attractive lease offers, special financing, and receive above book value for your trade-in. Whether you're thinking of buying or leasing a Mercedes-Benz, smart car, or Sprinter van, Rally Motors features one of the area's largest selections of competitively priced vehicles. Experience the difference during the Luxury Sales Event and see why customers choose Rally Motors. To learn more, stop by or visit them online at rallymotors.com. All right, Greeny, what's the worst thing about being a Jets fan this week? The Jets' usage of Tim Tebow is the most embarrassing failure I've ever seen in my entire life. The Jets do not use Tebow in the obvious places to try it, and they do use him at all the wrong times. And this is the main part of my enormous frustration with their offensive coordinator, Tony Sperano. I'll give you an example. Yesterday, they are running the ball down the Patriots' throats. They work it down to where they have a third down and, and a yard tops less than a yard inside the two-yard line, and they don't bring Tim Tebow in there, and they're running the ball like crazy, and they throw a slant yeah. to Chaz Schillens. They wind up kicking a field goal there, and that winds up playing out in a big way as the game goes on. But the point is, the Tim Tebow thing is ridiculous. It is being as handled as badly I agree. as you could ever... You could not mishandle a situation from a strategic standpoint any more embarrassingly than the Jets are. It's Mike and Mike in the Morning on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Robin Lundberg Show on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. So big games for both the Jets and the Giants coming up this weekend. Eli Manning and Tom Coughlin sound very different in tone in regards to the little mini funk the Giants are in at this moment. Meanwhile, the Jets, they're they're doing what the Jets do. They're they're talking a little bit. Uh, Before I I get to those sound bites, I'm going to go to um, Mel and Queens here, who I believe either agrees or disagrees with my disagreement with Charles Barkley's Knicks assessment. Mel. How you doing? I kind of agree and I disagree. The reason why I say this, Carmelo Anthony and Amari Stoudemire are so bad on defense, you think that the Knicks is a bad defensive team. But in actuality, the Knicks are a pretty good, like, team defense. But as far as, like, man-on-ball defense, I think they're really bad, especially – Carmelo Anthony and Amari Stoudemire. Well, when you play those two together, it hurts your defense. But uh, the numbers don't lie. They were a top 10 defense last year, and they are a top two defense this year. And under Mike Woodson last year, they were a top five defense. Remember, a lot of that wasn't with Carmelo and Amari together. Right. And I do agree that, like what Charles said about, I do think that Amari should come in and focus on defense. And rebound. But, it's like, okay, but, Mel, you, but Mel, he's not good at those things. I'm not saying he shouldn't play defense or rebound, but I think if he were to come in and simply focus on defense and, and rebounding, it could be a distraction because those things don't come naturally to him. He should go in and play basketball. Well, the reason why I say that because I'm thinking that if you can go in the off season and work with Hakeem Olajuwon on your offense, why can't you work with somebody that say like Kurt Thomas and Camby and these guys and say, hey, how can I be a better defender? And I think the two together could absolutely will, will work. So I do agree, and I disagree. And I, sometimes people have plays in their mind, they just have their view of them, and they, they're never going to get out of their mind. But I still don't understand to this day 
why Stephen A keep thinking that Raymond Felton is an upgrade at point guard when he's doing nothing different than what Jeremy Lin was doing. And Jeremy Lin is a better slasher. I think he's a better closer. And I think he can kind of like, he does he does the same exact thing. So, uh, Stephen A keeps calling Jeremy Lin an average point guard, but he praises Felton. So, I just think when you, when you have certain uh, feelings about certain players, it's not going to change. Well, no, no, no. I understand what you're saying. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to say, Amari... I, he tries. I watch him. He's tried on defense. He's just not very good at it. Not to say he can't get better. He can, but he's never going to be a, a great defensive player, and that's not to begrudge him or that or to say he shouldn't work on it. I'm just saying he shouldn't only focus on those things when th- what he really does well is what got him paid in the first place and what should allow him to flourish if he does come off the bench. I agree with you on Jeremy Lin and Raymond Felton, but that's that's something for another day, and Raymond Felton's playing very well at the moment, and it is a tough-minded, tough-nosed player as well. The Giants, the New York Giants, they um, are in a a funk, as some say. I think it's more a function of their schedule, as Eli Manning is struggling because he went up against the number one pass defense in the NFL last week and a top five pass defense in the Dallas Cowboys two weeks ago. But some are a little bit uneasy. It sounds like Tom Coughlin is a bit more upset about the situation than Eli Manning. Here's Coach Coughlin. It's just a rhythm. You know, the one thing that nobody's really picked up on, which is kind of interesting, is you don't get any continuity offensively if you don't make any first downs. We haven't had any first downs in two weeks. Make some first downs. You make a first down, you'll have a chance to, to get some rhythm, get some continuity, get, get into your play calling. When you don't have first downs, it's like this, okay? Throwing darts at a board. You need the continuity. Meanwhile, Eli Manning sounds a little bit less frustrated about the whole thing. It's just a matter of uh, keep 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 walking, you know, walking through things, keep talking through uh, you know, our reaction, what we expect to get, and, and uh, go out there and and uh, you know both have to be on the same page. And, and uh, you know, I got I got to read the, the the body language of the receivers. They got to. Uh, you know, so it, it's again, it's not, it's not. You know, we, we don't have to go rewrite the rewrite the book here. It's just, a, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, keep keep working at it, and it'll get better. I'm with Eli, particularly because the Giants' schedule actually breaks in their favor the second half of the season this year. Usually, they've had really tough second halves. Well, this second half had looked very tough because it did have the Saints, it did have the Eagles, it did have the Bengals on it, but none of those teams look nearly as imposing. However, um, Aaron Schatz, a football outsider, is kind of the advanced statistical analysis football site. You can check it out on ESPN.com as well. says that the Giants could be in for an upset this weekend due to the combination of their pass defense and A.J. AJ Green's big pass ability for the Bengals. However, I'm going to take the Giants this weekend. I think they get their offense on track against Cincinnati, and I think they win it fairly convincingly, something like 30 to 20 or in that ballpark. Meanwhile, the New York Jets, they aren't just talking about beating Seattle this weekend. They're talking about going to the playoffs. Isn't that right, Antonio Camardi? Jets will make a playoff this year. Uh, I mean, I, we, we, we believe in each other. We believe in what uh, Coach Ryan and his staff is, is, is you know, putting us the schemes and stuff. So I, we're definitely uh, going to make a playoff this year. And, of course, Rex Ryan wouldn't let his player hang out to dry. He would always support him, and particularly when it comes to positive p- predictions. Rex likes those. I know Crow had some comments about, you know, he's, we're going to make the playoffs and all that. And I feel, as a, as a, an entire, you know, football team, that we should all feel like that. I think we do feel like that. That's good. They should feel like that. And I have no problem with them saying it. I have zero problem with Antonio Cromartie saying it. I have zero problem with Rex Ryan saying it. I just question whether they should have. Not because of my reaction. I don't care. I think you should feel that way. And if you want to say it, say it. Simply because Rex Ryan in particular, and then therefore the Jets by association, have become that team people want to tear down because they talk. You know, all of a sudden Rex Ryan's the most overrated coach in football, partially because he talks a lot, at least in the polls. That's what, why that reaction comes out. Not because of his track record. And people are calling for his job, I think, more because of the talking he's done than the track record. Back-to-back AFC Championship games and 8-8 eight and eight season. That's pretty good. I mean, 8-8 eight eight obviously isn't what you wanted, but it's not terrible. This year is a, a work in progress. We don't know the final result. If they finish 3-13, and 13, then I think you have a decent case for firing him. But if, if they have an average year by the end of the year, he, he, I think he clearly earns another year by his track record. However, his talk makes people want to tear him down more quickly. 
Same thing with Antonio Camardi saying what he said about making the playoffs. Should the Jets expect to make the playoffs? Good for them. They should. But if they don't, what are you going to hear? Ha, 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 the Jets didn't make the playoffs. They stink. I mean, that's what you hear when Rex's guarantees don't come through. He gets made fun of. I've made fun of him in tongue-in-cheek way, not because I think he's a bad coach. But that that's what goes on. You ever had that friend who says things he probably just shouldn't say? Not that he's a bad guy, but, you know, when you're out to dinner and the food's not so great and the waiter's in earshot and he has to make the comment like, this food is terrible. Well, it may be terrible. Do you have to say it? Does the waiter have any impact on whether the food is good or not? Does the waiter really need to hear that? It's kind of just like, all right, leave that to yourself, or let's talk about that later. Same thing with this situation. The other day I was in line to vote at the election, and it was a little bit slow because they have these old machines, and for some reason we can't vote electronically online or on our phones. And this guy behind me is saying, oh, man, I can't believe how long this line is taking. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I was thinking kind of the same thing. It wasn't quite as bad as he was making it out to be. I was thinking kind of the same thing. But it, did it really need to be said, considering there was a, a little old lady there signing us up, probably volunteering her time to sign us up? Does she really need to hear that? No. So I don't have a problem with Antonio Camardi saying this. Jess will make a playoff this year. Uh, I mean, I, we, we, we believe in each other. We believe in what uh, Coach Ryan and his staff is, 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 you know, putting us the schemes and stuff. So I, we're definitely uh, going to make a playoff this year. But perhaps the Jets should be just a little bit more cognizant of what they're saying when they say stuff, considering what can be said about it or what can be read into it later. They do have a game this weekend, however, and it's in Seattle, a tough place to play, according to everyone, including Rex Ryan. It's obviously a, a, an extremely tough place to play. The fact that they have a, a really good football team also uh, you know, makes it a tough place to play. Having wins over Dallas, Green Bay, Minnesota, and, and New England at home also uh, shows you the task that we have in front of us. And it's a tough matchup for both sides here. The Seahawks don't have a particularly potent offense. I think the Jets' defense, with a week to prepare, coming off of a bye, will be able to handle the Seahawks' offense, even though they've had a little bit of trouble with the ground game, and perhaps Marshawn Lynch should be a problem. But the Jets' offense, I don't think, is really prepared to deal with the Seahawks' defense either. So look for another ugly game between the, the Jets and an opponent in a tough place to play. However, I'm going to go with the Jets' I'm going to go with the Jets simply because of that bye week, that extra week to prepare, the desperate nature of the situation, the fact that it's two teams that are of similar quality, so it's not like they're going to Foxborough in New England to face a team that's clearly better than they are. Uh, I'll give the Jets the, the narrow edge. They'll win this game something like 20-17 to 17 in that range, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Seahawks win it. So I'll, I'll go with the Giants to get out of their offensive, you know, snap out of it a little bit because they're not playing – one of the top pass defenses this week like they have been the past couple of weeks. And I'll go with the, the Jets off a of bye week, Rex with an extra week to prepare against a, an offense that really doesn't score that well. But it's not going to be because of Tim Tebow. As I, you know, I was searching all day for an original Tebow thought or question. I think those should there should be an embargo on Tebow thoughts and Tebow questions until Tebow is actually used. Because until he's not used as token Tebow, in these, you know, three yards up the middle type of plays, which he's going to be used as, no point in really talking about him unless they get to a point where they have to make the quarterback change. And clearly, Rex Ryan's hand will have to be forced in order to do what Herm Edwards wants. Choop, choop. Bring him out. Max out in the morning coming up next. ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Shooting accuracy. Fires a three at the horn and he switches it in. The will to win. Rizzioni double kicks back to Smith right down the paint. And a vicious right-handed stuff. Knicks team. They just continue to work hard and, and play hard, stay away from injuries. That's the name of the game. Knicks Mavericks. Friday night at 7 on ESPN New York. 98.7 FM. 
This Veterans Day at Lowe's, get the Maytag Centennial Washer and Dryer for $798. That's a savings of $430. And a Bosch 18-volt lithium drill for $99. That's a savings of $70. Choose 18-month special financing on purchases of $599 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer is valid from November 7th through the 12th while supplies last. Credit offer valid from November 8th through the 12th. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offer. Some exclusions apply. See store for details, including Maytag offer. One thing I've learned on my journey to help save people money on car insurance is that folks across the country like convenience. And what could be more convenient than visiting Geico.com? We can manage your policy, pay your bill online, just about anything you need. And it's open 24-7. It's kind of like popping into the ultimate convenience store. Except we save people money. And we don't have beef jerky. For a free rate quote, visit Geico.com to see how much you could save. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Leslie French was hunkered down for a fight. I was just at the dealership looking for a car. Lured in by the enemy. No, it was pretty cordial, but I did need a car loan fast. There was no time. I called Navy Federal Credit Union. A really nice guy approved me for a loan on the spot. Great rate, too. Victory was hers. Well, a convertible was mine. Four million members, four million stories. From every military branch, DOD, and their families. NavyFederal.org. Federally insured by NCUA. Hi, it's Colin Coward. When I send roses, and I do a lot, I always order them from 1-800-Flowers.com. Flowers are fresh, always, and beautiful. And roses are perfect to send, but for any reason. Not just birthdays or congratulations, just to brighten somebody's day. That's why I can't wait to tell you about an exclusive offer that is so special from 1-800-Flowers.com. Never offered before. 36 stunning multicolored roses for just 36 bucks. An abundant bouquet of three dozen roses. At this incredible value, it's a limited time offer. you got to order today for somebody you care about. Think of their reaction. 36 roses, and it's not even their birthday. Why does it have to be her birthday? Just send them because. Remember, 36 roses for 36 bucks, only available this week. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com from your desktop or mobile device. Click on the radio mic, upper right side, enter Colin. That's 1-800-Flowers.com, enter Colin, or call 1-800-Flowers and mention my name. Jets, the Seahawks. Coverage begins Sunday at 2. WEPN FM, WEPN HD1, New York. Happy Friday, November 9th. I'm Jared Max, alongside Robin Lundberg. We're maxed out in the morning as we lead you into Mike and Mike in the morning here on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Eventually, Knicks basketball tonight as the Knicks try for a 4 0 start. That'd be something, huh? 3-0 and right now. In fact, the Knicks have scored 100 points in all three games this season. 7.30 tip tonight on ESPN New York. Coverage gets underway at 7. Uh, also tonight, down in Orlando, the Nets look to bounce back from a couple of bad losses. They'll be visiting the Magic. Thunder last night beat the Bulls 97-91 to as OKC placed five players in double figure. Serge Ibaka, 21. Uh, Kevin Durant with 24 points. Russell Westbrook, a season-high 12 assists. The Clippers beat the Trailblazers 103-90. to Jamal Crawford, a team-high 20. Five points. College football, Florida State over Virginia Tech, 28-22. Arkansas uh, State beat UL Monroe, 45-23. to I know you have that one in your uh, weekly pool. Uh, soccer, it's all over for the Red Bulls. An exciting ending, D.C. United uh, scoring last night in the 88th minute, breaking a scoreless tie. D.C. United beats the Red Bulls 1-0, advancing on, winning 2-1 to in the aggregate into the Eastern Conference Finals against the Houston Dynamo. Seattle and Real Salt Lake, it was Seattle winning by count of 1-0. The Colts all over the Jaguars, 20 27 to 10. Indianapolis has won four straight and proves to six and three. Marcus Camby, by the way, will play for the Knicks tonight against the Mavericks. It's 5:01 a.m. Good morning. Jets will make a playoff this year. We believe in each other. We believe in what Coach Ryan and his staff is, is, is you know, putting us the schemes and stuff. We're definitely uh, going to make a playoff this year. I feel as a, an entire, you know, football team that we should all feel like that. And I think we do feel like that. Nobody wants to hear it, but who cares? I'm the biggest Rex Ryan fan in the world. They're not going to make the playoffs. <laughs> our goal is to win our division and be able to host first round at home. And then we'll take it from there once we get to that point. Listen, I think the Knicks got a solid team. I'm not sure they're the best team in New York. Let's hold off on the championship three. Begin the day with a friendly voice. 
This is Maxed Out in the Morning with Jared Max. Now batting, Jared Max. Jared Max. We made it to Friday, and there are no storms on the way. What a nice thing that is. It's going to be 59 degrees tomorrow, 63 on Sunday, 68 on Monday. Robin Lundberg, Mother Nature, she's bipolar. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So I hope uh, you are doing okay with uh, these nights. Hopefully you have power. Boy, so many people told me they've actually lost power again. It's like talking about what a kick in the pants. Uh, but we get through it. Uh, we have a, a big football weekend upon us. It's a football Friday here on Maxed Out of the Morning. We're going to get you ready for the uh, the Jets game on Sunday, the Giants game on Sunday. A lot of trash talk going on. Surprisingly, Entrell roll in the middle of it all. Uh, the Giants' safety yesterday, Robin, warned Bengals wide receiver A.J. Green that he better duck. This is because on um, yesterday morning, Green Green went on the radio and, and, and said, I, I feel like the Giants have a lot of holes in their defense. Well, they do. They keep giving up these 100-yard rushers like there's nothing going on at all. It doesn't matter. You don't, you don't have to be named Adrian Peterson to get 100 yards on the Giants. Well, what does Antrell Roll respond to that? He says, I'll, I'll talk with my pads come Sunday. That's how I approach the game. That's how we always approach the game. If he sees me, he better duck. That's it. All right, whatever. I, it, what's so funny then is, you know, what Roll's response was. Roll then says, honestly, I don't give a flying bleep about what he says, man. That's just the reality of it. I could care less. It doesn't matter to me. Really. Then you just said he better duck. That's it. Oh, wait, and he's supposed to care about your side of the trash talking? Entrell Roll, nice guy. He really is. Pleasant guy to talk to in, in the Giants locker room. Uh, but anything that comes out of his mouth, truthfully... I take it with the same grain of salt that I would a four-year-old saying, I want that, I want that, I want this. Oh, I want chocolate, I want you. Yeah, he doesn't really have a filter, and I don't think this has any impact on the game whatsoever. The only way it might have an impact is if Antro Roll draws a late hit penalty or something like that, doing something stupid. Aaron Schatz, who runs Football Outsiders, and he has an article on ESPN.com, though, did point out that the, the Bengals are the upset alert for the week because historically the Giants have fallen apart in the second half of seasons due to big plays in the in the pass defense, and A.J. Green is a huge big play threat for the Bengals, and that, that's what he kind of pointed out. A.J. Green scores basically every game. I have him on my fantasy team, and he's been providing points for me all season long. I saw something, another note this morning, Robin, I understand now why I haven't been getting points from Megatron, because Calvin Johnson's my other receiver, and he's been he was a on the cover of Madden. He, yeah, there you go. Well, he damaged a nerve in, in a game against the Vikings in September, which made it tough for him to grip the football. So so there you have it. Hakeem Nix uh, says that he's going to play. He's been bothered by the in, uh, knee injury. Uh, he was uh, back at practice yesterday. So that that's a good thing for the Giants. I wouldn't play him. I would keep him out through the bye. Because, you know, a lot of times with injuries, they, they lead to other injuries due to compensation. That's why I think a lot of these players should do more core work, more yoga, that type of stuff. And, and other guys have spoken out about that. I may err on the side of caution with Knicks, considering these things have been nagging, because you don't want him to suffer a big injury this weekend when it's just one more week and he could have two weeks off. Right. Well, the Giants do have a strong receiving core. I just caught a note. I hadn't seen this the other day, but did you know that President Obama had enlisted Victor Cruz to help with the Hispanic vote? I just saw that story on ESPN uh, New York dot com. Oh, by the way, one note. I saw this last night on the news. Did you happen to see Obama's speech to his the staffers? staffers? Yeah, it was really good. <sighs> Normally, you don't say. The first time I ever saw him break down uh, in any way. And, and he went to tears, and they immediately gave him an ovation. Like, oh my God, the president's crying. Let's clap. There, he's crying for us. Uh, Antonio Cromartie, uh, uh, another guy who, when he opens his mouth, I, I, I wouldn't pay too much attention to anything he says, unless he told you, quick, there's a fire, get out. Or he said she's pregnant. Well, you, it's funny you should say that, because for a guy who doesn't even know how to put a condom on, Robin. <laughs> But do I really care that this guy is going to make such a prediction like this? Jets will make a playoff this year. Uh, I mean, I, we, we, we believe in each other. We believe in what uh, Coach Ryan and his staff is, 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 you know, putting us the schemes and stuff. So I, we're definitely uh, going to make the playoffs this year. We're definitely going to make the playoffs this year. These guys have been buying into Rex for, for a little bit long. And to me, that's just... Uh, and like you always say, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Yeah, Robin, this season has just gotten more and more of a circus as this goes on. And my argument here is this, and it is all a circus. Woody Johnson created the circus. Johnson set up the circus tent and brought everybody in. And my take is this, is that why Tim Tebow is not going to get to play over Mark Sanchez, despite the fact that, you know, it's one of those, well, hey, let grass is greener on the other side. I think, I think that's, 
isn't that the basic argument with Sanchez? Grass is greener on the other side, so hey, let's play Tebow. Because if it's Tebow or McElroy, I think most people would probably argue... I want Greg McElroy as my quarterback. But I don't think that's any real analysis. That's just reaction to all the coverage of Tebow. Uh, I don't think it's grass is greener. I think I've seen what I've seen from Mark Sanchez, and I, I'd like to see what Tim Tebow has and if he can replicate what he did last year. If he can't, good. You know what you got. You'd never play him at quarterback again. If he can, all of a sudden you have a discussion on whether he's your quarterback. And either way, you determine how you're going to direct the future of your franchise. Because Greg McElroy, he's like a sixth or a seventh round pick. How often do Tom Brady's work out? Not that often. However, I don't think Tim Tebow's work out that often either. I think last season was a special season. He got put in a situation where it kind of worked for him. He had a fantastic running game in Denver. He had a great defense that was working. But the running game and the defense, were neither were as good before he was the quarterback. Those kind of coincided. Well, I think what that tells me is as far as the the leader effect, right? I mean, Tim Tebow, you don't think he galvanizes a club? Well, I think partially, but I also think he doesn't put the defense in bad positions like a Mark Sanchez does or Kyle Orton did last year throwing interceptions because he doesn't throw interceptions. That leads to bad field position, which leads to a bad defense. He also chews up clock when he's on offense, so that allows the defense to rest a little bit more. As far as the running game, when you're running the option, his running ability gives you holes for the running back because they don't know who's going to run the ball, and that allows for a better running game. You know why he's never going to get the shot with the Jets? Because in March of this year, the Jets extended Mark Sanchez's contract. $58 $58 million contract made in the seventh highest financial package among NFL quarterbacks. Now, you think that they're going to bring in, after giving Sanchez all this money, they're going, to, they're, they're going to put somebody else in a quarterback? See, from a business standpoint, it won't happen. And I was saying this to you about a half hour ago uh, during your show, Robin, that in New York, we don't have the same culture that exists in Colorado or in a couple of you know other places in this country, a lot of other places actually, where... Uh, essentially, like here in New York, you know, you always hear the coaches say, "I'm not responding to the crowd. I'm not. I'm not listening. I'm not coaching based on the fans." Well, I would argue that last year in Denver, Tim Tebow got a shot because of the fans, and in large part, not because they're fans of Tim Tebow, the football player, but they're fans of Tim Tebow, the football player slash religious man. And I don't think that that could go on in New York. In New York, we have a situation where a quarterback was given a $58 million contract, 20.5 million in guarantees for this and next season. That's a lot of money. So whether or not Mark Sanchez is bringing home the bacon, the Jets anointed him the guy. Why did the Jets bring in Tim Tebow? You could scratch your head all day long. I'm going to present a theory a little bit later on. I've kind of been saying for weeks, but I'm starting to really buy into it. I agree with you on your assessment on why Tebow has such devout, I guess is the best word to use, supporters and irrational supporters in a sense where they will champion Tebow no matter what. But my points on Tebow have nothing to do with any of that. They have nothing to do with the fan reaction. They simply have to do with, I want to see what he can do in with presented this situation again, and I've seen enough of Mark Sanchez. Uh, one more time, uh, Antonio Cromartie. Jets will make a playoff this year. <laughs> Will the Jets make the playoffs this year, really? we got to ask Larry Hardesty about this one. Larry spent a lot of time around uh, Antonio Cromartie. Antonio, always a great speaker, also, you know, in the locker room afterwards. But what does it really matter what he's saying? What does it matter what somebody like Charles Barkley is saying when he weighs in on the Jets? Well, he was doing just that. We will hear from the round mound of rebound coming up as we get to Larry Hardesty here on Maxed Out of the Morning. Rex Ryan also weighs in. He doesn't care if people agree that... Jets will make or miss the playoffs. Do you really think the Jets can can make the playoffs? See, I think after this week, if if they lose this week, then it's really going to get fun. The stories are really going to get exciting. And it's at that point, uh, who cares if you put Tebow in? Season's lost. He's not one of these guys who you just go and you, you know, it's like uh, there's certain medicine out there, Robin, where, you know, people... Um, uh, antidepressants, I believe, you, you take it doesn't just they're not happy pills, essentially. You have to take it. It has to get in your system and get going for a little bit. Well, I think that's pretty much what the Tebow system. It's, it's not just going to turn things around. It, it's a whole long process. And that's why it's already a lost cause. Either you go with them or you don't. Well, the Jets essentially, at, you know, best case scenario, they have to go. What, 6-2 and two the rest of the way in order to make the playoffs? Yeah, that's going to happen. Uh, 800-919-3776. Uh, he's Robin Lundberg. I'm Jared Max. We're leading into Mike and Mike in the morning. Larry Hardesty next on the Knicks and the Jets on ESPN New York.
Looking to rebound after the bye week? The Jets travel west to face the Seattle Seahawks. We've earned that 3-5 and five record. That's clearly not where, where we want to be at. Their season may be at a crossroads. Which way will they go? We have work to do. I'm excited to get the guys back. I look forward to the second half of the season. Jets, Seahawks. Coverage gets underway Sunday at 2 on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. It's time to get winter ready. Dick's Sporting Goods has more of the best brands to keep you warm as the weather gets colder. The North Face, Columbia, Spider, Burton, Copen, Marmot, Mountain Hardware, and more. Dick's has the widest selection in styles and colors in men's, women's, and youth jackets and accessories. And don't forget to grab a new snowboard. Dick's carries the snow equipment you need. Before hitting the slopes, stop into Dick's Sporting Goods today. Every season starts at Dick's. If you've got a business, you qualify for the official Mike and Mike office stimulus package. When you move from your office into a gorgeous Regis office, not only will you save a fortune, you'll get two months absolutely free. Your Regis office comes beautifully furnished in a prestigious building. You get a receptionist, meeting rooms, and state-of-the-art video conferencing with no long-term lease. And you get two months free by mentioning Mike and Mike. All you have to do is call 1-800-OFFICES. That's 1-800-OFFICES. Hi, football fans. I think you'll agree that you've got to have great seats. And now it's even easier to pick the seats you want wherever you are thanks to StubHub's new mobile seat maps. They're the only interactive seat maps that let you search for NFL tickets by section and actually see the view from your seat, all from your mobile phone. How cool is that? So whether you're searching StubHub on your computer or your phone, it's easy to find the seats you want. Yet another reason thousands of fans use StubHub for their NFL tickets every Sunday. Stop, Hi, it's Colin Thursday. Bill Romanowski on pot smoking in the NFL. Greg Cosell thinks Eli Manning's arm. Well, you have to listen to find out. Download the Thursday Thundering Herd podcast. Check it out, ESPNRadio.com. This Veterans Day, ESPN is working with the USO to help lift the spirits of America's troops and their families stationed around the world. Grant a wish for our servicemen and women, or donate a special gift to their families to show your support. Give a special gift to our military heroes and their families through USO Wishbook. Visit USO.org forward slash ESPN and give your gift today. Warren Moon comes on our show all the time. And I like Warren, but I think he's off his rocker. He said the criticism of Cam Newton is possibly racist. I would say, you give me an African-American quarterback in football, I'll find you a contemporary Caucasian that gets as much or more heat. Want to play the game? Let's go great African-American rookie quarterback, RG3. He's getting far more praise than Andrew Luck. How about Pouty quarterback? Cam, racism! I know Jay Cutler has a winning record and for five years has been clobbered by you, the fans, and the American sports media. How about an enigmatic quarterback who wins? Michael Vick, that's racism. Well, Tony Romo gets more. I mean, Romo's the most criticized quarterback with a winning record in league history. Folks, quarterbacks are criticized position. It's the highest profile position in sports. This is The Herd. Weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. Max down to the morning. I'm Jared Max alongside Robin Lundberg. Good morning, my friends. We're leading into Mike and Mike on ESPN New York talking about Jets football and what Antonio Cromartie said yesterday. Jets will make a playoff this year. Uh, I mean, I, we, we, we believe in each other. We believe in what uh, Coach Ryan and his staff is, is, is you know, putting us the schemes and stuff. So I, we're definitely uh, going to make a playoff this year. Antonio Cromartie and the Jets getting set for Sunday's contest returning from a bye at Seattle. We'll talk about the Jets and the Seahawks with Larry Hardesty. Uh, Giants get ready for the Cincinnati Bengals. Meanwhile, last night, NFL Week Number 10 kicked off with the Colts kicking around the Jacksonville Jaguars. Final count, 27-10. to 10. Colts improved to 9-1 and one in Thursday night games. Andrew Luck ran for a couple of touchdowns. Indianapolis is 6-3. and three. Marcus Camby will make a season debut tonight. Knicks host the Mavericks. 7 o'clock coverage here on ESPN New York. The Nets visit the Magic, 5-16 a.m. <laughs> This is Maxed Out in the Morning with Jared Max. In the end zone, touchdown! Max.
maxed out in the morning. Lose at the 40, right side 30. The Jets report. Throws it up the left sideline, intercepted. With Larry Hardesty. Larry Hardesty joins us this time Monday and Friday mornings, always on ESPN New York. Larry, good morning to you. Happy Friday. You have power these days. Yes, I do. Good morning, guys. Happy Friday to you. Yes, uh, we got the big one going up in Seattle on uh, on Sunday. I'm looking at Rich Semini's story at ESPNNewYork.com, Larry. The what to watch for at you know you know by the way here let's a trivia contest. What is the uh, there's no payoff. What is the uh, no con no prize? What's the name of the field where the Seahawks play? Can anybody get this? Robin, Jared, uh, Purnell, Larry. Anybody know the name of this field where the Seahawks play? What is it? Century Link. Yes. What is Century Link? That's a good question. Maybe the people in Seattle know. I expect it to be Starbucks Coffee Field or something. Like <laughs> yeah, that. it's a really cool stadium. It's it's very loud there, Larry. And considering the Jets have uh, been good for one false start penalty per game each, uh, they've had nine this season. You know, since 2005, there have been more opposing team false start penalties at Century Link Field or whatever they were calling it at the time than in any other stadium. Will this be a problem for the Jets Sunday? Well, they've been trying for it not to be a problem, but I think it is going to be a problem, especially the closer they get to the end zone, because that crowd has just been phenomenal. I heard uh, Warren Moon talking with uh, Ken LaGreca last night, and he's talked about how it's just been the fans seem to know to yell louder on cue. So yeah, the Jets have been practicing with loudspeakers and loud music and loud crowd noise, but I think it's still going to be a factor. Jets and the uh, Seahawks coming up on Sunday. The Jets, it, uh, I think you call it a must win in this game. We just heard Antonio Cromartie say the Jets are going to make the playoffs. Rex Ryan doesn't care if people agree. Whether you like it or not, that's our mentality. And I, I would think is that uh, Jet fans and our, the Jet community, obviously, they would want us to feel that way, and, and we do. So, uh, you know, we're not, we're not happy with where we are with that 3-5 and five record. Uh, we know it's going to be it, – it's a – you know it's tough to to get into the playoffs, especially when you back yourself up with that three and five record. Um, but again, we're going to keep swinging until they until they tell us that we're out. But again, Robin Lundberg, he says the same thing again and again. Does it ever mean anything to you, Robin? It doesn't mean anything to me one way or the other. And look, that's Rex Ryan's personality. I don't have a a problem with him saying it. Maybe he shouldn't say it just because of the reaction it elicits. And and he gets unfairly judged, I think, because of that. People want him to fail more because of that, even though his track record is pretty good. But he says the same thing when answering another question, and that's in regards to Tebow. He always says, you know, again, whenever he's answering a Tebow question. And I have a question for Larry as someone who – covers the Jets. Larry, what would your reaction be if I told you that all Tebow-related questions were banned? Oh, great. <laughs> right? <laughs> that would be fabulous. Well, Robin, Robin did something this morning with his listeners on a show here from 3 to 5. Larry, Robin was asking, um, can, can you come up with an original question on Tim Tebow that hasn't been asked? And that isn't like Super Bowl media day related, you know, stupid question. Robin, what was the best question that, that one of your listeners provided? I think it was um I forget his name I apologize but I did say it earlier it was the question on whether he uh, do I believe that Tim Tebow is more frustrated now with this jet situation or was he more frustrated with the lack of backing he had with the the Broncos Elway in Denver I think it's a pretty good uh, question they're both situations of frustration Larry would you want to weigh in on that yeah, I'm sure he would. Uh, you know, we've tried to ask him about Denver, and he really doesn't like to talk about Denver a little bit. So it would be interesting, but he's got to be frustrated. He's he's almost admitted he is as a competitor. He wants to be out there. And listen, I think when a team is losing and the team has a losing record like the Jets do, they're three and five, lost four their last five, whatever it is, and you're not getting playing time, you always feel that. I could get playing if I should get playing time because I could help you. If they were five and three or six and three, and not that Tebow was complained, but if they had a different record, I think he would be okay with sitting because they're winning anyway. So uh, he's frustrated. This is going to be an interesting week, guys. This is a a big game for this team, obviously, uh, because coming out of the bye week, they have not always played well. Um, but last season they did better. So I think going to Seattle, tough place to play, a very good Seattle team, a team that's 
excellent defensively. Uh, they've got a kid, Clemens, who's got seven sacks. He's got 22 over the past two seasons. We know that the Jets have had trouble uh, executing uh, blitz pickup. We know they've had trouble running the football, which means that makes them one-dimensional. On the other side of the ball, they've had trouble stopping the run, and Marshawn Lynch has been outstanding for Seattle. And this kid, Russell Wilson, all he does is make plays, especially on third down, which is where, before the bye, the Jets had trouble getting off the field on third down. So this is going to be a very interesting week, and, and it's going to be... I'm I'm curious to see how they respond coming out of the bye week. We're talking Jets football with Larry Hardesty. He covers the Jets for us, our Jets sideline reporter here on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Uh, 800-919-3776. Danny in New Jersey wants to weigh in on the conversation with the Jets. Uh, Danny, what's your take? Is the Jets season over? Because I kind of think it's long done. It'll especially be done Sunday. You? Yeah, Jared, what's up, man? And has, say hello to Robin Lumber. You can, you can do it right here. He's right here. Hey, Robin, what's up? It's Danny. Yo, Danny. Uh, just getting out of this uh, storm, so I definitely want to weigh in. Yes, I, I fully believe the season's done. I, I don't think they have anything, any matchup that goes in their favor against well, Seattle. It, but it does, go, it does go easier the rest of the way. I think Robin was saying, what, 27th ranked schedule the rest of the way? Yeah. They're at yeah. Seattle, at St. Louis, home against the Patriots, home Cardinals, at Jacksonville, at Tennessee, home Chargers, at Buffalo. Right, and I and I think Mark, I I really think that Mark Sanchez is going to get the Seattle game. I think he's going to get the St. Louis game, and then if they both, if both of them, you know, they, I I really, I really think St. Louis can beat them too. And and I I think, you know, you keep hearing too much that Tebow was brought in as a football player. He was brought in as a football player, and I and if you guys notice, I'm sure you do. He's put on weight. I don't know if he's that shifty runner that he was. Well, the Jets that, asked him to put on weight. To. They it would be their fault. Asked him to put I remember on being weight. out right. on the street asking fans what should Tim Tebow eat to put on weight. Right. Uh, yeah, right. They so wanted they him to be. They to put on weight to, they, to, to play these different styles. And I just don't think that I. My point to this is. This is not what we're going to see in three years. I Dan, think Danny, listen, to me, I think the whole thing, again, has been a circus act. It didn't make any sense. They bring him in after you give Sanchez a $58 million contract extension. And, Larry, for my money, I was saying this before. I don't know if you caught this before we had you. That You know, like there's certain medicine that people have to take for, for you know, it has to be in your system for a couple of weeks before it takes effect. Mm-hmm. I think Tim Tebow is that type. I don't think you can just go to him and expect a spark to all of suddenly happen because of the restructuring, which would have to be done for the whole offense, no? Yeah, it would be tough for them to just change their offense right now and give it to Tim Tebow and just say, we're going to run the ball, especially when you have the inconsistencies of the offensive line. I mean, you know, last season when they were in Denver, the, that Denver offensive line is substantially better than what the, the Jet offensive line is. And they, when you look at the fact that they had Willis McGahee, their running game was a little bit better. So I think when, when, when he took over there, he was able to do some things and he caught some people by surprise. I think people are familiar with what he's been able to do now, and the Jets have not to this date have come up with anything when they do the wildcat or whatever they call it um, when they bring him in they've not done anything different it's really been running up the middle it's been running between the a gap and they have to do something different when they bring him in and they just haven't done it yet we'll see what happens on set on sunday larry hardesty with us here on the jets but also uh, let's shift gears over uh to the knicks yesterday charles barkley uh, talking about uh, Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony is the best scorer in the NBA. All right, we're going to debate that, but what's your take on that? And, and and what are the changes you've seen in Carmelo now that all of a sudden he's playing on both sides of the court? I'm shocked that Charles Barkley said something positive about anything with the Knicks. Ah. Uh, that's the that's the first thing that jumps out in, in my mind. But you know, look, uh, Carmelo Anthony is an outstanding scorer. I don't know if he's the best scorer in the NBA, but he's a very good scorer. Uh, you'd like to see his shooting percentage a little better. It has been better this year. He's taking better shots for the most part. But it, it's the fact that he's playing on both sides of the basketball. That's the thing for me. And once again, him playing defense, everybody else playing defense. And I think, obviously, the defensive part goes to Mike Woodson, but I do think, guys, that Jason Kidd coming in here and preaching that unselfishness and, and the other thing is just seeing how quick uh, – you know, uh, Felton, Raymond Felton looks, and how much in, how much better shape Robin he looks than he was last year in Portland it has been a major factor as well. You know what I'm interested in seeing tonight, Larry? Mike Woodson's talked about the matchups with the small lineup mm -hmm. and it varying on who they go against. I, I mm -hmm. think that should go out the window. I think you should make other teams match up to you. Well, they're going up against like Chris Kamen 
and Elton Brand. And I think it would be a mistake if Woodson goes away from what he's been doing and inserts, a say, a Kurt Thomas or Rasheed Wallace at the four spot tonight. I agree with you. I think he should stick with the. You should stick with the smaller lineup and make them have to adjust to guarding Carmelo and and the the two point guards that you have. So you're absolutely right on that, Robin. I'm looking forward to tonight's game. That's Larry Hardesty. I'm Jared Max. Robin Lundberg is here. We're going to find out what's going on with Mike and Mike coming up next here on ESPN New York. Larry, we're going to talk again on Monday morning, my friend. Have a great weekend, guys. It, it, Robin, it's the most popular sport in the world, in the world, but soccer is never. Not in my lifetime. Going to catch fire here. I'm going to tell you why next on ESPN New York. Stifling defense. Anthony starts him out of bounds and saves it as he leaps over the Sixers bench. Pinpoint shooting accuracy. Fires a three at the horn and he switches it in. The will to win. Prisioni double kicks back to Smith. Continue to work hard and, and play hard. Stay away from injuries. That's the name of the game. Knicks, Mavericks, Friday night at 7 on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. This Veterans Day at Lowe's, get the Maytag Centennial Washer and Dryer for $798. That's a savings of $430. And a Bosch 18-volt lithium drill for $99. That's a savings of $70. Choose 18-month special financing on purchases of $599 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer is valid from November 7th through the 12th while supplies last. Credit offer valid from November 8th through the 12th. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offer. Some exclusions apply. See store for details, including Maytag offer. Are you making frequent bathroom trips during the night? Do you have a strong urge to urinate? If ignored, these symptoms may result in complicated kidney and bladder infections, kidney failure, or loss of bladder function. Additionally, if you are a male of 50 years or older and experiencing sexual dysfunction, you may be at risk of a stroke or heart attack. The same disease process that affects blood vessels which lead to the heart and brain affect the delicate vessels that supply blood to the genital organs. Careful evaluation of erectile dysfunction can uncover these problems years before critical damage occurs. Compassionate urologists at the New York Urologic Institute specialize in improving urologic and sexual function. Latest technological advances allow the patient to get answers to diagnostic tests immediately, reducing anxiety. Call the New York Urologic Institute at 347-508-3991. Offices are conveniently located in Queens and Brooklyn. For timely, effective treatment, call 347-508-3991. That's 347-508-3991. It's fun to debate your favorite teams and players, but the debate is over when it comes to where you go for your next set of tires. See the experts at your local Ford dealer for big savings on name brand tires during the big tire event. Going on now. The college basketball season begins tonight on ESPN with two big-time matchups. First, the Sears Armed Forces Classic celebrates Veterans Day from Ramstein Air Base in Germany as number 14 Michigan State takes on Connecticut in the first regular season game overseas. Then in Brooklyn, in the Barclays Center Classic, Maryland goes up against John Calipari's national champion, Kentucky Wildcats. It all starts tonight at 5 p.m. Eastern with live Sports Center reports from Germany on ESPN. a.m. Good morning. I'm Jared Max. ESPN New York Sports Center brought to you by 7-Eleven. Well, the 7 election is over, but the real winner is you. Grab a fresh coffee in a red or blue cup as a memento while supplies last. 7-Eleven, oh, thank heaven. NFL Week 10 kicked off. Colts last night kicked around the Jaguars 27-10. to I tweeted out last night that the Badger, Flo's Badger from the Progressive Commercials, she's more frightening than the Jacksonville Jaguars. They've lost six straight games. They're 0-5 at home where they've been outscored 153-44. to That's where Tim Tebow should be playing quarterback. Colts had three takeaways the first eight games combined. They had three last night. Andrew Luck ran for a couple of touchdowns, 15 touchdowns this season for Andrew Luck. Colts improve to 6-3. and three. Giants wide receiver Hakeem Nix at practice yesterday says that he will play on Sunday when the Giants take on the Cincinnati Bengals. Jets yesterday saying they're confident they're going to make the playoffs. Antonio Cromartie. Jets will make a playoff this year. ta Marcus Camby's going to play against the Mavericks for the Knicks tonight, make a season debut. He's been sidelined the entire preseason, the first three regular season games, with a left calf strain. He's expected to serve as backup center for Tyson Chandler. What happens when Amari Stoudemire comes back? 
That begs an interesting question. We'll get to Ian Begley coming up in a few minutes here on Maxed Out of the Morning. Mavericks at the Knicks, 7 o'clock coverage on ESPN New York. The Nets are in Orlando. The Mets are trying to keep R.A. Dickey, sort of, by 31 a.m. <laughs> this is Maxed Out in the Morning with Jared Max. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Lundberg's not chair dancing. I am. This doesn't do anything for you, huh? No, I mean, I, I, I've just, you know, I've kind of heard it um, pretty often. Oh, I thought last... it was a new song. I've never heard this before. <laughs> Back page of the Daily News. Heads will roll. Entrell has message for trash talking Bengal. He says, boy, uh, A.J. Green better duck. After A.J. Green took some shots at Entrell, all the just giants saying, hey, they have some holes in their defense. They do. Back page of the Post. Power trip. Mets won't trade Ike, but they eye a Dickey deal for a slugger. Uh, a couple of stories. We'll get to the Ari Dickey thing uh, coming up in a, in a short bit here, maxed out of the morning. Robin, last night you and I were going back and forth a little bit on Twitter. I, I put on the uh, end of the Red Bulls game because the Colts game was just a blowout on, on uh, the NFL Network and switched over to watch some of the Red Bulls Those game. Thursday night games are so bad, I forget that I have the NFL Network now. I was watching the NBA games. This is like the fourth week in a row where I have not filled out my picks and our picks can pick them with ESPN.com. Oh, uh, Thursday night football. Uh, nonetheless, uh, there was a game and there was a soccer match as well. And uh, the first match between the Red Bulls and D.C. United, uh, it was a uh, 1-1 draw down in D.C., and then they played last night. So whoever scored more goals last night would have advanced on to the Eastern Conference Finals. It, it was 0-0, shockingly, you know, in like the 87th, 88th minute. And then really a gorgeous goal for D.C. United, they, and, and they go on and they win the game, and they advance to play Houston. So the Red Bulls season is over with. Now, here's my take on soccer fans, Robin. And I love soccer. I grew up playing soccer, and I was a kid that when I played soccer, I also always said, it, it's I'm t- dad. I'm telling you, it's gonna it's taken off. I would argue with my brother. It's gonna become huge in this country. Jared, no, it's not. It we'd go we'd go back and forth. And I think my brother was probably right all along. And here's my take. While I'm watching the Red Bulls game last night, there are tons, tons of empty seats in the lower bowl. Now, I couldn't see what was upstairs. I don't know how many, how packed it was. But I know from being at a soccer match in Italy at Juventus once to see uh, the Ju- Juventus team club play that almost nobody sits downstairs because the seats are too expensive. But upstairs, it's louder than it could possibly be. Soccer fans, to me, are like Rush fans. I would not expect the whole world to say Rush is the greatest band in the world. I think they are the greatest band in the world, and I think for the tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of Rush fans out there will tell you they're the greatest band in the world. But it's kind of a cult thing. And soccer in the United States, I don't think, can ever take off, at least within And I know you have an argument against this because we talked about it last night, changing times, changing face of our country. I just don't see it, Robin. If we haven't gotten to it at this point, I don't think it's happening. Not when you have... I, I, I don't know. Well, I make the cold argument for hockey, actually. And if soccer isn't already more popular than hockey in this country, it's definitely going to be. Attendance is a, a sports-wide problem right now. But the MLS, that that's like saying, you know, triple-A game wasn't attended well or a NBA D-League well, game let, let, wasn't let attended well. You, you follow, you know, you're a huge basketball junkie. Basketball overseas, Euro basketball. Let's say the best basketball players in the world, the best basketball play that's out there in Europe. Where, I wonder where that compares to those who are playing in MLS because we have the we don't have the top guys. I think it's better because those guys make their way to the NBA. The other way, the, a lot of the MLS guys don't make their way to the other leagues. And, and you look at it, that's two soccer problems are one that there isn't an, an NBA, an NFL, or an MLB. Two, our best athletes aren't funneled into soccer. However, if you look at the English Premier League, NBC just paid 250 million dollars for it. They must have been doing some numbers. And I know over the summer, and perhaps. Liam has better information on this. The Euro League games were doing better numbers than, say, Major League Baseball games that were on cable and uh, PGA Tour events that were on cable. And a lot of kids play soccer, of course. To me, it's my third favorite sport to watch, and I think guys like Colin Cowherd and Bill Simmons agree with me. So th- that's got to say something. I don't, look, man, I don't mind watching the sport. I enjoy watching it. Even a 0-0 match, it's still it's the same. It's very similar to watching hockey. You're just waiting. For, it's almost like playoff hockey, waiting for a goal to be scored. And you bring up a good point about hockey. You think there's more soccer in, in our country than hockey well we have a changing face in america i remember in college when they told us back when i was back in you know the early mid 90s and they said you know by the year such and such it was like 15 20 years from now the the white man will not be the the demographics plus you need ice skates to play hockey hey we're going to get to uh, ian begley with an important knicks question in just a moment but first what's coming up with greenie and golick find out now on that note i'm opening my yodels on your mike and mike preview He's got a lot of bags of yodels. 
Skate us. Liam, uh, can you weigh in on this uh, on this argument here? Because people here, you know, they'll hear you talking about it, and, and it's like, whoa, he knows what he's talking about because you sound funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I don't think it's ever going to get there. I think it's, it's going to be popular. It's probably going to pause hockey, like Robin said. I don't think it's going to be up there with the big the big three. You know, it's not going to be up there with the NFL, the uh, MLB, or the NBA. But, I mean, it, it is more of a cult thing. I think, I think people like it. People like to watch it. Uh, the World Cup's always going to rate. The Euros, as Robin said, is always going to rate. Uh, Saturday mornings, if, if we if we can get it back after NBC paid a lot of money for it, it will rate. But um, people like it. People will talk about it. I think it's big in cities. I think it's big in Chicago and New York and L.A. Um, but I don't think it's ever going to get up there to where, you know, we're covering it on a, on a weekly basis. And yet you have eight soccer guests this morning. I do. Uh, and that, you know, that, that's what I do because I'm English and I produce the show. <laughs> Who do you have besides the Stone Cold Lead Pipe Locks when Greeny's going to uh, – you should just do like the opposite of what, you know, it's like the George Costanza thing. Yes, yeah. Do everything opposite of him because the kiss of death, the KOD, is, is not very good. I'm just going to run through them because it, there are a lot, a lot of good ones today. 7.30, Bears QB, Jay Cutler. 7.45, Ravens QB, Joe Flacco. Hall of Famer, Dick Butkus at 8. Ron Jaworski, as always, 8.15. We'll ask him about um, Giant Stevie and stuff. Obviously, Eli is facing the Bengals, so the offense needs a little work, too. Lomas Brown in studio, 8.30. Roger Stolbuck at 9.00. And then Mel Kuyper at 9.15. So. A lot of quarterbacks in there. Cutler, Jaworski, Staubach. Yes. Big football Friday, you know? Big football Friday. Liam, have a great weekend, my friend. Thanks, boys. That's Liam Chapman. Mike and Mike coming up top of the hour here on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. Uh, Mike Woodson yesterday was a guest with Stephen A. Smith and Ryan Rucco here on ESPN New York. Their show, of course, is on from 1 to 3 each afternoon. Uh, Mike Woodson talking about if Amari Stoudemire will start when he returns. Well, I mean, I can't make that decision right now. You know, my my thing is you don't lose your starting job based on uh, injuries. And, you know, he's been a big piece to our puzzle, so, you know, he will – he will come back into our lineup. And what will be of that? How does the chemistry sit? It kind of begs the question, does it not? We go to ESPNNewYork.com. Ian Begley. Jared, there are several reasons why this Knicks team is undefeated heading into tonight's game against Dallas. One, they're shooting the ball extremely well from the outside, hitting 45% of their threes. Two, they have one of the best half-court offenses in the NBA. But I think the biggest reason why the Knicks are the last undefeated team in the league is because of their defense. They're holding teams to 40% shooting and giving up an average of 85.3 points at night. And it almost seems like Carmelo Anthony is spearheading the Knicks' effort on defense. He's been extremely engaged. And it's also worth noting that this great defensive effort has come with Amari Stoudemire out with injury, all of which begs the question. Can the Knicks and Carmelo Anthony keep up this intense effort on defense all season, and will it fall off a bit once Amari Stoudemire returns? Ian Begley, read him at ESPNNewYork.com, covers the Knicks for us, uh, and, and a terrific job this morning. He has a story about Carmelo Anthony uh, delivering supplies in, in you know around the city in the wake of Hurricane Sandy. Robin, my take on this is if Amari Stoudemire knows his place, and we were talking about this yesterday. And that's a tough thing to do when you're making that kind of money. It's almost like telling Carmelo Anthony last season, hey, Melo, know your place. Jeremy Lin is leading a better team right now. Will Amari be able to take that spot? I don't know. I'm not inside. I don't know how large his ego is. Can he t- take the back seat? I mean, it depends on what, how it's sold and what the back seat is. I, I don't buy the whole Some back thing. seat are a VW Bug and some are a town car. Well, again, I mean, if you tell them you've been hurt all these times, we want to manage your minutes, that's one thing. And then sell the, the James Harden, Manu Ginobili kind of roll off the bench. He's going to be – he should be featured. I mean, I, I don't think you employ Amari Stoudemire and don't have him do what he does well. I just don't think having him, Carmelo Anthony and Tyson Chandler on the floor – does well for your offense or your defense when they're out there together. But Amari Stoudemire on his own doing what Amari Stoudemire does, that would be a huge boon. The Knicks are going to take on the uh, Dallas Mavericks tonight. No Dirk Nowitzki, thank goodness, right? I mean, it, it, if Dirk was here, it's probably a different game. But the Knicks are in good position. To no go to. Matrix either. Uh, yeah, they could be 4-0 oh, very well. Knicks coverage is going to begin 7 o'clock here tonight on ESPN New York. Now, leading into that, Clyde Frazier uh, is going to be on the Michael K show. He'll be on at 5.30. And then Knicks pregame at 7. After that, you'll have uh, Dave Rothenberg to talk about the Knicks game uh, about. Hey, it's a football Friday here on Maxed Out of the Morning. Question, question. 
Is Tim Tebow being blacklisted? Is that possible, Tim Tebow being blacklisted? I'll tell you why I think it might be the truth. Jared Max, Robin Lundberg, maxed out of the morning, leading into Mike and Mike on ESPN New York. Looking to rebound after the bye week. The Jets travel west to face the Seattle Seahawks. We've earned that 3-5 and five record. That's clearly not where, where we want to be at. Their season may be at a crossroads. Which way will they go? We have work to do. I'm excited to get the guys back. I look forward to the second half of the season. Jets, Seahawks. Coverage gets underway Sunday at 2 on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. It's time to get winter ready. Dick's Sporting Goods has more of the best brands to keep you warm as the weather gets colder. The North Face, Columbia, Spider, Burton, Copen, Marmot, Mountain Hardware, and more. Dick's has the widest selection in styles and colors in men's, women's, and youth jackets and accessories. And don't forget to grab a new snowboard. Dick's carries the snow equipment you need. Before hitting the slopes, stop into Dick's Sporting Goods today. Every season starts at Dick's. Hi, it's Colin Coward. When I send roses, and I do a lot, I always order them from 1-800-Flowers.com. Flowers are fresh, always, and beautiful. And roses are perfect to send, but for any reason, not just birthdays or congratulations, just to brighten somebody's day. That's why I can't wait to tell you about an exclusive offer that is so special from 1-800-Flowers.com. Never offered before. 36 stunning multicolored roses for just 36 bucks. An abundant bouquet of three dozen roses. At this incredible value, it's a limited time offer. you got to order today for somebody you care about. Think of their reaction. 36 roses, and it's not even their birthday. Why does it have to be her birthday? Just send them because. Remember, 36 roses for 36 bucks, only available this week. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com from your desktop or mobile device. Click on the radio mic, upper right side, enter Colin. That's 1-800-Flowers.com, enter Colin, or call 1-800-Flowers and mention my name. The NYPD is among the best law enforcement departments in the country. The NYPD offers a job with a future, a great place to serve, and a chance to advance. Visit NYPDrecruit.com or call 212-RECRUIT for current test schedules and filing fee information. Monday, behind Big Ben. We got Elhurst! The Steelers took down the reigning Super Bowl champs. Let's go! Now, one of the hottest teams in the game. Touchdown, Steelers! Returns home in search of a fourth straight win against the Chiefs. Countdown sets the stage at 6.30 Eastern. Then, Monday Night Football. Chiefs, Steelers, 8.30 on ESPN. It all comes down to Monday night. This is The Herd with Colin Cowherd. The young people always make the same mistake in sports. You judge everything on wins and losses. It's not just that. It's called discernment. Tebow can win individual games. You can't build franchises around guys who are mechanically flawed and who can't make basic NFL throws. You're going to have to be so good everywhere else to win games, and no general manager, owner, or head coach wants to have to build a team that's so great everywhere else that a mechanically flawed quarterback can win. A lot of you young people just don't get this. Go ask your more successful older brother. It's not about talent. It's am I willing to build a company around you? Cam Newton can win games. Do you want to build an organization around his persona and maturity? So when you're building an organization, a National Football League team, you're asking a lot of big questions that go beyond talent. Colin Cowherd, weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio. Here. I don't like the way Stephen A. says that. What a funny little chuckle. I'm Jared Max. We're always chuckling away here. Max out of the morning, leading into Mike and Mike. That Charles Barkley's going to be weighing in in just a bit. Not weighing in as he normally might be weighing in for commercials, but weighing in on just about everything. The ESPN New York Sports Center is brought to you by Constant Contact. Email marketing from Constant Contact can reach your customers in a place they're checking every day. Their inbox. Sign up for a free trial from the industry leading provider at constantcontact.com. The Colts kick off week 10 with a 27-10 win over the Jaguars. Another big night for the rookie quarterback. The Colts with Donald Brown as the tailback. And this time Andrew rolls to the right side looking. Pump fake. He's going to run. Touchdown. He's fourth of the year. Ties a Colts record. Andrew Luck play-by-play on 10-70. The fan. Two touchdown runs for Luck. Colts 27, Jaguars 10. 
Marcus Camby will play for the Knicks tonight for the first time, hosting the Mavericks. The Nets are in Orlando. The Mets say they're trying to keep R.A. Dickey. we got to get to that, Robin. It's 546 a.m. This is Maxed Out in the Morning with Jared Max. I, hey, you know, you've heard of Barkley Center. Well, how about Barkley, as in Charles Barkley, being in the center of everything? They should have never bought in Tim Tebow, to be honest with you. Because the one thing about sports, to play sports, you have to have a, like a free mind. You have to have a free mind. You can't be worried about every mistake you make. And I think that the, the Jets did him a great disservice bringing in Tim Tebow. You know, it, 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 I got to laugh. Because I got friends in New York who are going crazy. I said, dude, y'all play three games. Listen, I think the Knicks got a solid team. A solid team. I'm not sure they're the best team in New York. <laughs> but let's let's hold off. Let's hold off on the championship and set up the parade. I'm gonna call Mayor Bloomberg and tell him to calm down and make sure he don't set up the parade too soon. But I'm the biggest Rex Ryan fan in the world. They're not gonna make the playoffs. <laughs> They're not gonna make the playoffs. Carmelo Anthony is the best scorer in the NBA. The thing about Carmelo I like, he's able to post guys up. I don't want any plays or any players from Preston. If I want an accountant, I want him to be from Preston. <laughs> yeah, Bill Bradley was a pretty big basketball player from uh, Princeton University uh, as well. Wouldn't be such a bad thing. Uh, Max down in the morning, sponsored by Cooper Tire. Visit Billy or Evan at the Tire Barn, Route 130 in North Brunswick, or see Vinny at Roadway Tire. In Hopog. Uh, Robin, we just heard a little bit from Charles Barkley yesterday. We told you yesterday morning, uh, always an entertaining listen. And yesterday, the round mound, former round mound of rebound, uh, was on with Mike Lupica. And one thing that we just heard him say was it was the, the Jets did a disservice in bringing in Tim Tebow. And and when I hear that, it gets me kind of thinking what I've been thinking about. It. It's, it's uh, I think about a Seinfeld clip. You got me blacklisted at Hop Sings? Now, no, he's not Ned Isakoff, and this isn't about ordering Chinese food. This is about being a quarterback in the NFL and hoping to have an opportunity to play. He came to the Jets uh, over the Jaguars, I have no doubt, Robin, because he saw Madison Avenue here. This is the best place where Tim Tebow could expand who Tim Tebow is as a person, as a a brand, uh, essentially. I think Tim Tebow has probably been a little bit surprised, a lot surprised at what took place. That if he would have known then what he knows now... He probably would be the Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback at this point. Blacklisted. Is it possible that Tim Tebow is not getting a shot because of some secret blacklist deal going on in the NFL? Now, I can buy into some conspiracy theories sometimes because sometimes there are conspiracies in life and everybody covers things up. We know about that. John Elway, for my money, absolutely despised Tim Tebow only because he was his quarterback. And because he kind of was there, and it's almost like Elway, who was running the team, almost didn't even have a say in it. Because it was Elway against a group of people who wanted Tim Tebow to play quarterback, not necessarily because he was the best quarterback, but because of religious beliefs, essentially. Football plus religion. John Elway had to play him. John Elway, I think, got him out of there as quickly as he could. Is it possible that John Elway, one of our most successful businessmen as far as sports people go, with all of his car dealerships and everything, and now running the Denver Broncos? I know you're going to say, Jared, you're crazy. Blah, blah, blah. Listen, that's a crazy, crazy world. The mad, mad world. Could John Elway have made a deal with Woody Johnson? Said, hey, Woody, listen, man. I'll give you $10 million. You keep that guy. Do whatever you want. String him along. I don't care what you do. But he does not does not get on the football field. We have to get this guy out of the NFL. If you can present a better argument to me on why Tim Tebow hasn't played this season and why every time the Jets are asked about it, they give you the long-distance runaround, bring it on. Sure. Loyalty to Mark Sanchez from Rex Ryan because he's been his quarterback the entire time he's been here. The extension to Mark Sanchez from Woody Johnson and the Jets organization. Those two AFC Championship game appearances that they keep falling back on. The fact that Tebow, you know, from all accounts, is not a a great practice player, so maybe he hasn't looked good in practice. And then, you know, perception is often reality. And all this talk about Tebow, he's this, he's that, he, he's not really a quarterback. Well, the Jets seem to be propping that up more than any before. John Elway clearly didn't like Tebow as his quarterback. Well, because he wasn't a traditional quarterback. Yeah. Why do you think he went out and got Peyton Manning? But because it was like, you know. But he didn't make him the pump protector, protector slash pizza boy like the Jets have kind of done.
It, yeah, the, I, I just think that the Jets, it, it's clear that they weren't going to use him uh, to, to the best of his ability. We saw it game one against Buffalo. That's why I was asking all the players after that first game, can you guys sustain this energy, this unbelievable manic energy going in and out? The players, con- It worked the first game. I knew they wouldn't be able to keep it up. And, and right now, Tim Tebow doesn't really know who he is. Every week he's asked the same questions. Reporters keep going, hey, Tim, uh, uh, would you like to see more playing time? We, we try every which way, and he doesn't crack. Bark Scott yesterday with the Mike. Michael K. show talking about how Tebow is struggling to find a role. I think it's tough for the coaches to try to, to try and work him in without disturbing the groove of, of the flow of the game. You know, um, but it's something that we have to do because he can be uh, a mismatch and he can cause problems. We just have to find the right time and the right place to implement him in, and to make it work. We have to make it work because he is he is a weapon. It's like one of those things you try and get your, your playmakers on the field. You know, he he has a, a specific skill set, and we have to find a way to make it work for our team. Uh, will it work? I, I don't know. Robert, honestly, I believe that th- if the Jets lose in Seattle on Sunday, it, the season is pretty much over. I think it's over probably right now, but it really isn't. There's still eight games to go. The Jets do have an easy schedule. If they win this game on Sunday, maybe it energizes the team, and maybe Sanchez gains the confidence that he needs. I believe Sanchez should be the Jets' starting quarterback, not Tim Tebow, not Greg McElroy. Of the three, Mark Sanchez has more quarterback skills and more experience than any of them. Does Mark Sanchez have more quarterback skills than Tim Tebow? I mean, he looks yes. he looks prettier throwing the ball, but it's never complete. He's inaccurate. I mean, it looks more traditional when he drops back and throws it. He's slightly more accurate than Tim Tebow, but Tebow is more accurate for big plays and also provides running, which Mark Sanchez does, and also doesn't throw interceptions like Sanchez does. And I am not defending Tebow from some sort of weird fanboy perspective. I'm simply defending him from a, uh, you know an analytical kind of looking at it. Mar- Antonio Cromarty, who yesterday said this. Jets will make a playoff this year. Also, uh, yeah, he said they will make the playoffs this year. Sorry, quick trigger finger. He also said, uh, he was asked to, how good is Mark Sanchez? Mark Sanchez, actually, he's a good quarterback. Um, I mean, he, 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 makes, he makes the right thing. He does the right things. He has the great leadership skills. And I mean, unfortunately, this year, I mean, we, we lost Antonio Holmes, our number one receiver. That's not the only reason. As Rex said, if if... We were if if it wasn't so much, then we would point to the quarterback. But there's so much that's going wrong uh, with this team. And then you have the uh, the, the football giants as the NFL uh, live crew weighs in. Giants at Cincinnati. Where did Eli Manning's offense go? Well, they played against the Pittsburgh Steelers and they struggled, and we saw that. Uh, Eli Manning will get it back together. He and his receivers will get on the same page. I, I don't fear the Giants uh, struggling after last week, playing at home um, with all the things they had to go through. Uh, I look for the Giants to have a big bounce back week against the Cincinnati Bengals. And I think offensively, Eli Manning was embarrassed about last week's performance, only 125 yards through the air. I think he'll get that back together. They will bounce back, and they well, will they will win this game. Well, I'm going to go with the Giants also. It's not about Eli Manning. It's about uh, Coach Tom Coughlin calling their defense soft. He said they were a little bit mushy. Mm-hmm. That's not good. <laughs> and they gotta That's not the word you want to hear. Now, as a defensive player, yeah. two things you don't want to hear. That you're soft and you quit. You don't want to hear those words. Right. You call them soft. I think the, de- the defense of the Giants, they got the message. They, 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 a lot of times, Robin, they'll respond. Again, Herm, Herm, Herm Edwards, Trey Wingo, Mark Schlereth. I think the Giants will respond uh, this week. Cincinnati's a tough place to play, but they'll be ready. I think the defense probably does tighten up in this game. question is, obviously, how does Eli Manning bounce back? He's had three really subpar football games in a row, and I think that's probably enough. Well, I think he had one terrible game last week, a pretty bad game two weeks ago. And, you know, he was great down the stretch against the Redskins, so I wouldn't quite throw that in the mix. And the two games he had bad games against, the Cowboys are a top-five pass defense. The Steelers are the number-one pass defense in all of football. So I think Eli will bounce back. Well, the Giants win, likely. wouldn't shock me, though, if they lost. And even if they lost, I don't score. think it's a big deal. Uh, 30 to 20. I'm going to say 26-20 Giants. And out in Seattle, I'm going to pick the Seahawks to beat the Jets 20-3. Uh, to Take the Jets like 20 to 17. And what do you think? 800 919 3776. We always hear from Harry the bus driver. Danny the bus driver weighs in on the Jets and Tim Tebow. Take it away, Dan. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you doing? Great show. Wake up to it every morning. Thanks like so much. Coffee and you guys go together. Hey, man. Appreciate it. How many sugars? Uh, two, baby. All right. What do you Listen, got? Listen, I'm, I'm a diehard Giants fan my whole life, you know, and I keep in touch with the Jets because they're from New York. But you know what? Bottom line is this. Tim Tebow is a quarterback. He came out of the NFL for a reason. I got a college into the NFL. 
Um, they're just not giving him a shot. If you think about it, they're going to give him a shot. They would have told Patrick on the corner, listen, let's give this guy a chance. He makes some plays. Worst case scenario, he stinks up the plays. There'll be no more Tim Tebow talking. You can do your thing. Or you can go and take the bench yourself. Do it the hard way. Give the guy a shot. I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen? You know what I'm saying? There'll be something good happen. Well, you, yeah. you're saying Mike, Mark Sanchez might be playing so poorly, they have no chance, but or they have no choice but to put him on the bench. You got me blacklisted at Hop Sings? Uh, I'm still sticking with it. Uh, Tim Tebow's been blacklisted in the NFL. They just don't want him uh, on the football field. Mike and Mike are coming up next here on ESPN New York. Tonight we're going to have Knicks basketball pregame coverage at 7. Jeff Van Gundy's with the Michael K. Show at 3.30. Clyde Frazier at 5.30. Robin, we have 20 seconds. Uh, Charles Barkley said Carmelo Anthony, best scorer in the NBA. Yeah, at times he is the best scorer, but you know what? I want a best basketball player. He's absolutely not the best scorer in the NBA. Plenty of other guys score more points on fewer shots. They're better scorers. Mike and Mike next, ESPN New York. This Veterans Day at Lowe's, get the Maytag Centennial Washer and Dryer for $798. That's a savings of $430. And a Bosch 18-volt lithium drill for $99. That's a savings of $70. Choose 18-month special financing on purchases of $599 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer is valid from November 7th through the 12th while supplies last. Credit offer valid from November 8th through the 12th. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offer. Some exclusions apply. See store for details, including Maytag offer. Leslie French was hunkered down for a fight. I was just at the dealership looking for a car. Lured in by the enemy. No, it was pretty cordial, but I did need a car loan fast. There was no time. I called Navy Federal Credit Union. A really nice guy approved me for a loan on the spot. Great rate, too. Victory was hers. Well, a uh, convertible was mine. Four million members, four million stories. From every military branch, DOD, and their families. NavyFederal.org. Federally insured by NCUA. Hi, football fans. I think you'll agree that you've got to have great seats. And now it's even easier to pick the seats you want wherever you are thanks to StubHub's new mobile seat maps. They're the only interactive seat maps to let you search for NFL tickets by section and actually see the view from your seat. All from your mobile phone. How cool is that? So whether you're searching StubHub on your computer or your phone, it's easy to find the seat you want. Yet another reason thousands of fans use StubHub for their NFL tickets every Sunday. Hi, it's Colin Thursday. Bill Romanowski on pot smoking in the NFL. Greg Cosell thinks Eli Manning's arm. Well, you have to listen to find out. Download the Thursday Thundering Herd podcast. Check it out, ESPNRadio.com. This is The Herd with Colin Cowherd. I think Cam Newton, Sham Newton, boss. boss. It's happening. Not there yet. I'm calling it. Not going to work. I'm not buying it, man, and I don't know what it is. If you're a quarterback, you are the eyes and the voice and the head, the CEO of your football team. The only thing I control, sweetheart, is myself. Superman poses down by 28. Just how bad is your judgment? Colin Cowherd. Weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio. For Hurricane Sandy donations, visit redcross.org or text Red Cross to 90999 to donate $10. WEPN FM, WEPN HD1, New York. ESPN Radio Sports. Good morning. We are Mike and Mike of the Morning on ESPN Radio, where every hour starts with Sports Center. Go look Thursday night football. Andrew Luck does it again. Yes, he does, and he does it. With his legs. Quarterback sneaks. Push him over. In? Did he get in? Oh, did he, he get in? Wow, they he did. Oh. Touchdown. Touchdown. Andrew Smith. It's a new record. Two touchdowns for the second time this year. And the Colts lead it 16 nothing. Call on 1070. The fan. Colts win the game 27 to 10 over Jacksonville. Jacksonville has lost all five games at home. They're just horrible at home. And the Colts have six wins for the season. Andrew Luck runs for two touchdowns. Now he has set the Colts record for rushing touchdowns in the season with five. Uh, and they still got certainly plenty more games to go. Interesting, we talk a lot about RG3 and his running ability. He has six rushing touchdowns, just one more right now than Andrew Luck. So the Colts get the win, more importantly for them as a team. All the bald players now for the Indianapolis Colts have uh, win 27-10 to 10 and move to 6-3. and three. We have another vote always like this because when I played in Philadelphia, he's usually guys on my team that won it. Uh, Lions uh, defensive tackle and Dominic and Sue was voted the league's dirtiest player in the Sporting News Players poll. Uh, so he was voted there. Richie uh, Incognito, the lineman from the Dolphins, was second. And Cortland Finnegan, who actually said he wanted to win this, 
and be the dirtiest guy was third. So he uh, he let himself down a little bit there. College football last night. Florida State looking to get in position for a winning field goal. Actually gets a touchdown. They end up beating their number 10. They beat Virginia Tech 28-22. Florida State can now clinch the ACC Atlantic with a Clemson loss to Maryland on Saturday. Virginia Tech, if they want to keep their... 20th consecutive season of bowl eligibility intact. They have to win their next two games. They'll be against Boston College and Virginia. NBA last night. Thunder go to Chicago and beat the Bulls in a good game. Kevin Durant with a couple of big plays late to win it. Thunder had five players in double figures. 97-91 the final. Clippers over the Trailblazers last night. 103-90. to Clippers have scored 100 points or more in six consecutive games. And Kobe Bryant says he is squarely behind his head coach Mike Brown despite many having described Bryant as having given Brown the, quote, Kobe death stare. <laughs> that went viral. Kobe says everyone seems bored. We'll play you the sound. It's very funny. And that is Sports Center, brought to you by AT&T. Will and Ruby are on a mission to get into the biggest college football game each week, but to get into the game, they have to tackle a crazy challenge. Watch the videos of where they've been and where they're headed next at waytosaturday.com. On the way to Saturday, presented by AT&T Rethink Possible. Our plan is very simple. We're going to find focus in a way we never have before. We will be perfect in every aspect of the game. It'll be a gut check. Don't think this is going to be easy. This is going to be the real deal. Are you now? Oh, you better be ready for this, people, because it's a football Friday with Mike and Mike. Back in better than ever, Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio, live on TV on ESPN2. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. So glad you've chosen to start your football Friday with us here on Mike and Mike with a game behind us and a huge weekend in front of us. But before we get to any of that, Mr. Golick and a jam-packed. Very impressive guest list mm -hmm. put together this morning, and I'll run through the details of that in a moment for you as well. Stone Cold Lead Pipe Locks today. But first and foremost, Mike, we must say thank you to everybody yeah. who made us so welcome yesterday. I can't tell you the nice reaction that I got all day long, and I'm sure you did too, mm -hmm. just from people that I ran into and people on Twitter and everyone else who really enjoyed our show yesterday at the Coast Guard Academy, just to see the enthusiasm, the, the, the fun. I can't begin to describe, and I, I get, I'm gratified to feel it seems to have come through a little bit on the TV and on the radio, the energy that these well, young kids have, and that's what they have, and they're there doing their thing. It was a pleasure, and our thanks to everybody there yesterday. It's one of our favorite trips every year when we go to the different uh, areas to, to, to do a show in front of the men and women in our military. What was different with this one, and, and I'm, the enthusiasm was there, and also I, I'm sure you noticed it as well, is the other places we go when, when we see the military people there, they're already in. Right. These are... These are these are kids that are my kids' age. Yeah, they're college you know, students. They're, they're in school, yet they're the future. They're the ones that are going to be serving our country. So we got to see right before they're going in. It was really a really a cool thing. That you're, and you're right. The enthusiasm they had there was, was just fantastic. I can't remember the last time we had energy in a room like we yeah. had yesterday. Yep. And it energized us. I know that. And it was a, a real pleasure. So our thanks to everybody there, Admiral Stowe's and everyone else who made us feel very welcome. Mm -hmm. And then after the show was over, what you didn't see was that Mike and I got to go into a simulator. Yes, we did. So we didn't get to actually drive a boat, which was a bit of a disappointment. But we did get to go into a simulator. Mm -hmm. And Golik was the captain. Yes. And I just sort of was monkeying around as yes, best you I could with everything. You, you, you're going to have to see it. it and you're going to see it. It's going to air on TV uh, in this hour, 6.55. So at the end of this hour, it's going to air on our television on, on ESPN2, and then we'll get it up on ESPNRadio.com as quickly as we can. And, and uh, I'm sorry. I just have to say you just you just really reemphasized I had a lot of fun. The, the wimp that you are. Well, they've got okay. like a they've got like I, a CB player in there, or not a CB player. What do you call those? Like a CB uh, talker, like a walkie-talkie kind, of like a CB, like the old Breaker One Nine kind of well, thing. Well, then that's exactly what you were doing. Well, no, the best thing about this whole thing is it's a simulator. Yeah. So what does a simulator mean? It's not real. Okay. So when you look out of the window of the oh. in the simulator of the not real water out there oh. and they made it rainy and waving in the simulator of the not real waves and rain and water i almost threw up greeny 
couldn't look out the simulator window. I couldn't. Forget even being in real water. I can't even watch it right now. He I'm... couldn't look out the simulator window without getting queasy. On, on ESPN2, they're showing you a little bit of the video from that room. <laughs> it, it really it was nauseating. It really was. I couldn't stand it. But anyway, it was a fun day, really and, and that video will be up, and you'll get to see it in this hour, as I mentioned, on ESPN2, and then we'll get it up on the website, and on we'll go from there. So again, our thanks to everybody there. NFL Weekend kicks off last night. The yeah. Jacksonville Jaguars are so bad. So bad. I, obviously, the story here is Luck and the Colts, and they're 6-3, and three, and you'll hear from him in a second, and they've all shaved their heads, and it's a heartwarming, wonderful, everything you love about sports kind of story. And so the other side is easy to forget. But the other side of this, Mike, is that in a league where everything is designed to push everyone to the middle. I mean, it, it, it is as, as hard as it is to be ridiculously good in the NFL, it should be that hard to be ridiculously bad. The Jaguars are not even an NFL team. What is going on? How does that happen? I mean, it is, it is, they're unwatchable. So, I mean, that game was over before it even began last night. The Colts played lousy, yeah. and the game was they, over at halftime. I, I, I'm amazed at how, how bad they are. Now, Blaine Gabbert, uh, in this game, he went 18-31, uh, to 31, had an interception, he had a pick six. It was a great play by Darius Butler and, you know, just a, uh, the, the wrong throw, obviously, by, by uh, Blaine Gabbert. He gets hurt late in this game, and Chad Henning comes in and goes 10 of 16, throws a touchdown and throws for 121 yards. It's going to be interesting what direction they want to go there. They're 0-5 at home this year, 0-5 at home and getting slaughtered. At home, they're not even close games. Their one win this year was actually against these Colts in Indianapolis, and they, they just cannot put it together at all. So, I mean, that's that's will be a continued story out there. New ownership out there. You know, your best player in MG, uh, Maurice Jones Drew, is is not even playing. But th this is about the Colts. Now it's six wins uh, for the season. And, and, and Andrew Luck is one win behind, the most by a number one pick rookie quarterback. Sam Bradford had seven wins. Uh, he, he's going to get that and probably surpass that. They just they just look good as a football team, and completely different of what a lot of us thought they were going to look like because they're rebuilt. Well, they didn't look that good last night to me. I mean, Luck is tremendous. Mm -hmm. He didn't play that well last night. As he was brilliant. They, they, they've looked good, I guess. I guess overall this year. So you know, they're, well, they're, yeah, they're six and they're, three. They're still a team that that kind of plays to their competition a bit, and they're still a young team that's going to make mistakes. Right, and they were on the road last night on a short week, which is always a disadvantage, and they won easily. So you can't take anything no, away you from it. Um, and and even having said that, I've watched two of their big wins this year. The, the, the team that I saw play against Green Bay and the team yep. that I saw play against Miami, last night's team didn't look anything no. like no, that. No, they did not. And yet behind Andrew Luck, they go out there and they are 6-3. and three. This was the biggest game to date by far, and, 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 and to win was great. Um, you know, obviously, it's it's nice to be 6-3, and three, but we realize, you know, that's that's you know just one step in the journey. It's it's no end goal by any means, and, you know, we know it only gets harder from here, so we're going to have to, you know, buckle down and, and, and put in twice as much effort and twice as much work. How's life as a newly bald man? <laughs> uh, it's it's great. You know, it's uh, I think a lot of credit for you know Corey Redding and Pat McAfee. I think the ringleaders of of us merry men. Um, but uh, I think you know it's great that it's getting some attention and, and raising awareness about you know, obviously what Chuck's going through and, and any anybody that's going through it. Right, what a terrific! Oh, it's great. It, oh. it, it, everything about that part of the story yeah. is so heartwarming. And yep. luck, you can't be handling yourself any better than he any is. Better. He's the real deal. He really is. A lot of bald men on the Colts in, in honor of uh, Chuck Pagano and and Chuck Strong, and, and that's a great thing to see. And and this Colt team, they're certainly one of the big surprises of the season. And you like the way they're doing it. Luck can do it with his legs. But he's also, and this is something where, you know, you, you talk about as the season goes on, can it catch up with you? Because I talk with that about the uh, the Bears as well. And we'll have Jay Cutler, their quarterback, on 730 Eastern. About really, it's it's about one guy from the receiving court for the quarterback. And, you know, there it's Brandon Marshall. We'll get into that. But eight of the first nine passes Andrew Luck threw, Greeny, were targeted to Reggie Wayne. Reggie Wayne is the most targeted wide receiver in the NFL. Yep. And, and he's coming through right now. As the season gets longer, you know, you worry more more about Reggie Wayne because he's been in the game longer, a whole lot of years on him, of holding up. And then also of of, of really going to the the one weapon there. Luck will spread it around, but he's he, Reggie Wayne by far has been the main weapon. Can that last you the entire season? So certainly that's something to keep an eye on. But what a great surprise they are right now. Mike and Mike presented by Progressive Insurance. Now you can test drive Snapshot. Even if you have insurance with another company, see how much you can save before you switch i'm just looking at their remaining schedule they're six and three to get themselves to nine wins 
which would A, make him the first ever number one overall pick quarterback with a winning, winning record, record, and B, right. probably put them in the playoffs. I, I, say, I think you see three wins. I mean, they're going to go to New England. They have two games left with Houston. But you look at the rest of the schedule. They have home Buffalo, home Tennessee, and at Kansas City on the schedule. Those are three games in which they'll be favored. Three games in which they have a, a really yep, legitimate right. chance to win. And if you win those three games, you get to 9-7, and seven, the way it shapes up right now in the AFC. That will probably get them into the playoffs, especially with having beaten Miami. So they'll have the tiebreaker edge against the Dolphins in a uh, in a wild card what scenario. What a story. I think they have a really good chance to get in. What a story that would be. There's, I mean, a, lot of, there's a lot left to be done yeah. between now yeah, and there then. Is. There but is. I think they have a chance. All right, coming up next, it is our favorite questions to ask. What did he know? And when did he know it? <laughs> One coach needs to answer them at least a little better than he has. That's after this word from Discover. Listen, Discover is announcing that from now through December, you're going to get 5% cash back everywhere you shop. That's online and at department stores on up to $1,500 in purchases. All you have to do is go to discover.com and sign up for 5%. And the beautiful thing is this thing goes through December. So, you know, that's Christmas shopping. That's Hanukkah shopping. That's... Just flat out shopping, shopping is what it is. <laughs> and you know you're going to go out and buy stuff, so it doesn't matter what you buy. Music, DVDs, books, clothes, toys, travel, whatever. You can buy, you can buy for yourself, you can buy for others, and you're getting 5% cash back. I mean, really, what, what's better than that? Buying for someone and getting money back. You're going to spend money on things you would otherwise be spending money on. You're going to save 5%. There's no reason I can think of not to do it. Let me recap. Now through December, 5% cash back everywhere you shop, online and at department stores, on up to $1,500 in purchases. So sign up for 5% now. Go to discover.com or call 1-800-DISCOVER. As always, it pays to discover. What did he know and when did he know it? Next, Mike and Mike in the morning. Yes, Spin Radio. Stifling defense. Pinpoint shooting accuracy. Fires a three at the horn and he switches it in. The will to win. Prisioni double kicks back to Smith right down the plate. And a vicious right-handed stuff. Knicks team. They just continue to work hard and, and play hard, stay away from injuries. That's the name of the game. Knicks, Mavericks, Friday night at 7 on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Some are you making frequent bathroom trips during the night? Do you have a strong urge to urinate? If ignored, these symptoms may result in complicated kidney and bladder infections, kidney failure, or loss of bladder function. Additionally, if you are a male of 50 years or older and experiencing sexual dysfunction, you may be at risk of a stroke or heart attack. The same disease process that affects blood vessels which lead to the heart and brain affect the delicate vessels that supply blood to the genital organs. Careful evaluation of erectile dysfunction can uncover these problems years before critical damage occurs. Compassionate urologists at the New York Urologic Institute specialize in improving urologic and sexual function. Latest technological advances allow the patient to get answers to diagnostic tests immediately, reducing anxiety. Call the New York Urologic Institute at 347-508-3991. Offices are conveniently located in Queens and Brooklyn. For timely, effective treatment, call 347-508-3991. That's 347-508-3991. Watching sports on Xfinity from Comcast is like having a front row seat to the biggest moments. With NFL Red Zone, you get every touchdown from every game Sunday afternoons. ESPN Goal Line brings you the best of college football. And the Watch ESPN app lets you take the action wherever you go. This is Sports on Xfinity. This is awesome. Call 1-800-XFINITY for a great offer. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Restrictions apply. Not available in all areas. Programming varies depending on level of service. Visit Comcast.com for details. Don't miss the action on AuctionTime.com, where every Wednesday is auction day. AuctionTime.com features farm and construction equipment, trucks, trailers, and parts auctions ending every Wednesday. To bid on a machine, register for free on the AuctionTime.com website or from anywhere using an iPhone or an Android with the free AuctionTime.com apps. AuctionTime charges no buyer's fees and has no hidden reserves. Save time and money for your operation and visit AuctionTime.com today. 
for calling Discover Card. Okay, your 5% cash back program is a total hole-in-one. You guys are putting on a clinic. What's the new category? Yeah, we're hitting on all cylinders. And only Discover gives you 5% cash back everywhere you shop online. It's like a cash back grand slam. Whoa, time out. 5% on online shopping? Yep. That's a game changer. Bullseye. Everywhere you shop online. That's right in my wheelhouse. Sign me up. Only Discover gives you 5% cash back everywhere you shop online through December. Sign up for 5% at discover.com or call 1-800-DISCOVER. 5% cash back on up to $1,500 in purchases online and at department stores. This Veterans Day at Lowe's, get the Maytag Centennial Washer and Dryer for $798. That's a savings of $430. And a Bosch 18-volt lithium drill for $99. That's a savings of $70. Choose 18-month special financing on purchases of $599 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer is valid from November 7th through the 12th while supplies last. Credit offer valid from November 8th through the 12th. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offer. Some exclusions apply. See store for details, including Maytag offer. College students, recent grads, career changers. Want a position in the multi-billion dollar sports business industry? Then attend the area's only sports career fair. Manhattanville College will be hosting a sports business career fair on Friday, November 16th from 10.30 a.m. till 2 p.m. Come to their campus in nearby Purchase, New York. Meet representatives from the New York Mets, ESPN, the USTA, and many more. Hear from sports industry leaders about what it takes to get started in the fast-growing sports business industry. For more information, call 914-694-3425. That's 914-694-3425. Or sign up online at mville.edu slash sportscareerfair. That's mville.edu slash sportscareerfair. Admission is free, but you must register. Bring your resume to the Sports Business Career Fair, Friday, November 16th at Manhattanville College. Windows 8 changes the game. How? Oh, let's do a play-by-play. -play. Greeny, Golik hits the start screen. Bam, it's on. Scrolls through live tiles, glances up, sees stocks up. Weather is 55 and sunny. Wife emails, parents are coming for dinner. His buddy Derek IMs, you in Golik? Swipes through sports apps, launches ESPN NBA. Opens video, pulls an email, replies to wife, working late. IMs Derek, I'm in. See you soon. Wife responds, don't worry, I understand. Golik's in the clear. Sounds to me like you can do anything on a Windows 8 tablet. Check out Windows 8 at Windows.com. veterans who have served for our country, I thank you for my family, to you guys, and appreciate you guys. Thank you. Those are uh, the words of Kevin Garnett, Boston Celtics, as so many around the world of sports and all of us at here at ESPN taking time this week to say thank you to the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces, those who serve today and uh, particularly in keeping with the theme of this week being Veterans Day, those who served our country in the past. I want to make sure that you know that we at Mike and Mike and everyone at ESPN are joining with the USO to give to something called the USO Wish Book. What they do is they send gifts that lift the spirits of our troops and their families. Uh, so we ask you to team up with us. Go to USO.org slash ESPN, and you can select a gift. Things like family fun days, like free phone cards, think yeah. how important that stuff can be. Absolutely. Uh, to give to our troops and their families, the USO Wish Book, a way to let our heroes and their families know that we support them. Again, there are very few things that I think all of us can agree on, right? We're coming off of an election in this country that showed once again how divided we are. Half the people are happy, half the people are sad. But there are very few things we can all agree on. I think what we can all agree on is that these people, these young men and women who are making these sacrifices for us, deserve not only our appreciation, yep. but for us to do something for them if we can. And this USO Wish Book is a great way to do I it. I agree. And, and I think we would also uh, would would agree that we should do it for 52 weeks a year yeah. and not just one week, as much as you can, you know, when, whenever you see... You know, somebody in our military, you know, just to thank them, you know, do a small a gesture for them, or whatever. I mean, they should certainly uh, not not go and notice what they're doing for I was us. reminded of a story uh, along those lines that, that took place yesterday that I'll share in a little while here. I want to get back to the to the football here. But, Mike and Mike, I want to run through our guest list today. Yes, it's a good it's Really strong today. All right, you want quarterbacks? we got quarterbacks. we got Jay Cutler of the Chicago Bears in an hour and ten minutes. He's live 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Chicago time. Immediately followed by Joe Flacco of the Ravens. 
Ravens. We got Dick Butkus this uh -huh. morning at 8 Eastern. We haven't talked to him in a long no, time. No, we have not. That's Golix Idol. I love that guy. We got Ron Jaworski. We got Lomas Brown in our studio. We got the great Roger Staubach today at 9 Eastern. We got Mel Kuyper looking ahead to the college matchups at 9.15. And, of course, don't forget Stone Cold Lead Pipe Locks this morning. So we are jam-packed, and we're so glad that you've chosen to start your football Friday with us. Now, I got to say this. You know me. Yes. As a rule, I am much more into my football on Sundays than Saturdays. I know you are. But I have become completely consumed with this year's college football season, perhaps in large part because of my connection to you mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, and Notre Dame and your boys playing as well as they are and having a chance to play for the championship. So I'm way into this. And as a consequence, I'm following all of the college football. Yes, you are. And that means that we have to get to the bottom. I believe we should be spearheading <laughs> the investigation into what can only be called the case of the deflated balls. We got something going on at USC right now, Mike. And we need to look into this. They got deflated balls. Deflated balls. At USC. Yes. Here's the story. The Pac-12 has discovered that, or it was actually USC that announced that an unnamed student manager mm -hmm. has been fired after admitting to the school's compliance department that he deflated five balls before the kickoff against Oregon this past weekend. The Pac-12 has accepted USC's self-discipline, reprimanded the school, and fined the school $25,000. The statement from the conference said, Our paramount goal is to provide a safe and fair competitive environment for our student-athletes, their teams, and their fans. USC and head coach Lane Kiffin are insisting that a student manager who intentionally deflated five balls before the game against Oregon acted completely on his own. Athletic director Pat Hayden who is above reproach, I think all of us yes. agree, said in a statement, we regret this incident occurred. It was unacceptable, and we apologize for it. I can assure you this will not happen again. So, Golik, the case of the deflated well, balls. Okay. Help me. First, let, let me give you... What the, is the significance of a deflated ball? Well, it, it's a better grip for the quarterback. So it is an it, it is an advantage or a yes. disadvantage to an offense? An advantage to an offense. It is an advantage an adva to an offense. Advantage to the quarterback, not a kicker, but an advantage to a, to a, to a quarterback. Right, so it's an advantage to a quarterback right. and a disadvantage to the kicker. I just, I know a lot of people would hear this and say, okay, what exact effect would a deflated football have on a game? It, it, it's for the quarterback is what it is. It's, it's, it's for a better grip. Uh, for the quarterback. And let me give you a quick backdrop on how they decide which game balls to use. Now, it, for USC, it's their student managers typically pick out the six game balls with Matt Barkley, the quarterback, after the team's Thursday practice. So they pick out the six balls that they're going to each. Each team has six balls that they use and is kept on the other team's sidelines during the game. After you pick out those six balls on just Thursday. Just to make it clear, I'm yes. sorry. Not so there are a total of twelve. It's not like USC gets six and Oregon gets six. The home team gets six, and that's it. Those yep. are the six game. They balls. pick out six game balls with Barkley after the, the team's Thursday practice. Okay. The balls are then required to be left alone until the day of the game. When they're examined by the referees, then each team uses six game balls, which are stored on the opposite sidelines during the game. Okay, got it. So those six balls were picked on Thursday, and then they're left alone. And then uh, basically, what, what the the, the the story is, is a student manager who's deflating them on the sideline on game day. And and according to Lane Kiffin, no coaches knew and the quarterback didn't know. Here's Lane Kiffin. Compliance department obviously did a, or did a very thorough check and research of everything involved to make sure that there was no knowledge of any coaches or players knowing anything about this. So um, I don't know why it was done. Um, what I've been told by the conference is um, they fixed a number of the balls prior to kickoff. So... Um, I guess we were playing with some deflated balls and some non-deflated balls. Listen. The case of the deflated balls. <laughs> I mean, to think that there's a rogue manager out there. Rogue manager that, that, at USC. That decided on his own. He's a rogue. I am going to deflate these balls so Matt Barkley can grip them better. I, listen. I, I don't believe it. <laughs> okay, let me let me just go down that road. Okay, so yeah. now, we don't believe that. No. Brian Greasy, mm -hmm. college football quarterback at Michigan, played in the NFL many years, now works for us at ESPN. 
He doesn't believe it either. The night before the games, I had the bag of footballs in my hotel room. I didn't want anybody touching the footballs. I had them a certain way. And if a manager <laughs> so you were taking like, her out of the ball, <laughs> <laughs> if a manager was, felt like they yeah. were to take the balls and just take care out of it arbitrarily, that would never happen. I don't think that a manager would ever do that without someone telling him to do that. Bottom line, because that's not his place in the game. I think he's supposed to just get the equipment there and make sure to do his job. Anything with playing with the equipment or changing it, yeah, that no way. That's Mark May. I don't think the manager would ever do that. So Brian Greasy says he used to sleep with the balls in his hotel room. Yeah. And now Mark May is saying, I can't imagine any student manager doing that on his own unless he was what? Unless he was told to. <laughs> told to by who? The rogue manager. Did he deflate <laughs> the balls? Did he act on his own? Who knew? What did he know? And when did he know it? Lane Kiffin. Golick, I ask you. I, I listen. Th there is no way that this manager decided on his own. Yes. I'm going to deflate these balls. No way. No way he acted no. on his own and deflated the balls. No. So who did? Ah, uh, well, I'm going to say he had to be told or instructed by someone. Someone. Who's the someone? Well, that's the question. How high up does this go? Where does it go? It stinks, Mike. It stinks to high heaven. Is the investigation over? They were fined $25,000. Is it done? That's do, it. Do we just move on? We move on. And was this manager made the scapegoat? Details next week. Mm hmm Here on... Whatever show does this now. I don't even know what that's called anymore. But the point of it is this. I've never heard of anything so ludicrous in my entire life. Yeah. A manager, a student manager, which is yeah. just some kid who gets towels thrown at him, decided on his own that he was going to deflate a bunch of the footballs before the game? Are you crazy? I know. No human being believes that. None. Nobody. No. But at the same time, there's another side of this that I don't believe either. And I'll tell you what that is in three minutes on Mike and Mike. Shooting accuracy. Fires a three at the horn and he switches it in. The will to win. Brizioni double kicks back to Smith right down the paint in a vicious right handed stub. Knicks team. They just continue to work hard and, and play hard, stay away from injuries. That's the name of the game. Knicks, Mavericks, Friday night at 7 on ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Right now. AT&T asks, are you that guy? That guy who not only paints his face to cheer on his team, but then paints his entire torso? Well, you don't have to be that guy to prove your fanhood. Switch to AT&T and follow your favorite team like never before. It's much better than perusing the hardware store for this season's color palette of belly paints. You have the speed to get scores, stats, and highlights fast with AT&T. Rethink possible. Visit att.com or store for details. This is Terry Bradshaw. I've won a lot of games by one point, so I know the value of an extra point. My friends at Ferguson are fond of extra points, too. Ferguson's been the leader for plumbing and HDAC supply since 1953, so you always get what you need fast. Touchdown! And now, when pros order online with Ferguson, you'll get Pro Plus Rewards points. Use these points to get stuff like sports gear, gadgets, and more. Check out Pro Plus at Ferguson.com and tell them Terry sent you. It's time to get winter ready. Dick's Sporting Goods has more of the best brands to keep you warm as the weather gets colder. The North Face, Columbia, Spider, Burton, Copen, Marmot, Mountain Hardware, and more. Dick's has the widest selection in styles and colors in men's, women's, and youth jackets and accessories. And don't forget to grab a new snowboard. Dick's carries the snow equipment you need. Before hitting the slopes, stop into Dick's Sporting Goods today. Every season starts at Dick's. If you've got a business, you qualify for the official Mike and Mike office stimulus package. When you move from your office into a gorgeous Regis office, not only will you save a fortune, you'll get two months absolutely free. Your Regis office comes beautifully furnished in a prestigious building. You get a receptionist, meeting rooms, and state-of-the-art video conferencing with no long-term lease. And you get two months free by mentioning Mike and Mike. All you have to do is call 1-800-OFFICES. That's 1-800-OFFICES. Now is the perfect time to upgrade during the first ever Rally Motors Luxury Sales Event, where upgrading to luxury has never been easier. Take advantage of attractive lease offers, special financing, and receive above book value for your trade-in. Whether you're thinking of buying or leasing a Mercedes-Benz, smart car, or Sprinter van, Rally Motors features one of the area's largest selections of competitively priced vehicles. Experience the difference during the Luxury Sales Event and see why customers choose Rally Motors. To learn more, stop by or visit them online at rallymotors.com. 
What's up? Jared Max with you, 6.30 a.m. with Mike and Mike on ESPN New York. Our sports center brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. The winter event is back. Visit your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. Drive away in a C-Class sedan with four-matic go-wheel drive. Make your holiday wish come true. Visit searchmercedes.com today. Did you hear what Charles Barkley said yesterday on the Mike Lupica show about Carmelo Anthony? Carmelo Anthony is the best scorer in the NBA. Tonight, the Knicks will put him to the test against the Dallas Mavericks as the Knicks look to improve the record to 4-0. and Coverage begins on ESPN New York at 7 o'clock, but we'll have you fired up for the Knicks game before that. Jeff Van Gundy, 3.30 today on the Michael K. Show. Clyde Frazier joins at 5.30. Marcus Camby tonight makes a season debut. The Nets will be in Orlando 7 o'clock tonight against the Magic. Thunder beat the Bulls 97-91. Clippers over the Blazers 103-90. NFL, Colts top the Jaguars 27-10. Two rushing touchdowns last night for Andrew Luck. Red Bull were eliminated by D.C. United 1-0 last night in Jersey. I'm Jared Max. Sports Center brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry into Lowe's and save big. Get a Bosch 18-volt, half-inch, cordless, lithium-ion compact drill driver set now for just 99 bucks. That's a savings of $70. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer valid from 7th through 12th. Includes two batteries and a charger while supplies last. See store for details. And I tell you what, have ever, do you remember the books Encyclopedia Brown? Yes. He was like a kid detective. Yes. I loved those books when I was a kid growing up, and I have introduced them to my kids. Uh, but particularly my daughter Nikki has also enjoyed reading them, the Encyclopedia Brown Mysteries. And they always had these cute little names, the case of the this, the case of the that. Well, we, this is exactly, this sounds like something that would have come from an Encyclopedia Brown Mystery, the yeah. case of the deflated balls. <laughs> The student manager, a rogue manager at USC, rogue. acting on his own, decided to deflate some of the balls after inspection and then send them over to the Oregon sideline. Why? Because it might give his team a slight advantage. Do I think he acted alone? No, of course not. Do I know that he was instructed to do so by the head coach? No, I don't. And I can't sit here and point a finger of, of, of accusation directly at Lane Kiffin. But I can say this. In a sport where I think this year we have seen a minimum on the pro level of two occasions where people who work for or root for the home team have absolutely affected the outcome of the game by their handling of the clock. And I've said many times that should be an NFL employee, right, right. not a stadium employee. Do I think a student manager might have done something like this on instructions from above? Absolutely, I think so. And Lane Kiffin who has repeatedly, I'm reading this right out of, of ESPNLosAngeles.com, has repeatedly searched for small competitive advantages during his three-year tenure with the Trojans. He has switched players' numbers on special teams to confuse opponents. He has refused to disclose injuries during game weeks. He motivated his players in the preseason by telling the media he had not voted as team number one, which is even dumber than not yeah. deflating the balls because mm -hmm. everyone can find out who you voted for. Yeah. It turns out that he did. Right. So when asked... Lane Kiffin, if he understood how people might struggle to believe the manager was not instructed by someone with authority, he said, yeah, I can totally see that. That's exactly what I said to our compliance department. That's why it was very frustrating for a distraction like this with none of the players or coaches being involved in it. He also said it was, quote, fair to question the culture he's established at USC, where a student manager presumably thought he could get away with deflating balls on the sideline on his own. I, I mean, listen, th this just comes down to who who told him to do it. Because he did he didn't act. To think he acted alone is just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Whether it was whether it was Matt Barkley on Thursday, you know, afterward saying, oh, who know? You know, I, I don't want to sit here and make accusations of people, but let's let's just be honest about this. The manager isn't going to act by himself on the day of the game with the six USC balls on the Oregon sideline, which is where they're supposed to be, that during the game he's deflating them and thinking, oh, yeah, this sounds like a good idea. I'm just going to do this on my own because I think it can help my team. I mean, come on. It's just, it's just ridiculous to think that way. And, and we'll never know because it, it's over. They got fined for it. The student manager, he basically took responsibility with compliance and got fired for it. Uh, so w w whatever went on behind the scenes there. But, but that, that's ridiculous. Is it the end of the world? No, it, it, it's not. But to, to sit there and come out now with articles of saying we knew nothing, nobody knew anything, he acted on his own. That's, I love that. that. That's the headline. Manager acted on his own. <laughs> The other side of it, Mike, is that fairly or unfairly, USC is under a little different kind of microscope. Yes, they are. Because of what has happened there, because of the Reggie Bush situation, because they had to return the Heisman, because they're on their probation and everything else. 
So when you combine that and this, what this is, is it's highly embarrassing. It's just embarrassing. Yeah, it is. It, it is. makes you look ridiculous. It, it does. But you're doing what? You're deflating yeah. the balls before you? It's just ridiculous. And when you combine that with the fact that they lost to Stanford and they lost to Arizona and they lost to, to Oregon. Oregon, yeah. And they could have two more losses on their schedule yeah. coming up um, because they still have Arizona State and Notre Dame to come. You know, this was a team that was number one in the country before the right. season started. Right. They could be on their way to losing five games. A lot of high hopes for them. So when you combine those two together... It could get a little ugly in L.A. I, I, it will be interesting because the things we're talking about here are, are minor. You're right. They're embarrassing. But, you know, when they when they start to add up, you just – and with the history of USC, and, and, and at least recently, what, the trouble they've gotten into, it does make you raise an eyebrow a little bit. But it's just – to try and – just to try and sell this one is, is just a bit laughable. We're Mike and Mike. We're brought to you in part by The Home Depot, proud sponsor of ESPN Radio's College Game Day Tour. Live noon tomorrow, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Joaquin, transition. The 3-5 and five Cowboys at the 3-5 and five Eagles. All right, to the NFL we go, where this to me is, while there were much better teams playing games this weekend, this is the most interesting game on the NFL schedule. Dallas, Philadelphia, because they're two super high-profile teams with all kinds of well-known talent and players, and the loser is done. The loser season is over. And I think both coaches, certainly one of them knows that if this thing goes the wrong way, his job is over, and that's Andy Reid. And I think that Jason Garrett's job is in equal jeopardy on the other side. So there's a million different storylines right, going right. into what is always a great matchup with the Cowboys and the Eagles. As far as what the Eagles are doing or not offensively, with the problems their offensive line is having, we asked Brian Billick yesterday, here live on Mike and Mike in the morning, what is it that Andy Reid and Michael Vick can do offensively that they're not currently doing? He said nothing. I don't think it's Michael Vick's fault, and I don't know that changing him will make a difference. But I think they're in big, big trouble. I mean, I keep hearing Michael Vick needs to get the ball out quicker. That offensive line is as bad as I've seen in a long, long time. And I don't know. I'm, at this point, I'm not sure what Andy Reid can do. He's in that very, very difficult spot right now that you got the players that you've got. There's not a lot of confidence there. And they've tried every way. They've three-stepped. They've rolled him out. They've sprinted. They've play faked. They've screened. They've trapped. They're doing everything they can to help. It just doesn't seem to make a difference. It's Brian Billick with us yesterday no. here on Mike and Mike. That's not a very optimistic tone. No, no, it's not. And some of it is Vic's fault with, with some of the things he's done. But but I agree with Brian. He hasn't had a lot of time. He's been sacked at least twice in 10 straight games going back to last season. It's the longest active streak in the NFL. And, and again, when the number of sacks multiply that two or three times by the amount of times you get hit, you know, as well, that doesn't show up, you know, in, in the box score as far as stats are concerned. So... They struggle there, and what the Cowboys struggle with, Greeny, is close losses. Close losses. I mean, they're we, we've talked about this. They're in games, but they but they lose close ones. They've had a league high eleven losses by six or fewer points since Jason Garrett took over in Week Ten of 2010. So they're they're in those games, but they can't close the deal in those in those games. That's the struggle they have. It's a terrible stat. I mean, if you're a coach, yeah. I think that's the worst stat you can have. Well, let me, let me say it again. And Dallas, again, when, when he took over in week 10 of 2010, Dallas has a league high 11 losses by six or fewer points. They're 9-11 and 11 in games decided by six or fewer points. So what does that mean? It means that the game itself was on balance pretty even. Obviously, it doesn't always work out this way because you can be behind by 17 points and score a meaningless touchdown late and, and then kick a field goal, whatever it is. But by and large, what does it mean? It means the game is otherwise even, and one team found a way to win it, which right. is made a smart play, made a good play, didn't make a huge mistake. The Cowboys are the other team. They're the ones who make the dumb mistake. They find a way to lose it. They don't make the big play when they need to. And part of that, obviously, is on the players. But to me, yeah. if you're going to give the credit to the coaches, we always point at the opposite of that stat. Look how good they are in close games. That coach knows how to win. Well, if that's the case... And you tell me why it isn't on the coach when they never win that Well, some game. of it has to be on the coach. Not all of it, but some of it. And, and certainly in the situation we saw when they needed to hustle and they weren't on the field, you know, you, you wonder what's worked on during the week then and what was talked about <laughs> on the sideline for that. So absolutely some has to go to the coach. All right, we're Mike and Mike in the morning. You, you know, really quickly, the last time these two teams uh, played each other when they both had a losing record, I was on the Eagles. Really? Yeah. 
October 28, 1990. The last time both teams entered the game with a losing record. When they played each other. Since 1990, yeah. Well, that's a remarkable yep. testament to the consistency of both of them in some ways and into how bad they were when you were there. <laughs> And most of that is probably because of you. We want to hear from you. ESPN Radio Fan Feedback presented by 1-800-Flowers.com. Every 1-800-Flowers.com order is backed by their 100% smile guarantee for special offers. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. Coming off of Andrew Luck's performance last night, I threw a question up on Twitter just now. It's at ESPN Greeny. Mike, retweet that from at Mike and Mike if you would. Uh, and you can see it right now at ESPN Greeny. A question that stems from Andrew Luck last night that I'll be very curious to see people's reaction to. When you get a second go there, we'll update that in a moment. And a Hall of Famer says, our team doesn't care enough about winning. Hmm. You'll hear which one right after this. Mike and Mike in the morning. ESPN Radio. This Veterans Day at Lowe's, get the Maytag Centennial Washer and Dryer for $798. That's a savings of $430. And a Bosch 18-volt lithium drill for $99. That's a savings of $70. Choose 18-month special financing on purchases of $599 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's never stop improving. Offer is valid from November 7th through the 12th while supplies last. Credit offer valid from November 8th through the 12th. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offer. Some exclusions apply. See store for details, including Maytag offer. Thank you for calling Discover Card. Okay, your 5% cash back program is a total hole-in-one. You guys are putting on a clinic. What's the new category? Yeah, we're hitting on all cylinders. And only Discover gives you 5% cash back everywhere you shop online. It's like a cash back grand slam. Whoa, time out. 5% on online shopping? Yep. That's a game changer. Bullseye. Everywhere you shop online. That's right in my wheelhouse. Sign me up. Only Discover gives you 5% cash back everywhere you shop online through December. Sign up for 5% at discover.com or call 1-800-DISCOVER. 5% cash back on up to $1,500 in purchases online and at department stores. It's fun to debate your favorite teams and players, but the debate is over when it comes to where you go for your next set of tires. See the experts at your local Ford dealer for big savings on name brand tires during the big tire event. Going on now. Clipping coupons. Standing in line at 4 a.m. Buying five to get one free. Maybe it's me, but I don't think it should be that hard to save money, which is why we made Geico.com so easy. Just a few clicks and you could be saving hundreds of dollars on your car insurance. And when you switch to GEICO, you can do practically everything online. Report a claim, update your policy, even pay your bill. Click Bam Boom. Visit GEICO.com today. Click Bam Boom. I'm rather fond of that one. Hi, it's Colin Coward. When I send roses, and I do a lot, I always order them from 1-800-Flowers.com. Flowers are fresh, always, and beautiful. And roses are perfect to send, but for any reason. Not just birthdays or congratulations, just to brighten somebody's day. That's why I can't wait to tell you about an exclusive offer that is so special from 1-800-Flowers.com. Never offered before. 36 stunning multicolored roses for just 36 bucks. An abundant bouquet of three dozen roses at this incredible value. It's a limited time offer. you got to order today for somebody you care about. Think of their reaction. 36 roses, and it's not even their birthday. Why does it have to be her birthday? Just send them because. Remember, 36 roses for 36 bucks, only available this week. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com from your desktop or mobile device. Click on the radio mic, upper right side, enter Colin. That's 1-800-Flowers.com, enter Colin, or call 1-800-Flowers and mention my name. Hi, football fans. I think you'll agree that you've got to have great seats. And now it's even easier to pick the seats you want wherever you are thanks to StubHub's new mobile seat maps. They're the only interactive seat maps to let you search for NFL tickets by section and actually see the view from your seat. All from your mobile phone. How cool is that? So whether you're searching StubHub on your computer or your phone, it's easy to find the seat you want. Yet another reason thousands of fans use StubHub for their NFL tickets every Sunday. The college basketball season begins tonight on ESPN with two big-time matchups. First, the Sears Armed Forces Classic celebrates Veterans Day from Ramstein Air Base in Germany as number 14 Michigan State takes on Connecticut in the first regular season game overseas. Then in Brooklyn, in the Barclays Center Classic, Maryland goes up against John Calipari's national champion, Kentucky Wildcats. It all starts tonight at 5 p.m. Eastern with live Sports Center reports from Germany on ESPN. Hi, it's Colin Thursday. Bill Romanowski on pot smoking in the NFL. Greg Cosell thinks Eli Manning's arm. Well, you have to listen to find out. Download the Thursday Thundering Herd podcast. Check it out, ESPNRadio.com. 
ESPN Radio Extra Point with Colin Cowherd. To me, there's eight organizations in the NFL. I counted them this morning that feel like it's 100% about winning Super Bowls. Eight. There may be more, but I get a very strong feeling from ownership down. It is all about winning Super Bowls. New York Giants, Green Bay Packers, San Francisco 49ers with Harbaugh, New England, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Indianapolis, and Denver. That's all that matters. It's about winning Super Bowls. Tennessee drafted Vince Young. They didn't think Vince Young was great. They thought he could sell tickets from a source close to that organization. Part of getting the Vince Young deal done, ah, people here will love him. That's not about winning Super Bowls. The New York Jets getting Tebow, disruptive. It's not about winning Super Bowls. Eight teams in the league. That's all that matters. Coming up at 7.30 Eastern. The Bears battle the Texans in a big one Sunday night. The Texans D coordinator Wade Phillips says they plan on doubling Marshall. So what's plan B for Jay Cutler? Greeny and Golick ask the man himself, Jay Cutler, today with Mike and Mike in the morning. Here on ESPN Radio. He'll be on the Subway Fresh Take Hotline. Great guest list today. Yes, really is. Cutler at 7.30 Eastern, followed by Joe Flacco, followed by Dick Buckus. We got Roger Staubach today, Jaws, Lomas Brown, Stone Cold Lead Pipe Locks. Really good show. We have a feature called Improving Your Fantasy Team. It's brought to you by Lowe's. Visit ESPNRadio.com for a chance to win a trip for four to next year's ESPN Fantasy Football Draft Party and Mike and Mike's Fantasy Team Builder Sweepstakes. Lowe's never stop improving. If you wanted to improve your fantasy team, Mike, who would have thought if you had drafted Andrew Luck at the beginning of the year that not only would he be this productive as a rookie, but that he'd have five rushing touchdowns. Yeah, one short of RG3, who we talk about how dangerous he is with his legs as well. And one more than Peyton Manning ever had there, so he set a Colts record. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you really don't think a whole lot about Pey- Peyton Manning and running, but when you're there long enough, you get in the end zone a few times. Yeah, and so again, Luck with five rushing touchdowns, two of them last night in the Colts win over the Jaguars. He would improve your fantasy team, brought to you by Lowe's. He would improve your team in a lot of ways. If you go to my Twitter page at ESPN Greeny, I threw this question out and the responses are starting to fly in. And here's the question. If you were starting an NFL expansion franchise today, Mm -hmm. and you could have any player in the world, any, Any. any person currently walking planet Earth could be your first pick, who would you take? Now, I threw it out there. Some of the responses coming in. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I don't discount anyone their picks. Sure. But to me, you can't even consider Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. No. Guys like Drew that. You're Brees. not starting a, a, a franchise with a guy who's 37 years no, old. No, to me, there, there's one guy. And that guy is? It's Aaron Rodgers. I agree. I think everyone agrees, and that has been the overwhelming reaction He's we're what, getting. He's 29? He will be 29 next month. He'll be 29 month. next He's 28, month. 28, 29 in December. Yeah, he, he would be the pick. Here was my, my opinion. rationale. Okay. I discount anyone over 30. So there are a lot of great youngish quarterbacks. Eli Manning, he's, he'll be 32 in January. Ben Roethlisberger, he'll be 31 in March. They're both sensational. But if you're starting a franchise, what do those guys have? Five, six top-level years left? If, if everything goes their way, maybe seven or eight. Now, that's a long time with a great player. But I think you have to, you have to go younger. I do, too. The reason I threw this question out there was because I wanted to see how many people, how far we'd go before you got to the name Andrew Luck. Mert. Because after you say Aaron Rodgers, and I would agree with you, he'd be right. number one. Would Andrew Luck be two? Would, would he be? You, I'm looking at the other youngish quarterbacks, two guys that came in together that make it to the playoffs, Matt Ryan and Joe Flacco. Both 27. Both 27 would years old. Would you take one of them ahead of him? Not starting a new franchise. If you're no. a general manager right now, Mike, I'm, I'm not only starting a franchise, but I'm naming you as the general manager, and you can make this pick. Would you take Matt Ryan, who is 27, Joe Flacco, who is 27, Aaron Rodgers? We've acknowledged Rodgers is one. We're, we're both taking Rodgers So one. I'm taking Rodgers off the table. Right. Who would you take? How old is Luck? What is he, 22? Luck's got to be 22, 23. 23. Tops. We'll get it in a second. Tyler will get it for me. What do you think? I'd be hard pressed not to go with him next. I think you would. I think you would be hard pressed not to go with him next. He's twenty three. I mean, listen, RG three would be in that conversation at somewhere as well. He would. You know, because the young quarterbacks that would would be the Matt Ryan's of the world, the the Joe Flacco's. People are going to yell and scream about Alex Smith, who's the number four rated oh, quarterback stop. in the league right now. But 
RG3 is 22. I tell you what, you take Alex Smith. Go ahead. Oh, listen, listen. Let's have some fun with that. I'm with you on that. I'm just trying to look at some of the other. RG3 is 22. RG3 would be very high. Some of the other younger quarterbacks, Matthew Stafford, who threw over 5,000 yards last year. Cam Newton. Cam Newton is 23. I would right now. I would take Luck or RG3 ahead of him. Yeah, I would as well. I, 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 I think I would go Luck too. I think I would. You too. know what's? You, let's put it this way. You know what's going to be a quarterback. You know the, the, the question you ask is: Is it going to be a quarterback-driven question? Without right. a doubt, because that's where we are in the NFL, and that's fair. Because they're the most important players, for the most part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you hate quarterbacks. I don't hate quarterbacks. You are a very. No, no. What do you mean no. for the most Here's part? Here's the thing. There are. Well, wait, what does for the most part mean? There are two players on the field at a time. And which and, one is the most important? And, and, and I would like to to give some credit to some of the other players on the field. I'm not discrediting any oh, of the other yes, players you are. on you the field. You know what? You're not. You're a non-quarterback hater. You know what? You you're are? a non-quarterback hater. Are, let me ask you the following yeah. question: Is the quarterback, or is it not, the most important player? Yeah. What? Yes. Sorry, I didn't hear the witness. Yes. A little louder, please. Yes. Done. So you're taking a quarterback. Yeah, Let's yeah, just you put are. it this way. Listen, I agree. If you're the yeah. general manager of one team and I'm the general manager, you go ahead. You start taking I'm take quarterbacks. I'm going to take J.J. Watt. Well, look, J.J. Watt is 23 years old, yeah. and he's a stud, and he's awesome. Darrell Revis is 27. He's not healthy right now, but Clay he's Matthews, awesome. Clay Matthews. Jason Pierre-Paul, right Clay yeah. Matthews, all these guys. Mm -hmm. You could take a defensive player. They're all very good right. and very valuable. <laughs> I'll take no, no, no. Aaron Rodgers, and then I'll take Andrew this, Luck. This is, there's no doubt this is a quarterback conversation. All right, yes. Mike and Mike, and we got quarterbacks on the show mm -hmm. today. Again, Cutler, Flacco, Ron Jaworski, Roger Staubach, and more <laughs> to come here on Mike and Mike. Okay, speaking of quarterbacks, yep. a Hall of Famer says winning just isn't important enough to our team anymore. That Hall of Famer happens to be my favorite player that ever lived, one Joe Willie Namath, mm -hmm. pride of Beaver Falls, PA. There you go. My mother would have left my father for Joe Namath. And your dad would have been okay with it. My father would have applauded her for <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> my father would have said, listen, can I, is there any chance that uh, I could just get his autograph? I could mean, I I'd be the best man I'd like, <laughs> in that one? He would, he would. My dad would have been so excited. Guess what? My <laughs> wife married Joe Namath. <laughs> would have been great. Anyway, the point of it is this. Namath, who, uh, what I like now about Joe is that he is very honest. No one loves the Jets more than that guy. He wants the Jets mm -hmm. to win so badly. He wants them to win more than I do. And so when I say that I feel the Jets have become about everything other than winning, they've become about all this headline grabbing and everything else, who cares what I think? When Joe Namath says it, it matters. I think the focus has changed uh, subtly. Uh, it's more toward grabbing headlines, and everything starts at the top. And you can go back to when the... Uh Seat licenses uh, were initiated, how we started conducting things. I don't think winning has been put at the top of the board. Winning headlines has replaced that. And that's, that's not me talking. That's the greatest player in franchise history, Tom. Well, I mean, you look at a couple of decisions. You know, the Brett Favre decision, the Tim Tebow decision. And, and when he's talking about this, make no mistake, he's talking about the owner, not the coach. He's talking about Woody Johnson. Well, except that the coach also is that. I mean, that's what the coach is. Now, that's his personality. Yeah. But he's a big, boisterous. Yes, he is. Always getting attention. Who gets, what What NFL coach gets more attention? Rex than Ryan him? gets the attention. If, if not Rex Ryan, his brother with the Cowboys, the D coordinator. Well, if his brother Rob. was a head coach, yeah. he would get he as would much get attention. As well. But that's, I'm with you. you know, you don't hire that guy by you're accident right. you're, you're, listen you're right and they have they have gotten you know headline seeking made moves but they also now it's now we're, we keep hanging on this or jet fans will to afc title games in a row but that's now really starting to be in the rearview mirror a bit mm -hmm. you know it's what have you done for me lately come on you go out and you make all every move that might get you a lot of attention you seem to want to make what you trade up for a quarterback when you when you clearly have no intention of being a quarterback driven team, you go out and you get Brett Favre. You go out and you get Tim Tebow when you clearly didn't want him. These are not things you do because about winning. These are things you do about getting people talking about your football team while the other team in town is busy winning championships. Stone Cold Lead Pipe Locks on the way. Jay Cutler, Joe Flacco on the way. All that and more on a Football Friday, Mike and Mike. Who's your
Are you making frequent bathroom trips during the night? Do you have a strong urge to urinate? If ignored, these symptoms may result in complicated kidney and bladder infections, kidney failure, or loss of bladder function. Additionally, if you are a male of 50 years or older and experiencing sexual dysfunction, you may be at risk of a stroke or heart attack. The same disease process that affects blood vessels which lead to the heart and brain affect the delicate vessels that supply blood to the genital organs. Careful evaluation of erectile dysfunction can uncover these problems years before critical damage occurs. Compassionate urologists at the New York Urologic Institute specialize in improving urologic and sexual function. Latest technological advances allow the patient to get answers to diagnostic tests immediately, reducing anxiety. Call the New York Urologic Institute at 347-508-3991. Offices are conveniently located in Queens and Brooklyn. For timely, effective treatment, call 347-508-3991. That's 347-508-3991. AT&T asks, are you that guy? That guy who not only paints his face to cheer on his team, but then paints his entire torso? Well, you don't have to be that guy to prove your fanhood. Switch to AT&T and follow your favorite team like never before. It's much better than perusing the hardware store for this season's color palette of belly paints. You have the speed to get scores, stats, and highlights fast with AT&T. Rethink possible. Visit att.com or store for details. It's time to get winter ready. Dick's Sporting Goods has more of the best brands to keep you warm as the weather gets colder. The North Face, Columbia, Spider, Burton, Copen, Marmot, Mountain Hardware, and more. Dick's has the widest selection in styles and colors in men's, women's, and youth jackets and accessories. And don't forget to grab a new snowboard. Dick's carries the snow equipment you need. Before hitting the slopes, stop into Dick's Sporting Goods today. Every season starts at Dick's. Monday, behind Big Ben. We got out hurt. The Steelers took down the reigning Super Bowl champs. Let's go! Now, one of the hottest teams in the game. Touchdown, Steelers! Returns home in search of a fourth straight win against the Chiefs. Countdown sets the stage at 6.30 Eastern. Then, Monday Night Football. Chiefs, Steelers, 8.30 on ESPN. It all comes down to Monday night. This Veterans Day, ESPN is working with the USO to help lift the spirits of America's troops and their families stationed around the world. Grant a wish for our servicemen and women, or donate a special gift to their families to show your support. Give a special gift to our military heroes and their families through USO Wishbook. Visit USO.org forward slash ESPN and give your gift today. This is The Herd with Colin Cowherd. Limitations can be a blessing. Because when you have a gift, a physical gift especially, you're going to want to use it. Always been my issue with RG3. Oh, I know he's faster than Andrew Luck. But in the end, Andrew Luck's lack of relative speed is a gift. gift. RG3 can run a 4-1-8-40. Yeah, great. He's going to want to do that. He goes out running and gets absolutely popped. Colin Cowherd. Weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series is at full throttle. And when drivers will do anything to take the checkered flag, cages get rattled. Engines roar louder. Tempers run hotter. And victory donuts taste even sweet. Some people say there's more to life than winning. Those people are losers. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series on ESPN. Nothing beats first place. Every Saturday, ESPNU College Game Day hits the road. College Game Day rolls on to East Alabama. Boise is berserk. Chris, Lee, Kirk, Desmond, and Sam Steele are live at the best matchups in the land. This offense continues to develop. How can you pick against LSU? Not so fast, my friend. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Saturdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPNU and 10 a.m. on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. To your city. Sports news happens fast. The Marlins firing manager Ozzie Guillen after just one season. Marlins president of baseball. NASCAR's most popular driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr., has been medically cleared to get back in the 88 car for Sunday's race in Martinsville. When you need the latest scores, updates, or breaking news, turn to SportsCenter on ESPN Radio.
and ESPNRadio.com. Knicks, Mavericks, tonight at 7, WEPN-FM, WEPN-HD1, New York. ESPN Radio Sports Center. With us, Mike and Mike on ESPN Radio. Every hour starts with Sports Center. Heavy duty football hour coming up, including Stone Cold Lead Pipe Locks, Jay Cutler, and Joe Flacco. And speaking of quarterbacks, Mike, Andrew Luck was going last night. Game last night, Colts Jags. Colts win it 27 to 10. Andrew Luck leading the way with his legs. Quarterback sneaks. Push him over. Did he get in? Did he get in? Did he he did. Touchdown. Touchdown. Andrew Smith. It's a new record. Two touchdowns for the second time this year. Here, and the Colts lead at 16 nothing. Colin 1070, the fan. He also had a five yard rollout touchdown run. It gives him five for the season. He now has set the record, uh, Indianapolis Colt record for rushing touchdowns by a quarterback, RG3. This is for the league now. RG3 has six. We talk about his legs a lot. Andrew Luck just one rushing touchdown behind him. Again, 27 10, the final score. The Colts have won four straight for the first time since the final four games of the 2000. And 10 season. No touchdown passes for Luck, and he did throw an interception. Uh, also in uh, in the NFL, that, that list came out again. The Sporting News did a player's poll, and they voted for the league's dirtiest player. And Dominican Sue wins it yet again. Richie Incognito, the lineman for the Miami Dolphins, offensive lineman, was second. Cortland Finnegan was third. College football last night. Florida State gets a late touchdown, trying to set up for a game-winning field goal. They get a touchdown instead. Number 10, Florida State beats Virginia Tech 28-20. Now Florida State can clinch uh, the ACC Atlantic Division with a Clemson loss to Maryland on Sunday, while Virginia Tech has to win its next two games just to become bowl eligible. And that would be for the, if they do for the 20th consecutive season. NBA Thunder beat the Bulls in Chicago. Good game. Kevin Durant took it over late. 97-91 the final. Five Thunder in double figures. Clippers over the Blazers 103-90. to Kobe Bryant says he supports Mike Brown. He's his biggest supporter. That despite going viral yesterday, a video of what looked like Kobe giving the quote-unquote death stare <laughs> to Brown during their most recent loss in Utah. Remember, they are 1-4 and four in Los Angeles. And that is Sports Center, brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. At Dick Sporting Goods, we believe that when mind, body, and equipment come together, you are untouchable. Every dream, every hope, every new beginning, every season starts at Dick Sporting Goods. It's Friday! They're going crazy out there. Thank God it's Friday! So, another Friday is upon us. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! E better than ever, Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio and live on ESPN2, where, if you were just watching, they just aired for the first time the video that they shot of us yesterday in the Coast Guard Cutter Simulator, and it is up right now, I told, on ESPNRadio.com. Good, and we'll, we tweeted it. Okay, great. We'll tweet it as well, or it's out there on Twitter, at Mike and Mike. I'll tweet it also at ESPN Greeny, so we'll get it there to you anywhere you want. We, we were, they have, uh, and first and foremost, we were at the Coast Guard Academy yesterday, and it was a wonderful day. Our thanks to everyone there for making us feel so welcome, and, and the energy of all the cadets was sensational. Right. You said it right. All the previous shows we've ever done during ESPN's special weeks where we salute our troops, the uh, the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces, both current and, of course, the veterans, um, this was the first time we'd ever done it from a, an academy. Right. It's one of the five service academies, and so these were students. Mm -hmm. For the most part, these are college kids. Yes. Yes. They were very disciplined, motivated, energetic college kids, and uh, and they were terrific yesterday. But then afterwards, they had like a simulator mm -hmm. where you could go in there, and Golik drove the boat, and I was kind of fooling around in yeah, there. Yeah, sure. It came out very funny. So it's on ESPNRadio.com if you'd like to see it. We were in that simulator about 10 minutes, and no kidding, Greeny got seasick. I did. Greeny got seasick I in did. 10 minutes in there, and the, the students there, they have to be in that over their four years, sick for 67 hours. Yeah. 67 hours, and Greeny, after 10 minutes, said, where can I go get some soda and crackers? I did. They told me, get, get some ginger ale and some saltines. They did. So they didn't have saltines, but they had oyster crackers, yeah, so I had did. some of those, and then... You are just pathetic. I felt a little better about yeah. an hour later, yeah. but I'm not going to lie to you. It was, uh, it was a little rough. Anyway, our thanks again to everybody, and the video's up at ESPNRadio.com. I threw the question up at ESPN Greeny, and I want to read you some of the reaction that I'm getting. 
The question is, if you were starting a team right now, if I made you the general manager of an NFL expansion team right now, and you could choose any person walking the face of planet Earth as the first pick, who would you take? And I think the consensus number one is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, uh, MO5 tweets me, Rodgers is number one. He's yes. the best of the young quarterbacks. This kid tweets me, Aaron Rodgers, youngest of the elite QBs. But after Rodgers... We all watched, anyone who has NFL Network last night and chose to, watched Andrew Luck. He didn't even play a particularly good game, no, I thought. No. He looked much better last week against Miami. You've seen him play against Green Bay. But how many names would we name before we got to Andrew Luck? You're not taking anybody over 30. No. So Eli is 32 in January. Ben is 31 in March. Now, you could consider those guys because they're established and you know what they are. Yeah, and, and you, you certainly have, you know, over a half a decade of, of good years left. We don't know believe. that luck is going to get that good. We don't know that. No, no, we don't. But he's 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 23. So he's he's eight years younger than Ben and nine years younger than Eli. You know, the, the name, and we just got handed a bunch of, uh, of tweets, the name that shows up the most out of others is Matt Ryan is Matt Ryan saying, Matt Ryan, I will take luck. Uh, it will take luck a few years to be as consistent as Ryan. Ryan's 27. Yeah, and listen, Matt Ryan... He'd be right there. He, he would absolutely, and deservedly so. Uh, so that that's the other name that seems to be out there the most with others trying to, to give non-quarterback names. That would be a quarterback. You can, you can have the non-quarterback discussion as well on what person you would take, a J.J. Watt, a Clay Matthews, maybe a Julio Jones, quite honestly, uh, as well. But th this would definitely start with a quarterback. You know what? I like this is a very smart tweet here, and it is from Rupek who tweets us, this time last year, Cam Newton would have been number two. Right. Give the league a chance to catch up to Luck and RG3. Ask this question again next year. Well, that's fair. That's I, smart. Listen, it is. It is. You know, we can ask it now, and this is what we think now. We can certainly ask it next year and see where we are. We may be talking about someone. Well, we'll still be talking about Aaron Rodgers, but we may be talking about someone completely different. That's fair. But right now, that, that's why we ask the question now. Uh, certainly knowing it can change down the road. Keep the reaction coming here. Mike and Mike in the morning. Meanwhile, turning our attention to some of the bigger games on this upcoming week's NFL schedule. We talked about Dallas-Philadelphia, which is a huge game. Uh, the loser, I think, is totally out. The winner is probably, well, the winner still has a mountain to climb. It does. But and the loser is done. Just to put a quick stat to it, uh, the loser of this falls to 3-6. and six. Only 1.4% of teams to start three and six or worse since 1990 have made the postseason. Let's go to the next. It's not a very good stat. <laughs> no. Let's do this one. The seven and one Texans at the seven and one Bears. What do you think, Mike? That's oh. obviously the glamour game. It's Sunday night. Peanut Tillman tweeted us yesterday that he'd be there. He says, "Don't worry, guys." He actually tweeted to us at Mike and Mike. Um, the game uh, we're having the baby Monday. I'll be there Sunday. God family football. So we love Peanut Tillman. We'll talk to Joe to Jay Cutler, I should say, uh, in 25 minutes. It's 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Chicago time. Give me some numbers from that game. Well, how about this? Uh, you look at uh, a couple of quarterbacks in Matt Schaub and Jay Cutler. Each have won 11 of their last 12 starts, dating back to week 7 of last season. They're tied for the best record by any starting quarterback in the NFL over that span in winning percentage. Here's percent. 